It is a canine spirit beast that has been abandoned by the world, but when I saw it for the first time, I decided to contract it as my first spiritual pet. Passersby on the street all sighed and thought I was a fool. Even the owner of the spirit beast shop next to me mocked me, saying that I had the same intelligence as the windhound. Upon hearing this, I just smiled and said nothing. Instead, I sold all my belongings and exchanged them for a bloodline awakening crystal, which I then fed to the windhound to activate its hidden bloodline. At this moment, a student from the same school as me came out of the beast shop, accompanied by a black misty knitting cheetah, a crimson-eyed black panther. Initial form, a high-level bloodline beast with great evolutionary potential. Did you see that? The beast that I have a contract with is a crimson-eyed black panther. In three days, I will pass the national entrance exam for the Ling Academy, even if I close my eyes. 200 years ago, when the Dragon Slayer War had not yet broken out, within the Dragon Kingdom, there existed the five great families. The five families were all Beastmaster families, and were an important force in guarding the Dragon Kingdom. Later on, the Bai family, one of the five great families, was almost wiped out in the dragon slaying battle. Nowadays, there were only four great families left. Bai Yu is the only descendant of the Bai family, because Bai Yu was all alone, and joined the royal army as an army general. The connection with the Bai family had already existed in name only. In short, the world would only refer to the four great families, and the so-called fifth family, the white family, was already far from people's view. Medusa's eyes were filled with mockery. Morong Ash's face was uncertain. Bayou was trying to suppress the negative emotions that were about to erupt. Judging from the facial expressions and subtle movements of these big shots, the dragon slaying battle 200 years ago involved too many unseen grudges and feuds, and the central figure of the dragon slaying battle was the empress of the dragon kingdom. Shang Wan Lan. Time's up. Chop. Morong Ashes decisively gave the order. Pulleys were mixed and ropes were pulled. The axe, crafted from dragon's teeth, fell from high above. The sharp and chilling axe blade was like the scythe of death, swinging towards Medusa's neck. Unsurprisingly, Medusa was bound to fall to the ground with the head of a snake. However, the accident still happened. Whoosh! A residual shadow swept past. The naval warriors around the execution platform could not react in time, and all of them were overturned by the purple gold flames. The falling axe landed on the spot, and Medusa disappeared out of sight. Boom! The execution platform exploded. Smoke rolled out and flames shot up to the sky. There are intruders. All troops on alert. The waves churned, and the naval warship stationed around the island swayed violently, floating like floating weeds. Ice and Fire Island. Naval headquarters. Ear-piercing sirens resounded through the sky, and a chaos erupted. Morong Ashes kept his cool and shouted, Don't panic. Find Medusa first. Bayou added, Activate defense procedures. Blockade the entire island. Not a fly can fly out. General Morong. Medusa is there. In the midst of the chaos, Morong Ashes raised his eyes and looked. On a hillside, there stood a tall, demonic beauty. Behind the beauty, nine furry tails burned with purple gold flames. Surprised and surprised, Morong Ashes gaze fell on the beauty's face. This beautiful face that was a scourge, like Daji's reincarnation, matched perfectly with the photo on the wanted notice. Nine-tailed demon fox? How did this guy come? At this moment, the weak Medusa was supported by Dai Lu, and the bottom of her eyes were shocked. How are you? You are weak. Don't talk. When we escape, we have plenty of time to catch up. The Nine-Tailed Fox Clan and the Divine Python Clan were already closely related. Dai Lu and Medusa, possessing a friendship as long as 200 years, were friends for life. The shock in Morong Ash's eyes fleetingly passed and his face turned blue. Nine-Tailed Demon Fox, the entire streets and alleys of the Dragon Kingdom are plastered with your wanted notices. I didn't expect that you would actually take the initiative to come to my door. That's good. I'll send you all to the western paradise together. Morong Ashes catalyzed his spiritual power, and the imperial beast sleeping at the bottom of the sea instantly awoke. Just then, a mysterious visitor appeared beside Dai Lu. The moment this mysterious visitor made his appearance, all the naval warriors were like enemies. In this world, the unknown was the most terrifying. The mysterious visitor was clad in a loose black robe, and his true figure could not be seen. On his face, he wore a ghost face mask, revealing only a pair of deep eyes. Human genes had evolved for countless centuries, but they still could not change their fear of the unknown. The mysterious visitor was filled with this air of the unknown. White Feather stepped forward, his already small eyes squinting slightly, looking as if he had no eyes at all. Dare I ask if your excellency is, facing this mysterious visitor of unknown strength, White Feather, as an army general, became cautious in his speech. You are not qualified to know my identity. When Xiao Xingyu spoke, all the navies were emboldened. 
Dai Lu stood right beside Xiao Xingyu. Her eyes flashed with surprise. This kid, his acting skills can be ah. Xiao Xingyu could change his voice line. His tone became hoarse, and his tone was three parts cool, three parts indifferent, as well as four parts careless. Don't look at this simple sentence. Xiao Xingyu took the momentum of a big shot appearance very well. Your Excellency's invasion of my Navy's headquarters, wanting to take the death row prisoner Medusa, is clearly against our Dragon Kingdom. If I'm not mistaken, you're someone from the Amazing Alliance. Amazing Alliance, the largest rebel army. The enemies of the Dragon Kingdom were not only the ferocious demonic beast army, but also this organization called Amazing Alliance. The leader of the Amazing Alliance, Xiao Lai Yan, was the arch rival of the Dragon Empire's Empress, Shang Wan Lan. On the Dragon Kingdom's most wanted list, the nine-tailed demon fox, Dai Lu, and the heavenly tribulation ghost python, Medusa, ranked in the top ten at most. The top five big names on the list were all core members of the Amazing Alliance. The first ranked wanted criminal was undoubtedly Xiao Lai Yan. As the leader of the Amazing Alliance, Xiao Lai Yan was a ten-star royal beast master, and his reward amount was as high as 300 billion gold coins. In other words, as long as one could capture Xiao Lai Yan, one could exchange half of the national treasury from Empress Shang Wan Lun. Xiao Xingyu's sudden landing on the island and his intention to rescue Medusa was so obvious. It looked like he was going against the Dragon Kingdom as well as Shang Wan Lun. It was reasonable for Morong Ashes to suspect that Xiao Xingyu was someone from the Amazing Alliance. In response, Xiao Xingyu gave an ambiguous reply. It doesn't matter if I'm someone from the Amazing Alliance. The purpose of me coming here is to take this little snake away. Those who stop me, die. Xiao Xingyu's acting skills really didn't lose out to a movie star. Whether it was his posture or his tone, he made it look like a big shot who was not to be messed with. Although Medusa was weak, her heart was now filled with confusion and a little bit of aggrieved anger. Ro, who the hell is this guy, actually calling me a little snake? He's, my royal master. This was a difficult fact for Du to talk about. What, royal master? Medusa felt unbelievable, unable to believe that her good sister, actually signed a blood contract with a human and fell into the role of a human's maid. During this period of time, a lot of things have happened. Anyway, my royal lord deserves our trust. I'll explain it to you when we escape from here. Medusa sensed carefully and her heart sank to the bottom. The spiritual energy in this guy's body is so thin. I'm afraid he's only at the two-star or three-star royal master segment. Xiao Xingyu lowered his voice. Little snake has good eyesight. Don't call me little snake. Sister Python. Who is your sister? Don't get close. Dear Sasha. Do you have social bullying you? Dai Lu's heart was exhausted. Don't argue. Let's find a way to escape first. At this moment, thousands of Navy Imperial Beastmasters had already surrounded the island hill. Around the island, a dozen battleships were stationed. In the sky, there were also armed fighters skimming over and hovering. On top of that, two admirals sat at the naval headquarters. This stance would not let any intruder escape. Morong Ashes picked up a cigar and said coldly, Black-robed man, no matter if you are from the Amazing Alliance or not, if you dare to trespass the naval headquarters, you will be killed without pardon. From this moment onwards, Xiao Xingyu had a new identity, the black-robed man. Those who capture the black-robed man alive will be heavily rewarded. With Morong Ash's order, the naval warriors opened their imperial beast crests and summoned their respective imperial beasts. Underneath the mask, the corner of Xiao Xingyu's mouth hooked up in an evil arc, and his backslotted teeth crunched two dragon spirit pills. Medusa's delicate body shook as she looked sideways at the black-robed man. This guy's spiritual power, inexplicably suddenly doubled tenfold. Two Dragon Spirit Dan, taking medicine to open up a moment of pleasure. The medicine effect of a retreat crematorium, waiting for the medicinal effect to pass. Xiao Xingyu had to endure great pain. After all, now facing two admirals, Xiao Xingyu could only gamble all. Lu Lu, my body will last up to 10 minutes. I know, after 10 minutes, my life is in your hands. Good. Xiao Xingyu and Dai Lu stood side by side, master and servant side by side. Little fox, for these 10 minutes, Let's let go together. Royal Lord, let's begin. A mighty battle kicked off at the naval headquarters, with Morong Ashes giving the order. All the navy warriors summoned their respective imperial beasts and rushed towards the hillside. Xiao Xingyu, clad in a black robe, stood on top of the hillside, his five senses covered by a ghost face mask, seemingly as steady as an old dog. But in reality, he was panicked. This is the naval headquarters, not to mention the warship units near the island. Just looking at this horde of naval fighters on the island will make people feel deeply powerless and fearful. Most of the naval warriors at the bottom were four or five star imperial beast masters. The navy admirals, the segments were between six and eight stars. What's more, 
There were also two great admirals with segments reaching nine stars sitting in the center of the battlefield. All in all, given the scale of the strategic deployment of the naval camp, even if the bull demon king invaded the naval headquarters, he would have to obediently go down and plow the fields. At this moment, countless naval forces and their imperial beasts rushed up the mountainside, forming an encirclement around Xiao Xingyu and the heavily injured Medusa. At the critical moment, Dai Lu's eyes flashed, glaring through the air at the two generals who were watching from the wall. An extremely terrifying power burst out from Dai Lu's body, forming purple-golden vapor ripples that covered the entire ice and fire island. This mysterious power possessed the power to destroy everything, and all the navies fell to the ground, their faces pale, not even having the strength to speak. The imperial beasts summoned by the navies fell into a coma one after another, foaming at the mouth. Some imperial beasts of higher grades, although they did not fall unconscious, were also lying on the ground uncontrollably, panic and fear showing in their eyes. The wind howled and the black clouds covered the moon, heavenly thunder aroused the fire of the earth, and the entire island shook. Morong Ash's head was filled with black lines, his sight locked onto Dai Lu. This fox, it seems to have broken through evolution. White Feather still squinted his eyes and said in a deep voice, judging by the aura she's emitting, she's already been promoted from the beast emperor body to the beast god body. No, it's more than that. Old Bai, this special power, does it look like the one from 200 years ago? Upon being reminded, Bai Yu's face changed drastically. Brother Ashes, it's not a matter of whether it's like it or not. This is dragon power. The two great generals had been in the battlefield for a long time and were experienced. They quickly noticed that the aura on Dailu's body was dragon power. Morong Ash's eyes widened as he stared intently at the changes that arose in Dai Lu's body. At this moment, purple golden dragon scales emerged on the side of Dai Lu's face, and a pair of irregularly shaped dragon horns grew on top of her head. Dai Lu slightly clenched her fists, her nails grew wildly like bamboo shoots after the rain, and her arms were also covered with dragon scales. A pair of dragon claws grabbed the air in the void, seemingly ripping apart the already unstable space allowing one to see what twisted air actually looked like. As the dragon power spread, Dai Lu's pupils turned into a vertical shape, and the killing intent at the bottom of her eyes flooded like a rising river. Vertical pupils, one of the characteristics of the purebred dragon race, dragon scales, dragon horns, dragon claws and also dragon pupils. Brother Ashes, it's solid. The power released by this fox is the dragon power of the purebred dragon race. Then White Feather let out a long sigh and couldn't help but sigh. In that case, this fox is no longer a nine-tailed demon fox, but a nine-tailed dragon fox. The dragon fox was a mysterious species that had never appeared since the establishment of the Imperial Beastmaster civilization. Now that this species had appeared out of nowhere, it was enough to cause an uproar in the Imperial Beastmaster world. Morong Ashes was shocked, but his eyes were downcast in contemplation. The purebred dragon race, in that dragon-slaying battle 200 years ago, had already perished. On this fox, why would dragon power appear? Although I don't know what this fox went through after escaping from the hands of the Empress Sama in pursuit. Morong Ashes raised his eyes, his sight falling on Xiao Xingyu. But the power of the dragon is definitely related to this black-robed man. As soon as the character of the black-robed man debuted, his background was unknown, causing Morong Ashes and Bayu to not dare to take the enemy lightly. Now a terrifying dragon power was bursting out from Dailu's body, enough to stun all imperial beasts below the rank of beast king body and even beast emperor body imperial beasts would tremble in fear. Old Bai, this fellow is an extremely dangerous character. We can't let him leave Ice Fire Island. We're thinking the same thing. Both of the two great generals clearly realized the threat the black-robed man posed to the Dragon Kingdom, and simultaneously opened their imperial beast crests. Ka-cha-cha-cha. It was the sound of the earth tearing apart. The cracks in the ground spread and spread like a spider web, sweeping every corner of the island. Boom. With a deafening explosion. The ground under Xiao Xingyu's feet churned like waves. In an instant of less than 0.5 seconds, a huge cannibalistic flower broke through the ground. Xiao Xingyu, Medusa, and Dai Lu were all swallowed into the mouth of the cannibal flower and plunged into darkness. On the battlefield, the six-legged naval warriors finally breathed a sigh of relief. Their cold sweat condensed into small ice beads and hung on the corners of their relieved mouths. This this is the beast god body imperial beast, cursed demon king flower? Hundreds of here's are better than one sight. A plant-based imperial beast of ancient bloodline. It looks too spectacular. Great General White Feather deserves to be called the god of plant system royal beasts, resolving the intruder with a single strike. If one were to look down from a high altitude, they would realize that there was an additional huge flower-like plant on Icefire Island. This was one of White Feather's imperial beasts, a beast god body imperial beast with an ancient bloodline, the cursed demon king flower. 
The cursed demon kingflower resembled a cannibalistic flower in appearance, so large that it covered half the island, with a scarlet red color and a strange odor. Simply because it had devoured too many magical beasts, the sharp serrated teeth presented a closed state, trapping the enemy inside, and as it was digested and absorbed, the corpse was left with nothing but a puddle of blood, plop, plop, plop. This sound that resembled a human heartbeat traveled across the island and the sky. However, this was not a heartbeat, but the sound of the cursed demon kingflower secreting stomach juices. The cursed demon kingflower was indeed a plant-based imperial beast, but its body had the same structure as a mammal-like magical beast, with five organs and six bowels. When Xiao Xingyu opened his eyes, he found himself in a huge claustrophobic space. This space was similar to an underground grotto, with the black water under his feet spreading over his ankles and surrounded by hard barriers. Medusa was beside Xiao Xingyu and immediately made a judgment. This is the stomach space of the cursed demon kingflower. In the darkness, there was a rustling sound. Xiao Xingyu's pupils trembled. Countless monsters came from all directions. These monsters looked like unknown creatures spliced together from multiple magical beasts. Their mouths and eyes were crooked and twisted, and their bones were horrifyingly exposed outside their bodies. Medusa blushed even worse. Cursed demon kingflower. Following that white feather fellow in his battles for many years, I don't know how many magical beasts it has devoured. After all the magical beasts are killed by the stomach liquid, they will turn into these monsters, waiting for the next visitor. Xiaoxing Yu pursed his dry and cracked lips, the visitor referred to him and Medusa. At the moment of crisis, Xiaoxing Yu catalyzed his spiritual energy and used the blood contract for another summoning. Lu Lu, a stream of light flashed by, and Dai Lu Lu protected in front of Xiaoxing Yu. Imperial Lord, I'm here. How stinky was the stomach space of the cursed demon kingflower? It depended on just how many magical beasts had been buried in this pool of gurgling, bubbling black gastric fluid so far. Xiao Xingyu was only human in the end, with mortal flesh that could not withstand the corrosion of the venom. Dai Lu released the demonic fox fire, condensing a flame barrier to protect Xiao Xingyu. Medusa didn't need Dai Lu's help. Her body was a heavenly calamity ghost python, and she could immunize herself against any poisonous liquid, which was the talent of the divine python clan. However, the stomach of the cursed demon kingflower was not only filled with foul-smelling venom, but also countless unnameable monsters. In the darkness, Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god, and his perception increased to the limit of his current body. When Xiao Xingyu saw the picture in front of him, his stomach turned over and he almost spat out his overnight meal. In the dense and sullen darkness, a line of monsters writhing like giant earthworms were entangled together. These monsters gradually melted into one, and their shapes were hard to describe in words. It possessed countless mouths on its body, and its sharp fangs were like the sword mounds in the tombs of ancient emperors. Xiao Xingyu felt dizzy. This fused giant monster made him mentally confused. Gradually, Xiao Xingyu's vision became blurred, only to see that every piece of skin and flesh, every sweat hair and even every cell, of the monster grinned with a bloody mouth. Relying on his last shred of sanity, Xiao Xingyu's eyes filled with blood, his voice was hoarse, and he drank in a low voice, Dragon Spit, Ice and Fire Island. The naval headquarters base was originally a magnificent building with a floor height of over a hundred meters. However, in front of the cursed demon kingflower, which was as large as a mountain, the naval headquarters base was like a tiny toy. Poof, poof, poof. Every wriggle of the flower bones of the cursed demon kingflower represented the secretion of a new gastric fluid, reorganizing and bonding those dead demon beasts and besieging Xiao Xingyu. Morong Ashes didn't dare to take the enemy lightly this time and cautiously asked, Old Bai, will it work? After being devoured by the cursed demon kingflower, one has to encounter the pain of blood and flesh turning into water and white bones shedding their clothes. Even if that dragon fox is somewhat capable, it's impossible. Before White Feather's words fell, he was engulfed in nothingness by an explosion that shattered the clouds. Under the watchful eyes of all the navy warriors, the cursed demon kingflower exploded like a long-packed cannonball. In an instant, the naval headquarters was reduced to a sea of fire, black smoke swirling crazily, and the entire island trembling. Quick look, what kind of creature is that? Nine-tailed demon fox? No, this creature has dragon horns growing out of its head. On its forehead, many dragon scales have grown. At this moment, a massive fox appeared on Icefire Island. The fox possessed nine tails, the tips of which burned with purple gold flames. On this fox, too many characteristics of the purebred dragon race could be seen. Dragon scales, dragon horns, and that pair of intimidating and irresistible dragon pupils. Morong Ash's eyes were filled with reflections of surprise and disbelief. In this world, there is actually a nine-tailed dragon fox, Dai Lu, who had fused the purebred dragon bloodline, was as terrifying as she was. 
A mouthful of dragon spit shot out the stomach barrier of the cursed demon king flower from within. How is this possible? This fox can penetrate the stomach of the cursed demon king flower? Unreasonable. Just unreasonable. White Feather's gaze was grim as he muttered to himself. Dragon flame. The power is really not bad. The flame of the purebred dragon race was called the dragon flame. It was the strongest flame in the world. Bar none. Even if the cursed demon king flower was a plant-based imperial beast with an ancient bloodline, it couldn't carry the burning of the dragon flame. Morong Ashes and Bayou raised their heads at the same time, their sights focusing on the head of the nine-tailed dragon fox. Xiao Xingyu, clad in black robes, stood on top of the nine-tailed dragon fox's head, looking down on the entire naval headquarters base from a godlike perspective. Beside Xiao Xingyu was Medusa, who still had a breath in her. Dare I ask your excellency, who exactly are you? Morong Ashes inquired this time. Unlike the first time, vaguely, he felt that the black-robed man was not someone from the Amazing Alliance, the Dragon Kingdom's navy, land, and air forces, under the leadership of Empress Shang Wanlan, had been in open warfare with the Amazing Alliance for a hundred years. Morong Ashes had even fought with the core members of the Amazing Alliance many times, and the opponents knew each other well, but he had never heard of such a difficult fellow coming out of the Amazing Alliance. Back then, the nine-tailed demon fox, Dai Lu, had luckily escaped from death under Shang Wanlan's eyes. At that time, Dai Lu was seriously injured, and was on the verge of death. It's only been a month or so, everything has changed. Not only had Dai Lu recovered from her serious injuries, but she had also made a breakthrough from the beast emperor body to the beast god body. Not only that, she had also fused with the bloodline of the purebred dragon race, becoming the first dragon fox royal beast in the history of the imperial beast master civilization. Based on this, in the future, the textbooks of all the major imperial beast academies would have to be revised to include this mysterious species. The black-robed man with an unknown background was the originator of all these variables. This was also the only thing Morong Ashes and Bayou could be certain of. As for what kind of face was under the mask, the curiosity of the two great generals was already drawn out. If your excellency is unwilling to reveal your identity, then we can only bring you to justice and lock you up in an undersea prison for a slow trial. Morong Ashes' eyes showed a fierce light as he released his vast spiritual power. Nine Star Imperial Beast Masters. There was not a single watery one. Huge waves rose from the bottom of the sea, and a huge heap of a huge thing leaped out of the water. It was a strangely shaped behemoth that possessed the appearance of a shark, but its tail was like the tentacles of a great king octopus, densely packed beyond counting. Xiao Xingyu's face sank. Poseidon Liviathan. The undersea beast leapt out of the water, its mouth releasing sound waves that destroyed everything. Even with Dai Lu's guardianship, Xiao Xingyu's ears still oozed clearly visible blood. Poseidon Leviathan, a rare Poseidon bloodline imperial beast in the world, the moment it leapt out of the water, its huge body gave a strong visual impact, Leviathan's skin and flesh are transparent, through which one can directly see a heart larger than an island and a skeleton more magnificent than a mountain range, words couldn't explain the shock of these images, and only by witnessing them with their own eyes could they feel the wonders of the creator, Leviathan once again emitted a sharp sound wave, setting off a violent tsunami, Dai Lu opened her mouth and spat out dragon flames, on both sides of the ice and fire island, the two imperial beast gods fought, playing a concerto of ice and fire. The first time they fought, they were evenly matched, but Xiao Xingyu's eyes and nose began to bleed. Lu Lu, we can't get caught up in the battle. The medicine only has three minutes left. Let's escape from here as soon as possible. Dai Lu was just about to escape when her limbs were entangled by thick black vines and she couldn't move. On the island of ice and fire, although the cursed demon king flower was scorched by the dragon flame, the plant system royal beasts naturally had no sense of pain and could still perform any battle technique. 10,000 vines execution. Bayou gave the command and the cursed demon king flower released tens of thousands of vines. The ends of the vines were like hardened ice picks that simultaneously stabbed at Dai Lu's back. The tsunami raised by Leviathan enveloped Dai Lu's head from the front. The front and back were attacked, and the back was attacked by the enemy. Xiao Xingyu was in trouble. On ice and fire island, the battle in the darkness continued. Dai Lu's body. The nine-tailed dragon fox was under attack by two beast god body imperial beasts at the same time, and her situation couldn't be worse. The vines released by the cursed demon kingflower wrapped around Dai Lu's limbs, making it unable to move. At the same time, a large number of vines converged together and twisted into a thick and long cone, with the sharpest part of the tip locking onto Dai Lu's back. Leviathan's body erupted with the power of the sea god, and the raging waves changed shape, transforming into an ice trident that smashed towards Dai Lu's head. Xiao Xingyu stood on top of Dai Lu's head, needing to hold onto the huge dragon's horn to barely stabilize his tiny figure. This battle, with its majestic momentum, had triggered an irreversible natural disaster. 
thunderstorms, spells, tsunamis, and even an undersea volcanic eruption. Humans were as fragile as mole crickets in front of a natural disaster. At the moment of crisis, Xiao Xingyu was slow to give orders. As Xiao Xingyu's imperial beast, Dai Lu felt puzzled but was able to understand. After this brat donned the black robe, he acted like a big shot though. But in the end, it's just a youthful teenager who is inevitably frightened after experiencing a battle of this scale for the first time. In Dai Lu's eyes, Xiao Xingyu was delayed in giving orders because he was scared silly and couldn't even speak. Since the imperial beast master didn't give orders, Dai Lu could only rely on herself, frantically urging the dragon force in her body, wanting to break free of the vines by brute force. Just then, Xiao Xingyu spoke, Lu Lu, stop struggling. Dai Lu's huge body shook violently, her eyes revealing a color of incomprehension. Xiao Xingyu's voice was calm as he reiterated, stop struggling. Then he added, converge the dragon power, and lift the defense shield. This was a moment of life and death. Faced with two beast god body imperial beasts surrounding her back and forth, if Dai Lu gave up her struggle and disarmed all defenses, it was no different from sending her to her death. Dai Lu was unable to understand Xiao Xingyu's orders, and there was no time to think. Life and death were just a moment away, and all Dai Lu could do was to unconditionally trust her royal master. The dragon power fluctuations disappeared instantly. The dragon flame shield extinguished in an instant. The struggling limbs stopped shaking. Dai Lu followed Xiao Xingyu's instructions and gave up her resistance, even giving up her final defense. In the next instant, the sharp strikes from the cursed demon kingflower and the sea god Leviathan struck Dai Lu's body at the same time. Rumble rumble rumble. The sound of explosions was endless, and the volcanic eruption on the island of ice and fire was as crazy as that of a mercury cascade. Waves like fury on the sea. Leviathan revealed its huge head. Morong ashes holding a cigar. Standing on top of its head. Looking at the smoke rising from the sea. Morong Ash's expression was somewhat stunned. This fox, why didn't it resist or even give up its defense? It's just that, no matter what, there is no enemy that can carry Leviathan's Neptune Trident. The sea god Leviathan's sea god Trident, as well as the cursed demon Kingflower's 10,000 Vines execution, were both battle techniques that were powerful enough to destroy the heavens and the earth, with astonishing power, and had decimated uncountable magical beasts, just when the crowd thought that the battle had come to an end. A flash of essence lit up in the thick smoke. On the ice and fire island, White Feather seemed to have sensed something. His face unsightly. Brother Ashes. That guy didn't die. Morong Ashes confidently said. Impossible. In the next second, a cold wind blew away the thick smoke in the sea. As the smoke dispersed, a giant dragon silhouette came into people's eyes. Dragon. Is there something wrong with my eyes? I can see it clearly. It's really a dragon. The naval warriors on the island sat paralyzed in the ruins fear written on every face. This was the instinctive fear of humans towards the highest known species. In the vast and boundless sea, a huge purple golden dragon hovered above the sea. The dragon let out a dragon roar. The sky tore apart. The sea shattered. And everything twisted and deformed under the influence of the dragon's power. White Feather squinted his eyes. His voice was mellow and contained complex emotions. This isn't a dragon. It's a dragon soul. The huge dragon that was above the sea was not a solid entity, but a mirage-like shadow. This was the dragon's soul. In the sea, waves were set off as the nine-tailed dragon fox reared up. The huge dragon soul, wrapped around the nine-tailed dragon fox's body, and the manic dragon power instantly erupted, sending the sea god Leviathan flying out on top. Around ice and fire island, all the battleships were overturned by the waves. With the dragon soul's enhancement, Dai Lu's strength increased to an even more terrifying level. Xiao Xingyu was still standing on top of Dai Lu's head. The naval warriors could only see the black robes flying in the wind and the eerie ghost face mask. The dragon's soul appeared, and heaven and earth changed. The face underneath the mask was even more intriguing and scary at the same time. A dragon fox that can actually release a dragon soul? Morong Ash's pupils quaked as he murmured in a deep voice. This fellow, just what kind of god is he? The nine-tailed dragon fox possessed four talents. One of those talents was the dragon soul. The moment the nine-tailed dragon fox suffered a fatal blow, the dragon soul would be automatically released. This was also the reason why Xiao Xingyu decisively ordered Dai Lu to give up her struggle and defense just now. If Dai Lu hadn't followed Xiao Xingyu's orders, she would have barely been able to resist some of the attacks from the cursed demon Kingflower and the sea god Leviathan. And although she wouldn't have died, she wouldn't have been able to escape from her injuries. Moreover, if the condition of a suffering a fatal attack was not met, the automatic release of the dragon soul could not be triggered. At this moment, Dai Lu realized that this teenager's heart and wisdom were far more powerful than she had imagined. Even in the face of two nine-star royal beast masters at the level of generals, 
This teenager was able to remain unperturbed in the face of danger. A mountain crumbles in front of him without changing his color. A tiger tends to the back of him without his heart being alarmed. It wasn't too much to use these words to describe Xiao Xingyu, who was only 19 years old. However, the stronger Xiao Xingyu acted, the greater the threat he proved to be to the Dragon Kingdom. Morong Ashes shouldered the responsibility of a Navy Admiral, and could not let the black-robed man, a dangerous person, leave ice and fire island. Kill. Morong Ashes spat out a word that was cold and contained anger. The sea god Leviathan regrouped and swam against the surface of the sea, running towards Dai Lu, with the dragon soul added. Dai Lu's strength multiplied. Bang! One punch, just one punch, Dai Lu punched the sea god Leviathan's body, and terrifying dragon power instantly erupted. It was this simple and rough punch without any technique that sent sea god Leviathan's body flying for tens of kilometers, not stopping until it hit a small island. This was the true combat power of the nine-tailed dragon fox under the dragon soul enchantment. Morong Ashes gritted his back teeth, his face uglier than if he had eaten a fly. Bayou sighed. Alas, with the dragon soul augmentation, I'm afraid we won't be able to keep the black-robed man and this fox. Bloodline suppression is so unreasonable. The nine-tailed dragon fox's fist shocked the heavens, and the power of the dragon swept across the ocean, dispersing the dark clouds in the sky. A full moon once again surfaced above the night sky. Under the illumination of the moonlight, the face of every naval warrior looked paler and paler. Morong Ashes fell into silence, his expression unprecedentedly grave. After the sea god Leviathan was sent flying by the nine-tailed dragon fox's punch, he slowed down for a long time before regaining his senses. Surfacing from the bottom of the sea, a pair of huge eyes looked at the nine-tailed dragon fox from afar. There was anger and scorn in his eyes. This was the embodiment of bloodline suppression. The moment the dragon soul appeared, the pressure released from the nine-tailed dragon fox was nothing less than the intimidating power of a purebred dragon. All the creatures in the ocean were subjugated, and all the high-level water magical beasts gathered together and worshipped towards the nine-tailed dragon fox. At this moment, the nine-tailed dragon fox stood upright in the sea. The sea water tightly submerged its hind limbs. The nine-tailed dragon fox was emitting a dazzling purple-golden light. The light opened and closed with the wind, maintaining the shape of the dragon. The dragon soul would not be extinguished, and the dragon race would not cease to exist. With the dragon soul's support, Dai Lu's strength was at its peak looking quite impressive. However, all of this prosperity was an illusion, as Xiao Xingyu's body was about to be overwhelmed. Imperial beast masters harnessing imperial beasts to fight consumed not only physical strength, but also spiritual energy. In essence, Xiao Xingyu was only a two-star imperial beast master, and the gap between the concentration of spiritual energy and a nine-star imperial beast master was as insurmountable as a galactic chasm. The reason why Xiao Xingyu was barely able to harness Dai Lu in combat was all due to taking medication and opening up. It was well known that there was a danger of being blocked for opening up. Taking medicine, on the other hand, had to bear the side effects of the aftermath. Before starting the battle, Xiao Xingyu took two dragon spirit pills in one breath. Xiao Xingyu's spiritual power value doubled tenfold and was maintained for a maximum of ten minutes. As of now, there was not much left of the ten minute potency. Only one minute left. Under the mask, the handsome face was covered in sweat. The eyes, mouth, nose, and ears were all bleeding continuously and uninterruptedly. The effects of the medicine hadn't even ended yet, and the after effects were already obvious. Xiao Xingyu knew his own body best. Right now he was at the end of his rope, relying on his will to survive to hold on. Once this last minute was lost, Xiao Xingyu would fall into a fainting spell. His spiritual energy would dry up, and he would enter a state of severe weakness, or even near death. In short, there was only one minute left for Xiao Xingyu to operate. This minute was extremely valuable. If it was not grasped, the only thing that would greet Xiao Xingyu would be a summons from Hades. Many points of light surfaced on the windy sea. Morong Ash's reinforcements were coming. Lu Lu, last ditch effort. Xiao Xingyu struggled to open his heavy eyelids, urging all of his body's spiritual energy, blocking his life in a last ditch effort. Bloodthirsty pupil crossbow. Xiao Xingyu hated to shout through his throat. His eyes were filled with cobwebbed blood filaments and his entire body's spiritual energy was injected into Dai Lu's body. Dai Lu sensed her master's will, her body lit up with dragon flames, and she roared up to the sky. Deep in the clouds, a huge scarlet eyeball emerged. The appearance of this eyeball was as deep as a black hole vortex, and mortals who looked into it would lose their souls and fall to their knees, plunging into an endless nightmare. The pupil of the eye was in the shape of an upright. Without a doubt, it was a dragon pupil. As Dai Lu's roar grew louder and louder, a bit of coldness appeared in the depths of the pupil. Immediately afterward, the blood condensed into a sharp arrow. The eyeball was the bow, and the pupil was the arrow. 
The moment the arrow was shot out, heaven and earth changed, the sea poured over, the magnetic field was also disturbed, and time and space were both distorted. This was one of Dai Lu's surefire techniques, the bloodthirsty pupil crossbow. Once upon a time, Dai Lu used this move to easily kill Wang Dongsheng, the vice president of Green Dragon Academy. Time has changed, and this move has resurfaced. Under the dual support of Dragon Force and Dragon Soul, the power of the bloodthirsty pupil crossbow was developed to its maximum. The immense and incomparable arrow shot out of the clouds and penetrated through the heavens and earth. The sound of the breaking wind was like the chanting of a giant dragon, causing fear in the heart and stopping the soul from trembling. The two great generals looked at each other and simultaneously urged their spiritual energy. The cursed demon king flower swelled in size, its petals acting like a shield, wrapping the entire ice and fire island tightly. The sea god Leviathan lifted up the waves and condensed a thick ice shield over the ice and fire island. This round of exchange was Xiao Xingyu's strongest attack, and also the strongest defense of the two generals. One attack and one defense. A visual feast. Click 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 click. The tip of the arrow, wrapped in grand and vast dragon power, pierced the corner of the ice cover. The sound of cold ice shattering rose and fell. Boom. Explosions rang out. Ice and Fire Island was located at the center of the explosion and was enveloped by cloud after cloud of rumbling smoke. The waves churned and the dragon flames spread. This ocean that could not be seen to its end was transformed into a sea of blazing fire, illuminating the darkened sky as well as the faces of the two great generals. Morong Ashes had a complicated gaze, looking at the sea in the distance, wanting to speak. Bayou patted the dust on his body and walked over to Morong Ashes. Brother Ashes, you seem to be getting old actually letting them escape in the territory of the naval headquarters, and you have the face to talk about me? You're not the same. The two of them looked at each other again, and there was bitterness in their smiles, as well as helplessness in their power. In the depths of the sea, a giant python with a dark body flew forward, moving away from Ice Fire Island. This giant python was the body of the heavenly tribulation ghost python, Medusa. Inside the python's mouth, a confined space was formed. Xiao Xingyu was lying on its soft tongue. Dai Lu transformed into human form and knelt beside Xiao Xingyu with both knees. Good news. Everyone escaped. Bad news. Xiao Xingyu lost half his life. Royal master. Wake up. Xiao Xingyu. Don't scare me. Wake up. Poof. Xiao Xingyu didn't even have the strength to open his eyes as a mouthful of blood sprayed out of his mouth. The effect of the medicine had passed. And next Xiao Xingyu would have to suffer the backlash of the after effects. The overdrawn spiritual energy would have to be repaid with Yuan Qi and essence blood. Last time. Xiao Xingyu only ate one dragon spirit pill and lay in the hospital for three days after the battle. This time, Xiao Xingyu ate two dragon spirit pills in one breath, and the after effects naturally worsened. Lu Lu, I'm so sleepy. Fool, can't sleep, never sleep. Dai Lu cupped Xiao Xingyu's bloodless face. The image of the high and cold queen was gone. She was about to cry in a hurry. Do we escape? Xiao Xingyu used all his strength and managed to utter a complete sentence. We escaped. We are now located in Medusa's mouth. She has restored her original body. There is no creature in the sea that can catch up with her speed. The natural disaster ghost python, Medusa, traveled faster in the water than the sea god Leviathan. And as for those naval battleships, naturally, they were even more unable to catch up with her. It's good to have escaped. Xiao Xingyu barely squeezed out a relieved smile, then lifted his trembling and powerless palm and gently caressed Dai Lu's side face. Little fox, I didn't go back on my word this time, did I? When I say I will help you save Medusa, I will definitely do it. Dai Lu's eyes were moist, her voice slightly choked, and she tightly held Xiao Xingyu's hand. Then promise me one more thing. You can't sleep. Sorry, I'm just too sleepy. At this stop, Xiao Xingyu's body reached its limit. He closed his eyes and fell into a coma. No, you can't sleep. Don't sleep. Xiao Xingyu. Dai Lu shouted for half a day. But Xiao Xingyu didn't respond. Medusa's voice came. How is this little guy? Seriously injured and unconscious. The situation is very bleak. Then let's find a safe place first. After an unknown amount of time, the giant python rushed out of the water and its huge head landed on the beach of a deserted island. The python opened its mouth, and Dai Lu jumped out holding the unconscious Xiao Xingyu. The python then shifted and appeared in human form next to Dai Lu. This was Medusa in human form, with three-dimensional features and an alluring figure. Even though her condition was poor and she was covered in scars, she still looked beautiful. Medusa looked towards Xiao Xingyu in Dai Lu's arms. Her heart was full of mixed feelings. I didn't expect that this youthful teenager would actually become my savior. Ice and Fire Island. A war with a grand prologue and intense process ended so hastily. It wasn't until Medusa, who had transformed into a giant python, disappeared into the depths of the seabed that Morong Ashes and Bayou realized. From the very beginning, 
That black-robed man didn't intend to tangle with us. Yeah, he had only one goal, to save Medusa. Morong Ashes let out a long sigh and laughed bitterly. Alas, in this battle, our two great generals, we have really lost face. Brother Ashes, let's just think about how to bear the wrath of the Empress Sama. As the old saying goes, speak of the devil. A blinding holy light emerged from the murky night, and a griffin foot as massive as a pillar of the heavens poked out from the clouds. The seven-colored holy unicorn appeared. This is the imperial beast under the command of the Empress. The seven-colored holy unicorn stepped on the seven-colored auspicious clouds and landed on the ice and fire island. A stunningly beautiful woman with a phoenix crown and cape stood on top of the chilin's head, exuding imperial might as she raised her hands and feet. Lord Empress is here. What are you waiting for? Just kneel and be done with it. Welcome Lord Empress. On ice and fire island, all the naval warriors knelt down on one knee. Their left hand clenched in a fist and placed it at the position of their heart. Everyone's face was filled with solemnity and awe. Morong Ashes and Bayou also knelt on the ground. Their heads hung low, not daring to raise their eyes to look directly at that magnificent woman. If I don't open my mouth, you guys don't know to take the initiative to report on the battle? Shang Wan Lan said one sentence. Every word was like an ice pick, inserted into the depths of Morong Ashes and Bayou's souls. Morong Ashes sweated coldly and admitted his mistake stiffly. Lord Empress, it's me who failed your trust. Shang Wan Lan scanned the surroundings. Seeing only the crumbling naval headquarters base and the broken walls of the training grounds. Where is Medusa? Medusa was robbed by the outlaws. Outlaws? The aura on Shang Wan Lan's body became even more stern. A single look changed the movement of the surrounding air currents. Morong Ashes could feel Shang Wan Lan's anger. He was overwhelmed by this Empress aura. Reporting back to Lord Empress. Ten minutes ago, someone invaded Ice Fire Island. Bayou stepped forward to explain. Who? That person was cloaked in a black robe and wore a ghost face mask. The nine-tailed demon fox Dailu, is the imperial beast under his command? Bayou explained for most of the day, Shang Wan Lan's almond eyes glared, that is to say, the black-robed man's name, identity, and background, you all don't know? Bayou bowed his head in silence, ridiculous, Shang Wan Lan shouted angrily, and the seven-colored holy Chilin sensed his master's change in mood and raised his head to roar, his roar cracking the sea, attracting purple heavenly thunder, and the night starry river shattered into pieces. This is the Navy's headquarters, and it's guarded by two of your great admirals. To actually let a guy with an unknown background, under your noses, rob Medusa? Morong Ashes and White Feather spoke in unison. My humble servant has failed in his duty and is willing to be punished. Shang Wan Lan didn't have the heart to punish these two subjects right now. She took a deep breath and clearly sensed the scent of the aftermath of Dragon Force permeating the air. That's right, this is indeed the aura of Dragon Force. That black-robed man. He was able to pull the dying fox back from the gates of hell, and he was also able to help the fox fuse with the bloodline of a purebred dragon race. Who the hell is he? As the ruler of the dragon kingdom, Shang Wan Lan had always been a leader who loved his people like a son in the eyes of the world, but the sins of 200 years ago would always be a time bomb buried in the bottom of this woman's heart. The more Shang Wan Lan thought about it, the more worried she became, and killing intents surfaced in her beautiful eyes. Tell me the direction where the black-robed man escaped. Morong Ashes and Bayou raised their hands at the same time, pointing to the southeast. That was the direction of the devil beast straight. Lord Empress, you are going to. When I come back, I'll punish you too for your unfavorable work. Shang Wan Lan rode the seven-colored sacred Chilin, treading the waves and disappearing at the end of the sea level. At this moment, the unconscious Xiao Xingyu still didn't know that the Dragon Kingdom Empress had personally come out to hunt him down. As the seven-colored sacred Chilin left people's sight, Morong Ashes and Bai Yu's taut nerves only then loosened up. Old Bai. It seems that the Empress Lord is taking this accident very seriously and actually came out personally. Brother Ashes. You still have the heart to consider this? Didn't you hear Lord Empress say that she will settle the score with us when she returns? After a moment of silence, Morong Ashes let out an exclamation. This sea is going to change again. Bai Yu shook his head and smiled bitterly. Not only this sea, the entire Dragon Kingdom. There is a possibility that the sky will change. The identity of the black-robed man. No one knows and no one knows, but the more mysterious his identity is, the greater the threat to the Dragon Kingdom. East China Sea Waters, a deserted island that was nowhere to be seen. Under the dark as ink night, there is only dead silence on the island. At the back of the island, there was a cave that was unaffected by the waves and the cold wind. This cave was equivalent to a natural shelter, giving Dai Lu and Medusa a chance to rest and catch their breath. Inside the cave, the glow of the campfire illuminated the darkness. Dai Lu sat paralyzed on the ground with a tired face. Xiao Xingyu lay in her arms, still in an unconscious state. Medusa sat by the campfire. Her gaze focused on Xiao Xingyu and never moved away. 
Thank you for coming to save me. There's no need to thank me. It's better to thank my royal lord. Without him, I couldn't have saved you by myself. Without Xiao Xingyu, not only would Dai Lu not be able to break through the evolution, she wouldn't have the chance to fuse the purebred dragon bloodline, and she wouldn't even be able to recover from her serious injuries. If that happened, Dai Lu would have to take her own life, not to mention saving Medusa. Medusa was flooded with curiosity. Tell me, why did you, the queen of the nine-tailed fox clan, willingly, submit to the command of a milquetoast brat, and even sign a royal beast blood contract? The nine-tailed fox clan had always been arrogant and never bowed to humans. Medusa racked her brain and couldn't figure out why Dai Lu would submit to a little person like Xiao Xingyu. As you can see, this teenager is not an ordinary human. He is only a two-star imperial beast master though, but he can heal my injuries, help me break through evolution, help me fuse the bloodline of the pure blood dragon clan, and he can also refine pills. After listening to the story of what happened between Dai Lu and Xiao Xingyu, Medusa nodded, a self-deprecating smile on her lips. In that case, I've been favored by this brat just like you. That's right, he is my savior as well as yours. Medusa was suddenly alert. Let's make it clear first. I will keep the favor of saving my life in my heart. But my divine python clan is different from you. A fox. I will not submit to humans. Medusa's meaning was straightforward. Simply put, I will find a way to repay the favor. But I will not accept a blood contract with a human. At that moment, movement came from Dai Lo's arms. Water. Xiao Xingyu opened his mouth, his throat smoldering, and spat out a word with difficulty. You're awake. Want to drink water right? I'll figure it out. Dai Lu got excited and looked around for water. But this was a deserted island where no human had ever ventured. There was nothing on the island, surrounded by nothing but endless ocean water. Dai Lu couldn't find fresh water. So she simply bit her finger and stuffed it into Xiao Xingyu's mouth. Feeding water with blood. Master and servant love. Medusa saw the scene and was overcome with emotion. Is this still the fox I know? She actually willingly consumed her own essence blood for the sake of a human? Medusa carefully observed Dai Lu, and she could see some subtle aura from Dai Lu's face. In this fox's eyes, this teenager isn't just as simple as a royal master. Medusa guessed correctly. Xiao Xingyu and Dai Lu were more than just master and servant. The relationship between the two had already surpassed the bond of a blood contract, and even had a super friendship relationship. Xiao Xingyu, who was in a semi-conscious state, Dazedly relied on his survival instincts and fought to absorb Dai Lu's blood as a way to quench his thirst. Dai Lu didn't even blink an eyebrow during the process of feeding the blood, staring unseeingly at the teenager in her arms, her eyes unwavering. Xiao Xingyu felt like he had a very long dream. The moment consciousness returned to wakefulness, all the contents of the dream exploded into pieces. Where is this? Xiao Xingyu pursed the corners of his mouth. A faint fishy sweet taste lingered between his lips and teeth, which was the flavor of fresh blood. Xiao Xingyu. You finally woke up. Great. Xiao Xingyu realized that he was lying in Dai Lu's arms. Dai Lu's expression interpreted four words. Thank God. Xiao Xingyu felt carefully. His neck and the back of his head were very comfortable. This was because Dai Lu acted as a soft pillow on her rippling chest, providing Xiao Xingyu with a comfortable resting environment. The memories from before the coma came flooding back. We did escape right? With so much at stake. Xiao Xingyu was a little uneasy and confirmed to Dai Lu again and again. Dai Lu nodded heavily her brows overflowing with joy. We escaped. This is a deserted island far away from Ice and Fire Island. The exact location is close to the Devil Beast Strait. The latest version of the world map surfaced in Xiao Xingyu's mind. The vicinity of the Devil Beast Strait was certainly dangerous, but it was out of the control and jurisdiction of the Dragon Kingdom Navy. Even if Morong Ashes and Bayou wanted to send troops to pursue them, it would be like looking for a needle in a haystack, and it would be impossible to find such an inconspicuous deserted island. It's good to escape. Xiao Xingyu breathed a long sigh of relief, and his afterglow suddenly noticed Dai Lu's arm. On Dai Lu's left hand, there were no less than ten wounds, and one or two of them had not yet healed. Xiao Xingyu's mind was meticulous, and after recalling the taste of blood in his mouth, he became clear about the source of these wounds of Dai Lu. You fed me blood? You were severely dehydrated after you passed out. This is a deserted island. There is no fresh water, so you can only use this method. Xiao Xingyu's heart warmed. After this battle, the emotional bond between him and Dai Lu became even deeper. The side effects of taking two dragon spirit pills almost killed Xiao Xingyu halfway through his life. The reason he was able to regain consciousness so quickly was because of the dragon blood he drank. After fusing the purebred dragon bloodline, Dai Lu's blood was dragon blood, which could save Xiao Xingyu's life at critical moments. A system beep sounded. Favorability increased. Xiao Xingyu opened the data panel to check Dai Lu's favorability towards himself. 99? Not bad. Almost full. 
The higher the favorability, the better the battle coordination between the Imperial Beast Master and the Imperial Beast would be. At the black robed man's level of identity, the nine tailed dragon fox Dailu was the most important battle force. To this day, Xiao Xingyu and Dailu were considered to be in a relationship of suffering and dying together, and their feelings would only grow deeper in the future. You're awake, a cool imperial voice came, with a faint hoarseness in its timbre. Xiao Xingyu looked up, and a sultry beauty with a crown on her head appeared in front of him. The beauty's face was only the size of a palm. Her features were gorgeous, a typical snake beauty, a casual glance or a movement that ruffled her long hair, could make all the men in the world be captivated. This was the Medusa that Xiao Xingyu had gambled his life to save from the naval headquarters. Medusa walked over and bent down to crouch, the gulf in front of her chest making Xiao Xingyu want to look but embarrassed to do so. Drink this down. Xiao Xingyu didn't even have the strength to lift his hand. Medusa simply handed the bamboo tube to Xiao Xingyu's mouth and personally fed him. A sweetness entered his mouth. Xiao Xingyu gulped and poured. Inside the bamboo tube was the rainwater Medusa had collected outside. A rainstorm had suddenly hit the deserted island, giving Xiao Xingyu the opportunity to replenish his moisture. Thanks. After drinking the water, Xiao Xingyu's dry and cracked lips recovered some redness. You don't need to thank me. It's me who should say thank you. Medusa raised her arms, arms crisscrossed, palms pressed against her chest, and bent down towards Xiao Xingyu. Dai Lu reminded from the side, this is the divine python clan the highest etiquette for thanking a benefactor. Medusa spoke, thank you for saving my life. Xiao Xingyu smiled nervously, sister Sha Sha don't be polite, it's just a show of hands. A show of hands? You almost lost your life. Don't brag. Dai Lu mercilessly demolished the stage. Medusa straightened her back and her tone was not overbearing. Mr. Xiao, our divine python clan has always returned favors. I will find a chance to repay you for the favor you did to save my life. Xiao Xingyu had a plan and said impatiently, Want to repay me right? It's simple. As long as we sign a blood. Medusa seemed to have guessed Xiao Xingyu's mind and interrupted early. I can do anything for you. Only I can't sign a blood contract with you. The atmosphere was a bit awkward. The only sound in the air was the sound of the campfire burning. Dai Lu remained silent. She had no right to interfere with Medusa's choice. Nor was she qualified to persuade Xiao Xingyu to give up the opportunity to sign Medusa. Xiao Xingyu frowned. Why? Because orcs are never slaves. The beastmen. Among the many races of magical beasts, were the race with the most backbone and pride. For a beastmaster to want to tame a beastman-type imperial beast and sign a blood contract was an extremely difficult thing to do, especially the nine-tailed fox and divine python clans, which were mythological quality bloodlines. It made sense that Medusa would be unwilling to submit to humans. Thinking about it, if Dai Lu hadn't been forced to do so, she wouldn't have accepted to sign a blood contract with Xiao Xingyu. Poof! Xiao Xingyu suddenly sprayed out a mouthful of blood. Dai Lu was shocked and hurriedly supported the weak Xiao Xingyu. Why are you spitting out blood again? Seeing Xiao Xingyu spitting out blood in his face paling a few more points, Medusa followed suit and became nervous. This teenager in front of her was Medusa's lifesaver no matter what. Seeing Xiao Xingyu's dying appearance, Medusa was inevitably moved with compassion. Xiao Xingyu was breathless and his voice was filled with endless pathos. Sister Sha Sha, I thought that by putting my life on the line to save you, I would be able to warm your cold heart. Now I realize that I was the one who was wrong. You are a cold-blooded python without a heart. No, I, you, Medusa stammered, unable to speak. Xiao Xingyu's eyes reddened in a hot, rolling tear slid down his cheek. Since you're not willing to sign a blood contract with me, there's no point in me living. Xiao Xingyu looked lifeless, his eyes layered with despondency and disappointment, losing even the most basic desire to live. Dai Lu's heart raced. Xiao Xingyu, don't mess around. You can't die. Wake up. Don't sleep. Xiao Xingyu laughed coldly and looked at Medusa with eyes that were lost through and through. If there is a next life, I will never save you. The negative snake. Medusa was confused. From the time she was born until now, Medusa had never encountered such a strange human. After Xiao Xingyu's words, Medusa felt like she had turned into a vicious maiden who had failed her groom, and she actually felt guilty inside. This man saved my life and I. Medusa lowered her head, her shell teeth biting her lower lip. Her heart was not in good taste. Xiao Xingyu, don't sleep over. Hold on. Dai Lu slapped Xiao Xingyu's face, trying to arouse Xiao Xingyu's desire for life. Lu Lu, forget it. I don't want to live anymore. I'm trying so hard, but I can't cover the heart of a snake. Just die. Medusa couldn't tense up and clenched her fists. Mr. Xiao, please live no matter what. What's the point of living if you don't sign the blood contract? It's better to die. I'll sign. Medusa made a decision that was enough to change the fate of a lifetime. Sister Sha Sha, you're so kind. I have the motivation to live. 
Xiao Xingyu wiped away his tears, his expression changing instantly, his acting skills stowing away. Life is like a play. It all depends on the acting. Dai Lu was stunned. This snake, actually being morally kidnapped by a human? Xiao Xingyu's routine was simple. I won't live if I don't sign the blood contract. As long as Medusa didn't sign the blood contract, Xiao Xingyu wouldn't drink a mouthful of water, wouldn't eat a mouthful of food, wouldn't accept healing, and chose to wait for death in place. Although Medusa is a cold-blooded beast, the Divine Python clan is also concerned about love and justice. The grace of life is greater than heaven. Medusa's life, is Xiao Xingyu from the Navy headquarters on the execution platform snatched back. No matter how cold and arrogant Medusa was, she could not watch her savior die in front of her. Xiao Xingyu's acting skills are no different from those of today's movie stars. There is no need for props and stunt doubles. No need for scripts and soundtracks. Just a look. A sigh. This man can portray a depressive who has lost the desire to live. Medusa had no choice but to agree to Xiao Xingyu's request. Dai Lu couldn't help but ask, have you thought it through? Medusa had nothing but helplessness between her words. Lowering my head and submitting to a human is the ugly behavior that I once hated and disliked the most. But this guy saved me from the fire after all. How could I not watch him die in front of me? Dai Lu cried and laughed, secretly spitting in her heart. This snake, really can't play Xiao Xingyu's routine, and was indeed morally kidnapped. These days, humans with morals are going extinct, and magical beasts with morals are even more rare. Dai Lu came to Xiao Xingyu's ear. I'm curious. If Medusa doesn't have morals, and your move of moral kidnapping doesn't work, what are you going to do? Xiao Xingyu was resourceful enough to lower his voice. Don't worry, I've also prepared a backhand. If soft doesn't work, come to hard. If this snake doesn't eat moral abduction, when her wanted notice is posted in a few days, I'll go and collect the reward. Compared to being tortured by Shang Wan Lun, she will definitely succumb to my lechery. Dai Lu blankly glanced at Xiao Xingyu. You kid has a lot of ghost ideas. Xiao Xingyu had gone to great lengths to rescue Medusa, and if he couldn't get her to work for him, he might as well send her back to the Navy headquarters again and earn a bounty. Sasha, hmm, that's what I'll call you from now on. Sasha, Lulu, these kind of nicknames were cute and memorable, and they also increased the closeness between the Imperial Beast Master and the Imperial Beast. But for Medusa and also Dai Lu, such cute and droll nicknames were really shameful. Xiao Xingyu didn't need to bite his finger as there was still undried blood hanging around his mouth. Dropping the blood on Medusa's brow one person and one beast constructed a soul connection. Underneath Medusa's jade feet, a pentagram spell formation emerged. The blood contract was successfully concluded. Xiao Xingyu opened his eyes and saw an additional spell mark on Medusa's forehead. This was the symbol of the conclusion of the blood contract. The spell mark gradually faded away. Not disappearing, but hiding. Xiao Xingyu braced his weak body and grinned. Sasha, from now on, you are my imperial beast. Medusa's facial expression was a little stiff. I really signed a blood contract. With a human? I'm afraid I'm crazy. This is just too ridiculous. Dai Lu, as a person from the past, patted Medusa's shoulder and consoled. Your current expression, as well as your inner thoughts, are exactly the same as mine at first. The two cold-blooded magical beasts that were arrogant in nature and would never submit to humans, both eventually became Xiao Xingyu's personal maids. Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god and Medusa's data panel came into view. Name, Heavenly Tribulation Ghost Python, Medusa. Level, Beast God Body, Second Order. Bloodline, Divine Python Bloodline, Mythic Quality. Talent 1, Calamity Descent, when this body appears, it will bring destructive disasters such as tsunamis, thunderstorms, and volcanic eruptions. Talent 2, Nightmare Entanglement, any enemy swept by Medusa's pupils and whose level is lower than Medusa's. Their souls will be pulled into the nightmare and fall into a sinking state. A Tribute Beastman Series. Superpower series, water series, loyalty, 10. Skill, nightmare devouring, swallow the enemy into the stomach, receive the baptism of nine layers of nightmares, and the soul is stripped from the flesh. Death twist, use the huge and long body to wrap and bind the enemy until the enemy suffocates and passes out. Life extraction, when the fangs penetrate into the enemy's body, it extracts the enemy's life value and converts it into its own life value. Habits, desserts, living in cold environments. Evolutionary Root, Ghost Python, Highest Evolutionary Form. Hidden Evolutionary Root 1, Ghost Python Dragon Python. Hidden Evolutionary Root 2, Natural Disaster Ghost Python Earthly Python, Body Can Encircle the Earth. The stronger the talent and the higher the level of the Imperial Beast, the more complex and rich the data panel. In terms of bloodline quality, Medusa was not inferior to Dai Lu, who had not yet fused the purebred dragon bloodline. Moreover, 
Dai Lu was relying on Xia Xingyu to open up and fuse the purebred dragon bloodline before she had the chance to break through for promotion and reach the rank of beast god body, first order. Xiao Xingyu had yet to open up for Medusa, whose rank had already reached the beast god body, second order. Sasha actually has two hidden evolutionary roots, how should I choose? Xiao Xingyu was in a tangle. The two different evolution roots had their own pros and cons. If he wanted Medusa to evolve into a heaven-swallowing dragon python, Xiao Xingyu would have to help Medusa fuse purebred dragon power like he did for Dai Lu. However, treasures like dragon bones could not be found. It was difficult for Xiao Xingyu to find a medium similar to the dragon bone that could fuse purebred dragon bloodlines in a short period of time. If one wanted Medusa to evolve into an earthly python, the core evolutionary materials were the Eye of Reincarnation and the Lord of the Underworld Magical Beast Crystal Core. These two items were as rare and hard to find as dragon bones. Xiao Xingyu sighed. I'm thinking too far ahead. It's better to start working on the present. Xiao Xingyu pulled back his thoughts, and suddenly his heartbeat missed a beat. You look so bad. Where is it hard? Dai Lu's observation was meticulous, enough to see how attached she was to Xiao Xingyu. Lu Lu, I'm fine. I just suddenly have a bad premonition. The inexplicable distraction forced Xiao Xingyu to think deeper. Damn it, this feeling is bad. What exactly is my subconscious mind worrying about? Obviously out of danger. My heartbeat is. Xiao Xingyu covered his thumping and restless chest and fell into a brainstorm. This feeling is getting stronger and stronger. Could it be that I've neglected something? As time ticked by, Xiao Xingyu's heartbeat grew faster and faster, his heart almost in his throat. I remember. The confusion in Xiao Xingyu's eyes instantly disappeared, and fear surfaced in his pupils. System mission, rescue Medusa. System reward, 1, dragon egg, plus 10, 0, 0, 0 points. This was the reason why Xiao Xingyu had willingly risked his life to rob the law court at the Navy headquarters. Now that Xiao Xingyu had rescued Medusa, everyone had escaped from the Navy's control and hid on this deserted island that no one knew about. Logically, Xiao Xingyu should have triggered the system reward. But until this moment now, the system had not issued a reward, nor had it prompted that the mission had been completed. This meant that, Lu Lu, Sasha, this island can't stay. Dai Lu asked suspiciously, Why? We're not out of danger yet. As soon as Xiao Xingyu's words fell, a terrifying aura enveloped the entire deserted island. That woman came after us. Quickly go. Quickly leave this island. Xiao Xingyu roared hysterically. Dai Lu was frightened by Xiao Xingyu's appearance at the moment. Her eyes were bloodshot. Her face was like gold paper. Every hair of sweat on her body stood upside down, and every bone and joint of her frail body trembled violently from fear. Let's go. Although Dai Lu was confused, she still made an instant decision and held Xiao Xingyu in her arms her figure flickering like a ghost. In a matter of moments, Dai Lu appeared in the rough sea of waves. Xiao Xingyu was still in the state of the aftereffects of the medication. His body was unable to move. He could only obediently lie in Dai Lu's arms. Fortunately, there is Dai Lu's plump and soft breasts, patted Xiao Xingyu's head, only buffer the impact of the sea waves on Xiao Xingyu. Dai Lu was not standing on the surface of the sea. Under her feet was a huge snake head. This was Medusa's original body. The Heavenly Tribulation Ghost Python. Next second. Rumble. The explosion sounded like millions of thunderbolts landing at the same time. Shattering the night dome and illuminating the boundless sea. The deserted island just now. With the explosion, completely disappeared into the thick black smoke. Not even leaving behind any residue. Dai Lu and Medusa felt thankful that if it wasn't for Xiao Xingyu's timely reminder. Everyone would have ended up like that island. Xiao Xingyu's vision blurred as he raised his eyes to the chaotic night sky. Above the clouds stood a giant Chilin beast. Seven colored holy Chilin? Damn it, it's that woman. Endless fear surfaced on Dai Lu's exquisitely beautiful face. Medusa's snake body was immersed in the cold seawater, only revealing a head. Her snake pupils filled with fear and anxiety, and vaguely flashed with a touch of despair. This woman is coming after us. I'm afraid we won't be able to escape. The woman that Dai Lu and Medusa were talking about was currently standing on top of the head of the seven colored sacred Chilin. This is a graceful woman. A female emperor who loves her country and her people. A cold-blooded and merciless executioner. And a monster with the biggest secret hidden in her body. In short in this world, there were too many adjectives and unconfirmed rumors about this woman. She was the ruler of the dragon kingdom. The female empress lord that the country admired. Shang Wan Lan. Common sense would say that the highest rank of an imperial beast master was a 10-star imperial beast master. Shang Wan Lan's strength was even higher than that of a 10-star imperial beast master. This level was known as the Imperial Beast Emperor. For every country, there was only one Imperial Beast Emperor. Therefore, Shang Wan Lan's strength was the ceiling of the Dragon Kingdom. In the broken clouds, thunder and lightning surged like countless dragons. 
The sea set off a tornado storm, and golden flames flared up in the center of the whirlwind. The sense of oppression from the ceiling of the Dragon Kingdom's battle power made Xiao Xing use heart thump, and he barely managed to catch his breath. Shang Wan Lan opened his eyes, his sight locking onto Xiao Xing Yu across the sky. Black robe, ghost face mask, looks like I didn't find the wrong person. Xiao Xing Yu's spiritual energy had already been depleted, and in his current physical state, if he took another dragon spirit pill, he was afraid that his body would explode and die. In the case of an imperial beast master without spiritual energy, the imperial beast could not release any battle techniques at all. The only thing Dailu could do was to burn her own essence blood, her body rumbling with a layer of purple golden dragon flame to protect Xiao Xing Yu in her arms. On the dark surface of the sea, the purple golden dragon's eye flames were small but extraordinarily piercing. Shang Wan Lan was in the clouds and clearly saw the fire on the sea. Little fox, I didn't expect you to survive after being seriously injured by me back then, and now you have even fused the bloodline of the purebred dragon race. Shang Wan Lan was the empress of the dragon kingdom and had seen great storms, but she had never seen an imperial beast that could fuse purebred dragon bloodlines. All of these variables pointed to the mysterious man clad in black robes. Shang Wan Lan's icy sight focused on Xiao Xing Yu once again. Tell me your identity and I'll leave you with a whole body. Xiao Xing Yu's lips were dry and cracked, and he didn't even have the strength to speak. Not speaking? Then all go to hell. Being ruthless was a necessary condition to become the king of a country. Dai Lu was already a wanted criminal on the wanted list. Medusa, knowing too many secrets about the dragon slaying battle 200 years ago, should have been executed tonight. The black robed man, whose identity is unknown and whose background is unknown, was able to invade the naval headquarters and get out in one piece. This man and two beasts are both great threats to Shang Wan Lan. Shang Wan Lan took a deep breath and closed his eyes as an unrivaled power stirred within his body. Dragon power? Dai Lu was shocked. After fusing the purebred dragon bloodline, Dai Lu also controlled dragon power. Dai Lu could clearly sense that the aura emanating from Shang Wan Lan's body was pure dragon power. Not only was this dragon power pure, it also revealed an endless evil that shook Dai Lu's soul. This woman, just what kind of monster is she? Dai Lu tilted her head to gaze at the sky. The sight of everything in front of her was unbelievable. On top of Shang Wan Lan's head, two black dragon horns grew. The dragon horns were one long and one short, with the shorter one having obvious signs of breakage. The face that was so beautiful and beautiful, bred black dragon scales. The dragon scales spread crazily, covering the neck and hands. As the gusts of wind struck, behind Shang Wan Lan's back, a pair of black dragon wings grew. Even her pupils turned a pitch black color, like two black holes, taking in the heart. A dragon's roar resounded through the sky, and the fluctuations of dragon power shattered the clouds. Behind Shang Wan Lan, the silhouette of a huge black dragon emerged. This was the dragon soul. Black black dragon soul. What the hell is going on here? Dai Lu looked dumbfounded. She had always thought that no matter how powerful Shang Wan Lan was, he was only human. But at this moment, the appearance as well as the form that Shang Wan Lan presented was not even in the realm of humans. Fox, this is the true face of this woman. Medusa's voice came. Dai Lu desperately wanted to ask something. After all, Medusa knew some secrets before 200. I know what you want to ask, but the two of us, including Xiao Xingyu, are going to be buried with this secret. Since Shang Wan Lan had shown her true colors, she wouldn't let go of anyone who had seen her in this form. In Shang Wan Lan's cold eyes, the black robed man, as well as the fox and snake, were all dead things now. Dai Lu's tightly clenched fists relaxed and stretched. The huge disparity between the enemy and herself made her not even have the fighting spirit to resist. Medusa was right. This sea is where everyone will be buried. Shang Wan Lan raised his right hand and swung out a wind blade. The wind blade sliced through the night sky, gliding against the surface of the sea, splitting the sea in two, shaped like the hooked claws of a giant dragon. Looking at Xiao Xingyu in her arms, whose face was twisted in pain from even breathing, Dai Lu clenched her teeth. Clatter. Huge waves rolled over and the nine-tailed dragon fox stood above the sea. This was Dai Lu's native form. Before this, after the duel with the two great generals, Dai Lu was also injured. The moment her main body appeared on the surface of the sea, the seawater was dyed red by the blood overflowing from her wounds. Seeing the wind blade containing terrifying dragon power coming head-on, Dai Lu didn't retreat. Her nine tails held up, protecting Medusa and Xiao Xingyu behind her. Xiao Xingyu didn't have any spiritual power. Dai Lu couldn't use any battle skills. Relying on her already broken body to resist Shang Wan Lan's sure kill blow. Lu Lu. Xiao Xing Yu's roar drowned in the sound of the waves, so pale and powerless. In the face of an enemy with a disconnected gap in strength, any act of resistance was futile. The wind blade in the shape of a dragon's claw, flying low in the air, was unstoppable. Cutting reefs, cutting tsunamis, 
and even cutting space. Just how terrifying was Shang Wan Lan's strength? This woman had only shown the tip of the iceberg of her means, and with one random move, she erupted with the power to destroy the heavens and the earth. Dai Lu's original body, the nine-tailed dragon fox, clearly possessed strong defense and resistance to blows, but it was as fragile as paper mache in front of Shang Wan Lan. Lu Lu, Xiao Xing Yu was lying on Medusa's snake head, his body was as uncomfortable as if it was shattered, and only his blood-filled eyes could move. The rest of his body was as stiff as if it was sealed with cement. The wind blade penetrated through Dai Lu's body, a wound in the shape of a dragon's claw, like a musical fountain that had suddenly started, rolling hot blood, with the drumming of the waves, sprayed in all directions. Under the icy cold night, Dai Lu's body seemed to bloom like a giant bright red rose. Humans' perception would also change at the moment of adrenaline surge. In Xiao Xingyu's field of vision, the flow of time in the entire world became slow. Xiao Xingyu clearly saw Dai Lu planted in the seawater, her nine tails drooping, her eyes losing their spirituality, and her breathing suddenly stopping. At this moment, Dai Lu was already dead. Medusa let out a helpless sigh. On the clouds, Shang Wan Lan flapped her black dragon wings, her delicate lips hooked into a smile. Xiao Xingyu's heart pumped as the blood contract in his body began to burn, gradually turning into ashes. When a royal beast died in battle, the corresponding blood contract in the royal beast master's body would also disappear. During the process of the blood contract disappearing, Xiao Xingyu seemed to see countless movie scenes flashing before his eyes. The shots of the first encounter with Dai Lu. The shot of one person and one beast pulling at the limit in the cave. Shots of the master and servant fighting together for the first time. The shot of having a skinship deep in the dense forest. With the past fresh in his mind, Xiao Xingyu's dry eyes overflowed with a bloody tear. I don't know since when. Dai Lu was no longer as simple as a royal beast to Xiao Xingyu. Lu Lu she really. Died? Xiao Xingyu's eyes were lifeless, and he was still unable to explain the fact that Dai Lu had fallen in battle. Shang Wan Lan was too strong. This woman was a monster. You guys should also be on your way. Shang Wan Lan's beautiful eyes glared, and a wild and endless dragon power erupted from her body. The sky melted. This was not an exaggerated rhetoric, but a statement of fact. The sky was like a melted liquid, thick black liquid dripping down in large piles. Space was distorted, the magnetic field was misaligned, and gravity was out of control. This was a heaven and earth anomaly that Xiao Xingyu had never seen before. Xiao Xingyu only knew that the strength of that woman was beyond his cognitive range. Shang Wan Lan was worthy of being the Dragon Kingdom's warrior ceiling. In front of her, any opponent couldn't even bring up the last ounce of desire to live. Medusa's main body curled up into a ball, protecting Xiao Xingyu tightly. Imperial Lord. Hearing Medusa's voice. Xiao Xingyu regained a trace of sanity. Sasha, royal lord, listen carefully. Before I die, I'll try to keep your whole body. In these words, apart from helplessness, there was only sadness. Medusa was different from Dai Lu. She didn't know Xiao Xingyu well, and had only just signed a blood contract with him because of the kindness of saving her life. It was only natural for a royal beast to die for its royal master. No, this is not the ending I want. Xiao Xingyu bit through his lips, the taste of blood lifting his spirits. There must still be a way. There must be a way to turn the situation around. Xiao Xingyu opened the system warehouse and saw the mysterious item at a glance. Dragon's Tear. One of the three greatest treasures of the dragon race. This treasure had originally been carried by Dai Lu. Xiao Xingyu had taken it from Dai Lu last time, and had been stored in the system warehouse collecting dust. At the closest moment to death, Xiao Xingyu's eyes lit up with fighting spirit. With a surge of thoughts, a crystal ball appeared in Xiao Xingyu's palm, above the sky. Shang Wan Lan revealed an astonished expression. Dragon's tear? Without hesitation, Xiao Xingyu affixed the dragon's tear to his mask. When Dai Lu fell just now, the blood spurting from her wounds splashed onto Xiao Xingyu's mask, coloring it red. The dragon's tear and Xiao Xingyu's mask touched each other, staining Dai Lu's blood. A magical power was released towards the surroundings. This power was invisible and colorless, quietly spreading, covering the sea, covering the heaven and earth, covering the entire planet. The rain stopped falling and hovered in mid-air. Time stands still? No. More than that. Immediately afterward, the raindrops flew up towards the sky with a trend that violated the laws of gravity. Returning to the clouds, the tsunami receded and the dark clouds dissipated. The nine-tailed dragon fox that had fallen to the bottom of the sea floated back to the surface. Its nine tails rekindling a hot flame. The nine-tailed dragon fox opened its eyes, and the wind blade in the shape of a dragon's claw peeled away from its body. The wound completely healed. The gale blew in reverse, and the wind blades returned the way they came. Time was going backwards, and it was the entire world's time that was going backwards. Even Shang Wan Lan, a woman of unfathomable strength, could not escape the influence of time regression. 
Xiao Xingyu opened his eyes again. After the trance, he felt the rich body fragrance and soft cushion. At this moment, Xiao Xingyu was lying in Dai Lu's arms. Medusa was sitting on the side. This was not the sea, but a cave on a deserted island. Xiao Xingyu took a deep breath, his lips trembling. It worked. The dragon's tear. As the three greatest treasures of the dragon race, didn't have any offensive power, but it had a magical ability. Time retrogression. Only dragon blood could catalyze the dragon's tear to unleash time retrogression. When Xiao Xingyu was on the verge of death, he skillfully utilized the blood splashed on his face by Dai Lu to activate the dragon's tear, successfully opening the time retrogression. The effect of the time rewind depended on how much dragon blood was absorbed. Xiao Xingyu's activation of the dragon's tear this time had an average effect, only allowing the entire world to go back in time by one minute. Don't underestimate this minute. The world a minute ago. Shang Wanlan hadn't chased after him yet. The deserted island hadn't been blown up yet. And Dai Lu hadn't been sacrificed and killed in action. Lu Lu, Sasha, let's go. Ha, leave here and go to the Wraith channel. But, this is an order. Xiao Xingyu's attitude was strong. Dai Lu and Medusa didn't understand, but still did as they were told. A skinny camel was bigger than a horse. Even if Medusa was seriously injured, her main body could maintain an incredible parade speed in the water. Not a moment later. Rumble. The deserted island exploded. Above the night sky, a unicorn beast appeared. Shang Wanlan stood atop the head of the seven-colored holy Chilin, overlooking the rough sea. The scent reaches here and disappears. Further on is the devil beast strait. It seems that they have escaped. Shang Wanlan didn't find the black-robed man, the nine-tailed dragon fox, or the heavenly plague ghost python. The minute time went backward. It looked like nothing happened. But in reality, someone rewrote history. At the same time, the python form of Medusa swam into the devil beast channel, and in her huge mouth, she contained Dai Lu and Xiao Xingyu. One person and two beasts, escaped to the magic beast strait. The devil beast strait possessed tens of thousands of different races of devil beasts, and its scent was chaotic. Even the sense of smell of the dragon race would fail when it couldn't in this environment. Shang Wanlan had to give up the chase, the unwillingness and anger on his face lingering for a long time. Black robed man, the day we meet again will be the day your corpse is gone. The sea returned to calm, and there was only peace under the moonlight. Black robed man, the day we meet again will be the day your corpse will not survive. These were the last words Shang Wanlan said after he gave up the chase, and then he left. The time in this world had clearly gone back a full minute under the influence of Dragon Force. Xiao Xingyu had taken advantage of this minute to make a miracle of rewriting history and escape to the Devil Beast straight with Dai Lu and Medusa. In other words, in this brand new timeline, Shang Wanlan had not seen the black-robed man with her own eyes since the beginning. However, she said, the day we meet again. This word again had to be pondered over. It wasn't hard to see that the dragon's tears time retrogression had indeed affected Shang Wanlan, but the effect wasn't thorough enough. In Shang Wanlan's mind, he still retained the memory of the period before the time regression. This woman was too terrifying. Her true identity, the limits of her strength, were all an unfathomable mystery. Devil Beast Straight, on a reef. Dai Lu carried the frail Xiao Xingyu on her back and climbed onto the reef, her own face pale. The giant python in the sea resumed its human form, and Medusa, whose body was covered in wounds, also climbed onto the reef, with blood constantly spilling from the corners of her mouth. Medusa didn't let her guard down and looked around. That guy shouldn't be coming after us. Xiao Xingyu's voice was dark and hoarse as he said with certainty. Don't worry, this is the devil beast straight. Even if that Shang Wanlan is the strongest imperial beast master in the dragon kingdom, he won't be able to find our exact location. The Devil Beast Strait. The zone with the most chaotic breath on the entire planet. Fugitives would have to give up as long as they escaped here. No matter how powerful their pursuers were. Dai Lu curiously asked. How did you predict in advance that Shang Wanlan would hunt us down? For Dai Lu and Medusa. The two of them were completely affected by the dragon's tear and had no idea what had happened a minute ago. Lu Lu. Wait for me to catch my breath first. Xiao Xingyu took a big breath and waited until his breath stabilized a bit before fighting to sit up from the reef. What are you? Dai Lu froze. Xiao Xingyu suddenly opened his arms and tightly embraced Dai Lu. Although the two of them had had skin-to-skin -skin contact, in front of Medusa, this intimate gesture made Dai Lu blush and even become a bit groundless. Xiao Xingyu, what are you doing? Let go of me. Medusa just watched the show from the sidelines. Thinking in her heart, the fox actually blushed? Oh, this fox's relationship with this kid is definitely not simple. Xiao Xingyu refused to let go. His arms were like crab pincers firmly holding onto Dai Lu's soft and delicate body. Dai Lu also didn't dare to struggle. After all, Xiao Xingyu was covered in injuries. If he forcefully pushed him away, he might involve his wounds. Lu Lu, 
I can't lose you. That feeling of heartache. I don't want to suffer it a second time. Xiao Xingyu's tone was no joke, containing sincere and deep feelings. You what the hell are you babbling about? Dai Lu felt Xiao Xingyu's words and behavior were inexplicable, but her heart was still warmed up inside. Medusa couldn't help but interject. You're confessing to a fox? Only then did Xiao Xingyu let go of Dai Lu and took out the dragon's tear from his arms. Lu Lu, Sasha, aren't you guys curious as to why I predicted Shang Wan Lan's pursuit in advance? The two beautiful imperial beasts nodded at the same time. Please watch the VCR. Xiao Xingyu held the dragon's tear in both hands, and a lifelike video was reflected in this crystal ball. Every time the dragon's tear traveled back in time, it would absorb as much of the footage from before it traveled back and store it as a complete video. Dai Lu and Medusa stared intently at the dragon's tear as the images from a minute ago played out before their eyes. In particular, the image of Shang Wan Lan killing Dai Lu caused a strong visual impact on Dai Lu herself. It was only when the plot advanced to Xiao Xingyu taking out the dragon's tear and using Dai Lu's blood to open a time rewind and rewrite history to complete redemption that the image came to a close. Even though it was just an image and Dai Lu did not have this memory at all, she could empathize with it. The moment she was struck down by Shang Wan Lan, Xiao Xingyu was like a bereaved dog that had lost its soul, blood and tears raging. These images continued to stimulate the depths of Dai Lu's soul. Lu Lu, why are you crying too? I am not. Liar, you have tears in the corner of your eyes. Just got into the sand. Dai Lu was the typical hard mouth and soft heart. She now finally understood why Xiao Xingyu had just hugged her tightly and not let go of her hand. And also said those inexplicable words. Xiao Xingyu exhaled a mouthful of turbid air, wrapped his left arm around Dai Lu, and put his right hand on Medusa's shoulder. We're also considered to be lifelong friends. If it wasn't for the dragon's tear, we would have already been killed by Shang Wan Lan. Xiao Xingyu looked sideways at Medusa and said with a grudge, Sasha, do you know that this time? In order to save you, I really gambled with my life. You have to perform well in the future. You can't betray and leave me. Medusa's character was also a bit high and cold. She could not say pretty words, but Xiao Xingyu's kindness to her. She remembered it in her heart. If it wasn't for Xiao Xingyu, Dai Lu and Medusa would have died without a burial place. One person and two beasts lay side by side on the reef that was wetted by the waves, looking at the full moon in the night sky, enjoying a moment of peace after escaping death. Ding! Congratulations to the host, successfully rescued Medusa. Being completely out of danger meant that the system mission was complete. Issuing mission reward, 1, dragon egg, plus 10, 0, 0, 0 points. The reward has been issued. Please check and receive by the host. In the system warehouse, there was an additional dragon egg with a golden blue eggshell. 10, 0, 0, 0 point coupons were added to the account balance. High risk, high gain. This order almost put my life on the line. But it's blood money. His it hurts. The corners of Xiao Xingyu's lips rose, and the smile was instantly replaced by a grimace because of the excessive joy in pulling of the wound. This time when he went out to sea, Xiao Xingyu did almost lead the box, but since he survived with a great fate, he naturally reaped a great harvest. In this era of the extinction of the dragon race, the value of a dragon egg was self-evident. With a full 10, 000, 000 vouchers, there was no telling how many evolutionary materials and heavenly treasures with magical effects could be purchased. Coupled with the successful contracting of Medusa, a beast god body imperial beast with unlimited potential, Xiao Xingyu earned a lot of money, his face overflowing with the kind of joy that would wake him up with a smile even in his dreams. In addition to these materialized gains, Xiao Xingyu also valued another thing. After a moment of silence, Xiao Xingyu suddenly became serious. Sasha, I heard Lulu say that you know the secret about that dragon slaying battle 200 years ago. Now you can tell it. Secrets. That was the most valuable information. Medusa fell into reminiscence, and whenever she remembered the past, fear would flow from the depths of her pupils, her delicate body trembling from the aftermath. Royal Lord, that image in the dragon's tear was your personal experience just now. That's right. In that case, you truly saw Shang Wan Lan's true colors at that time, right? Xiao Xingyu nodded heavily. He would never forget those images of Shang Wan Lan's head with dragon horns growing out of it, his body covered by dragon scales as well as the dragon wings growing out of his back. Sha Sha, that Shang Wan Lan, is he a human? Or, royal lord, what I want to say is that, the dragon slaying girl, finally became an evil dragon. Chapter 101, Xiao Xingyu in a coma. Feeding beast milk, the waves lapped at the feathers of the seabirds, and the cold wind blew away the dark clouds in the sky. The cold moonlight shrouded the endless devil beast channel. Xiao Xingyu sat on the reef and listened to the story told by Medusa. In the dragon slaying battle 200 years ago, 90% of the strongest people in the dragon kingdom participated. Two of the most prestigious powerhouses were Shang Wan Lan and Xiao Lian. 
At that time, Shang Guanlan wasn't yet the Empress of the Dragon Kingdom, and Xiao Lai Yan wasn't the leader of the Rebel Amazing Alliance. These two were both ten-star imperial beast masters and fought side by side in the Dragon Slaying War. Speaking here, fear once again appeared on Medusa's beautiful and moving face. In the Dragon Slaying Battle, I was originally a spectator. The location of the battle was the Valley of Dragons, and I was just a small snake hiding in a rock crevice at that time. I witnessed the entire process of the battle. The moment when Shang Wan Lan killed the 990th dragon. She stood in the center of the Valley of Dragons, bathed in dragon's blood, letting out an oozing maniacal laugh. And then, Xiao Xingyu couldn't wait to follow up. And then, then I saw her turn into a black dragon. It was a black dragon whose size exceeded any dragon of the dragon race. And its two dragon pupils were like black holes absorbing everything. After the dragonization, Shang Wan Lan was bloodthirsty and killed through the entire Valley of Dragons without distinguishing between enemy and self. Xiao Xingyu had a chill. He had learned Shang Wan Lan's methods. If it wasn't for the dragon's tear in his hand, he and Dai Lu and Medusa wouldn't be able to survive now. After the battle, the dragon race is destroyed. As for the other imperial beast master powerhouses who participated in the battle, they all died at Shang Wan Lan's hands. The only survivor who lived was Xiao Lai Yan, the leader of the Amazing Alliance today. After hearing everything Medusa had told him, Xiao Xingyu nodded, feeling that everything was explained. No wonder Xiao Lai Yan betrayed the Dragon Kingdom, founded the Amazing Alliance, and went against Shang Wan Lan. This is because only he, a survivor of the Dragon Slaying Battle, knows that the true identity of the current Dragon Kingdom's Empress is a sinner who pits and kills countless of her compatriots of the human race. Truly the scum of the human race. Xiao Xingyu paused and added, I described it incorrectly, she is now an evil dragon, no longer human. Medusa continued her narration, other than Xiao Lai Yan, the only one who has witnessed all of Shang Wan Lan's evil deeds is me. At that time, Shang Wan Lan sensed my presence, but luckily I took advantage of the chaos to escape. Dai Lu took over, because you were a witness to that dragon slaying battle. Shang Wan Lan has never given up on hunting you down over the years. Some time ago, you were unfortunately arrested by Admiral Morong Ashes. If it wasn't for Xiao Xingyu, you would have been buried deep in the ocean with this secret by now. Medusa let out a long sigh. Yeah, I also thought that my time to die had come, but I didn't expect to survive. There were times when fate was just so wonderful. This life of Medusa was dragged back from the entrance of hell by Xiao Xingyu in a hard way. Xiao Xingyu digested all the information confessed by Medusa and was puzzled. Sasha. You said that Shang Wan Lan killed 990 giant dragons in the dragon slaying battle before transforming into a black dragon herself. Then how many giant dragons did Xiao Lai Yan, who fought alongside her at that time, kill? Medusa tossed her head. At that time, the battle was chaotic. I was nervous, and my entire attention was attracted by Shang Wan Lan transforming into a black dragon. As for Xiao Lai Yan, he didn't have much presence in the battle, and by the time I noticed him, I only saw his back as he fled the battlefield. Speaking here, Medusa ruffled her long hair, the bright moonlight sprinkled on the side of her face, bright and poignant, the story is told, that's all I know, Xiao Xingyu only had one sentence in his mind right now, the dragon kingdom empress, not a human, was an evil dragon stained with human blood, regarding the details of the dragon slaying battle, Medusa only had one pair of eyes and did not look closely enough, as she said, at that time, her attention was on those scenes where Shang Wan Lan transformed into a black dragon, if she wanted to know more details about the dragon slaying battle, she would probably have to listen to another big shot tell the story. That was Xiao Lai Yan. Xiao Xingyu was not even close to Xiao Lai Yan. After all, one was a two-star royal beast master of the Green Dragon Academy, and the other was the leader of the rebel army, the Amazing Alliance. Seeing Xiao Xingyu's body trembling, Dai Lu raised her hand and flames ignited in her palm to warm Xiao Xingyu. Lu Lu, I'm not cold. I just feel goosebumps all over my body and can't help but shiver when I think that the ruler of the dragon kingdom nowadays is not a human but an evil dragon. Medusa asked seriously, Royal Lord, since you already know Shang Wan Lan's true identity, what are your next plans? Xiao Xingyu let out a helpless bitter laugh. He he, what plans can I have? Could it be for me to act as a messenger of justice and overthrow her rule? Could it be for me to confront her face to face and accuse her of the evil deeds she committed 200 years ago? Xiao Xingyu lay on all fours on the cold reef. Wrapping his tattered clothes tightly. It doesn't matter to me whether Shang Wan Lan is a human or an evil dragon. I just want to take things step by step and become stronger step by step. There's no need to make an enemy of such a terrifying fellow. Dai Lu reminded. But after this incident, Shang Wan Lan has set her eyes on you. And she won't let up. Lu Lu, that's not true. The one who went to the navy headquarters and made a big mess was a black robed man. And the one who robbed Sasha was also a black robed man. 
So it's the black-robed man that Shang Wan Lun is staring at. What does the feud between Shang Wan Lun and the black-robed man have to do with me? Xiao Xingyu? Dai Lu froze. It always feels like something isn't right, but it seems to make a bit of sense. Medusa praised conspiratorially. Imperial Lord really played his cards well, switching between two identities at any time and teasing the Dragon Kingdom's Empress. After this escape from death, Xiao Xingyu recognized the importance of switching logins even more. The identity of the black-robed man was a large number that would not be logged in easily. This large number was bound to the two nationally wanted criminals, Dai Lu and Medusa. In terms of equipment, the large number had a dragon's tear in its storehouse, which could still save the day at critical moments. The identity of the genius student of Green Dragon Academy was instead Xiao Xingyu's trumpet for daily logins. In the eyes of his classmates, Xiao Xingyu was a good student with a good heart. In the eyes of the dean and tutors, Xiao Xingyu was the signboard of Green Dragon Academy. In Shang Wan Lan's eyes, Xiao Xingyu was a future pillar worthy of spending resources on cultivating. However, these people did not know that Xiao Xingyu was the black-robed man who was enough to turn the world situation upside down. Lu Lu, I'm a bit sleepy. Sleepiness struck Xiao Xingyu as his eyelids fought and he lay down in Dai Lu's arms and fell asleep. Medusa opened the pupil of natural disaster to check Xiao Xingyu's physical condition. How is he? The body is very weak. It is estimated that he will be unconscious for two days. Let's find a warm and comfortable place to settle him first. In the Devil Beast Strait, hurricane winds blew across the sea every moment, raising waves a hundred feet high. In such a harsh environment, finding a small island that could shelter from the wind and rain was not an easy task. Water. This was the only word that Xiao Xingyu spat out while he was unconscious. He has a fever. Fox. Water won't work on him. Human body. Resistance is too poor. What then? Medusa stared at Dai Lu's huge breasts and said, Beast milk can increase his resistance and recovery ability. Dai Lu blushed. I how could I possibly have beast milk? Fox, this is the magical beast channel, and underneath the reef, there are shadows of mammal-like magical beasts everywhere. I see. Chapter 102 Hatching Dragon Eggs is a Problem. Dream. Another fragmented nightmare. Xiao Xingyu dreamed of the black dragon in his stupor. The black dragon's eyes were like two black holes, distorting the heavens and earth and absorbing everything. In order to avoid the black dragon's pursuit, Xiao Xingyu ran desperately in the darkness, but suddenly bumped into a mirror. Looking at himself in the mirror, Xiao Xingyu's pupils trembled and the bottom of his eyes were filled with shock and fear. The Xiao Xingyu in the mirror also had black dragon scales growing on his body, dragon horns sprouting from the top of his head, and a pair of huge dragon wings sprouting from his torn back. No, the dream woke up. Xiao Xingyu sat up violently from the ground, his pale face covered in cold sweat. Was that a dream just now? It's good that it was a dream. It scared the old man to death. Xiao Xingyu took a long breath of relief. Recalling the picture in the dream, he still can't help but be chilled. What is this place? Xiao Xingyu looked around and realized that he was lying in a gloomy cave. The memories from before he passed out surfaced between his mind. Lu Lu, Sasha, Xiao Xingyu shouted. A residual shadow flashed, and Medusa appeared by Xiao Xingyu's side. Seeing Xiao Xingyu awakening, Medusa's tightly wrinkled brows finally relaxed. Royal Lord, you're awake. Sasha, how long have I been asleep? Medusa stretched out three fingers. I slept for three days? Crap crap crap. Xiao Xingyu was in a panic, worrying that he wouldn't be in time for the finals of the supernova competition. When Xiao Xingyu and Dai Lu set off from Four Spirit City, there were still six days before the start of the finals. Saving Medusa and escaping from death at the hands of Shang Wan Lan had consumed two days. Then Xiao Xingyu was in a coma for three more days. So by this calculation, there was only one day left before the start of the finals. Tomorrow is the final of the supernova competition. I must rush back to Four Spirit City. Xiao Xingyu's heart was burning with anxiety, fearing that he would miss the finals. Once Xiao Xingyu missed the final, Chen Qinian and the others, as well as the organizers could not contact Xiao Xingyu, and would inevitably arouse suspicion. It was important to know that Shang Wan Lan would watch the final of the supernova competition live every year. If she did not see Xiao Xingyu at the finals, with her suspicious personality, she might have sensed a potential connection between Xiao Xingyu and the black-robed man. Although these were Xiao Xingyu's speculations and would not necessarily happen for real. However, in order to eliminate this risk, the only way was to rush back to Four Spirit City in time. Xiao Xingyu rose from the ground and pulled Medusa's hand. Sasha, quickly turn into a giant python and take me across the sea to return to Four Spirit City. Royal Lord, I know you're in a hurry, but don't be in a hurry yet. Can I not be anxious? In case I don't get back in time. At this time, Dai Lu returned to the cave. She was carrying a beast skin sewed wine pot vessel in her hand. The inside of the beast skin wine pot was not filled with wine, but the beast milk of a magical beast. You've woken up? Great. 
When Dai Lu saw Xiao Xingyu waking up, her originally sad face had an extra touch of joy, and her eyes flushed with a faint redness. Lu Lu, what are you holding in your hand? Xiao Xingyu was deeply attracted by the beast skin wine pot in Dai Lu's hand. Dai Lu opened the beast skin wine pot, and the mouth of the bottle emitted a rich and fishy milky fragrance. This is, the milk of the silver moon tiger emperor. The milk of a magical beast. Beast milk? Dai Lu handed the beast skin wine pot to Xiao Xingyu. Drink it all. Xiao Xingyu hastily shook his head. No, 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 I'm a human. I only drink milk tea. The fishy flavor of beast milk is too heavy. I'm not used to drinking it. Medusa's arms were hugged to her chest, her sexy figure leaning against the rock wall of the cave, smiling and teasing. Royal Lord, do you know that the three days you were unconscious, you relied on beast milk to renew your life? Xiao Xingyu frowned. Sasha, what do you mean? After you fell into a coma, your body was extremely weak, and you couldn't save your life just by replenishing fresh water. Only by drinking beast milk can you increase your immunity and keep you alive. If it wasn't for the fox going to hunt the nearby magical beasts in their lactation period every day, how would you have beast milk to drink? Xiao Xingyu froze for a moment and carefully felt the changes in his body. Before he fell unconscious, Xiao Xingyu had more than a dozen fractures all over his body. Because of the aftereffects of taking the dragon spirit pill, all five organs and six bowels had suffered a backlash. At this moment, Xiao Xingyu looked to be in full condition and full of energy. No matter whether it was internal or external injuries, they were all healed. Fortunately, during these three days, Dai Lu fed beast milk to Xiao Xingyu every day, which allowed Xiao Xingyu to recover most of it in such a short period of time. So beast milk has this kind of effect, it's just this flavor, it's really unpleasant. When he was unconscious, Dai Lu fed Xiao Xingyu beast milk. Xiao Xingyu didn't even know about it and relied on his instincts to swallow it. Now that Xiao Xingyu had awakened, his sense of smell had regained its sensitivity, and the fishy odor of the beast milk was difficult for him to accept. Lu Lu, can I stop drinking it? Your body hasn't fully recovered. You must drink it. Dai Lu crossed her arms, as strong as a daughter-in-law ordering her husband. Medusa secretly spat from the side. This fox looks a bit like a housekeeper. Tisk. Xiao Xingyu didn't want to let down Dai Lu's good intentions. After all, every drop of beast milk was obtained by Dai Lu going out to hunt magical beasts. It was not easy to come by. Gulp gulp. Xiao Xingyu pinched his nose, eyes closed tightly, and drank all the beast milk in one gulp. The taste of the beast milk was indeed unpleasant, but the effect was immediate. After drinking the beast milk, Xiao Xingyu felt warm all over, as if his body had accumulated strength that could not be used up. Xiao Xingyu walked out of the cave. This was an island that was not too large in size. The island was located in the center of the Devil Beast Strait, and there were some scattered islands around it, as well as a large area of reefs that were exposed to the surface of the sea. These scattered islands and reefs were the territory where the mammal-type magical beasts were entrenched. Fortunately, there were two beast god body-level imperial beasts, Dai Lu and Medusa, guarding beside Xiao Xingyu. Without them, Xiao Xingyu would have long since fallen into the coils of the magical beasts. Sasha, with your speed, how long will it take for us to make it back to the coastline of the Dragon Kingdom? Half a day is enough. Medusa's body, the heavenly calamity ghost python, was the fastest creature parading in the water, with Medusa around. Xiao Xingyu didn't have to worry about missing the finals of the supernova competition. A little hungry. Beast milk could only be used for appetizing. Xiao Xingyu drank the beast milk instead and felt an unprecedented hunger. Lu Lu, Sasha, can you guys go out hunting? I want to eat magical beast roasted meat. Without saying a word, Dai Lu and Medusa jumped into the sea at the same time. Xiao Xingyu was responsible for building a fire in the cave, while the two beautiful servants were responsible for going down to the sea to hunt. In other people's homes, the man is in charge of the outside and the woman is in charge of the inside, but it's just the opposite when it comes to the Xiao family. According to how this plot unfolded, Xiao Xingyu was at home with the children, and it was not too much to be a home cook. Taking advantage of the time when Dai Lu and Medusa went down to the sea to hunt, Xiao Xingyu stayed alone in the cave, sat by the campfire and opened the system warehouse. Xiao Xingyu extracted the dragon egg from the system warehouse. Between the flashes of streams of light, Xiao Xingyu had an additional egg in his arms that was heavy. The eggshell of this egg was a golden blue color, with many complex lines on it, emitting a faint dragon power. Even if it was covered by the eggshell, Xiao Xingyu could sense that a small life was being nurtured inside. As for what kind of dragon could hatch from this dragon egg, it was still an unknown. Chapter 103 Beast God Body Magical Beast Imperial Yen Toothed Whale Xiao Xingyu held the dragon egg and opened the eye of the demon god as a data panel appeared in his mind. Name, Dragon Egg. Race, Purebred Dragon Race. Attribute, Unknown. Talent, Unknown. 
Cultivation method, infuse dragon power for nourishment. Materials needed to speed up incubation dragon bone snow lotus, dragon's heart, ground inferno berry. Incubation taboo, prohibit contact with the evil breath, otherwise it will trigger a genetic mutation. Purebred dragon race demonic dragon race. Xiaoxing you couldn't help but shake his head and sigh after browsing through the data panel. Hatching this dragon egg is a big problem. Hatching a dragon egg required frequent infusion of large amounts of dragon power. This step could only be left to Dai Lu. To speed up the hatching progress, a rare material in the world was needed. Dragon Bone Snow Lotus. A snow lotus that bloomed on the bones of a dragon, could not be bought on the market and could not be found by the general public. Dragon's Heart. As the name suggests, is the fossilized heart that remains after the fall of a giant dragon. It was already great luck that Xiao Xingyu was able to dig up that piece of dragon bone at the bottom of the fallen dragon lake. Trying to find a dragon's heart was a thousand times harder than buying a lottery ticket and winning the jackpot. As long as it was a material about dragons, it was unattainable. The only material that Xiao Xingyu currently had a chance of obtaining was the earth flame berry. The earth flame berry grew in the vermilion bird earth cave on the southern border of the dragon kingdom. As long as one had enough strength, one could sneak into the deepest part of the vermilion bird earth cave. And picking the earth flame berries was not a difficult task. Hatching dragon eggs is a long-term thing. Wanting to be quick is not enough. Take your time. Xiao Xingyu knew that he couldn't eat hot tofu in a hurry. And temporarily put the dragon egg into the system warehouse. Regarding the taboo of hatching dragon eggs, Xiao Xingyu also kept it in mind. No matter what, the dragon egg must not be exposed to any evil aura. The devil beast straits. Filled with bloodthirsty beasts, the evil aura filled the sea like a fog. It was safest to keep the dragon egg in the system storage. Not a moment later, the sound of an explosion came from the sea outside the cave. Dailu dragged the corpse of a demonic flame giant tiger shark into the cave with one hand. This beast king body magical beast that was capable of overturning rivers was like a toy in Dailu's hands. Medusa had also returned, carrying an overlord octopus on her shoulder. Thanks to the hunting prowess of the two hunters, tonight's meal was sumptuous. The night was deepening. Inside the cave, Xiao Xingyu was enjoying the roasted octopus whiskers and the charred shark meat on the outside. Although there was no seasoning, the meat's original flavor was even purer, constantly stimulating Xiao Xingyu's taste buds. Eating the marrow was the best compliment to this dinner. After eating and drinking enough, Xiao Xingyu lay down in the mouth of the cave and looked at the full moon in the sky. There were less than 20 hours until the final of the supernova competition. Medusa had said that it would only take 12 hours to send Xiao Xingyu back to the Dragon Kingdom. In other words, Xiao Xingyu was still able to sleep and recuperate. Royal Lord, aren't you going to sleep? Xiao Xingyu seemed to have something on his mind, which was seen by Medusa. Sasha, what do you think of our relationship? Royal Lord is my savior, so I might as well say what I have to say. Can you give me a pile of your feces? Xiao Xingyu opened the door and spoke shockingly. Medusa was petrified on the spot, and thought she had a hearing problem. You what did you say? I said, can you give me a pile of your feces? Medusa instantly stormed off. Fox, don't stop me, I'm going to kill this kid. The biggest difference between an orc lineage imperial beast, and an ordinary imperial beast, was that it possessed human traits? One of those traits was shame. Medusa was at least a female, and females loved face the most. Xiao Xingyu opened his mouth and asked for a girl's feces. Which girl could stand it? Xiao Xingyu turned his head to look at Dai Lu. Lu Lu, Xia Xia seems unwilling. Can you? I'm willing if she's not? Xiao Xingyu, you're perverted. What a fetish. Xiao Xingyu cried and laughed. This time he was misunderstood again. Lu Lu, I'm not a pervert. Not a pervert. I can't even say it when you claim R. Xiao Xingyu couldn't explain. The more he described, he had no choice but to open his spatial ring and take out a flower pot. In the flower pot, a green shoot of about 4 centimeters grew. This green bud looked weak and tender, but exuded an extremely strong vitality, and a refreshing aroma lingered around it. Dai Lu and Medusa looked at each other in disbelief. Unable to understand why Xiao Xingyu took out a potted plant, Xiao Xingyu explained, Don't underestimate this thing, it's a plant lineage imperial beast of ancient bloodline, heavenly soul vine beast, Dai Lu, ancient bloodline, Medusa, a plant-based imperial beast? This is only the young sprout state of the heavenly soul vine beast, and to breed it out, it requires many evolutionary materials. One of the evolutionary materials is the feces of a beast god body imperial beast or a beast god body demonic beast. Dai Lu's face eased up a lot. I see. Why didn't you say that earlier? I wouldn't have misunderstood you if you had said it earlier. Medusa still shook her head. Her tone cold. Royal master. Even so, Fox and I belong to the orc line after all. We have the same reserve and dignity as human women. Xiao Xingyu scratched his head in embarrassment. That's also right. 
It's me who was too abrupt and didn't respect you guys. Xiao Xingyu also realized his problem. It was indeed inappropriate to rashly ask Dai Lu and Medusa for feces. But then again, can the feces of any beast god body magical beast accelerate the growth of this young sprout? That's right. The feces of any beast god body demonic beast has this effect. Medusa was inspired to make a suggestion. Royal Lord. This is the magical beast straight. And there are at least hundreds of beast god body magical beasts sleeping at the bottom of the sea. Sasha. What do you mean? Fox. How about we accompany the imperial lord on a trip down to the sea? Dai Lu had no reason to refuse and nodded her head in agreement. Thank you both. After this is accomplished, I'll treat you to some spicy hot pot. Xiao Xingyu was one who understood profit maximization, and a $6 bowl of spicy hot pot greatly reduced his expenditure costs. Under the dark night, the waves rolled, and a giant python over a thousand meters long dived into the depths of the icy cold seawater. The python's mouth. Xiao Xingyu and Dai Lu stood on their tongues, eyeing the water-based magical beasts of different forms swimming by around them. The ranks of these water demonic beasts were all below the beast emperor body, constrained by the level suppression and bloodline suppression. Medusa and Dai Lu didn't need to make a move. These magical beasts were scared and fled in all directions, making a path. As the depth of the dive increased, Xiao Xingyu had already seen the volcano at the bottom of the sea, near the undersea crater. Hot magma trickled. A behemoth, lying in the crater, looked lazy, spitting out a series of black bubbles from time to time. Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god to confirm the monster's information. This was the beast god body magical beast, the imperial yen toothed whale. Xiao Xingyu's face showed joy. It's decided that it's you. The Imperial Inferno Toothed Whale, which was currently snoring and resting, hadn't realized that there was a lewd human who was actually hitting on its feces. Chapter 104, Encountering a New Imperial Beast, The Electric-Eared Rabbit, Near the Undersea Volcano, The Imperial Yen Toothed Whale was lying on its back on the hot lava, in a state of deep sleep, with a peaceful look. This was a beast god body level magical beast. Its size was not comparable to the sea god Leviathan under Morong Ashes but it looked exaggerated enough. In its sleep, the Emperor Inferno Tooth Whale grinned from time to time, revealing sharp teeth that burned with flames. In this world, there were only a few flames that could burn in water, and the Emperor's Sea Dream Flame was one of them. Dai Lu patted Xiao Xingyu's shoulder and signaled with her eyes. Xiao Xingyu was a bit timid and didn't dare to go forward. Dai Lu's eyes were amused, as if saying, Goon, with the two of us here, what are you afraid of? Before Xiao Xingyu was ready, he was pushed by Dai Lu. After a stagger, Xiao Xingyu fell to the undersea crater, right in front of the Emperor Yen Toothed Whale. This was the bottom of the ocean, and Xiao Xingyu's human body couldn't carry the water pressure. So Dai Lu condensed the Dragon Flame to create a sphere-shaped shield around Xiao Xingyu. Dragon Flame was the most special flame in the world, not to mention in the sea, even in outer space. It could keep burning in a way that violated the laws of physics. The bottom of the sea began to tremble, and the surrounding water magical beasts fled frantically. The Emperor Inferno Tooth Whale was about to awaken. The moment it opened its eyes, it was as if two red meteorites appeared in the depths of the pitch black sea, emitting a hostile aura and flashing with a cold light. The Imperial Yen Toothed Whale loved to sleep the most, and once it was woken up, it would trigger a severe wake up call. Xiao Xingyu was the culprit who woke up the Imperial Yen Toothed Whale's beautiful dream. With its dream shattered, the Emperor Yen Toothed Whale was enraged. Its body emitted a horrible aura, and its ferocious sight locked onto Xiao Xingyu. In the next second, the picture changed suddenly. The ferociousness in the eyes of the Emperor Inferno Tooth Whale instantly disappeared, and the terrifying aura on its body also quietly converged, even revealing a friendly expression. At the moment, this beast god body magic beast looked smiling, somewhat cute and adorable. This gave Xiao Xingyu a whole won't. So that's how it is. Xiao Xingyu turned his head and couldn't help but look. Behind Xiao Xingyu, there was a black python coiled with a body length of over a thousand meters. There was also a fox that had grown nine tails, its body burning with purple golden dragon flames, and its pair of dragon pupils staring deathly at the Emperor Inferno Toothed Whale. At the same beast god body rank, Dai Lu and Medusa's bloodline quality far exceeded that of the Emperor Yin Toothed Whale, especially Dai Lu. Just by releasing the power of the dragon, she was able to cause a soul-shattering intimidation to the Emperor Yin Toothed Whale. With Dai Lu and Medusa's backing, the Imperial Orca turned into a docile baby fish in seconds, and its eyes became much clearer. Xiao Xingyu sighed in his heart. The main fight is a bloodline suppression ah. Xiao Xingyu then circled around behind the Emperor Inferno Toothed Whale and collected many feces on the cliffs of the volcanic rock. The Imperial Yen Toothed Whale's feces did not have a foul odor, which was related to its special digestive system. Done. Xiao Xingyu carried the bag full of urea and loaded it into his spatial ring. 
To other imperial beast masters, the feces of a beast god body magical beast was useless, but for Xiao Xingyu, it was an essential fertilizer for cultivating the heavenly soul vine beast. Clatter. The giant python broke the surface of the water, revealing a huge head. Xiao Xingyu rode on top of Medusa's head with a satisfied expression. Dai Lu transformed into human form and sat beside Xiao Xingyu. The end of the sea level was lit up with an orange shimmer. Dawn was coming, and it was going to be light. There were still about 10 hours before the start time of the supernova competition's finals. Sasha, depart. Medusa's body, the heavenly calamity ghost python, traveled at a speed in the seawater that far exceeded the fastest battleships in the naval headquarters. After only 5 hours, Xiao Xingyu returned to the coastline of the Dragon Kingdom's southern border. After landing, Medusa transformed back into her human form, and it was Dai Lu's turn to turn on her beast form. If he wanted to return to Four Spirit City with the closest distance, he would have to cross the no man's land called the Tsong Lei Mountain Range. The Tsong Lei Mountain Range, as its name suggests, has a strange climate, with countless thunderbolts always landing in the valleys. Day or night, deep in the dark forest, the nine tailed dragon fox flickered like a ghostly shadow, crossing the mountains at a speed that was hard to see with the naked eye. Xiao Xingyu and Medusa in human form rode on the back of the nine tailed dragon fox one after the other. Lu Lu, faster. Shut up, I'm already the fastest. Faster. Exciting. Awesome. Oh, Dale's native language. Was just speechless. Medusa covered her mouth and laughed. This high and cold snake imperial sister had more smiles on her face that she had never seen before since she followed Xiao Xingyu. This oddball. There's a waterfall ahead. Stop. In the great sea, fresh water resources were scarce. Xiao Xingyu could only use beast milk to quench his thirst. However, something like beast milk, which was extremely nourishing, was indeed pleasurable to drink in small amounts, but would be tiresome to drink in large amounts. Xiao Xingyu's mouth was full of milky flavor. His throat was tired and panicked, and when he saw the waterfall pouring down from the cliff, his eyes were glowing. Jumping down from the back of the nine-tailed dragon fox, Xiao Xingyu rushed to the water pool next to the waterfall, cupped the clear spring water with both hands, and frantically sent it to his mouth. This was mountain spring water without any pollution. The flavor still had a sweet aftertaste. Xiao Xingyu drank it with joy. These few days of recuperating in the demonic beast straits, my body is going to stink. I'll take a bath. Xiao Xingyu took off his clothes and jumped into the water pool. The waterfall pouring over his head was equivalent to a water canopy in a bathroom. Lu Lu, you guys come down and wash together too. No. Dai Lu refused with a red face. Xiao Xingyu looked at Medusa on the shore again. Sasha, want to wash together? I can give you a back rub. And I also know Chinese medicine breast enhancement massage. Medusa sat on the rocks, the corner of her lips hooked into a cold smile. He he, I'm satisfied with my own body. I don't need breast enhancement. Neither Dai Lu nor Medusa went into the water. Xiao Xingyu could only amuse himself. The bare-chested teenager, wetting every inch of his body under the waterfall, his magnificent abs on display. Medusa lamented, it's good to be young. Dai Lu skimmed her lips, disagreeing. What's good about it? This kid is energetic and very capable of tossing and turning. Become his imperial beast and you'll be busy in the future. Suddenly, the roar of a magical beast and the sound of heavy, hurried footsteps came from the woods beside the water pool. Whoosh! A petite residual shadow rushed out of the woods and drew a half-arc parabola from midair, landing steadily on top of Xiao Xingyu's head. What the hell? Xiao Xingyu raised his hand and took down a pile of small furry guys from the top of his head. It was a rabbit that was only the size of an adult's palm. The rabbit's fur was as white as a snowflake, and what made it special were the ears. The shape of these ears resembled two lightning bolts, an electric-eared rabbit, one person and one beast, wide-eyed. In the woods, the hissing sounds of the magical beasts were getting closer and closer. Xiao Xingyu carefully surveyed this electric ear rabbit in his hand. It was curled up and shivering, its eyes full of panic. In the world of magical beasts, the law of the weak and the strong still applied. Xiao Xingyu could easily see that this weak electric-eared rabbit was avoiding the hunting of some high-level magical beasts. For the electric-eared rabbit, the gentle-looking teenager in front of him was its only saving grace. Chapter 105, Mutant Species Royal Beast, The King of Picking Up the Pieces. Chirp. The electric-eared rabbit let out a cute and delicate cry. Its big watery eyes I could see. From this imperial beast's eyes and actions, it was easy to see that it was asking Xiao Xingyu for help. The heavy footsteps were getting closer and closer. Whoosh. 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 A dozen or so burly wolves rushed out of the woods. These wolves were comparable in size to adult lions with tails with zipping and zipping electric balls. Their bodies were covered in fried hair, and their appearance was ferocious. Thunderstorm wolves, transcendent body-level magical beasts. In the depths of the Tsong Lei mountain range, 
There were hundreds of different groups of magical beasts, of which the Thundering Storm Wolf was the most numerous group. A dozen or so thunderstorm wolves surrounded the shore of the water pool, eyeing the electric ear rabbit in Xiao Xingyu's hands. In terms of the food chain, the electric ear rabbit clan was the thunderstorm wolf clan's self-service ATM. According to scientific research statistics, an adult thunderstorm wolf had to eat 4,000 electric eared rabbits every year. Bloodline suppression. Racial tinker. Level gap. Based on these factors, not a single electric eared rabbit could survive the pursuit of the thunderstorm wolf. If it wasn't for the coincidence of meeting Xiao Xingyu, this electric ear rabbit would have already been swallowed by the thunderstorm wolf. The electric eared rabbit was the food of the thunderstorm wolf. And now that the electric eared rabbit was in Xiao Xingyu's hands, it was a contender for the wolves that Xiao Xingyu had robbed them of their food. Ow. The wolves let out angry roars and glared viciously at Xiao Xingyu. From their eyes, it was easy to see that if Xiao Xingyu didn't hand over the electric eared rabbit, they wouldn't mind eating Xiao Xingyu as a side dish along with it. Right at this moment, Dai Lu, who was leaning against the tree, raised her eyebrows and her palm ignited the dragon flame that contained dragon power. Medusa, who was sitting on a rock, emitted a black ghostly aura from her body. Sensing the aura of the two beast god body imperial beasts, the wolves were scared out of their wits and ran away with their tails tucked between their legs. One had to know that the thunderstorm wolf was only a transcendent mortal body level magical beast. A magical beast of this level was not even qualified to give Dai Lu and Medusa a chance to stuff their teeth. With the danger temporarily lifted, the electric-eared rabbit relaxed, its two lightning-shaped ears shaking as it revealed a naive smile towards Xiao Xingyu. Little rabbit, what goes around comes around, the fittest survives yo. Xiao Xingyu finished the sentence in the gentlest tone, then casually threw it. Swoosh, the electric-eared rabbit with a petite body was like a paper kite with broken strings, slicing through mid-air and crashing into the distant woods. Xiao Xingyu was not heartless. He just had no interest in interfering with the law of natural selection and the law of food chain elimination. There was also the point that the electric ear rabbit was a kind of waste that was even more chickenish than the blizzard dog, and had no utilization value whatsoever. Name, electric ear rabbit. Level, initial body, cannot be upgraded. Bloodline, inferior quality. Talent, none. Attribute, weak electricity, barely works as a cell phone charger. Skills, none. Hobby, carrots and other fruits and vegetables. Likes rain and thunder. This is the attribute panel of the electric-eared rabbit, which can be easily seen through the eye of the demon god. The bloodline of the electric-eared rabbit is of inferior quality. Plus there is no room for level advancement, and it also doesn't know any combat skills. Any imperial beast master who didn't have a brain in his head wouldn't sign a blood contract with this kind of waste. Xiao Xingyu was no exception. He didn't want to waste his energy on a magical beast with no potential. Another rustling sound came from the woods, followed by the roar of the thunderstorm wolf. A residual shadow flashed by. Xiao Xingyu was humming a little song as he bathed in the water pool when a soft pile of stuff suddenly burrowed into his pants. Crap! Xiao Xingyu was shocked and hurriedly pulled out his crotch, pulling out a small ball of fur. This little ball of fur was the electric-eared rabbit that had curled up its body. You little guy! Too rude! How can you just drill into my crotch? Do you believe it or not? According to the law, my second brother has every right to appeal and sue you for trespassing. What a trespassing! Seeing Xiao Xingyu speaking the law to a rabbit, Dai Lu held her forehead and sighed. This imperial lord of mine, what a strange one. At this time, a dozen black shadows scurried out of the woods. A pack of thunderstorm wolves once again surrounded the shore of the waterhole. Seeing the electric-eared rabbit hiding in Xiao Xingyu's arms, the wolves dared to be angry and could only let out a low whimper. Xiao Xingyu grabbed the fluffy ears of the electric ear rabbit. Little fellow, stop clinging to me, otherwise I'll consider whether to choose braised rabbit head or spicy rabbit head for dinner. The electric-eared rabbit was psychic and understood Xiao Xingyu's words. His face turned white in fear. Xiao Xingyu pursed his lips. There's one thing to say. It's been a long time since I've eaten spicy rabbit head. In a flash, a current flashed through Xiao Xingyu's mind. The eye of the demon god automatically opened. Xiao Xingyu's scarlet line of sight once again landed on the electric-eared rabbit. This time, Xiao Xingyu saw the hidden information. Name, electric-ear rabbit. Hidden message, mutant species electric-ear rabbit. This was not an ordinary electric ear rabbit, but a mutant species. The world was a big place, and there was nothing strange about it. Any kind of royal beast or magical beast could possibly complete a genetic mutation under the drive of heaven and earth. A species that produced a genetic mutation was a mutant species. According to the hidden information detected by the eye of the demon god, this electric eared rabbit was a mutant species. This electric eared rabbit didn't look much different from a normal electric eared rabbit. And if we were to talk about the details, it would be that the ears were folded in a larger arc, which looked more like those irregular lightning bolts in bad weather. According to the hidden information, 
the bloodline of this electric-eared rabbit was still of inferior quality. In terms of growth, it still didn't have the slightest potential, and its rank would remain at the initial body, unable to reach adulthood in its entire life, unable to break through to the next level of the realm. However, this mediocre electric-eared rabbit has a hidden skill, hidden battle skill, back to heaven, refreshes friendly moves, up to three times in a row at a time. Xiao Xingyu was stunned. He had read all the books in the Green Dragon Library, and had looked at the various battle skills of tens of thousands of imperial beasts around the world. This hidden battle technique of the electric-eared rabbit, Xiao Xingyu had never seen it on any other imperial beast. Being able to refresh a friendly army's big move? This ability is also too outrageous. In battle, imperial beast masters relied heavily on the imperial beast's great move, which was also known as the sure kill technique. Since they were surefire moves, they couldn't be used frequently in every battle. For example, the Hell Spectral Wolf's Hell Roar. This skill's attack power was explosive, but once used, the cooldown time was as long as 15 minutes. In an ever-changing battle, the decision to win or lose was only a matter of minutes and seconds. Once the big move was used up, one would fall into a disadvantage. Without waiting for the cooldown of the move to end, the battle was already over. However, the hidden battle technique of this mutant species electric ear rabbit could just make up for this shortcoming. For any imperial beast master, the mutant species electric ear rabbit was a supporting artifact. Xiao Xingyu looked at the electric eared rabbit in his arms, and the corners of his lips rose crazily. Ha 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 ha, I am the son of Qi. Xiao Xingyu was so emotional that he laughed up to the sky. Dai Lu and Medusa glanced at each other, thinking that Xiao Xingyu was sick again. When luck came, it could not be stopped. Xiao Xingyu was just taking a bath, and he picked up this mutant species electric ear rabbit by the way. Chapter 106, Contracting Electric Ear Rabbit mysterious beast out? Woo! By the water pool, the wolves hung their heads low, their eyes upturned, their long tails tucked behind their buttocks. They were scornful of Xiao Xingyu, who possessed two beast god body imperial beast guardians, and at the same time, they did not want to give up the delicious lunch of the electric ear rabbit. Chirp! The electric ear rabbit let out a soft and adorable cry, with tears in its eyes, praying for Xiao Xingyu to save its life. Dai Lu and Medusa didn't take it seriously. They thought that with Xiao Xingyu's unbeatable personality, he would definitely not save this wasteful imperial beast with a low-quality bloodline. Lu Lu, Sasha, I'm keeping this rabbit. I'm going to contract it to become my imperial beast. After Xiao Xingyu stated his position, Dai Lu was surprised, and Medusa also revealed an incomprehensible look. Royal Master, you're not mistaken. Sasha, I'm serious. Medusa reminded, the electric-eared rabbit doesn't have any room for growth. No matter how much you cultivate and train it, it won't be able to break through for promotion until it dies, and stays in its initial body for the rest of its life. I know all that you said. In short, my mind is made up. I'm going to keep this rabbit. Xiao Xingyu interrupted Medusa. Dai Lu on the side was going to say something. After thinking about it she looked at Medusa. It's just that, the royal lord has his own reasons for doing so. There's no need for us to stop him. Dai Lu hadn't known Xiao Xingyu for a day or two. Although she couldn't see through the secrets in Xiao Xingyu's body, she was clear about one thing. As long as Xiao Xingyu did things that normal people wouldn't do, even if it seemed stupid, don't stop him. Because this man, every time he didn't follow the rules, there was a deeper reason. Well well well, since the imperial lord wants to keep this rabbit, then we have to work. As Xiao Xingyu's tool snake, Medusa had a strong professionalism. A morose black aura erupted from Medusa's body, instantly filling the entire forest. This was the natural ability of the Heavenly Tribulation Ghost Python. Ghost Chi. Cold crystals hung from the treetops, and the clouds in the sky were all as motionless as frozen ice. Ghost Chi. The power from the Yellow Spring, was also known as the power of the Yellow Spring. This kind of aura would cause spiritual attacks on magical beasts and even freeze the soul. The wolves were shrouded by the pitch black, ink-like ghost aura and were scared shitless. At that moment, a cluster of flames in the shape of a dragon's head ignited in the midst of the ghostly aura. Dai Lu leaned against the tree, holding the fireball in her palm, her eyes as cold as swords, feeling the terrifying aura of the two beast god body imperial beasts, the wolves exploded, the thundering storm wolf, the leading wolf in the pack, trembled in all four limbs, lost its spirit, and decisively gave up its prey and fled, as the leading wolf ran away, the other wolves also fled frantically with their tails between their legs, within moments, the forest returned to silence, and only the sound of running water pouring from the waterfall could be heard in the air. Chirp! Witnessing the wolves dispersing with his own eyes, the electric-eared rabbit reveals a smile after the robbery, then violently burrows into Xiao Xingyu's arms. AI AI AI! Itchy! So itchy! Ha ha ha! Xiao Xingyu's weakness was being ticklish. 
The way the electric-eared rabbit expressed its fondness was to use its lightning-shaped ears and rub against Xiao Xingyu's face. The furry ears rubbed back and forth on Xiao Xingyu's skin, causing Xiao Xingyu to be strangely itchy, and his laughter echoed in the valley. After Xiao Xingyu went ashore and put on his clothes, the electric-ear rabbit was inseparable from him and sat directly on top of his head. The electric-ear rabbit was originally small in size, squatting on top of Xiao Xingyu's head. It looked like a round ball, dull and cute. Dai Lu walked over. This electric ear rabbit, is there something special about it? How come I didn't see it? Xiao Xingyu explained. This isn't an ordinary electric eared rabbit. This is a mutated species of electric eared rabbit, and it has magical powers on it. Medusa also came over out of curiosity. What magical power? Xiao Xingyu originally wanted to explain clearly, but on second thought, he deliberately sold a lie. What kind of power this electric eared rabbit actually has? You'll know when the finals of the supernova competition begin. Medusa's smile stiffened and she secretly clenched her pink fists. I really hate people who only say half of what they say. Sasha, are you scolding me? Royal Lord, how could I dare? He he, you were so close to reporting my ID number just now. Xiao Xingyu glared at Medusa with sultry eyes for a moment before removing the balled up electric eared rabbit from the top of his head. I didn't save you for nothing. Are you willing to become my imperial beast? Chirp. The electric ear rabbit nodded its head while letting out a cute chirp. Xiao Xingyu's playfulness and acting skills went online. A sinister and lewd expression suddenly surfaced on his handsome face, and the tip of his tongue swept over his lower lip. If I want to eat spicy rabbit head, can I? The electric eared rabbit was startled, both ears standing up and every bone in his body trembling. Had head. I'm kidding. Electric eared rabbit. Medusa had a serious face. I hear you. It curses hard. Dai Lu lamented. So the electric eared rabbit also rolls its eyes. It feels speechless towards this lifesaver. Xiao Xingyu didn't want to waste time and bit his finger. Splat. A drop of blood landed on the forehead of the electric eared rabbit. In less than a minute, the blood contract was successfully concluded. Xiao Xingyu picked up the petite and tender electric ear rabbit and smiled gently. Little fellow. From now on, you are my Xiao Xingyu's imperial beast. Chirp. The electric ear rabbit was excited. And its two ears emitted a faint blue current. With this amount of electricity, it wouldn't even be enough to tickle the enemy on the battlefield. At best, it would serve as a backup charging treasure for Xiao Xingyu's cell phone. Lu Lu, Sasha, we should hurry. The teenager rode the nine-tailed dragon fox over the mountains. A pile of furry little guys crouched on top of his head, and a snake-type beauty stood by Xiao Xingyu's side, always alert to potential threats around him. After sending that teenager away, the Tsonglei mountain range returned to its previous quietness. In the water pool under the waterfall, the water suddenly boiled. This was the place where Xiao Xingyu had bathed just now, and it was also the place where Xiao Xingyu had contracted the electric eared rabbit. Rumble. The mountain collapsed, the sky thundered incessantly, and the gusty winds were like the iron hooves of a gigantic beast, mercilessly trampling one ancient tree after another in the sky. A huge black shadow rushed out of the forest and came to the water pool. This is a rabbit. The behemoth's breath was terrifying, but its looks were naive. It was a giant electric eared rabbit, fat like a ball with a size comparable to a mountain peak. In the realm of human cognition, it had never seen such a large electric eared rabbit. What was even more bizarre was that this rabbit actually maintained a standing posture like a human. The tip of the giant electric eared rabbit's nose shrugged, smelling a familiar scent next to the pool of water, as well as the scent of a human. It was the little electric eared rabbit's mom. The mother took a nap and the child was abducted? This was what the giant electric eared rabbit was thinking at the moment. Ow. The giant electric eared rabbit let out a majestic roar, with thick lightning snakes wrapped around its body, and its two ears twitching violently, expressing the anger in its heart. It was obvious that this giant electric ear rabbit was also a mutant species that was rare to find in a hundred years. Chapter 107, The Finals Begin. Green Dragon vs. Vermilion Bird. For Spirit City. Open Air Gymnasium. Today was the day of the Supernova Competition Final, and this stadium, which could hold 100, 000 live spectators, was the venue for the competition. In the center of the arena, a huge ring was raised. The floor of the ring was divided into two colors, one green and one red. The green floor was drawn with the pattern of a green dragon, symbolizing the Green Dragon Academy. The red floor was imprinted with the Vermilion Bird's boiling totem, symbolizing the Vermilion Bird Academy. It was getting closer and closer to the start of the match, and the spectators entered with their tickets. The spectator stand was packed to the brim and among them were many agents of the Imperial Beastmaster Guild in addition to the commoners. The nature of the agents was just like the talent scouts in the entertainment industry. A talent scout discovers new stars with talent from the crowd, 
The agents are the ones who discover talented young beast masters from the various beast master competitions. In the final battlefield of the supernova competition, those who took the stage would definitely be the most talented teenagers. In the corner of the auditorium, agents wearing duck tongue hats waited quietly with pen and paper in hand. As soon as the competition started, these agents would combine the scores based on the performances of the contestants, and then transmit the data to the presidents of the Imperial Beastmaster Guild. Backstage, the preparation room, Morong Yangshua paced around, that guy Xiao Xingyu, where the hell did he run off to, doesn't answer his phone calls, doesn't reply to his messages, there's only 15 minutes left until the start of the match, he shouldn't have abandoned the match, Morong Xinxin was doing a pre-battle warm-up, stretching her slim and supple little waist, a head of long white hair pouring over her fragrant shoulders like a waterfall, brother, just give him another call, I've called more than a dozen times, every time I hear the same reply, sorry, the number you have dialed is not in the service area, please dial again later, Morong Yangshua was depressed, Morong Xinxin remained calm, call again, alright, then I'll call one last time, Morong Yangshua took out his cell phone and dialed Xiao Xingyu's phone number, this time, Morong Yangshua heard a different reply than before, sorry, the number you have dialed is in arrears. Morong Yangshua was so angry that his chest trembled, and it took him a long time to suppress his anger. Good, very good, at least it's within the service area. Isn't it just in arrears? This young master will just charge it for you. In a fit of anger, Morong Yangshua recharged Xiao Xingyu's cell phone number with sky-high phone bills. At this time, a text message tone came from outside the door of the preparation room. Ding! Phone bill recharge arrived, 100, 000 yuan. The door to the battle preparation room was pushed open, and Xiao Xingyu ran in hot and bothered. Six gold. Brother Yang Shua, it's been a long time, I missed you guys. Morong Yang Shua had a dark face, and after a moment of silence, he violently rushed to Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu, where have you been dead these past few days? My old sister and I, as well as Director Chan and the Dean, couldn't contact you at all. Brother Yang Shua, calm down. Impulse is the devil. Cut the crap. Give me back my phone bill. Morong Yangshua was quite good at coaxing. The next three words from Xiao Xingyu calmed him down. A 100, 000 dollar phone bill sounded outrageous. But for young master Morong it was just a meal's worth of money. After his anger subsided, Morong Yangshua deliberately warned in an icy tone. This time I helped you charge your phone bill. Don't play disappear in the future. Remember. Remember. Well, the attitude is good. By the way, aren't you returning to Dragon Hidden City to accompany your sister these days? Why did I call your phone before and it showed that it wasn't in the service area? Morong Yangshua asked to the point. Morong Xinxin was also curious, staring sideways at Xiao Xingyu. When brother Yangshua frantically called me, I should have been in the Tsong Lei mountain range, that kind of haunted place, definitely not in the service area ah. Uh, Xiao Xingyu only dared to mutter in his heart, not daring to speak out. Thinking for a moment, he chose to change the topic. Lu Jin, you're very pretty today, but there's a piece of willow floss stuck to your hair. I'll help you get it off. Also, there seems to be something on your face as well. I'll help you get it off as well. Xiao Xingyu could always find a serious reason to move against Morong Xinxin. Morong Yangshua frowned and gritted his teeth. You kid is really good. Either you play missing or you molest my sister as soon as you show up. At this Morong Xinxin was not repulsed. Her attitude towards Xiao Xingyu was different from that towards anyone else. The three of them chatted for a while before they heard the radio. There are 10 minutes left until the start of the match. Please have both players get ready and come on stage as soon as possible for the opening ceremony. Morong Yangshua straightened his clothes, his face serious and even a little heavy. Xingyu, old sister, it's time for us to make our entrance. Brother, this skirt of mine is torn. I'll go change it. Go and return quickly. Women's dressing room. Morong Xinxin's skirt had a hole in it, affecting her aesthetics, and she was ready to change it. Xin Xin, we meet again. A petulant voice came from behind Morong Xinxin. Xia Ran, in front of outsiders, Morong Xinxin generally maintained a semi-facial paralyzed appearance, appearing to be the iceberg beauty who was not shocked by anything. Seeing this young girl in front of her with a fair amount of posture, Morong Xinxin rarely produced a change in expression, with four big words of unexpected written in her eyes. Xia Ran, the daughter of Xia Zhong, the number one military advisor of the Dragon Kingdom. In the power system of the Dragon Kingdom, Xia Zhong's position, described as one person under 10,000 people. The Empress, Shang Wanlan, held Xie Zhong in the highest regard, and all national events were discussed with him. Xin Xin, I didn't expect that I would be competing as well, right? Indeed I didn't expect it. I thought that the only person who could be called a rival in this final was Xie Guanan. 
I didn't realize that you siblings had arrived. The Xie Guan in Morong Xinxin's mouth was Xie Zhong's eldest son and Xia Ren's older brother. It was interesting to say that Xia Ren's temporary entry would make this final subtle. On the Green Dragon Academy side, there were the Morong siblings. On the Vermilion Bird Academy side, there were the Xia siblings. The two pairs of siblings battling against each other added a more traffic gimmick to this final. Xin Xin, although we are childhood friends, I won't show you any mercy on the field of play. Xia Ren was a sweet girl teenager, but when she said this, her temperament was as sinister as an old hag's, and her eyes were violent and vicious. Is that so? Then I'll see you in the ring. Morong Xinxin changed her skirt and brushed past Xia Ren. Xia Ren was the only one left in the dressing room. Xia Ren looked up at herself in the dressing mirror, the corners of her scarlet mouth grinning in a twisted arc. Morong Xinxin, that incident back then, it was because of you that I was ridiculed. This time I will definitely take revenge. Morong Xinxin, both from large families, had a childhood encounter, but it seemed not too pleasant. Xia Ren tidied up her makeup, collected her hostility, and revealed a sweet smile. In the eyes of outsiders, this is a young girl without a city. However, hearts are not as big as their stomachs. Xia Ren walked out of the dressing room and a tall man was waiting for her. This man had picturesque eyebrows and good looks. Only his face was too cold, making it difficult for people to get close. Brother, I'm all packed up. Well, it's time for us to take the stage. The brother in Xia Ren's mouth was her own brother. Xia Guan, as the eldest son of the Dragon Kingdom's military master Xia Zhong, Xia Guan had excellent talent and strength, and was recognized as the country's most important weapon, the future successor to the Dragon Kingdom's military master position. Brother, wait a moment. Passing through the player's passageway, there was still a step away from the arena. Here, the cheers of the audience could already be heard. What's wrong? Xia Guan stopped in his tracks. Brother, you know, between Morong Xinxin and I, well, I know, I might not be her match, there's no harm, with me here. I will definitely help you get your face back. Chapter 108, Teenage Empresses Look at Each Other. Faithful list pulls full. Dear viewers, this is the final sight of the Supernova competition. There are still 5 minutes to go before the start of the competition, and the contestants are taking the stage one after another. The large open-air stadium was filled to capacity on the audience stage. The number of people watching the battle live reached 100, 000 plus. The number of netizens watching the webcast surpassed 10 million. The pop-up area was about to explode before the match even started. The host held the microphone in his hand and raised the volume. First to appear, the delegation from Vermilion Bird Academy. Amidst the cheers of the audience, two men and one woman walked onto the ring. These three were the Vermilion Bird Academy's top freshmen, Xia Guan, Xia Ren, and Dong Fong Chung. Someone in the audience questioned. Strange, I remember that during the first round, didn't Vermilion Bird Academy send out Lu Liner to fight? Yeah. Why did it change to Xia Ren? Isn't this Xia Ren the younger sister of Xie Guan? Brother and sister fighting together. It's a bit interesting. Since the audience questioned it, the host opened his mouth to explain. Friends of the audience, insert a piece of news. Due to Lu Liner's sudden high fever last night, she was unwell and had to go to the hospital for an infusion to recuperate. In order to ensure that the match is not delayed, Vermilion Bird Academy sent Xia Ren to fight in place of Lu Liner. The host's explanation was quite convincing. After all, in previous supernova competitions, there were often cases where players were unwell and were forced to replace them. However, behind this seemingly commonplace change was a hidden flavor of intrigue. The reason why Xia Ren replaced Lu Liner was not because Lu Liner was hospitalized with a high fever, but because she had a beef with Morong Xinxin of the Green Dragon Academy. The Xia siblings had prominent identities, and their father was Xia Zhong, the first military master of the Dragon Kingdom. So naturally, they received a lot of attention from the media. The spotlights all fell on Xie Guan and Xia Ren, which made it appear as if Dong Fang Chang, who was on the sidelines, had been gifted with a phone bill. Under the close-up camera, Xie Guan was upright and handsome, looking as touching to a woman's heart as a walking pictorial. There were waves of shouts from the audience, some female fans clamoring to give Xie Guan a monkey. Xia Ren is Xie Guan's own sister. The family genes are perfect. Exquisite features, with sweet girl style of dress, knit brows and smile is also enough to provoke most men's heartstrings. He he he, Xia Ren is so good looking, love love love, I declare, this is a world where sweet girls rule, if I can marry such a sweet girl, even if I'm punished for driving a Ferrari and living in a villa, I'm still willing, good lord, you call this punishment, you kid is not taking any loss at all, the male fans waved their glow sticks in support of Xia Ren. however, they didn't realize that people's hearts were separated by their stomachs, 
and Xia Ren's heart was even darker than the netherworld abyss full of demonic grass. Next on stage is the Green Dragon Academy delegation. Cheers once again resounded through the stadium. Xiao Xingyu stood at the seat position, a bland smile on his handsome face. The moment this man appeared on the stage, he triggered the frantic cries of the female fans. There is a saint before there is a heaven. Xingyu is more than a living god. Brother's waste isn't a waste. It's that life-threatening machete. Xingyu Xingyu, love you and support you. After the first round, Xiao Xingyu's popularity skyrocketed. Especially the hellfire lotus that bloomed in the ring earned a lot of eyeballs. Coupled with the fact that Xiao Xingyu was handsome, this caused all the girls to flood their hearts and could not help but express their love for Xiao Xingyu. The Morong siblings walked on Xiao Xingyu's left and right. This pair of white-haired siblings were the children of Morong Ashes, the admiral of the Dragon Kingdom Navy, and the center of attention for millions of people. When the host introduced the family background of the Morong siblings, Xiao Xingyu lowered his head and rubbed his hand over his nose in an effort to hide his embarrassment. If six golden brother Yangshua knew that I had a fight with Elder Morong in the few days I was missing, how would they look? Although a few days had passed since the incident of going to the Navy headquarters to rob the court, Xiao Xingyu's memory was still fresh. On the ice in Fire Island, the image of the peak duel with Morong Ashes and also White Feather as a black-robed man was all vivid in Xiao Xingyu's mind. After the information of the six contestants from Green Dragon Academy and Vermilion Bird Academy was introduced, the big screen's camera landed on the judge's table again. In the host's tone, there was more awe and admiration. The judge for this competition is, our Dragon Kingdom's Empress Lord. In the entire Dragon Kingdom, no one dared to call Shang Wan Lan by her name, and they all had to address her with the honorific title of Lord Empress. Since the camera gave Shang Wan Lan a close-up of her face, the entire audience stood up and bowed towards the judge's table, performing the ritual of loyalty to the emperor and love for the country. The people of the Dragon Kingdom had never seen Shang Wan Lan's true face. In the eyes of the world, Shang Wan Lan is a good emperor who loves and protects his people, is the guardian god who protects the great dragon country, and is also the totem who ignites the fire of mankind at the end of the world. Up and down the country, there is not a trace of public anger. All the people are honored to have this woman in the dragon country as the emperor. Under the camera, Shang Wan Lan was as beautiful as ever. Her beauty was different from any other woman in the world. A beauty that would make you overlook the details of her features. Even if you've seen this face many more times, you won't be able to stop admiring it in your heart. In the ring, Xiao Xingyu also raised his head. And like the 100, 000 spectators at the scene, he looked towards Shang Wan Lan at the judging table. There was no awe in Xiao Xingyu's eyes, only fear and anger. Even though I've learned about it on the sea near Ice Fire Island, it's still so unreal when I think about it now. Shang Wan Lan had dragon horns growing out of his head. His body was covered with dragon scales. A black dragon soul emerged behind him. He lifted his hand to turn over the sky, and his eyes turned down the sea. These were images that Xiao Xingyu would never forget. If it wasn't for the dragon's tear coming in handy at the critical moment, Xiao Xingyu, as well as Dai Lu and Medusa, would have already been buried at the bottom of the sea and fed to the sharks. In the next second, Xiao Xingyu shivered coldly, and his pupils tightened sharply. When you are gazing into the abyss, the abyss is also gazing into you. This sentence was Xiao Xingyu's experience at the moment. Shang Wan Lan's originally unfocused eyes fiercely focused on Xiao Xingyu. She was seated high above the judge's table, looking down on him. He stood in the competition ring, looking up at her with raised eyes. The stadium was filled with sound waves and a sea of people. Obviously such a lively atmosphere, but it was as if muffled and silent. For Xiao Xingyu, at this moment, he couldn't hear the pomp and noise around him. The two men looked at each other, and the sense of fatalism pulled full. On the surface, the two had a gulf-like insurmountable gap, regardless of their status or position, strength or power. However, this teenager from the Green Dragon Academy, once he put on a black robe and a ghost face mask, he transformed into a ruthless character who could escape under Shang Wan Lan's hand. This kid is called Xiao Xingyu if I remember correctly. The attendant at the side nodded in agreement. Lord Empress, you remember correctly. During the first round of the tournament, you also asked me to hand him an invitation to the Imperial Soul Training Camp. Shang Wan Lan's mind recalled being at the artificial rainfall, as well as that hellfire lotus. It's the finals, and if he takes on military master Xie's favorite son, the story will be exciting. Am I right? Military master Xie? To the left of Shang Wan Lan, in the judge's seat, sat a handsome-looking middle-aged man. The man's pupils were grayish-white in color, as were the siblings Xie Guan and Xie Ren, heterochromatic pupils a mutated gene unique to the Xie family lineage. This pupil color was not set in stone, and would change color according to the dark and cloudy changes in the weather. It just so happened that dark clouds covered the sun and the sky suddenly dimmed. 
The man's pupil color changed from gray to deep blue. What the Empress Sama said is true. Student Xiao Xingyu is incredibly talented. And if he goes up against my family Guan, he will definitely be able to give a wonderful match. Xia Zhong, the Dragon Kingdom's number one military advisor. With the strength of a 10-star Imperial Beast Master. Chapter 109, The First Battle of the Final. The flavor of gunpowder pulls full. The center of attention of the supernova competition every year was not only the upstarts in the ring, but also the bigwigs in the judges' seats. Dragon Kingdom Empress Shang Wanlan, First Military Master Xia Zhong. These two, it could be said, were the top two figures in the power system of the Dragon Kingdom that no one could shake. The difference between this year and the previous finals was that Xia Zhong's son and daughter were also in the competition as players. Xia Guan, as the eldest son of the Xia family, Xia Zhong had spent all his heart and soul on this son, coupled with the fact that Xia Guan's talent was already far beyond the norm. He was also the most favored player. As long as Xia Guan plays normally, leading Vermilion Bird Academy to win the championship is not a problem. The strength of the Green Dragon Academy isn't bad either, so it's just a matter of luck that they met military master Xia's son. In this ring, Success or failure is a split second. Time and fate are also luck. Last year's Heaven's Proud Lady Yi Shuangning, didn't she also lose to that Li Muchung? Actually, I'm also optimistic that Vermilion Bird Academy will win the championship. But gentlemen, don't forget that there's still an X Factor in Green Dragon Academy. Yeah, that Xiao Xingyu, the biggest dark horse this year, might be able to bring trouble to that genius from the Xie family. The match hadn't even begun yet, and the murmurs from the audience grew louder and louder. In most people's eyes, they thought that Xie Guan could lead the Vermilion Bird Academy to win the championship. Of course, there were also a few people who favored Xiao Xingyu. The host announced, both players please step down from the stage and enter the preparation area for final warm-up preparations. After Xiao Xingyu and the Morong siblings stepped off the stage, Chen Qinian walked over. This year's tournament system has some changes compared to last year. It has been changed to a wheel attack system. We drew lots and drew the defending side. On the contrary, Vermilion Bird Academy is the attacking side. Chen Qinian made it very clear that the match system for this final was clearly a test of both sides' ability to fight alone, and would not test teamwork. Who will be the first to fight? Chen Qinian's gaze swept over the three contestants. Director Chen. I'll do it. Morong Yangshua volunteered, patting his chest and stepping forward. Brother Yangshua, you're so positive? Xingyu, you and my sister both fought in the individual battle segment of the first round. I didn't have a chance. This time, let me feel the joy of an individual battle. In the first round of the individual battle between Green Dragon Academy and White Tiger Academy, Xiao Xingyu and Morong Xinxin went out successively. The two took the victory, ending the suspense of the match with a large 2 o'clock advantage. Because it was a 2 out of 3 system, there was no need for Morong Yangshua to fight. For this final round attack battle, Morong Yangshua's hands were itching to try and decided to be the first to take the stage. Time's up. Warm-ups are over. Please welcome the defending side, Green Dragon Academy, to send out the defending players. As soon as the host's words fell, Morong Yangshua ascended the ring with a sturdy stride. Young Master Morong I love you like a mouse loves rice. In the audience, there were also quite a few Morong Yangshua's fangirls. After all, this Morong young master belonged to the category of high wealth and handsome, and was the prince charming in the eyes of the young girls. Facing the crazy shouts of the female fans, Morong Yangshua returned a refreshing flying kiss to the audience. The screams of the female fans became even more frenzied. The corners of Xiao Xingyu's mouth under the stage twitched. Ah, uh, Ro Kujin, your brother is really an oddball. Morong Xinxin muttered. Not as odd as you. The host shouted. Will the attacking side Vermilion Bird Academy please send out attacking players? The tall, handsome man mounted the ring. His aura of seeming proficiency in intrigue and young plotting innate. I didn't expect that the first player sent by the Vermilion Bird Academy was actually their trump card character. Xia Guan. The host's surprised expression was exactly the same as the hundred thousand faces in the audience. It was reasonable to say that in a final ring with such a tense situation, placing the trump card at the end was the safest choice. Xia Guan was undoubtedly the ace of the Vermilion Bird Academy, his strength far exceeding that of his teammates Xia Ran and Dongfang Cheng. However, Vermilion Bird Academy just didn't follow the rules, favoring to play their trump card in the first matchup. Morong Yangshua stood on the stage with a stunned expression. Clearly Xia Guan's appearance on stage had caught him by surprise. I thought I'd be facing Dongfang Prime, or maybe Xia Ren, but I didn't expect to meet a formidable opponent in the opening round. The smile on Morong Yangshua's face instantly disappeared, and his entire being became serious. In the preparation area under the stage, Morong Xinxin's eyes were turbulent. My brother is usually a narcissist, quite confident in his own strength. Xiao Xingyu nodded. Yes, brother Yangshua is usually very confident, 
But at this moment, his expression is that of an enemy. Xiaoguan's strength was well known to passers-by. Someone as narcissistic as Moron Yangshua would have no idea in his heart when facing Xiaoguan. Brother Yangshua, go for it. Moron Yangshua looked back and saw Xiao Xingyu waving a fluorescent stick for himself under the stage, as well as Moron Xinxin who had determined eyes. Although my opponent is very strong, but I'm the son of a great admiral of the Dragon Kingdom Navy. I can't lose my temper in front of my brother and sister. Moron Yangshua's eyes regained their firmness and began to mobilize his spiritual power. Xiaoguan looked calm as he lightly lifted his lips. It's over. Moron Yangshua looked confused. What's over? From this moment I stepped onto the ring, the match is over. Xiaoguan, what exactly do you mean? I, alone, will fight through all three of you. Putting out vicious words was a necessary part of the match before it began. Xiao Wei'an's words were ruthless to the extreme. The host watched to see what was going on. Hear that? Did everyone hear that? Xiaoguan let out a cruel word. He's going to fight through the three people of Qinglong Academy all by himself. It's not hard to see that Xiaoguan is determined to win the title, and I also believe that he has the strength to do so. With these words, Xiaoguan ignited the atmosphere of the stadium. What was a final? A tit for tat with the flavor of gunpowder, pulling up grudges and feuds against each other, was the true final. Xiaoguan, you can be wild, but you'll never try to attack me. As the defending side of the ring, Moron Yangshua was filled with conviction, vowing to hold on to the dignity of the first battle for the Green Dragon Academy. The match is about to begin. Defending side, Green Dragon Academy, Morong Yangshua. Attacking side, Vermilion Bird Academy, Xiaoguan. Both players, please summon your respective Imperial Beasts. Warm reminder, in this tournament system, players can summon any number of Imperial Beasts. The host read out the rules of the tournament, which was the final statement before the battle began. On the judges' table, Shang Wanlan and Xie Zhong, it seemed, were not focusing on the ring. Between the pair of monarchs, they were talking about the incident that happened a few days ago. Lord Empress, the identity of the black-robed man, has it not been found out yet? This emperor has already ordered the Imperial Soul Society to send out all the silver priests to secretly investigate the whereabouts of the black-robed man, and there are no results yet. The black-robed man had robbed Medusa, stirred up the naval headquarters, and escaped from Shang Wanlan's men. This was a big enough event to alarm the whole country, but it was deliberately concealed by Shang Wanlan. The whole country doesn't know about it. Regarding the black-robed man, it was a taboo topic. Xia Zhong pursed his lips and analyzed. Lord Empress, the black-robed man's background is unknown. His strength is unknown. And his identity is unknown. Such a dangerous character must be gotten rid of as soon as possible. Shang Wan Lan sighed. That guy is so godlike. It's not easy to catch him. Xia Zhong was silent for a moment before speaking out. Lord Empress, have you ever heard of? Darkness under the lights? What Minister Xia means is, Xia Zhong continued to analyze, is there a possibility that the black-robed man has two identities, clad in a black robe and wearing a ghost face mask, he is the black-robed man, taking off the black robe and tearing off the mask, he could be an inconspicuous minor figure in a city in the Dragon Kingdom, or he could be a high-powered and important general, Shang Wan Lan's petite body stiffened and looked sideways at Xia Zhong, this analysis of yours is quite reasonable, but according to what you said, it is possible that you are also a black-robed person? Lord Empress is joking. I'm naturally not. But you should pay attention to all those people around you who seem to have no problems. Beside Shang Wan Lan, there were all heavy ministers. For example, military advisor Xie Zhong. For example, the Forbidden Army, Imperial Soul Society, that she personally cultivated. Another example was the three great generals of the sea, land and air. Shang Wan Lan was suspicious. She would suspect everyone around her but she would definitely not suspect a two-star imperial beast master from the Green Dragon Academy at the moment, no matter who it was, without turning on God's perspective. How could she possibly connect the black-robed man who had toppled the naval headquarters with his own strength to a freshman from the Green Dragon Academy? For now, she has no reason to suspect a small person like me. I should be safe. Under the stage, Xiao Xingyu's afterglow stole glances at Shang Wan Lan on the judging table from time to time. The Empress is connected to your heart, and you're playing with the Empress brain? This sentence was an afterthought. Audience, the match is about to begin. Both contestants have summoned their first imperial beasts. Morong Yangshua summoned his best harnessed thunder imperial beast, the thunderstorm griffin. Along with a clear chirping cry, thunder clouds covered the sky above the stadium, and the dull sound of thunder could be faintly heard. Above Morong Yangshua's head hovered a huge-sized griffin. It possessed the size of a lion, with the head of an eagle and a pair of wings so feathery that it would release blue lightning with just a slight flap. This was Moron Yangshua's most valued imperial beast, the thunderstorm griffin. 
Under the ring, Xiao Xingyu did not forget to open the eye of the demon god while cheering Murong Yangshua on. The data panel of the thunderstorm griffin was presented before his eyes, and even the hidden information was visible. Name, thunderstorm griffin. Level, growing body, third order. Bloodline, legendary bloodline. Talent, spirit thunder, able to paralyze the enemy's soul for a short period of time. Attributes, thunder. Flight. Loyalty, 94. Hidden evolutionary root, thunderstorm griffin pale thunder fire hammer, griffin, can overdraw both fire attribute and thunder attribute war hammers. Weakness, poor endurance. Unable to end the battle in a short period of time will get into trouble. This was the data panel of the thunderstorm griffin, and Xiao Xingyu was looking at it all. I didn't realize that the thunderstorm griffin also has a hidden evolutionary root. For the sake of brother Yangshua and I calling ourselves brothers, find a chance to help him out. In this world, the only person who could activate the hidden bloodline of the imperial beasts was Xiao Xingyu, the king of open-ended hangers-on. As the battle was about to begin, Xiao Xingyu cupped his chin and analyzed the pros and cons. The advantage of the thunderstorm griffin is that the attack burst damage is high, and the attack speed as well as the movement speed is fast. The key for this type of imperial beast to win in the ring is the opening 3 minutes. Once the advantage is not played within 3 minutes, the weakness of poor range will be exposed after 3 minutes. As Xiao Xingyu analyzed, he looked up at Morong Yangshua's back, then his eyes moved and landed on Xie Guanan. This person is Xie Zhong's son, he looks like he has a deep city and is not easy to deal with. Xie Zhong was the number one military advisor of the Dragon Kingdom, as well as a 10-star imperial beast master that could be counted on one hand in the country. The son of such a big shot would naturally not be inferior in strength and talent. The host shouted, Viewers, Xie Guan has summoned a brand new royal beast that he has never used in any of his previous tournaments. The 100. 000 viewers on the scene, as well as the millions of netizens in the live stream, all had their eyes focused on Xieguan's side. Tiger whistles, wolf chants, and leopard roars. The voices of three different species resounded through the clouds at the same time. Beside Xieguan, a black shadow with a massive body appeared. Its body resembled that of a sturdy steed, with slender limbs and iron hooves burning with ghostly blue flames. However, what was jaw dropping was that on its shoulders, three heads actually grew. The weirdness was not only that, these three heads were different. The center was a tiger's head, the left side was a wolf's head, and the right side was a leopard's head. This strange form of monster, even difficult to use language to accurately describe, caused people's hot discussion. The scene was in an uproar. There was an old saying circulating in the community, the weirder the mold, the faster you win. The meaning of this saying was that often, those imperial beasts with the more bizarre molds won the matches in the ring at a faster rate. Oh my, what kind of imperial beast is this monster? Looks like I'm the one who's ignorant. I've never seen this kind of imperial beast. Three heads, each of which is a tiger, wolf and leopard, but the body is like an ancient warhorse, and the hooves have blue flames. What a long time to live. The host was also confused. He had never seen this kind of imperial beast either. But fortunately the backstage staff gave the answer. The large electronic screen suspended above the ring hit the data panel. Name, Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast. Level, Growing Body, Third Order. Bloodline, Heavenly Demon Bloodline, Mythical Quality. Talent, Heavenly Demon Gene, reduces the attack value of enemies within range by 70%. 70% movement speed. Attribute, Superpower System. This was the basic attribute panel of the Heavenly Demon Blue Flame Beast. Data that could be made public. Although only the tip of the iceberg was made public, it still caused the crowd to gasp and sigh. Heavenly Demon Bloodline? Crap. A Heavenly Demon Bloodline Imperial Beast has actually appeared on the field of the Supernova competition. This Xie Guan is hiding deep enough. I didn't see him use this magical beast during the first round. Able to reduce the attack value and movement speed of enemies within its range by 70%? Outrageous. Outrageous. The Heavenly Demon Bloodline. Belonged to a mythological quality bloodline. Imperial beasts with this bloodline flowing in their bodies were extremely rare, and usually only appeared in the blood refining ice mountain outside of the Dragon Kingdom's northern border. The host was the mouthpiece of the audience, holding the microphone and lamenting. Alas. Xiaguan deserves to be the son of military master Xie, to be able to contract such a rare imperial beast. There was no doubt that for an average royal beast master family, there was no chance of traveling to the blood refining ice mountain. Xia Zhong was a 10 star imperial beast master, and with his strength, he was able to come and go freely in the blood refining ice mountain. In that case, it would seem that for a father to go to that kind of dangerous place to capture a heavenly demon bloodline royal beast for his son, it would be something that could not be faulted. Xiao Xingyu stood on the stage his face grave, the eye of the demon god could see through all the data of the heavenly demon blue flame beast, as well as the hidden data. This era, it's still the era of spelling father. 
Not to mention how talented Xie Guan himself is. Anyone who has such a good father as Xie Zhong and gets such heaven-defying resources can become a strong person. Morong Xinxin bit her lip. My brother is in danger. Xiao Xingyu wrapped his arm around Morong Xinxin's shoulders and said soothingly, Lu Jin, don't jump to conclusions yet. I think brother Yangshua still has a chance. Morong Xinxin shook his head. Xie Guan summoned the heavenly demon blue flame beast. His heart can be seen. Xiao Xingyu couldn't refute this. It was just the way it was. If Xie Guan didn't have any other bad intentions, then why didn't he use the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast during the first round? This fellow's intentions were obvious. He was riveted and wanted to teach the Morong siblings a lesson. Xiao Xingyu's mind was sharp in sensing the difference. He couldn't help but ask, Lu Jin, you two siblings, do you have some sort of beef with the Xie family? Morong Xinxin was surprised. You see it? Sure enough there's a problem. Quickly tell me. I love to hear gossip. Morong Xinxin's face was gloomy. Xiao Xingyu hurriedly changed his words. Ahem. I mean, I want to hear what kind of grudge you guys have. Morong Xinxin fell into reminiscence. Did you see that woman? Xiao Xingyu looked in the direction of Morong Xinxin's finger. Isn't that Xie Guan's sister? Xia Ran? I had some unpleasant things with her when I was a child. Before Morong Xinxin could go into detail, Xiao Xingyu suddenly froze. Xia Guan, Xia Ren, and Xia Zhong. This family's pupils, they don't seem right. Xiao Xingyu's demon god's eye saw things that normal people couldn't see. The huge open-air stadium was filled with people and the atmosphere was baked to a critical point. The heavenly demon blue flame beast stunned the entire arena when it made its appearance, which made people look forward to the showdown in the ring even more. Just as everyone's attention was focused on the sky demon blue flame beast, Xiao Xingyu noticed something else. Whether it was Xie Guan, or Xie Ren, or Xie Zhong who was sitting high up on the judges' table, the color of these three people's pupils changed with the intensity of the daylight. 6 Gold, the Xie family's eyes, that's called heterochromatic pupils, a genetic trait of the Xie family, Xiao Xingyu pursued, is there any difference between heterochromatic pupils and our ordinary people's pupils, there's not much of a difference, it's just a different color, hearing Morong Xingxin's answer, Xiao Xingyu confirmed one thing, the world only knew about heterochromatic pupils, but did not know the wonders of this special pupil, Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god and could see the data information of the heterochromatic pupil, this heterochromatic pupil is more than just what it appears to be. It only changes color with the intensity of daylight. It can also perceive the enemy's movements and predict the enemy's attack moves and attack angles in advance. Strictly speaking, this is a pair of beast pupils. Xiao Xingyu's heart was greatly shocked. For the first time in a human, he saw the pupils of a magical beast's eyes. The body of a human. The pupils of a magical beast's eyes. The two are perfectly fused. So is it a human or a beast? Xiao Xingyu's meticulous thinking. Coupled with the fact that it was easy to think out of the box, the image of Shang Wan Lan transforming into the form of a black dragon emerged in his mind. Shang Wan Lan hit a pair of dragon pupils. And back then, the purebred dragon race also belonged to a branch of the great race of magical beasts. Xia Zhong was Shang Wan Lan's most valued minister and possessed a special beast pupil gene. These two big people were both related to beasts. Xiao Xingyu's brows furrowed into a Chuan character. His thoughts were all over the place, but he couldn't make sense of it. It seems that not only Shang Wan Lan, but this Xie family, must also have a close relationship with the dragon slaying battle back then. But with my current strength, it's better not to have too many interactions with these big shots. In decent development, that's the way to go. When Xiao Xingyu competed in the ring, he fought in a heavenly manner, choosing sparring styles that were extremely bold. However, when it came to matters involving the safety of his life, Xiao Xingyu was more cautious than anyone else. When one's own strength was not enough, one should not be curious about the secrets on a big person. The truth that curiosity killed the cat was clear in Xiao Xingyu's heart. The match begins. The referee blew the horn. The duel in the ring officially began. Morong Yangshua had no choice. The thunderstorm griffin's advantage could only last for the opening three minutes. So he had to try to strike first. Under the urging of spiritual energy, the thunderstorm griffin soared into the sky. Its wings flapping, swooping down from a high altitude. Its body transforming into a lightning lance. The host shouted loudly. Morong Yangshua took the lead. And as soon as the game started, the Thunderstorm Griffin took out its signature battle technique, Vault Lightning Lance. The Lightning Lance was a rainbow of air, cutting through the frozen air and illuminating the earth. Without the slightest change of expression on his face, Siagwan only gave the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast a hint. The host exclaimed once again. A shocking scene has appeared on the field. Siagwan didn't even mobilize his spiritual energy. His intentions were, to have the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast, resist the strike hard. Zila Zila. The lightning lance pierced the back of the sky demon blue flame beast, but the current instantly weakened by two-thirds. 
The thunderstorm griffin exposed its original form, and the electric light on its body dimmed a lot. Boom! After the explosion, the smoke dispersed. The audience stared at the center of the ring with wide eyes, and without exception, they all revealed expressions of surprise. The host's jaws were about to drop in shock as he raised his arms and shouted, Unbelievable! The sky demon blue flame beast hardened itself against the thunderstorm griffin's signature battle technique and remained unharmed. In the ring, the sky demon blue flame beast stood tall, its three heads simultaneously revealing a cruel and excited smile. The thunderstorm griffin flew back up high in the air with a shocked expression, not expecting that his proud battle technique couldn't actually deal the slightest damage. Morong Yangshua secretly clenched his fist, his face ugly. This guy's imperial beast is simply a monster. The talent of the heavenly demon blue flame beast was called the heavenly demon gene. This talent was the most notable characteristic of all heavenly demon bloodline imperial beasts. The spectators could notice that a faint ring-shaped halo emanated from underneath the heavenly demon blue flame beast's feet if they looked closely. The diameter of this halo was about 10 meters. In this field, any enemy attacking the sky demon blue flame beast would have their attack value cut by 70% and their movement speed cut by 70%. Coupled with the fact that the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast was born with strong bones, thick fur, and a high armor value, combining the two, it was reasonable to be able to resist the Thunderstorm Griffin's move without any damage, but it was really outrageous. Let's go, a Heavenly Demon Bloodline Imperial Beast, it's also too resistant to being beaten up, 70% injury free effect, coupled with super thick armor, the same level of opponents, who can not hurt it ah, the winner and loser of this round have already been decided. So I guess young Master Moron can only swallow defeat with tears in his eyes. In just one round, the balance of victory was clearly tilted. Moron Yangshua was also guilty of muttering in his heart, his forehead oozing with an unstoppable cold sweat. Imagine when your imperial beast strikes with all its might, and the enemy's imperial beast doesn't even have to dodge, and is still unharmed. This kind of frustration would instantly empty all self-confidence and suffocate you. At this moment, Moron Yangshua was facing such a predicament, or rather a desperate situation. Under the ring, Xiao Xingyu was listening to Morong Xinxin tell a story. When I was 12 years old, I awakened my spiritual power. Xia Ran also awakened her spiritual power. We were still friends at that time. After all, our fathers were old acquaintances in the official world. Morong Ashes was the Dragon Kingdom's Navy Admiral, and Xia Zhong was the Dragon Kingdom's first military division. Based on such status, the two were considered old comrades. Morong Xinxin continued to reminisce. That year, our Dragon Kingdom won a battle and captured many magical beast cubs with extremely high bloodline quality alive. Lord Empress gave instructions for us children who had awakened our spiritual powers to pick our favorite magical beast cubs in preparation for becoming Imperial Beast Masters. Xia Ran and I have our eyes on the same magical beast cub. Xiao Xingyu interjected. A bone-winged bat beast? That's right. Morong Xinxi nodded. At that time, the bone-winged bat beast was just a little baby that had just been born for a month. As petite as a lark. Since Xia Ran and I both had our eyes on it, we had to compete fairly. Whoever the bone wing bat beast chooses will be its master. Xiao Xingyu interjected with a smile. Without a doubt, the bone wing bat beast chose you. That's Xia Ran. Who holds a grudge against you because of this? There were people present at that time, including Lord Empress, and some big names as well. She felt that she had lost face because of this incident, so she held a grudge, and we rarely saw each other since then. Xiao Xingyu finished listening to the story and once again cast his eyes towards the preparation area on the other side of the ring. Xia Ran was at the bottom of the stage, looking at Xia Guanan in the ring. Although Xiao Xingyu couldn't hear Xia Ren's voice from a distance, he could tell just by the mouth shape. Brother, don't show any mercy. In front of Morong Xinxin, get her brother's imperial beast abolished. Xiao Xingyu's face sank, his eyes penetrating with coldness. No wonder this family has beast pupils, heterochromatic pupils. Their heart is no different from a ferocious magical beast. The battle continued. In the ring, Moron Yangshua was at a disadvantage. Boom! Another round of exchanges. The thunderstorm griffin flapped its wings and hovered in midair, breathing heavily as the currents on its body weakened once again. On the contrary, the sky demon blue flame beast stood in the center of the ring, unmoving, without a single wound on its rough and thick skin. The host had to exclaim once again. It's unbelievable. The sky demon gene's injury-free effect. It's practically an insurmountable talent. The heavenly demon blue flame beast came with a 70% damage avoidance effect, and with its rough and thick skin, the thunderstorm griffin couldn't do anything to it at all. At this moment, Morong Yangshua's face was slightly pale. Although he wanted to win this match, he was unable to do so. Xiaguan wore a smile on his face. His tone was laced with mockery. Morong Yangshua, the three-minute time limit is almost up. 
The thunderstorm griffin's period of strength is about to come to an end. Morong Yangshua clenched his teeth and was powerless to retort. Under the ring, Chen Qinian, as the coach, also gradually darkened his expression. The thunderstorm griffin is an imperial beast that relies on the early stages to establish an advantage. If you don't establish an advantage within three minutes in the early stages, you will fall into passivity. Xiao Xingyu nodded his head and agreed. Director Chen, the thunderstorm griffin has high burst damage but poor range. This match might. Chen Qinian looked at Xiao Xingyu and suddenly asked. Xiao Xingyu, you have a lot of ghostly ideas. How do you think we should deal with the sky demon blue flame beast? The heavenly demon blue flame beast's heavenly demon gene has 70% damage immunity. There's only one way to deal with it. Increase the thunderstorm griffin's attack value by 70%, or even 80% or 90%, as a way to counteract the opponent's talent and hit the damage effect. After Xiao Xingyu finished speaking, Chen Qinian froze for a moment, then shook his head and laughed straight. Easy for you to say. How can the thunderstorm griffin's attack value, without using any drugs, instantly increase by that much? Xiao Xingyu muttered in a small voice. My family's black striker can do it. What did you say? And nothing. Just then, a mournful scream came from the ring. Xiao Xingyu looked up and saw that Xieguan, who had been holding his ground, suddenly launched a counterattack. At Xieguan's command, the sky demon blue flame beast stomped on the ground with all four limbs, and four balls of blue flames remained on the shattered floor. The thunderstorm griffin hovering in midair was unable to react, and was torn through its feathers by the sharp claws of the sky demon blue flame beast. Rumble. The thunderstorm griffin descended from the sky and smashed heavily on the ring, sending dust flying. Moron Yangshua's face changed drastically, and he rushed forward to check the situation. The entire audience cheered and applauded like a succession of surging waves. The audience just loved to see blood and flesh splattering battles. It could stimulate adrenaline to soar and feel a strong visual impact. The heavenly demon blue flame beast hits the thunderstorm griffin with a hungry tiger pounce. The thunderstorm griffin's left wing suffered a heavy blow, impeding its flight ability. I have to say, the gap between the two imperial beasts is, well, huge. The gap between the two imperial beast masters is also. The host didn't make his words clear, but the eyes of the masses were bright. From the current performance, Moron Yangshuai and Xieguanan weren't even players of the same level. Alas, I guess young master Morong is bound to lose. Actually, young master Morong's strength isn't bad, but it's because his opponent is the son of military master Xie. The heavenly demon blue flame beast's ability is too perverted. The thunderstorm griffin's period of strength has passed. There's no point in fighting any longer. If it was me, I would have admitted defeat. Morong Yangshua stood on the ring and could hear the audience's comments. In fact, he knew in his own heart that he was not a match for Xieguan as he could not do a single thing with the heavenly demon blue flame beast. Xieguan smiled. It's just a match, just point to point. You can admit defeat. Morong Yangshua clenched his fists, his nails embedded in the flesh of his palms, a small amount of blood spilling out. Damn it, this surname Xie, is using provocation. Morong Yangshua was not a reckless man, he had the ability to think independently, and it was clear that Xie Guan's words, were deliberately provoking him, if one thought about it from a calm perspective, admitting defeat was the best option, after all, knowing that he couldn't win the fight, he might as well let his imperial beast suffer a little less, the thunderstorm griffin's left wing was injured, and its stamina was showing signs of overdraft, so it would only suffer more serious injuries if it continued to fight. But at this moment, Morong Yangshua was unable to calm down, especially when he looked back and saw Morong Xinxin under the ring. Back then, the beef between Morong Xinxin and Xiaren, Morong Yangshua, who was his brother, naturally knew about it. Xia Duanan, Morong Yangshua looked at Xia Guanan once again, his eyes stirring with monstrous battle intent. What? Still want to continue fighting? I won't lose to your Xia family in front of my sister. Come on. Seeing his brother's attitude, Morong Xinxin wanted to speak out to dissuade him, but was stopped by Xiao Xingyu. What are you stopping me for? Lu Jin. At this moment, the brother Yang Shua in the ring is not a contestant, but a brother. Morong Xinxin wanted to speak. Since childhood, Morong Yang Shua had favored this younger sister. There's not much spiritual energy left. I must take a gamble. In front of my sister, I can't lose to the Xie family. Anyone with a discerning eye could see that Morong Yang Shua was not fighting for himself but for his sister, because once he conceded defeat, according to the rules of the match, the next one to make an appearance would be Morong Xinxin. Morong Yangshua was not only Morong Xinxin's brother, but also a layer of her shield. When the shield broke, the person behind the shield would have to face danger. This was something Morong Yangshua did not want to see. The match continued. The host shouted, Morong Yangshua has summoned the second imperial beast. Beside Morong Yangshua, 
a robust and sturdy ape appeared. There wasn't a single hair on the ape's body, and its skin was as black as ink and hard as hell. The blazing steel giant ape, Morong Yangshu was second imperial beast, was at the same level as the thunderstorm griffin, both being mature bodies, third rank. Host, it can be seen that Morong Yangshua intends to gamble all of his remaining spiritual energy to strike the final blow. The entire audience stood up in anticipation of the exhilarating moment. Morong Yangshua roared, releasing all of his remaining spiritual energy. The fiery steel giant ape leapt high into the air, its left arm elongating and thickening. Looking like the golden hoop cudgel of the great sage of Qi Tian de Shang, its length spanning across the entire ring. Although the injured thunderstorm griffin was unable to fly, it could still release lightning. Zila Zila. The giant rod of steel wrapped around blue lightning and fell from high above, smashing into the sky demon blue flame beast. This is the combination skill of the fiery steel giant ape and the thunderstorm griffin, heavenly thunder mallet. At the same time, this is also Moron Yangshua's life-threatening strike that empties all of his spiritual energy. What exactly is the result? Let's focus the camera on the heavenly demon blue flame beast. At the critical moment, Xiaguan's eyes were sharp as he used his mind to give orders. The sky demon blue flame beast possessed three heads. The right side of the leopard head opened its mouth, the air around it forming a blood-colored vortex. The steel rod crawling with lightning smashed onto the blood-colored vortex, triggering an explosion that shook through the audience's eardrums. The explosion lasted for a long time as a lightning bolt pulled and tangled in the sky above the stadium like a long flying snake. Plop. Morong Yangshuan knelt down on one knee, sweating profusely. The combined strike of the fiery steel giant ape and thunderstorm griffin just now had drained all of Morong Yangshuan's spiritual energy. It should have an effect, right? No. It must have an effect. Morong Yangshuan's eyes were firm, staring intently at the thick smoke and black mist that had been lifted up by the explosion in front of him. This was the strongest strike that Morong Yangshuan was proud of. He used to sweat it out in the training ground. Practicing this combination battle technique with his two imperial beasts over and over again. Terrifying burst damage. Super high attack speed. Almost no delay or skill forward swing. Physical damage, steel strike, and spell damage, thunder strike, mixed with each other. In all fairness, this combination battle skill of heavenly thunder mallet was truly terrifying in its power. And the moment the skill was unleashed, everyone saw that it did hit the sky demon blue flame beast. But what followed was an explosion. And thick smoke surged from the ring obscuring people's sight. The thick smoke has dispersed. Unbelievable. The sky demon blue flame beast actually blocked the combination battle technique of the blazing steel giant ape and the thunderstorm griffin. The host jumped onto the commentary stage and shouted, and the entire audience screamed like a frying pan boiling over. The scene presented in the ring was enough to refresh people's perceptions. Only the leopard head on the right side of the sky demon blue flame beast's shoulder spewed out a round of oval blood-colored vortexes from its mouth, twisting and distorting the surrounding air. The steel rod entwined with lightning then smashed on the blood-colored vortex, and it was like smashing on soft cotton, the force dissipating. Technically speaking, the force didn't dissipate, but was absorbed. Everyone, pay attention. The scarlet vortex actually absorbed all the damage. The people sitting in the front row of the audience had a deep understanding of the situation, and could clearly see a streak of lightning being sucked into the bottomless blood-colored vortex. How is that possible? Moron Yangshu was eye sockets tore, his pupils trembling like an earthquake unwilling to accept the fact that what was happening in front of him. The great move is ineffective? Oh no. Oh no. Young Master Moron has lost. This heavenly demon blue flame beast's ability is too perverse. It can actually absorb such massive attack damage. And this heaven-defying ability of absorbing damage is just the leopard head's ability. Yeah, besides the leopard head, there's also the tiger head and the wolf head. In the ring, Moron Yangshua had already consumed his last ounce of spiritual energy and lost his chance to resist. Xiaguan no longer wasted any more time. The corner of his lips raised in a faint smile. The match is over. These words, devoid of emotional fluctuations, were as if they were pronouncing a death sentence on Morong Yangshua. Roar! The heavenly demon blue flame beast bowed its body, opened its mouth and roared, roaring out a pillar of blue fire that accurately bombarded the bodies of the fiery steel giant ape and the thunder griffin. Wild winds rose in the gymnasium. The ground was lifted up, and the solidified air ignited at the slightest point. This is the signature skill of the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast. Blue Demon Roar. This move declared the end of the match. I don't know if you all have the same feeling as me, but this move is very similar to the Hell Specter Wolf's Hell Roar. The host spoke the audience's mind. The Blue Demon Roar, performed by the Heavenly Demon Blue Flame Beast looked especially similar to the Hell Specter Wolf's Hell Roar. The only difference between the two was the color of the flames. One was a blue flame, and the other was a black flame. After the flames were extinguished, the ring presented a completely different light than before the start of the match. 
The blazing steel giant ape collapsed to the ground, and even its hard steel skin was roasted by the blue flames, with a large amount of blood seeping out from its wounds. The thunderstorm griffin's breath was weak, its wings were severely damaged, its feathers were burnt black, and smoke was coming out from the top of its head. Morong Yangshua's stamina was overdrawn, his body was staggering, and he was about to fall down. The referee blew the whistle for the end of the match. The match is over. Winner, Vermilion Bird Academy, Siegwon. The audience applauded. This was a world of the weak and the strong, and an era where martial arts were honored. People only revered the strong and never pitted the weak. Even some of Moron Yangshua's diehard fans were convinced by Siegwon's power at this moment, and they were on the verge of turning against him. Siegwon An maintained his elegant smile and said indifferently, You're too weak. Carry away the next one. The host couldn't help but be staggered. Xia Guan gained victory. His words are as arrogant as they come, but he, indeed, has the capital to be arrogant. Morong Yangshua's eyes blurred as he planted himself backwards, but instead of smashing into the ground, his body landed in a wide embrace. Brother Yangshua. Morong Yangshua fell into Xiao Xingyu's arms. He he, I didn't expect ah, I would make a fool of myself in front of my brother. What a fall. Morong Yangshua smiled bitterly and laughed to himself. His tone was filled with unwillingness and helplessness. The corners of his bleeding lips were stained with too much bitterness. Xiao Xingyu assisted Morong Yangshua to walk down the ring. Morong Xinxin walked over and handed over a bottle of water. Brother, drink some water. Old sister, brother is sorry for letting you see me in such a sorry state. Morong Xinxin shook her head before looking at Xieguanan in the ring. Brother, losing the first match doesn't matter. I'll fight back for you. At this time, the referee announced. The second match is about to begin. Defending side. Vermilion Bird Academy, Siegwon. Attacking side, Green Dragon Academy Morong Xinxin. According to the rules of the match, it was Morong Xinxin's turn to take the ring. The moment he saw Morong Xinxin mount the ring, Xia Ran under the stage was agitated. His fists clenched and his bones rattling. Brother, teach this woman a good lesson. This was Xia Ran's inner monologue. She wouldn't say it in public. In front of people, she had always been a sweet sister with a gentle disposition. Her inner darkness hidden deep. Xia Guan swept a glance at Morong Xinxin. I don't want to rough up a girl. It's not too late for you to admit defeat and forfeit. Xia Guan was known to be provocative. Not many words in between, but always mocking in place. This kind of discourse could easily enrage his opponent. And his purpose was achieved. I will defeat you. Morong Xinxin was also a master of sparing words. Xia Guan smiled and nodded his head. Since you don't choose to admit defeat and forfeit the match, I will make you lose. Even worse than your brother. From this moment onwards, the atmosphere in the ring was off. The duel between Xie Guan and Morong Xinxin was not just a competitive match, it was also mixed with personal grudges. Before the battle started, Xie Guan glanced at Xie Ran under the stage, seeing his sister's face full of expectation. Xie Guan secretly said in his heart, Don't worry sister, I'll make the Morong family's girl, lose without a trace. On the other side of the preparation area, Xiao Xingyu was constantly concerned about the change in Xie Guan's eyes. It seems that this guy, Wants to use the opportunity of the match to take revenge on my family's six gold on behalf of his sister. Xia Ren, Xiao Xingyu subconsciously opened the eye of the demon god, his scarlet eyes as vicious as a demon hunter. Little turtle grandson, as long as you dare to bully Lu Jin, when it's my turn on the field, I'll kill you. Xiao Xingyu didn't have many good qualities as a person, one of which was being true to his word. With the referee's whistle, the second match begins. Friends of the audience, this is sure to be a battle of sparks hitting the earth. Will it be Xia Guanan who defends the ring and breaks it in two? Or will Morong Xinxin avenge his brother and successfully attack the ring? Everyone, don't blink. Don't miss a single exciting moment. The host gave an impassioned commentary, pushing the atmosphere of the scene to the peak once again. Under the ring, the preparation area, Morong Yangshua was physically drained and his spiritual energy was exhausted, so he could only sit on a chair to rest. Director Chen, I'm sorry for failing your trust and expectations, even though his heart was not willing. Morong Yangshua could only swallow this defeat with regret. Going out on a limb was a major taboo for soldiers. After losing the first match, Qinglong Academy was at a disadvantage. Seeing his sister having to face Xie Guan who had just defeated him, Morong Yangshua was filled with shame. Chen Qinian patted Morong Yangshua's shoulder and pacified him with a serious tone. You have to know that victory and defeat are commonplace in the military. And if you want to become strong, you must necessarily learn to accept defeat. Morong Yangshua knew that Chen Qinian was comforting himself and the corners of his downward sloping lips were slightly bitter. Xiao Xingyu raised his hand, clenched it into a fist, and disliked Morong Yangshua's chest slightly harder. Brother Yangshua, if one defeat makes you lose your fighting spirit, 
then I look down on you. Morong Yangshua barely managed to squeeze out a smile and joked, Bastard fellow, losing face in front of you is really a thing to be angry and hateful. Xiao Xingyu deliberately teased, You, you didn't lose unfairly. That Xieguan does have a few brushes. Well, I know, that guy is indeed strong. Ridiculously strong. Morong Yangshua didn't get annoyed because he lost the match, and in front of Xiao Xingyu and Chen Qinian, he greatly admitted that Xieguan was strong enough. This kind of calmness of heart was the necessary quality to become a strong person. Xing Yu, the reason why I was filled with resentment after losing the match was not because I couldn't afford to lose, it was because, Brother Yang Shua, just now, when you were fighting in the ring, Rokujin told me all about it. You know about the beef between my sister and Xiaoran? Aha! Morong Yang Shua looked at Xiao Xing Yu with a strange look. You kid can do it. My sister never tells these secrets to outsiders. She actually told you. Is there a problem? No no problem. Morong Yangshua lowered his head. His heart inevitably rambled. This sister of mine. Her attitude towards Xiao Xingyu is getting stranger and stranger. At this rate, he shouldn't really become my brother-in-law. Right? Xiao Xingyu didn't notice the change in Morong Yangshua's eyes. His attention had returned to the ring. The match began. Morong Xinxin summoned the bone wing bat beast. Undead aura swirled around the ring. Filling the entire stadium. A huge white bone bat flew up into the sky green flames burning in its empty eye sockets. This was the fire of the undead, capable of searing the souls of enemies. The host got excited, holding the microphone and yelling, Friends of the audience, undead imperial beasts, are also an extremely rare type. As we all know, the greatest advantage of undead type royal beasts is that they have no sense of pain. I'm afraid this battle won't be that easy to determine a winner. The bone-winged bat beast drew cheers as it took the stage. Voices from the audience reached Xia Ren's ears. An undead imperial beast, what a dominating appearance. Yeah, when the undead flame ignited, I felt like my soul was going to hell. Miss Morong has a great talent in harnessing the undead lineage imperial beasts. The more people praised Morong Xinxin, the angrier Xiaoren became inside. At this moment, she was straining her face, her back teeth almost clenched. Dongfang Cheng on the side was a chatterbox and couldn't help but gossip. Xiaoren, I heard that many years ago, you and Morong Xinxin competed for the Bone Wing Bat Beast Cub. In the end, the Bone Wing Bat Beast Cub chose Morong Xinxin to be its royal master. Before Dong Fang Ching could finish, he was interrupted by Xia Ren's cold voice. If you don't want to be taught a lesson by my brother, shut the hell up. Dong Fang Prime took a step back, covering his mouth with both hands, forcibly holding back the fire of gossip within him, not daring to ask half a word about what happened back then. It wasn't that he was afraid of Xia Ren, but he was afraid of Xia Ren's brother, Xia Guan, and the Dragon Kingdom's first military master, Xia Zhong who was sitting on the judging table. Xia Ren's gaze was once again cast towards the ring, staring intently at Morong Xinxin's face that was even better looking than hers. At the same time, she also glanced at the bone-winged bat beast that had already been promoted to a mature body, third stage. Back then, you snatched my imperial beast in front of so many people. Today I will make you pay. Before the tournament began, Xia Ren had begged Xia Guan to help her take revenge. Although Xia Guan's temperament was uncertain and his city was extremely deep, but in terms of doting on his sister, he was more than a match for Morong Yangshua. Brother, abolish the bone wing bat beast and teach this woman a lesson. Make her make a fool of herself in front of 100, 000 spectators. Xia Ren stood on the stage, maintaining a sweet image on the surface, while her inner monologue was extremely twisted. Although Xia Ren was well disguised, and the vicious words were only hidden in her heart, she was easily penetrated by Xiao Xingyu. From the look in Xia Ren's eyes, she hates Lu Jin. If Xie Guan is the same as brother Yangshua, a spoiled sister fiend, then six gold. Xiao Xingyu secretly sweated for Morong Xinxin. At this time, Chen Xingyan's voice came from the side and back. What do you think? Morong Xinxin has a few percent chance of winning this battle? Xiao Xingyu replied. As long as Lu Jin does what I said, there should be a 60 to 70 percent chance of winning. 60 to 70 percent? Chen Xingyan was surprised. After all, Morong Yangshua had just lost to Xie Guan in a tragic manner. Even if Morong Xinxin was a proud daughter of the heavens, the fact that Xiao Xingyu was talking about a 60 to 70 percent chance of victory made Chen Qingyan feel puzzled. Xingyu, what exactly did you say to my sister? In the minute before Morong Xinxin boarded the ring, Xiao Xingyu came over and whispered instructions to her. The content of the whisper was known only to each other. Just watch the match and you'll know. Xiao Xingyu did not explain, but reminded everyone to focus on the match first. The bone wing bat beast didn't attack from the front but chose to meander around the back. The sky demon blue flame beast didn't fight hard, but chose to dodge. The audience murmured in all directions. Strange, 
Doesn't the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast possess a 70% damage immunity effect? Why did it dodge? I'm not sure. The situation of this round is still unclear. Let's wait and see again. The entire audience, as well as the host, could only see the surface of the battle. On the judge's seat, Chang Wan Lan's eyes overflowed with color. The Morong family's girl seems to have discovered the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast's injury-free blind spot. The Heavenly Demon Blue Flame Beast's Heavenly Demon Gene did indeed come with 70% damage immunity. So it was reasonable to say that it would be able to harden itself against the attacks of Imperial Beasts of the same level without a problem. The reason why it chose to dodge was because the tail area was its injury-free blind spot. The only place on its entire body that would not trigger the 70% damage immunity when attacked by an enemy was its tail. In other words, the tail was the breakthrough to defeating the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast. Xia Zhong observed carefully, stroked his beard, and said with a smile, Lord Empress, behind Morong girl, there is a high person guiding her. A high person? Who? That teenager. Shang Wan Lan had to focus on Xiao Xing Yu once again. That's right, it's him. Before the match started, he whispered beside Morong girl, and I can see his mouth shape from this angle. Shang Wan Lan understood. She knew that Xia Zhong knew how to read lips, even if he couldn't hear the sound. As long as he could gain insight into the changes in the mouth shape, he could translate it into words. No move of a small person could escape the insight of a big person. Xia Zhong saw through what Xiao Xingyu was whispering beside Morong Xinxin and couldn't help but take an interest in this young lad. Lord Empress, I've seen the video of Xiao Xingyu's last round of matches. His talent is very good, and his battle IQ is far beyond his peers. Hmm. So I've already sent someone to pass him an invitation to the Imperial Soul Training Camp. Shang Guanlan and Xia Zhong simultaneously looked at Xiao Xingyu under the ring, no longer even paying attention to the match in the ring. Since Morong Girl has this little military advisor by her side, it will take at least half a bell for the winner of this match to be decided. Lord Empress, in your opinion, who do you think will win in the end? Shang Wanlan raised her eyebrows slightly and laughed softly. Your son has inherited your beast pupil, so there's no need to ask me unnecessarily about the matter of victory or defeat? The monarch and minister smiled at each other. Everything was in the air. On the ring, the battle was intense. The heavenly demon blue flame beast and the bone winged bat beast exchanged blows many times, tearing each other apart causing the audience to clap and shout. A quarter of an hour has passed, and both sides have exchanged 30 rounds. The bone-winged bat beast's undead flame is incredibly powerful as it can dish out spiritual damage, which somewhat restrains the sky demon blue flame beast's damage-exempt talent. Rumble. After an explosion, the heavenly demon blue flame beast took a step back. Its three heads were muddled and its eyes were lax. Good. Good fight. Cheer up old sister. Morong Yangshua braced his overdrawn body and cheered Morong Xinxin with a hoarse voice. Chen Qinyan's gaze was deep as he analyzed in a low voice. The Heavenly Demon Blue Flame Beast's 70% damage immunity talent is only effective against physical attacks and spell attacks, which are materialized attacks. Undead Flame appears to be a flame spell attack, but it also has a spiritual attack attached to it. This is something that the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast is not immune to. Xiao Xingyu nodded at the side. That's why Undead Flame is the key to winning. Before the match, Xiao Xingyu had clearly said this in his whisper to Morong Xinxin. The spirit of undeath flame was a divine weapon to deal with the heavenly demon blue flame beast. Morong Xinxin catalyzed his spiritual energy and gave the command. The bone-winged bat beast flew high into the sky, flapped its wings, and continuously released bone-spiked arrows burning with undead flame. The sky demon blue flame beast let out a wail of agony as the undead flame was searing its soul, causing irresistible spiritual damage. The situation on the field has produced a change. Morong Xinxin seems to have gotten a slight advantage. I have to say, the undead flame, it really kind of restrains the heavenly demon blue flame beast's heavenly demon gene. Is Morong Xinxin expanding his advantage next, or is Xiaguan finding out a way to crack it? As soon as the host's words fell, Xiaguan on in the ring pursed his lips and smiled. M.S. Morong, if this is your full strength, then there's no need for me to waste my time next. Xiaguan mobilized the spiritual energy in his body and united with the heavenly demon blue flame beast's intent. At this moment, the bone-winged bat beast hovered high in the sky flapping its wings and releasing densely packed bone-spiked arrows. On each of the bone-spiked arrows, a green undead fire was burning. This was the bone-winged bat beast's signature battle technique, undead arrow rain. Roar! The sky demon blue flame beast let out a roar, and the leopard head that grew on the right side of its shoulder opened its bloody mouth, releasing the blood-colored vortex once again. It's this move again. Morong Yangshua became excited. This move was familiar to him. The blood-colored vortex released by the leopard head was capable of absorbing the enemy's damage. In full view of the crowd, countless bone-spiked arrows were engulfed and absorbed by the scarlet vortex. However, that wasn't all. In an instant, 
The wolf head on the right side of the heavenly demon blue flame beast's shoulder opened its fawn-strewn mouth and spewed out countless bone-spiked arrows burning with blue flames. The host was shocked. Oh my god. Is there something wrong with my eyes? After the leopard's head absorbs damage, the wolf's head can actually rebound damage. How many more magical abilities are hidden in the heavenly demon blue flame beast? By now, the sky demon blue flame beast's ability to have two heads had been exposed to the public. The leopard head, which could absorb enemy damage. The absorbed damage would not disappear, but would be rebounded by the wolf head and used to return fire on the enemy. Facing the oncoming rain of arrows, the bone wing bat beast was unprepared. An arrow burning with blue flames penetrated the bone wing bat beast's body. Bang! The bone wing bat beast fell to the ground, its body falling apart. Although Morong Shinshin showed a surprised expression, he quickly adjusted his mind and urged his spiritual power. Click 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 click. This was the sound of shattered bones being put back together. In just 10 seconds, the bone wing bat beast recovered its original appearance, and its skeleton was even a little more massive. Cold knowledge tip. Undead system royal beasts, which have no sense of pain, can recover quickly after their bodies are damaged. Audience members, you're really blessed to have stumbled upon such a wonderful duel. After this round of exchanges, the situation appeared to be balanced, but some people could tell that Morong Shinshin was gradually getting the disadvantage. Although the bone wing bat beast did not have a sense of pain, instead, it was still able to quickly repair its broken body. But in comparison, the sky demon blue flame beast's abilities were even more perverse. The leopard head absorbed damage, and the wolf head rebounded damage. With the abilities of these two heads, Morong Shinshin had no way to crack it. What's more, the tiger head in the center of the sky demon blue flame beast had yet to reveal its specific abilities. Morong Shinshin's expression was gloomy, and the hair on his temples was wet with sweat. Up until now, the battle had lasted for 20 minutes. Morong Shinshin's spiritual power was enough, but her stamina was poor, especially her ankle which had reopened from an old injury. In the ring, an Imperial Beast Master needed to move his pace frequently to observe the movements of the enemy Imperial Beasts from different angles. This was a burden for Morong Shinshin, who had an injured ankle. Twenty minutes passed. Morong Shinshin clearly felt discomfort in her ankle. The pain irritated her nerves, making it difficult for her to concentrate. MS. Morong. This battle, it's time to end. Siagwan frantically urged his spiritual energy. The Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast stood tall. Its body swelled two times. The blue flames on its back spine skyrocketed by 10 meters. Morong Xinxing glanced at Xiao Xingyu on the stage with his afterglow. The two of them locked eyes. Rokujin, do as I say and strike the final blow. Morong Xinxing understood. Her current physical strength did not allow for a protracted battle. So she could only strike the final blow as Xiao Xingyu said. Audience members, looking at the eyes and stance of both sides, is it time for a final round duel? Morong Xinxing is the first to mobilize her spiritual energy. She seems to be mobilizing all of her spiritual energy. There's no doubt about it. This is Morong Shinshin's last move. The bone-winged bat beast soared into the sky. And the moment its huge pair of bone wings unfolded, it covered the sky above the stadium. Airtight. Don't blink. Viewers, this is the bone-winged bat beast's strongest surefire move, Undead Fury. The bones of the bone-winged bat beast grew crazily like bamboo shoots after the rain. Huge bone wings enveloped the entire ring. And the air seemed to stand still sticky to the point where it couldn't flow. Even though the bone-winged bat beast hadn't unleashed its battle technique at this moment, the spectators could already smell the scent of blood and rain. The pressure that could shake the souls of humans was the unique fury from the undead lineage of royal beasts. Undead fury. Morong Shinshin's small face paled as she pulled out all of her spiritual power. The bone-winged bat beast sensed the imperial master's will and let out a shrill howl, spinning and flapping its wings. It's coming. It's coming. Everyone must not blink. The host's eyes widened their sockets chafing from excessive exertion, and the hand holding the microphone trembled. The air that had been frozen became agitated as the bone-winged bat beast descended from the sky and kept the spiral spinning. As the speed of rotation is getting faster and faster, people cannot see the body of the bone-winged bat beast, only to see a tornado wrapped in green flames smash down from the sky. This was the bone-winged bat beast's strongest battle technique, Undead Rage. The tip of the green flame tornado was like a giant drill that heavily smashed into the sky demon blue flame beast. Before the attack arrived, the effect was already visible. Large cracks appeared on the special material ring and it looked shaky. Siagwan urged his spiritual energy, and the leopard head of the sky demon blue flame beast opened its mouth wide, releasing a blood-colored vortex. Bang! The sound of violent collision was deafening. The green flame tornado and the blood-colored vortex fought against each other, spreading out a wave of air ripples that toppled the seats of the front row audience. Even the audience sitting in the back row had their hairline moved back two centimeters. Wonderful. Just wonderful. 
This is a duel between supernovas. The talent of the two players is on full display. The host had one hand protecting his hairline and one hand holding the microphone, his face so full of exuberance that his vocal cords were about to break from shouting. Under the audience's gaze, the blood-colored vortex released by the sky demon blue flame beast was getting fainter and fainter, and even showed signs of shattering. On the contrary, the bone-winged bat beast, the power of the green flame tornado continued to diminish, only because the damage was continuously absorbed by the blood-colored vortex. The host frowned. It seems like a comparable situation. But in reality, Morong Xinxin has fallen into a disadvantage. The situation is not optimistic. Under the ring, Morong Yangshua was covered in cold sweat, clenching his fists and worrying for his sister, Director Chen. At this rate, the damage of Undead Fury's attack, once it is absorbed by the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast, won't my sister lose? Chen Qinian stood with his armrests, his eyes narrowed into slits as he observed every detail on the field. Don't panic. Looking at her still calm expression, she still has a backhand. The power of undead rage was terrifying, and while the sky demon blue flame beast absorbed damage, it also exposed weaknesses that weren't considered obvious. The process of absorbing damage was not invincible, and it would also be affected. The host also saw the signs and went into a passionate commentary state, his mouth baldly grumbling non-stop. At this point, the damage from undead rage was absorbed by two-thirds of the scarlet vortex, but the heavenly demon blue flame beast's body appeared to be spasming and trembling, and the eyes and ears of its three heads were overflowing with blood. Theoretically, as long as the attack power is high enough, above the limit of what the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast is capable of absorbing, it will be able to defeat it. But from the looks of it, Undead Rage's attack value is not up to that height. If Morong Xinxin doesn't have a backhand, then this match is going to be declared over. Just when people thought that Xieguan was going to pick up another victory, the situation suddenly reversed. Whoosh! A sharp bone spur, burning with undead fire, attacked from behind the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast. This bone spur was Morong Xinxin's backhand and the idea given by Xiao Xingyu before the opening match. On the judges' table, Xia Zhong didn't focus on the match itself, but instead stared at Xiao Xingyu in the preparation area. This little military division of the Green Dragon Academy is a bit interesting. With a high combat IQ, Xia Zhong was the number one military division of the Dragon Kingdom, the man with the highest battle IQ recognized nationwide. Under his strategizing, the Dragon Kingdom's navy, Land and air forces had fought many battles in which they had won with less. Shangguan Lan's vermilion lips lifted slightly as she laughed softly. To be called little warlord by you, it seems that you recognize Xiao Xingyu as a young man. Ha ha ha, the waves of the Yangtze River push forward the waves of the past. It is a great honor for our dragon kingdom to have such a moldable talent. Xia Zhong also laughed, under his seemingly kind face. He did not know how many hard eyes were hidden. The bone spikes cut through the hot air, like a city destroying arrow. Shooting towards the tail of the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast, the tail was the biggest weakness of the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast. This part, which did not possess a 70% injury immunity, would lose its mobility once it suffered a heavy blow. Oh my, the situation has reversed. When exactly was this bone spur ambushed? In terms of battle IQ, Morong Xinxin is truly the best of this term supernovas. If one pushed the time back to 10 seconds ago, through a slow motion replay, one would see the truth. At that time, the ring was thick with smoke and blurred vision. Morong Xinxin urged his spiritual energy to make the bone wing bat beast break one of its own ribs and place it at the corner of the very edge of the ring. The color of the bone spur was almost the same as the color of the ring's floor. And people didn't notice this. So what appeared to be a powerful undead fury was just a feint. A means to draw the attention of Sheik Danger Security. It was the bone spur that made a cold surprise attack that was the must-have technique that looked plain and unassuming, but could turn the tide of battle. Victory or defeat was only in an instant. The bone spur was only an inch away from the tail of the sky demon blue flame beast. Xiao Xingyu sighed in relief, thinking that Morong Xinxin had won. Luckily, I followed what I said. It looks like my family's Lu Jin can win. All of this was Xiao Xingyu's layout. Morong Xinxin was somewhat like a tool man in his hands. As long as the bone spikes pierced through the tail of the sky demon blue flame beast, Morong Xinxin would win. Just at the moment when everything was about to settle, the situation reversed once again. Dodged dodged. Audience members. Are you as surprised as I am at this moment? The Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast actually dodged the Bone Spur raid. It happened so suddenly that Morong Xinxin was stunned. One had to know that the preparation for the Bone Spur surprise attack was extremely stealthy. From the time the Bone Spur was shot out, to the time it approached the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast's tail, there was only 0. 3 seconds. Moreover, the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast's energy was all spent on absorbing the Undead Fury, so it was reasonably impossible to react to it. Seeing this scene, Xiao Xingyu first stared wide-eyed before biting his lip. This fellow, 
Xia Guan, actually used the power of his beast pupil. How disgraceful. Xia Clan's beast pupil was seen through by Xiao Xingyu's demon god's eye. The beast pupil's ability was simple and crude, allowing it to prejudge the enemy's moves. Xia Guan turned on his beast pupil in advance and prejudged the presence of the bone spikes, thus giving the command with his mind in advance, allowing the sky demon blue flame beast enough reaction time to dodge. This was cheating, but the referee would not blow the whistle for a foul, because in the whole world, except for the Empress Shang Guan Lan, no one knew about the beast pupil. They only knew that the Xia family's heterochromatic pupil was simply a genetic mutation. Just like someone who was born with white hair and red eyes. Audience, the momentum has gone. The momentum has gone. This match, it's coming to an end. I didn't expect Xie Guan to actually predict Morong Xinxin's last move. It's unbelievable. Although Morong Xinxin lost, we have to admit that this is the most exciting match on the supernova field this year. The heavenly demon blue flame beast dodged the bone spur surprise attack behind it, declaring that the winner of the match had been decided. Bang! The loud bang was the sound made by the bone wing bat beast smashing into the ring. It was uninjured, but its stamina was exhausted, barely struggling up from the ground, but unable to fly into the sky again. Morong Xinxin's spiritual energy was also exhausted. Even if the rules of the competition did not have a limit on the number of imperial beasts that could be summoned, she did not have any extra spiritual energy to summon the snowplume demon hunter out to continue the fight. Under the ring, Xia Ren could no longer hold back her inner excitement and elation. Jumping and jumping, her eyes locking onto Morong Xin Xin in the ring. You lost, Morong Xinxin. You lost after all. Ha ha ha. How wretched Morong Xinxin was at the moment. How happy Xia Ren was. Although Morong Xinxin had only lost to Xie Guanan, it had nothing to do with Xia Ren. But to Xia Ren, it didn't matter who Morong Xinxin lost to. What mattered was that she wanted to see the bone winged bat beast get wasted with her own eyes. Brother, what are you waiting for? Take the opportunity to waste the bone winged bat beast. I want to witness the bone-winged bat beast turn into a crippled imperial beast. I'm sure Morong Xinxin's expression will be very interesting. Xia Ren only dared to roar angrily in his heart, his eyes filling with blood, unable to wait to catch a glimpse of the brutal images that would follow. Before Xia Guan boarded the field, he had promised his sister that he would teach Morong Xinxin a good lesson. At this moment, he catalyzed his spiritual energy, and the heavenly demon blue flame beast grinned widely, revealing a bloodthirsty smile. The blue devil roared. Under the control of Xie Guan's intention, the heavenly demon blue flame beast once again unleashed a must-kill technique. The huge mouth spewed out a pillar of blue fire. It wanted to ignite the entire stadium. The bone-winged bat beast strongly supported its weak body and used its wings to protect Morong Xinxin. Morong Xinxin did not have any spiritual energy in his body at all, which resulted in the bone-winged bat beast being unable to release any battle techniques to counterattack and counterattack. This move, Blue Devil Roar, once it hit the bone-winged bat beast, would cause irreversible serious injuries to it, leaving it with a lifelong disability. Everything happened so fast that the audience was dumbfounded and the host panicked. At the critical moment, a domineering wolf roar pierced through the dark clouds above the stadium and struck right into the depths of people's souls. A huge wolf covered in black flames rushed onto the ring and opened its mouth to spit out black pillars of fire. The two pillars of fire blasted against each other, one blue and one black, intertwined and entangled. Boom! After the explosion, the dust gradually dispersed. On the shattered ring, Xiao Xingyu stood in front of Morong Xinxin, his upright back bathed in the soft afternoon sunlight. The hell spectral wolf stood beside Xiao Xingyu, its body emitting a reddish-black aura that filled the entire arena. This aura, its demonic power, the strongest dark horse in this year's supernova competition. Xiao Xingyu has made his appearance. TSK TSK, hell spectral wolf with this look, this stance, and this look in his eyes, it's truly domineering. Xiao Xingyu's sudden appearance disrupted Xie Guan's plans. Xie Guan had wanted to stand up for his sister and take the opportunity to waste Morong Xinxin's bone wing bat beast. It was Xiao Xingyu's appearance that caused a flash of vigilance to surface under Xie Guan's eyes. This guy's imperial beast can actually easily withstand the blue demon roar. Xiao Xingyu helped Morong Xinxin up, his eyes full of worry and heartache. Lu Jin, is everything alright? I'm fine. I just ran out of spiritual energy. Xiao Xingyu looked at the referee. Furious. Dog referee, what the hell are you doing? According to the rules of the match, if one of the players runs out of spiritual energy, they are considered to have lost the match. As a referee, you should have blown the whistle for the end of the match just now. Why the delay? Xiao Xingyu's questioning caused the audience to resonate and support him. Yes, people Xiao Xingyu is right. According to the rules of the match, the referee should have blown the whistle for the end of the match a long time ago. What does the delay in blowing the whistle mean? Shady, shady. Shady, the audience seat responded with a call. 
and public anger rose in all directions. At the judges' table, Xi Zhong rose, dragged this unscrupulous referee down and banned him from the refereeing profession for life. The staff swarmed up and took the tearful referee away. Under the ring, Morong Yangshua gritted his teeth in hatred. This referee is a backstabber. He was afraid of the power of the Xie family. That's why he delayed blowing the whistle. If it wasn't for Xiao Xingyu's sudden appearance to solve the problem, the consequences would have been clear to everyone. The bone wing bat beast, an undead type royal beast that was hard to come by in a hundred years, would have been nullified by Xie Guanan. Under the organizer's arrangement, the new referee appeared on stage and immediately announced, the second match is over. The winner, the ring keeper, Xie Guan. Xie Guan's victory also meant that Green Dragon Academy swallowed two consecutive defeats. Xiao Xingyu helped Morong Xinxin, whose ankle was sore, to the edge of the ring, and Morong Yangshua came over to take over. Before getting off the stage, Morong Xinxin pulled Xiao Xingyu. That guy Xie Guan, something's not right. He seems to be able to see through every step of my intentions. I know. Xiao Xingyu was clear in his heart that Xie Guan was able to turn the tide of battle just now by relying on that pair of beast pupils inherited from his family. The beast pupils possessed the ability to anticipate the enemy's actions, and if they hadn't been used, it was impossible for Xie Guan to see through Morong Xinxin's last move. This was clearly trickery, but no one would question it. After all, the beast pupil was a secret of the Xie family, and if Xiao Xingyu stood out and exposed it, he would become a target and suffer from the targeting of the big shots as a result. Brother Yang Shua, take care of six gold. By the way, I have safflower oil in my backpack. Apply it on six gold's ankle to ease the pain. Don't worry, I will take care of my sister. After Morong Yang Shua assisted Morong Xinxin off the stage, the referee shouted, the third match, defending side, Vermilion Bird Academy, Xie Guanan, attacking side, Green Dragon Academy, Xiao Xingyu, the match is about to begin. Please have both players prepare for a moment. A staff member walked up to the ring and handed Xie Wei in a pill and a bottle of water. According to the rules of the match, a player who defeated two opponents consecutively would receive a spirit recovery pill. After taking the spirit recovery pill, Xie Guan's previously consumed spiritual energy recovered to a 74%, not much different from his prime. The host was emotional. Audience members, the duel you're watching right now is probably the last match of this year's supernova competition. On the side of Green Dragon Academy, after the consecutive loss of the Morong siblings, only Xiao Xingyu is left. On the contrary, on the Vermilion Bird Academy side, Xie Guan has won two matches in a row, and there are still Xie Ren and Dong Fangqing sitting on the stage. According to my experience of hosting competitions in the past, the probability of Green Dragon Academy reversing and killing back is slim to none. The three matches were about to begin. Xiao Xingyu and Xie Guanan stood at opposite corners of the ring. In fact, in the duel with Morong Xinxin just now, Xie Guan almost lost the match, only to gain a close victory by not relying on the beast pupil's ability to anticipate. After a huge physical exertion and spiritual energy consumption, according to the rules of the match, taking the spirit recovery pill, Xie Guan returned to his peak state. Under the ring, Xie Ren had loss and regret written on his face. If it wasn't for this Xiao Xingyu showing up, my brother would have already scrapped the bone wing bat beast. Xia Ren's gaze landed on Xiao Xingyu's body, and there was more than a touch of hatred in his eyes. Even if you're the strongest dark horse at this supernova competition, when you meet my brother, you'll only lose until you're on your knees begging for forgiveness. In Xia Ren's eyes, Xia Guan was the strongest among the strongest of the younger generation. Brother, teach him a hard lesson. Xia Ren shouted. Xiao Xingyu's afterglow noticed Xia Ren under the stage and turned to look straight at Xia Guan in front of him. According to the rules of the match, before the start of the match, both sides would come to the center of the ring to shake hands and greet each other in order to express their friendship. Xiao Xingyu and Xie Guan walked to the center of the ring at the same time and shook each other's hands. On camera, the two handsome men mesmerized the thousands of girls in the audience. The two men lowered their voices. Xiao Xingyu, if you take the initiative to admit defeat, your imperial beast will suffer less. Otherwise, Xie Guan didn't put words in his mouth and the depths of the beast's pupil lit up with a frosty essence. Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god, and the scarlet sight instantly pierced through Xie Guan's soul. What terrifying eyes! Xia Wei and subconsciously took a step back, unprecedented panic and consternation surfacing on his unperturbed face. The intimidating power of the devil god's eyes could not be compared to a pair of beast pupils? Xiao Xingyu revealed an evil smile. I know that your sister has a beef with Morong Xinxin. Yo, it seems like the Morong siblings do tell you everything. You guys have a good relationship. I can see that you had thoughts of wanting to waste the bone wing bat beast just now. Xia Guan nodded with a smile, his thin lips coming up to Xiao Xingyu's ear. That's right, I was planning to waste the bone wing bat beast, but, 
Xie Guan paused and said in a provocative tone, And what can you do to me? Xiao Xingyu was not provoked, but said meaningfully, I will waste your sister's imperial beast. He he, I seem to have heard a heavenly joke. Xie Guan's smile lasted for a second before his eyes returned to indifference. Xiao Xingyu, don't forget that your opponent right now is me, and unless you defeat me, you won't be able to touch my sister at all. If you wanted to face off against Xia Ren, you first had to defeat Xie Guan. Xiao Xingyu completely lacked the sense of urgency as if he was on the verge of an enemy, smiling in a lazy and cozy manner. Next, I will let your sister see with her own eyes how wretched her brother is in the ring. What a big mouth. The referee walked over and separated the two men. As for what harsh words the two men had put into each other's mouths, only they knew, and the audience couldn't hear them. The referee announced, the third match, Green Dragon Academy, Xiao Xingyu vs Vermilion Bird Academy, Xie Guan. The match begins. The referee blew his whistle and the match officially kicked off. Welcome brothers and sisters of the live broadcast. This broadcast is the ongoing Supernova competition, final match 3. As of now, the Morong siblings of the Green Dragon Academy have lost one battle after another, and the situation is at a backbreaking point. Xiao Xingyu is this year's strongest dark horse, as well as the last hope of Green Dragon Academy. Although a 1 through 3 reversal is unlikely, we still have to cheer for Xiao Xingyu. In the audience, People were treating this battle as if it was the last one, taking out all their enthusiasm and cheering hysterically, pushing the atmosphere of the match to its peak. Xiao Xingyu catalyzed his spiritual energy. Black Striker, go! Ow! The Hell Spectral Wolf leapt high into the air and pounced towards the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast. It was known that the Hellfire of the Hell Spectral Wolf could ignore the enemy's armor defense and inflict real damage on the enemy. Xiaguan was not careless and released his spiritual energy. The heavenly demon blue flame beast's body shook and its leopard head opened its mouth, preparing to release a blood-colored vortex. After the battle just now, the spectators were well aware that the scarlet vortex could absorb damage from the enemy. Hiss. It was the sound of flesh and blood being cut by a sharp weapon. Blood drenched the ring. The host raised his arms and shouted, Oh my. What a surprise. The hell specter wolf was too fast and struck the dark attribute battle skill. Claws of silence. The Claws of Silence was a dark attribute battle skill that all Imperial Beast Masters could only dream of. The attack value of this battle skill wasn't high, but it had a rather heaven-defying effect. As long as the enemy was struck by the Claws of Silence, they would fall into a state of silence for 3 seconds. During these 3 seconds, the enemy would not be able to release any battle skills. Time went back to a second ago. Just as the Heavenly Demon Blue Flame Beast was about to unleash the Scarlet Vortex, the Hell Spectral Wolf's Claws of Silence had already torn through its face. The Claws of Silence hit the target, and the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast fell into a 3 second state of silence. Black Striker. Hell Hold. Ow. The Hell Spectral Wolf let out a roar, and the Hell Chains wrapped around its body were instantly released, binding the body of the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast. When it was too late, it was too soon, the Hell Spectral Wolf took an arrow step forward, imprisoning the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast with its four limbs, and leapt up with force, rushing high into the air. The gazes of all the spectators had to look into the sky. The bouncing power of the Hell's Underwolf was extremely terrifying, as it held the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast above the stadium, at least 30 meters away from the ring. In the next instant, Hell Flames flared up on the Inferno Underwolf's body, holding the Heavenly Demon Blue Flame Beast in its arms as it free fell, descending crazily. In the view of the audience, the sky was like a flaming meteorite falling, the surrounding air currents made swooshing noises, and the air was twisting and distorting. Rumble. The huge black fireball smashed into the center of the ring, stirring up a thousand waves of fire as a mushroom cloud rose, waiting for the smoke to dissipate. The sky demon blue flame beast tumbled on its side. Its skin burned extensively, and its leopard head's face was a bloody mess. The hell spectral wolf landed steadily beside Xiao Xingyu, its ferocious eyes carrying a hint of arrogance and contempt that only a wolf king could have. The audience fell silent for three seconds before letting out deafening cheers. The host became even more excited, hissing as he gripped the microphone. This is, Hellfire's true damage can ignore the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast's defense shield, the effect of Claws of Silence, capable of interrupting the release of Scarlet Vortex, everyone must remember the name of this teenager, he is the strongest dark horse of this year's tournament, the host raised his volume and said word for word, Xiao, Xing, Yu, in the audience, the fervor boiled over, this dude is awesome, dueling against Xie Guanan and getting the upper hand in the opening round, Hell's Spectral Wolf's Claws of Silence, it's practically a hangover. If Xiao Xingyu can really beat Xie Guan, wouldn't he be a god in one battle? Question mark removed. Be confident. This kid has already sealed a god. Shu. 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 The wind-breaking sound of the wolf's claws was like a whisper from the underworld. 
making people shudder and feel a panic deep in their bones. The images on the ring were dazzling, as the Hell Spectre Wolf transformed into a dark shadow, weaving in and out of the ring with reckless abandon. The audience's naked eyes couldn't even see the Hell's underworld wolf's body, and could only see the burning traces left by the wolf's claws. Audience members, it's too fast. The speed of the Hell Spectre Wolf is too fast. Even if the cameraman uses the 100x slow playback technique, it's still difficult to capture the Hell's spectral wolf's body. The consecutive clause of silence made the heavenly demon blue flame beast suffer. Three seconds of silence after three seconds of silence. It's not over and done with. The moderator's speed of speech couldn't catch up with the Hell spectral wolf's movement speed. The Hell's underwolf struck the clause of silence one after another, making it difficult for the sky demon blue flame beast to fight. As long as it was hit by the clause of silence, it would enter a three second silence state. This caused Siegwan to have an abundance of spiritual energy but nowhere to use it. The battle on the field is getting more and more intense. No, strictly speaking this isn't a battle between two sides, but a one-sided crushing. The Hell Spectral Wolf struck the Claws of Silence 23 times in a row, and the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast couldn't even release a single battle technique. At the moment, the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast was in a one-sided state of being beaten up, and even though it was being beaten up, it was unable to release any battle techniques to resist or counterattack. Under the photographer's close-up lens, the heavenly demon blue flame beast's suffocating appearance was made into a hilarious emotic pack by the netizens of this term. Back off! Siagwan finally put down his dignity and face and gave the order. Although the sky devil blue flame beast was unable to release its battle techniques, its flexibility was still there, and hearing its master's order, it hurriedly made a big jump backward to get out of the range of the Claws of Silence's attack. The Claws of Silence belonged to a close-range attack battle technique. The Heavenly Demon Blue Flame Beast avoided the Claws of Silence after pulling away from the Hell Spectre Wolf. But this was a shame for Siegwan. Previously, when facing Moron Yangshua and Moron Xinxin, Siegwan had never ordered the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast to take half a step back. This was because an Imperial Beast Master ordering the Imperial Beast to retreat meant a loss of dignity. As the eldest son of the Dragon Kingdom's number one military division, Xia Zhong, Xia Guan had difficulty accepting this. Nay, the Hell Spectre Wolf's claws of silence were too strong, and Xia Guan had no room to fight back, so he could only be forced to give the order. The moment the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast retreated, the situation on the field became clear. The Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast, forced to retreat? I didn't expect Xia Guan, such a high-minded person, to actually order his Imperial Beast to retreat who made his opponent the strongest dark horse in this year's competition. Don't even say it, don't even say it. Shaoxing you might really be able to bring down Siegwan and give our powerless grassroots crowd a long face. Shaoxing you was the most special player in this year's competition. Almost all of the contestants from the four major academies had notable backgrounds. The father of the Morong siblings was Admiral Morong Ashes. The father of the Xie siblings was the Dragon Kingdom's first military division. Zhou Knight's father was Yellow Smoke City Lord Zhou Xiong. Dongfang Prime's father, was the strongest lieutenant general of the Air Force headquarters, Dongfang War, only Xiao Xingyu, fatherless and motherless, walked out from a small city on the border of the Dragon Kingdom, with only a sister who had not awakened her spiritual power by her side, Xiao Xingyu was the representative of grassroots heroes in the eyes of the subjects of the Dragon Kingdom, it is Xiao Xingyu's appearance, so that the ordinary people of the against the heavens to change their fate have a desire and longing, in the past, no one would dare to think that a grassroots boy with no power and no influence could reach the final stage of the supernova competition. What's more, at this moment, Xiao Xingyu had suppressed Seguanan in the ring. It was not easy to pull away from the Hell Spectre Wolf. The Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast was panting, its hair standing on end as if it were an enemy. On Seguan's face, there was less calmness and more gloom. Always maintain the distance from the enemy. Don't get hit by the claws of silence again. The Sky Devil Blue Flame Beast nodded raising its vigilance and tensing its nerves. Under the ring, Morong Yangshua clapped his hands in excitement. Good, Xingyu, well done. What a relief. Morong Yangshua waved his fists and gritted his teeth. Morong Xinxin was also cheering for Xiao Xingyu in her own way. Her way was to stand in place in a well-behaved manner and gently applaud. It looked a bit perfunctory, but it was really dorky and cute. Xiao Xingyu clearly had the upper hand. But Chen Qinian, who was the coach, not only didn't show a happy expression, but instead, his face was grave. Strange, really strange. This kid's aura, compared to the first round of the match a few days ago, has simply changed drastically. Human strength, can be hidden, but a person's aura, it was difficult to estringe. When a royal beast master stood in the ring, facing the enemy and the audience, the aura could say everything. Xiao Xingyu was gifted, but he was only a two-star royal beast master with limited combat experience. 
In the first round when Green Dragon Academy and White Tiger Academy faced off, the aura presented by Xiao Xingyu was within Chen Qingyan's knowledge and understanding. Youthful, tender, and agile. These words were the aura that a teenage imperial beast master should have. But the current Xiao Xingyu, the aura he stood in the ring, was completely different from the previous days. The seemingly youthful and tender face was overflowing with the calmness and elegance that only a great divine royal beast master could have. A pair of Starhan brilliant eyes did not have the slightest tension. Only ancient waves, calm, mature, and old. These words describing a veteran imperial beast master were not too much to use on Xiao Xingyu at this moment. In these few days, what exactly did he go through? Chen Qinian fell into deep thought. There were only two ways for a youngster to grow. 1. Long years of precipitation. In just a few days, Xiao Xingyu had precipitated no shit. 2. Experiencing life and death crises. The second way was the way Xiao Xingyu raised his aura. In the naval headquarters of the ice and fire island that battle, black-robed man Xiao Xingyu threw life and death, and multiple big shots around, and finally escaped from death. This bittersweet experience allowed Xiao Xingyu's heart to grow by leaps and bounds overnight. When facing Xie Guan, Xiao Xingyu was calm and collected, just like a virtuous old artist. What Chen Qinian could see, the two big shots on the judging table could naturally see as well. Xie Zhong stroked his beard and mused, Lord Empress, this Xiao Xingyu, a young and old man, Shang Wanlan rested her cheek on one hand, her beautiful eyes glowing as she stared at Xiao Xingyu in the center of the ring. Send someone to check on this little guy again. I'm curious about his resume. Yes, Lord Empress. Several Emperor's soul priests left the gymnasium and split up to gather information about Xiao Xingyu. Even though Xiao Xingyu no longer wanted to get involved with this monster Shang Wanlan, he was as bright as a jewel in the ring, which made it hard for Shang Wanlan not to take an interest in him. It was a good thing that Shang Wanlan did not associate this teenager. With that black-robed man, Xiao Xingyu was currently only receiving attention from the Empress, and was not in danger for the time being. By the way, want to bet again? Lord Empress, what's the bet? Bet on whether your son wins or Xiao Xingyu wins. Xia Zhong smiled faintly, Guanan is my child, so I, as a father, support my son and press him for one hand. Good, then I'll press Xiao Xingyu. Shang Wanlan bet on Xiao Xingyu to win. Viewers, this battle has only started for five minutes. And Hell Spectral Wolf has already struck dozens of silent claw combos. Siaguan has clearly raised his guard. Choosing to order the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast to back off and keep its distance from the Hell Spectral Wolf at all times. As for how Siaguan will respond next, I'm somewhat looking forward to it. The host analyzed the situation on the field, and the entire audience stood up, expecting more from this pinnacle duel. On one side was the son of the warlord who had won two games in a row and on the other side was the grassroots teenager who was shouldering the last hope of Green Dragon Academy. Just the personas of both players were enough to keep the audience pee-free throughout the entire match. Honestly, I've been holding this pee for a long time. You're just holding your pee. I'm holding my shit. Bro, you're tougher than me. Can't help it. Don't want to miss such a great match. The photographer focused his close-up on the front row of the audience. Many of the spectators were cheering for the contestants while still trying to hold in their urine and feces in a way that was full of hilarity. In the ring, Siaguan rarely showed a serious expression. He had to admit that this teenager in front of him, who seemed to have a kind smile, was really not easy to deal with. Brother, go for it. Defeat him. As long as we defeat him, our Vermilion Bird Academy will win. Under the ring, Xia Ren stood on her tiptoes and shouted. Only this last victory remained before winning the championship. Siaguan clenched his fists, a firm conviction emerging in his eyes. But let's not forget that this match, for Xiao Xingyu, had the same reason why he couldn't lose. Xia Guan suddenly catalyzed his spiritual energy. Up, the heavenly demon blue flame beast's body trembled as it built up energy deep in its throat, and a huge blue fireball coalesced around its mouth. This was the sky demon blue flame beast's signature battle technique, flame's heavenly punishment. The blue fireball grew larger and larger, smashing towards the hell's underworld wolf. The host shouted excitedly, the sky demon blue flame beast has struck its signature battle technique, flame of heavenly punishment. This blue fireball is so big that it almost enveloped the entire ring. I can feel the scorching heat even from where I'm sitting in the commentator's seat. Especially the spectators sitting in the front row even felt the painful sensation of their skin being roasted. Because the blue fireball was too large. The Hell Spectre Wolf couldn't dodge at all. As long as it dodged, the Hell's Underwolf would be sentenced by the referee to an out-of-bounds violation because its body was out of the ring. Which never resulted in a loss. Xiao Xingyu reacted very quickly and made a decision. Black Striker. Shadow Dive. The Hell Ghost Wolf turned on its dark attribute, turning into a shadow and diving into the ground. Boom. The blue fireball smashed heavily into the ring, 
breaking the stone and setting off a wave of fire, and the terrifying explosion cracked the load-bearing pillars above the stadium. Reinforced concrete fell from the heights, randomly smashing a lucky spectator unconscious. This was the destructive power of the heavenly demon blue flame beast, but it didn't hurt the hell spectral wolf in the slightest. At this moment, the hell spectral wolf was in its shadowy form, moving against the broken ground. Whoosh! The hell spectral wolf leapt up and resumed its original form, swinging its claws of silence once again. Xiaguan displayed a sinister smile. Xiao Xingyu, the match is over. The sky devil blue flame beast suddenly flicked its tail. This inconspicuous tail was like a sharp sword that stabbed into the hell spectral wolf's chest. An inch long, an inch strong. The heavenly demon blue flame beast's tail was longer than the hell's underworld wolf's wolf claws. The host couldn't help but exclaim. So this is Xiaoguan's ruse. Xiao Xing Yu fell for it. The sky devil blue flame beast releasing blue fireballs was just a faint illusion. Xiaoguan concluded that Xiao Xing Yu would make the hell's underworld wolf enter the shadow state as a way to dodge the blue fireball. Xiaoguan then prejudged again, predicting that the hell spectral wolf would burrow out of the ground, recover its body, and use the claws of silence to surprise attack the sky demon blue flame beast. On the big electronic screen, in the close-up, the sky demon blue flame beast's tail that was as sharp as a bone spur stabbed the hell spectral wolf's chest steadily and viciously. This scene made the audience sigh with emotion. The host also shook his head. It's a pity. Xiao Xingyu didn't anticipate that the attack distance of the claws of silence wasn't as long as the attack distance of the sky demon blue flame beast's tail. Xiaoguan's prediction changed the direction of the match. Is the match about to end? Boom. At the moment when people thought that Xiao Xingyu was going to regretfully lose, the Hell's Underworld Wolf that was hit suddenly exploded and dispersed into black mist. This isn't the main body, it's a doppelganger? For the first time, Xiaoguan revealed a shocked expression. No one in the entire audience had expected that the Hell's Underworld Wolf stabbed by the Heavenly Demon Blue Flame Beast was actually not the main body, but a doppelganger. This sudden reversal caught people by surprise. The hosts all looked dumbfounded. Why is it a doppelganger? I don't understand ah. Uh, unless, just in an instant. The Hell Spectral Wolf's main body appeared behind the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast. Black Striker. Hell's Roar. Ow. The Hell Spectral Wolf raised its head and spat out hellish flames. The Black Pillar of Fire instantly struck the Sky Demon Blue Flame Beast. At this moment, the host came to a realization. I understand. I finally understand. Just now. Xiao Xingyu prejudged Xiaoguan's prejudgment. The host's words awakened the entire audience. Yes. This kid prejudged his opponent's prejudgment. That's right. It's just like playing chess. Xiaoguan only saw the next move, while Xiao Xingyu was more farsighted and saw one more move than Xiaoguan. Unbelievable. A two-star imperial beast master who is only 19 years old actually has such excellent foresight? Gentlemen, don't forget that aside from spiritual energy concentration and beast mastery skills, battle intelligence is also a part of talent. This one round of exchange was extremely exciting, causing the audience to cry out in delight. One had to know that there were many star scouts from the Super Imperial Beastmaster Guild sitting in the audience, all of whom had come to discover talent. Xiao Xingyu's performance caused these star scouts to look at him with glowing eyes, itching to pull him under their guild's banner. On the judge's seat, Shang Wan Lan's gaze was deeply attracted by Xiao Xingyu. This young man is a bit interesting. Shang Wan Lan only said this sentence, but those who were familiar with her knew that it was an extremely high evaluation. Xia Zhang was unperturbed on the surface, but in reality, his heart was filled with doubts. This kid actually predicted my son's prediction? How could my Xia clan's beast pupil lose to an ordinary person's eyes? Xia Zhong was ultimately old and confused. He had no idea that the Xia family's beast pupil gene was nothing in front of Xiao Xingyu's demon god's eye. Bang! The heavenly demon blue flame beast fell to the edge of the ring. Its body burned by hellfire. And all three of its heads revealed expressions of pain. The hell spectral wolf was unharmed and stood beside Xiao Xingyu. Majestic and domineering. Xiaoguan raised his eyes to look at Xiao Xingyu, who was not far away, and a drop of cold sweat flowed down from his temples. What the hell is wrong with this guy? His prediction ability is even better than mine? Xiaoguan had a high level of confidence in his beast pupil, and had never missed a prediction. In this duel, the beast pupil was actually crushed by Xiao Xingyu's pair of eyes. Xiaoguan stared at Xiao Xingyu's eyes and could not see any abnormalities. In the eyes of outsiders, Xiao Xingyu's eyes are clear, and his pupils, irises and the whites of his eyes, are all normal, the wonders of the devil god's eyes, even Shang Wan Lan couldn't see through it, let alone a minor character like Xia Guan, Xia Guan, is this your full strength, Xiao Xingyu, I admit that you are indeed an opponent worthy of my serious attention, Xia Guan moved his muscles and crooked his head with a smile, next, I will let you know the consequences of provoking me, intentions surged and spiritual energy surged, 
Siaguan frantically extracted his own spiritual energy and acted on the body of the sky demon blue flame beast. The host had an excited look on his face. Viewers, just now was just a small fight. Next, is the most exciting part of this match. This son of the Dragon Kingdom's number one warlord is going to get real. Our grassroots genius Xiao Xingyu. How should he respond? Under the ring, Moron Yangshua was agitated, raising his fists and shouting loudly, Xiao Xingyu, beat him, beat him up. Yes, from the rounds exchanged so far, Xiao Xingyu had the upper hand. On Moron Yangshua's face, there was a dejection of pride for his brother. Morong Xinchen stared intently at the grim-faced Siaguan. Director Chen, what exactly is Siaguan trying to do by suddenly mobilizing a large amount of spiritual energy? Chen Chinian narrowed his eyes and analyzed. As far as I know, Imperial beasts with the heavenly demon gene will have their potential stimulated and open their second form when facing a powerful opponent. Morong Xinchen was surprised. The second form? The gazes of all the spectators were focused on the center of the ring. The sky demon blue flame beast rose from the ground. Its skin burnt by the hellfire rapidly healing. Kaching. Kachow. Kaching. It was the sound of bones breaking and then reorganizing. Under the people's gaze, the heavenly demon blue flame beast roared up to the sky. Its already huge body growing rapidly. Its limbs, like sponges that had absorbed water, expanded wildly. Crap. What the hell is this? Is this a royal beast or a transformer? It is standing up. The audience was abuzz with people's voices. And the picture in the ring refreshed people's cognition. The sky demon blue flame beast actually stood up. Its forelimbs turning into arms. The host was dumbstruck and couldn't help but exclaim. I've hosted thousands of matches. Big and small. And I've never seen a royal beast with such a bizarre ability. The heavenly demon blue flame beast. Has actually turned into a beastman type imperial beast. At this moment. The heavenly demon blue flame beast was in a standing position. More than 10 meters tall. And the three heads on its shoulders were glaring angrily and fiercely. From the physical features, this imperial beast turned into an orc-type imperial beast. That was when people heard the sound of muscles tearing, and goosebumps rose straight up on every spectator's body. It's growing new arms. What kind of monster is this? The sky demon blue flame beast's back ripped apart, and four arms drilled out of its flesh and blood. On the bones of the arms, magnificent muscles were born, and two different colors of hair grew on the surface of the muscles. One was the hair of a cheetah, and the other was the hair of a pale wolf. These two types of hairs corresponded to the leopard's head and the wolf's head. The host was filled with astonishment and blurted out. Three heads and six arms? The heavenly demon blue flame beast underwent a drastic change compared to its previous appearance. At this moment, it looked like a monster that walked upright and had three heads and six arms. The giant-like height was tall enough to overlook the hell's underworld wolf. Xiao Xingyu raised his eyes. There was not the slightest fluctuation in his gaze, as this was all within his expectations. Berserker form? So what? the eye of the demon god, seeing through everything, a staff member ran over to the host and handed over a data file, the host skimmed through it and regained his grip on the microphone, friends of the audience, this is the data submitted by the imperial beast analysis experts, this three-headed, six-armed big guy we see is the second form of the sky demon blue flame beast, berserker beastman form, after opening the berserker form, the attack and defense values of the sky demon blue flame beast triple, at the same time, the tail will degrade and disappear, the audience could clearly see that the sky demon blue flame beast that walked upright had no tail behind its buttocks. The tail was the only weakness of the sky demon blue flame beast, and with the tail degraded, wouldn't it be a disguised enhancement? And the attack and defense values have tripled. This data increase is too terrifying. The heavenly demon gene is truly powerful. It was from this moment onwards that Xieguan took out his bottom card. Judge's seat. Shangguan Lan had a smile on his face as he poked fun at Xiezhong beside him. Xiao Xingyu was able to force your son to this point. This is something you didn't expect, right? Xie Zhong did his best to hide his mood swings and nodded with a smile. Yes, I didn't expect such a gifted teenager to come out of nowhere in this edition of the Supernova competition. It's the fortune of my dragon kingdom. Ha ha ha. Xie Zhong was cheeky on the surface, pretending to be full of unconcern. But in reality, he was up in arms against Xiao Xingyu. In the battle preparation area, Xia Ren's expression was complicated as waves rippled within her heart. The heavenly demon blue flame beast's berserker beast form is brother's bottom card. I remember my brother saying that this bottom card, he intends to use it again when he takes the three-star imperial beast master examination. Xiao Xingyu forced out Xie Guanan's bottom card, which made Xia Ren feel offended, and at the same time smelled a crisis. Brother, you won't lose. I believe in you. You'll take the victory. I'm going to be on the podium with you holding the championship trophy and looking down on Morong Xinxin. For Xia Ren, she didn't care about championship honors. 
She only cared about winning the title and being able to press Morong XIN XIN. In the ring, the battle entered white heat. The heavenly demon blue flame beast that had opened its berserker form, its strength skyrocketed. The six thick python-like arms simultaneously clenched their fists and launched an attack towards the hell specter wolf. The dense fist shadows were like a rainstorm of pear blossoms, enveloping every corner of the ring. The hell spectral wolf was initially able to dodge and move around with its nimble stance. However, the speed of the heavenly demon blue flame beast's attack grew faster and faster, and more and more fists smashed into the hell spectral wolf's body. Tick tock, tick tock. Blood spilled from the corner of the hell spectral wolf's mouth, dripping down onto the ring like a blooming rose. Siaguan once again mobilized a large amount of spiritual energy and roared in a low voice. Unleash the battle technique. The hammer of hexagrams. The heavenly demon blue flame beast swung its six arms at the same time, and its six fists burned with blue flames, powerful and strong and simultaneously blasted at the Hell Spectral Wolf's body. Boom! Accompanied by the whistling sound of breaking winds, the Hell Spectral Wolf fell heavily to the ground, rolling in a sorry state, sliding all the way to the edge of the ring before relying on the Wolf Claw Break to barely stabilize his body. At this moment, the Hell's Underworld Wolf was only 10 centimeters away from falling into the ring. The audience was in an uproar as people were talking about the Berserker form. The host sucked in a breath of cold air. Hiss the strength of the sky demon blue flame beast in berserk beast man form is too terrifying. Black striker, stand up. Hearing Xiao Xingyu's voice, the hell specter wolf climbed back up. No fear in its scarlet eyes, only the excitement of getting more and more courageous. A wisp of red and black aura spread from the hell spectral wolf's body, enveloping the entire stadium. The demonic power opened. Under the ring, Chen Xingyan's eyes lit up. What a dense demonic power. Demonic power was a power unique to demonic imperial beasts and there was a mysterious aspect to this power. When the more damage a demonic royal beast suffered, in other words, the lower its own blood level was, the stronger the strength of the demonic force would be. The hell's spectral wolf roared up to the sky, and the demonic power that erupted from its body doubled in size. The entire audience was affected by the demonic power. Some people subconsciously shed tears, some were emotionally violent, and some were inexplicably angry. Demonic power, a source of negative emotions, sadness, anger, Jealousy, greed, the negative emotions within the audience instantly erupted under the influence of the demonic force. Xiao Xingyu looked at Xie Guanan with a frosty face and an icy voice. Hellfire Lotus, it's coming, it's coming, it's still the familiar formula, still the familiar flavor. This is the Hell Spectre Wolf's surefire technique, the Hellfire Lotus. The host could hardly suppress his excitement and his voice went hoarse, under the gaze of the entire audience. The Hell Spectral Wolf opened its mouth and spewed out a black fire lotus. The fire lotus rotated in midair, expanding geometrically in size. This was no ordinary hellfire lotus. The lotus heart of the fire lotus compressed a large amount of demonic power. The lower the imperial beast's own blood level was, the higher the damage of the battle technique it released. This was the additional attribute of demonic power. Previously, the hell spectral wolf had been struck by the heavenly demon blue flame beast's hammer of sixth harmony, and was severely injured. However, this was something Xiao Xingyu had done on purpose aiming to depress the hell spectral wolf's blood level. The floor of the ring was in tatters, and the temperature inside the stadium rapidly soared. As the hellfire lotus approached the sky demon blue flame beast's face, it swelled to its maximum size, almost bursting the entire gymnasium. Siagwan clenched his teeth and desperately urged the little remaining spiritual energy in his body. Bang bang bang! Explosions followed one after another. The fires of hell burned brightly, and the demonic power made icy echoes in the manic air currents. The host went crazy over it. This is the biggest hellfire lotus I've ever seen. It's unbelievable. I'm afraid that the power of this hellfire lotus can single-handedly kill a full-bodied level demonic beast. After the explosion, the smoke in the ring gradually dispersed. People could once again see the scene in the center of the ring. Only the heavenly demon blue flame beast held up its six arms, supporting a blood-colored vortex. The power of the hellfire lotus was absorbed by the blood-colored vortex bit by bit. The host once again sucked in a breath of cold air. Viewers, the situation seems to have reversed again. The heavenly demon blue flame beast has actually absorbed the damage from the hellfire lotus. Amidst the audience's gasps, the hellfire lotus continued to shrink in size until it was absorbed by the blood-colored vortex. This is unbelievable. The heavenly demon blue flame beast absorbing the power of the hellfire lotus completely. I have to say, the battle between the two contestants is good enough to rival the excitement of a three-star imperial beast master duel. Audience seat. How is this possible? The Hellfire Lotus with demonic power attached to it was actually absorbed by the Heavenly Demon Blue Flame Beast? The Heavenly Demon Blue Flame Beast's ability is too perverse. 
The blood-colored vortex it unleashed is simply a black hole that swallows everything. I probably understand. After the heavenly demon blue flame beast opened its berserker form, not only did its attack and defense values triple, even the ability to absorb damage has tripled. The last wisp of fire was swallowed by the blood-colored vortex. The hellfire lotus completely disappeared. The entire audience was silenced, and the atmosphere was somewhat oppressive. Xia Guan grinned a slightly twisted smile, contrasting with his usual elegant and handsome image. Xiao Xingyu, is this your limit? Not to mention one hellfire lotus. Even if it's two hellfire lotuses, my imperial beasts will be able to absorb them all. As soon as the words fell, Xia Guan urged his spiritual power. The heavenly demon blue flame beast let out a roar, and the tiger head located in the center of the three heads spewed out a blue fire lotus. This was the rebound ability of the sky demon blue flame beast. After absorbing the enemy's attack, it transformed it into its own energy and then rebounded. The blue fire lotus cut through the sky, splitting the head and smashing into the body of the hell specter wolf. Explosions were frequent and waves of fire splashed everywhere. The stadium shook, and the spectators covered their eyes in fear. The hell spectral wolf was hit by the blue fire lotus. The smoke is currently spreading. We can't see the exact situation in the center of the ring. Could it be that Xiao Xingyu's path of rebellion is about to stop here? The smoke is dispersing. The cameraman is giving close-up shots. This is the armor of Yen Yang. With an exclamation from the host, the audience got a good look at the ring. The inferno spectral wolf was standing, covered in flaming armor. This was the high difficulty fire attribute defensive battle skill. The armor of Yen Yang. Although the armor of Yen Yang appeared to be broken in multiple places, it managed to defend against the blue fire lotus. Xiao Xingyu stood amidst the ruins. His head hung low. A gust of wind blew by, and the teenager raised his eyes, his eyes resembling that star-like brilliance. How did this happen? Xiaguan felt incredulous and subconsciously took a step back. You just said that even if two hellfire lotus, your imperial beast can still absorb it, right? Xiao Xingyu paused for a moment and continued. Then what if three? Xia Guan tried to maintain his composure and sneered in mockery. Xiao Xingyu, what are you bragging about? The Hellfire Lotus is the Hell Spectral Wolf's mandatory kill technique. The cooldown time is at least an hour. Xiao Xingyu smiled without saying anything and opened the Imperial Beast Crest. Xiao Xingyu has opened the Imperial Beast Coat of Arms. He's going to summon the second Imperial Beast. Is it going to summon the Holy Light Angel Beast? No, it's not. He summoned a Electric Ear Rabbit? The entire room was shocked when Xiao Xingyu's second Imperial Beast debuted. Crap! What the hell? Electric Ear Rabbit? The Electric Ear Rabbit is an attribute-less Imperial Beast of inferior bloodline. Xiao Xingyu is crazy, right? To be honest, the moment I saw the Electric Ear Rabbit make its appearance, I almost had a cerebral atrophy. The Electric Ear Rabbit was a notorious waste Imperial Beast. On the final stage of the Supernova competition, Xiao Xingyu summoned it out, making people laugh their heads off. When Xia Guan saw the electric ear rabbit come out, he first froze, then laughed out loud. Ha ha ha, Xiao Xingyu, you're not an imperial beast master, but I admit that you're a comedic harmonic star. Thank you for bringing joy to everyone. Xia Guan's words were sarcastic, satirizing Xiao Xingyu and scoffing at the electric eared rabbit. Xiao Xingyu did not explain too much and patted the electric ear rabbit's ears. The electric ear rabbit sensed its master's will and its two lightning shaped ears stood up, its mouth emitting a milky ferocious chirping sound. This little guy is out to be cute, right? Can't figure out Xiao Xingyu's mesmerizing operation. Thought that the dark horse had rebounded. So it seems that the dark horse is just a dark horse and can't become a climate. Just at the moment when the audience lost confidence in Xiao Xingyu, the hell spectral wolf suddenly opened its mouth and spewed out a hellfire lotus. Without waiting for the people to let out a gasp of surprise, the hell's underworld wolf once again spewed out a hellfire lotus. Immediately afterward, a third hellfire lotus appeared in front of people's eyes. At this moment, in the sky above the stadium, there were three gigantic hellfire lotuses hovering, forming a closed circle around the heavenly demon blue flame beast. The host slapped the table. I can't believe my eyes. Hell's underworld wolf, spewing out three hellfire lotuses in one breath. Xia Guan was struck by lightning and his body seemed to stiffen as if petrified. How is this possible? One must know that the hellfire lotus was the hell spectral wolf's mandatory kill technique, with a cooldown time of at least an hour. The Hell Spectral Wolf had just unleashed a Hellfire Lotus earlier, so it was reasonably impossible to cast this battle technique again within an hour. However, Xiao Xingyu had always been unconventional. When the three Hellfire Lotuses hovered above the ring, it stunned the entire arena and shattered people's three views. Three Hellfire Lotuses? My brother is awesome. Under the ring, the most excited person was Morong Yangshua. Seeing Xiao Xingyu's heaven-defying performance, Morong Yangshua was filled with pride and shouted to the audience. 
See that? That bullish guy on stage is my brother. Is my brother awesome? Ha ha ha. Praise my brother more. I love to hear it. While Chen Chinian was shocked, his attention fell on the electric eared rabbit. At this moment, the electric ear rabbit was lying on Xiao Xingyu's left shoulder, its head resting on Xiao Xingyu's neck, looking adorably cute and adorable. The cooldown time of the Hellfire Lotus, about an hour or so. Unless, this electric eared rabbit has the ability to refresh friendly moves. Chen Chinian was shocked by his guesses once again. Judge's seat. The depths of Shang Wan Lan's beautiful eyes revealed a look of appreciation. Mutant species of electric ear rabbits are extremely rare. It seems that Xiao Xingyu, this young man, has an eye for selecting imperial beasts that far exceeds geniuses of his age. Xia Zhong fell into silence, knowing that his son no longer had any chance of winning this duel. I can't lose. Xia Guan could not lose, nor could he afford to. Topped with the title of the son of the Dragon Kingdom's first military master, Xia Guan had been the center of attention since he was a child. With his family's inherited beast mastery talent, as well as a pair of beast pupils that were able to anticipate the enemy's movements, Xia Guan had always been a standout amongst his peers. Before meeting Xiao Xingyu, Xia Guan had never suffered a defeat. There were 100, 000 spectators at the scene and over 30 million netizens watching the webcast. On top of that, there were also many star scouts from the Imperial Beastmaster Guild staring at this match. On the judges' table, there was even the ruler of the Dragon Kingdom, Empress Shang Wan Lan. Losing the match in such an environment would lose more than just honor, but also dignity. Xia Guan panicked inwardly. He was terrified. He was too afraid of losing and hurriedly urged all his spiritual energy. The heavily demon blue flame beast once again raised its six thick arms, holding up a blood-colored vortex above its head. This was Xia Guan's last struggle. Xiao Xingyu raised his finger and tapped downwards. Fall. The host entered a state of exuberance. His voice hoarse but not without passion. Three hellfire lotuses landed high in the sky, bombarding the sky demon blue flame beast from three angles. The sky demon blue flame beast has nowhere to run. This will be Xiao Xingyu's masterpiece for sealing the gods in one battle. The Hellfire Lotus Triangle Kill. This was the significance of the host's existence. Not only was he responsible for commentating on the battle, but he would also make a cameo appearance as a naming ghostwriter. The blood-colored vortex was unable to withstand the pressure of the three Hellfire Lotuses and instantly dissipated like smoke. Under the watchful eyes of 100, 000 people, the three Hellfire Lotuses exploded at the same time, and the flame aftermath stirred like waves. Sweeping across the ring, everyone in the audience felt the ripples of fire waves that pummeled their faces, and surprise was written all over every face. This kind of shock that strikes right into the depths of the human soul is no longer a mere imperial beast battle skill, but an art. The host was in tears, using his specialty to interpret Xiao Xingyu's greatness. The moment the smoke cleared, the ruins of the ring had turned into a sea of black fire. The sky demon blue flame beast suffered a heavy blow and automatically lifted its berserker form. Its entire body was scorched by the flames. Its three heads were foaming at the mouth with black smoke coming out of its mouth, completely losing consciousness and falling into a fainting spell. Siaguan knelt in the ruins. His knees were cut by the sharp debris. Blood soaked his shirt. Compared to the slight pain of bleeding, the shame of losing his dignity was more painful to his heart. I, lost? At this moment, Siaguan had difficulty accepting the reality of defeat. The referee blew his whistle. The match is over. Winner, Green Dragon Academy, Xiao Xingyu. The entire arena fell silent for a moment, and then a mountain of screams rang out, as well as thunderous applause. Xiao Xingyu stood in the center of the ruins of the Sea of Fire, a calm smile still hanging on his handsome face. The Hell's Underworld Wolf stood behind him, head held high, majestic and domineering. 1. Xingyu 1. Morong Yangshua was more excited than anyone else and directly jumped up in place. Morong Xinxin stood at the bottom of the stage, looking up at the upright back on the stage. Her delicate face seemed like the first melting of spring snow, revealing a charming smile. Chen Qinian secretly clenched his fist. Xiao Xingyu, worthy of you. From this moment onwards, Xiao Xingyu's name resounded through the north and south of the Yangtze River. This grassroots-born teenager used a move called Hellfire Lotus Triangle Kill to defeat the proud son of heaven, Xia Guan, because Xia Guan consumed too much. Physical exhaustion can only rely on staff support to get off the stage. Before Xia Guan stepped down, he stared at Xiao Xingyu for a long time. Xiao Xingyu, wait for me. After Xie Guan was helped off the ring ring by the staff, Xiao Xingyu's face did not change. Don't waste time. Next as soon as possible. The entire audience looked towards the Vermilion Bird Academy's preparation area. Xia Ren and Dong Fang Qing's facial expressions were as green as if they had eaten a fly. Xie Guan was the royal beastmaster with the strongest talent and strength among the current freshmen of Vermilion Bird Academy. Now that Xie Guan had lost to Xiao Xingyu. 
Xia Ren and Gong Fang Cheng didn't even have the courage to make an appearance. The president of Vermilion Bird Academy, Gu Nansheng, had an ice cold face. Our Vermilion Bird Academy can lose the match, but we cannot lose our dignity. Gu Nansheng walked over to Xia Ren and said in a tone that was impossible to refute, Student Xia Ren, it's your turn to take the stage. According to the rules of the match, Xia Guan failed to defend the ring, and Xiao Xingyu became the defender. Vermilion Bird Academy had to send the next player on stage to attack the ring. Xia Ren was in a panic, with a thousand helplessness written on his face. Dean, my brother didn't even beat Xiao Xingyu. What's the difference between me going up and giving away my head? Xia Ren kept backing up, and Dong Fang Cheng on the side was also beating a retreat. Gu Nancheng reminded, Fellow student Xia Ren, your father is watching from the judges' table. To go on stage or not to go on stage, your choice. Xia Ren looked up and couldn't help but be emboldened. On the judges' table, Xia Zhong's face was as chilling as if he was immersed in the Arctic Ocean. Fine, I'll just go on stage. With trembling steps, Xia Ren ascended the ring, looking at Xie Guan's sister being forced to rush her onto the stage. Xiao Xingyu smiled indifferently. Student Xia Ren, I personally have no grudge against you. Just as Xia Ren relaxed, Xiao Xingyu's words changed, his gaze cold for a few moments. But six gold is my man, and since you've crossed the line with six gold, I'll teach you a lesson on behalf of six gold. Xia Ren froze. Six gold? Morong Xinxin. Xia Ren's face instantly paled after realizing that the six gold in Xiao Xingyu's mouth was her enemy Morong Xinxin. After Xia Ren calmed down, she walked over to Xiao Xingyu and lowered her voice. Xiao Xingyu, my father is the one sitting on the judging table. Later on, if you deliberately reveal your flaws and lose to me, I'll guarantee you a lifetime of honor and wealth. Xiao Xingyu smiled faintly. Student Xia Ren, are you trying to bribe me? Xia Ren smiled confidently, ruffling her long hair and exuding charm. That's right, I am bribing you. As long as you are willing to lose to me, you can become my Xia Ren's friend. Compared to this network of our Xia family, what is the Morong family? At this moment, Xia Ren was certain that Xiao Xingyu would choose the Xia family between the Xia family and the Morong family. After all, Xia Zhong's position was that of a man under 10,000 men and the power and background of the Xia family was far more powerful than the Morong family. Xiao Xingyu, have you considered it clearly? Considered it clearly, I will blow you up later. Xiao Xingyu used the flattest tone and said the most ruthless words. Xia Ren stepped back in panic, next she had to meet Xiao Xingyu's anger. Xiao Xingyu, you are really soft and hard. Xia Ren once again took a step back and distanced herself from Xiao Xingyu, her eyes burning with anger and resentment. But more emotions were scorn in panic. I'll blow you up later. These words, Echoing in Xia Ren's mind, shook her soul. Previously, Xia Guan was defeated in Xiao Xingyu's hands, and the three Hellfire Lotus instantly killed the heavenly demon blue flame beast that had opened its berserker form. Xia Ren knows the gap between herself and her brother. Even her brother cannot beat the opponent. She has no chance of winning. Defender, Green Dragon Academy, Xiao Xingyu. Attacking side, Vermilion Bird Academy, Xia Ren. The match begins. The referee blew his whistle and the battle kicked off. Xia Ren opened the Imperial Beast coat of arms and summoned a peacock with a beautiful posture. The host was responsible for narrating the introduction. The Imperial Beast summoned by Xia Ren is the water type Imperial Beast she is best at harnessing. The Mad Cascade Knight Peacock. As we all know, the Mad Cascade Knight Peacock has an extremely strong ability to manipulate the water element. Xiao Xing use Hell Spectre Wolf. Its main attribute is fire. Water type Imperial Beasts naturally restrain fire type Imperial Beasts. This is the only thing that Xia Ren can call an advantage. Not to mention Imperial Beast Masters. Even ordinary people without spiritual power knew the natural law of water restraining fire. In the ring, Xiao Xingyu stood motionless, with a clouded look. The Hell's Underworld Wolf crouched by Xiao Xingyu's side, in the same state as its master. Lazy and diffident, with no intention of taking the initiative to attack. The host laughed and interjected. It seems that in this duel, Xiao Xingyu's tactic is that the enemy doesn't move. I don't move. The match had officially begun. Xia Ren's every nerve was taut, seeing Xiao Xingyu not moving. She didn't dare to move either, and only muttered in her heart. This guy, why didn't he take the initiative like he did when he was dueling with my brother? Could it be that he's afraid of our Xia family in his heart? So he's planning to lose to me on purpose to curry favor with me? No, it isn't, just now. His sentence about beating me up, his tone was clearly serious. As long as one stood in the ring, Every move or even immobility of the strongest would cause a mental storm on the weaker side. Xia Ren was the weaker party. Even if Xiao Xingyu's eyelids blinked or his eyebrows raised, she would be terrified and overinterpret the other party's heart. No, I can't wear out like this. Even if I lose, I have to lose with dignity. 
Water Imperial Beasts naturally restrain Fire Imperial Beasts. As long as I can last three rounds, I won't be considered a disgrace to the Xie Clan. I won't be considered a disgrace to the Vermilion Bird Academy. Xia Ren's demands on herself were minimized. She only wanted to last three rounds in front of Xiao Xingyu. Both sides have been facing each other for more than five minutes now, and Xiao Xingyu is keeping it pressed. But judging from Xia Ren's facial expression, she can't seem to hold it together. Viewers, I was right. Xia Ren is the first to attack. The entire audience's attention fell on Xia Ren. Xia Ren pushed his spiritual energy, and a look of viciousness surfaced in his eyes. The wild waterfall night peacock resonated with its master, letting out a shrill chirp as its tail blossomed and instantly opened its screen, setting off a raging stream of water. The stream of water swirled in the air like a rapid waterfall free-falling from the edge of a cliff, enveloping the head of the hell's underworld wolf. Xiao Xingyu, who was resting his eyes with his eyes closed, slowly opened his eyes and spat out icy words from his mouth. Hellfire burning sky claw. Ow. The lethargy in the eyes of the hell specter wolf instantly disappeared as it raised its large, sharp right front paw and swung it towards the front. The wolf claw silhouette that burned with hellfire while containing terrifying demonic power tore through space, shredding the waterfall curtains released by the mad cascade night peacock, destroying it with force. Hiss. The sound of the wolf claw shredding flesh and blood caused the audience to get goosebumps. Under the cameraman's lens, the wild waterfall night peacock planted itself heavily, its blood-stained feathers flying all over the sky, its body bloody, its wounds taking on the shape of a wolf's claw. The entire arena was dead silent. The host froze for a while before breaking the silence. One move in seconds? In just one move, ignoring the attribute restraints, the maniacal falls night peacock with full status was eliminated in seconds. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The host was the audience's mouthpiece, and everyone couldn't believe their eyes. It was important to realize that in the duel between Xiao Xingyu and Xie Guan, although Xiao Xingyu had one, the hell spectral wolf had consumed a lot, coupled with the layer of attribute restraint. It was reasonable to say that the maniacal waterfall night peacock would at least be able to last a round or two. However, with a single move of the hellfire underwolf's heavenly claw, the imperial beast that Xia Ren had carefully cultivated for many years was eliminated in seconds. Xia Ren stood upright in the ring, looking at the hellfire heavenly claw that had fallen to the ground and fainted, his eyes full of shock, his mouth trembling. This how is this possible? I actually couldn't even last a single round. The host warmly prompted, Student Xia Ren, According to the rules of the tournament, you can still continue to summon a second imperial beast. The rules of the tournament, there was no limit to the number of imperial beasts in battle. Xia Ren let out a bitter smile, his tone filled with sourness and helplessness. I concede. The referee blew his whistle. The match is over. Green Dragon Academy, Xiao Xingyu, successful in defending the ring. The audience once again resounded with applause and cheers. Before Xia Ren stepped down from the stage, he glanced at Xiao Xingyu. You guy. What a scary monster. It was not a nice phrase, but it was a suitably apt description of Xiao Xingyu. Xia Ren was quite smart. Admitting defeat would cause controversy and be criticized for being timid and cowardly though. But in comparison, wouldn't it be even more humiliating to summon a second or even a third imperial beast, all of which would be defeated by Xiao Xingyu in a single move? The next attacker will appear. Dongfang Prime walked onto the ring with reluctant steps. This was the last player from Vermilion Bird Academy. Whoever Xiao Xingyu and Dongfang Qing could win would represent their academies to get the title of this year's supernova competition. But for the spectators, this match hadn't even started yet, and the outcome was already not in doubt. With the talent and strength that Xiao Xingyu had shown by defeating Xie Guan and killing Xia Ren in seconds, taking out another Dongfang Prime would be a matter of smooth sailing. At this moment, before the last match even started, the audience began to shout in unison, Champion Xiao Xingyu, Champion Xiao Xingyu, Champion Xiao Xingyu. The audience's shouts were a chant from hell for Dongfang Prime, making his legs go weak. It doesn't matter if we can't win, we can't just forfeit before we even fight. For the sake of Vermilion Bird Academy's dignity, I can't wimp out. Dongfang Prime kept applying mental hints to himself. The referee blew the whistle for the start of the match, and the smell of gunpowder flared up again. Dongfang Prime stiffly gritted his back teeth and opened the Imperial Beast Heraldry, summoning three Imperial Beasts at the same time. From this, it was easy to see that Dongfang Prime was not trying to win, but to lose with some dignity. Xiao Xingyu pushed his spiritual power, and the Hell Spectral Wolf let out a howl that pierced through the clouds and cracked the rocks his body covered with a brand new layer of Yin Yang's armor, and his demonic power spread crazily with his heavy breathing. Dongfang Prime was terrified as he saw a gate cast in black flames open behind the Hell Spectre Wolf. This is the gate of the underworld that leads to the underworld, and the door extends a dense number of skeletal arms. In fact, everything was an illusion. The influence of demonic power. Plop. 
Dongfang Prime sat on his butt on the ground, sweating profusely. I I. Dongfang Prime stammered for half a day and finally stifled a weak voice. I admit defeat. The moment Dongfang Prime lowered his head to admit defeat, the referee blew the whistle for the end of the match. Winner, Green Dragon Academy, Xiao Xingyu. After the referee announced the winner, the audience remained silent. Everyone was looking forward to the referee's next words. The host, who was always a noisy chatterbox, also kept his mouth tightly shut at this moment. The large stadium was so quiet that a pin could be heard. This kind of depressing scene almost made the referee lose his mind. After adjusting his breathing, the referee announced in a neutral voice. This year's supernova competition, the champion is, Green Dragon Academy. As the referee's words landed, the entire arena stood up and cheered. Compared to the dead silence of the previous second, the entire stadium was like a boiling frying pan, flammable and explosive. Morong Yangshua rushed onto the ring and gave Xiao Xingyu a big bear hug. Xiao Xingyu, you really give this young master a long face. Oh ha. Morong Yangshua let out a scream and hugged Xiao Xingyu in circles. Chen Qinian and Morong Xinxin also walked up to the ring. And everyone celebrated the joy of winning the championship moment together. Below the ring, Su Ruyan, the president of Qinglong Academy, applauded with the audience while looking at Xiao Xingyu's green and tender smiling face with a pleased gaze. You brat. Halfway through her words, Su Ruyan couldn't think of any adjectives to describe this marvelous teenager. So she simply applauded hard. And in her eyes, in addition to being pleased, there was also an extra touch of love that was hard to understand. The host held the microphone and shouted loudly. This year's supernova competition comes to an end. Congratulations to Qinglong Academy for taking the championship honor. With the winners and losers already split and the champion revealed. Naturally, some people were happy and some were sad. Xiaguan sat in the rest area under the ring, smashing the glass of the vending machine beside him with one punch, his face written with unwillingness and resentment. Xia Ren stood beside his brother, unable to say a word, occasionally stealing a glance at Morong Xinxin in the ring. Rokujin, we won the championship. Aha, uh -huh, I know, we won the championship, why are you still so calm? Morong Xinxin's character was like this, even when Qinglong Academy won the championship, her expression didn't change much, Xiao Xingyu suddenly opened his arms and hugged Morong Xinxin's willow waist, you what are you doing? This was the first time Morong Xinxin stuttered and her expression became unnatural, of course it's to celebrate winning the championship, Xiao Xingyu hugged Morong Xinxin and spun in place, Xiao Xingyu, what are you up to? Put me down, six gold. This is our Green Dragon Academy's highlight moment. Don't strain your face, get high. Oh 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 oh. Xiao Xingyu hugged Morong Xinxin and spun around madly. Morong Yangshua didn't stop him. Instead he accompanied Xiao Xingyu. Shang Wanlan sat on the judge's seat. Watching all this, the corners of his lips rarely overflowed with heartfelt smiles. This is the vigor of youth. At this age, one should be this crazy. But these images fell in Xia Ren's eyes, causing a deep sting to her. Watching Morong Xinxin being carried around in circles by Xiao Xingyu. For a moment, she actually developed a feeling of jealousy. Back then, that bone wing bat beast cub. Instead of choosing me, he chose her. Nowadays, why is it that such an outstanding man would also circle around her, but refuses to look at me more than once? Failure to climb up the ladder would lead to jealousy. Xia Ren was caught in a circle of mental internal conflict. She always thought she was better than Morong Xinxin, but Morong Xinxin always got what she couldn't. For example, the bone wing bat beast. For example, Xiao Xingyu. Five minutes later, the award ceremony began. In the ring, the salute cannons were firing and the colorful ribbons were flying. The Dragon Empire Empress Shang Wanlan personally awarded the three contestants from the Green Dragon Academy with championship medals and finally handed over the heavy championship trophy to Xiao Xingyu's hands. At this moment, the audience's shouts reached their peak, audible throughout the city. All major online media. Competing to report the relevant news, Xiao Xingyu's name on the national hot search first. Xiao Xingyu received the championship trophy from Shang Wanlan's hands, and had mixed emotions inside. When he was first chased by Shang Wanlan on the vast and infinite sea, the dangerous images were still fresh in his mind. If it wasn't for the dragon's tear, Xiao Xingyu would have died in Shang Wanlan's hands, and would not have had the chance to receive the supernova competition's champion trophy from Shang Wanlan's hands. Shang Wanlan raised his hand and patted Xiao Xingyu's shoulder. The younger generation is fearful. I'm optimistic about you. Eight simple words lifted Xiao Xingyu to the height of national attention. At this moment, the entire nation knew that the Empress Lord had her eyes on a grassroots genius youngster without a powerful background. As Xia Guan witnessed all of this, his jealousy and anger was like a volcanic eruption, eating away at his sanity bit by bit. Just at the moment when Xia Guan's emotions were about to collapse, a pair of hands held down his shoulders. Father, 
Xia Guan looked up. Xia Zhong came to his side at an unknown time. Seeing Xia Zhong's serious and cold expression, Xia Guan lowered his head. His face seemed to be covered in a layer of fallen maple leaves. The image was rather bleak. Losing a match isn't scary. Losing your fighting spirit is. Father, that Xiao Xingyu's strength exceeded my imagination. I was careless. Xia Zhong smiled and lamented. Even if you weren't careless, you're still not his opponent. Xia Guan wanted to retort, but he wanted to stop. He knew that Xia Zhong was telling the truth. With those three Hellfire Lotuses that were released at the same time, if Xia Guan was given another hundred chances to prepare in advance, he wouldn't be able to deal with them. In the ring, Xiao Xingyu stood in the center. The Morong siblings stood on his left and right respectively. The three of them held up the champion trophy together and smiled in front of the camera. The photographer's lens flashed and the picture was fixed. The poster of this championship photo would be hung at the entrance of Qinglong Academy. The host was in tears due to his emotions, but his voice was no less impassioned. This is a wonderful reversal. This is an example of a backbreaking battle. In a desperate situation where two of his teammates suffered consecutive defeats, student Xiao Xingyu was ordered to carry the dignity and honor of Qinglong Academy by himself in a time of danger. He defeated Xia Guan, the son of the Dragon Kingdom's number one warlord. He defeated the proud daughter of heaven, Xia Ren, in a single move. The aura he exuded forced Dongfang Prime to choose to admit defeat before the start of the match. The more the host spoke, the faster he spoke and the more emotional he became, his facial muscles twitching and trembling. He is the strongest dark horse of the Green Dragon Academy. He is the leader of the younger generation of the Dragon Kingdom. And he is also the grassroots genius favored by the Lord Empress. The entire audience, let's join together and shout out the name of this teenager. The host called out with a single shout. Xiao Xingyu. These three words resounded through the clouds and sky, running through heaven and earth, shaking the hearts of every Dragon Country citizen. Xiao Xingyu held the trophy and waved his hand towards the audience. Vigorous and magnificent. No one could take away a single bit of light and sharpness from him. At the same time, a system beep sounded in Xiao Xingyu's head. Ding. Congratulations to the host. Unlock the achievement, Supernova Competition Champion. Obtained achievement reward, 1, Attribute Fusion Crystal, plus, Bloodline Upgrade Crystal. Xiao Xingyu's mind turned. And the system warehouse opened. There were two more items in the warehouse bar an attribute fusion crystal stone and a bloodline upgrade crystal stone. Both of these treasures were what Xiao Xingyu currently needed. Attribute fusion crystal stone. Can take other attributes and fuse them within my own imperial beast. Keep it for now. And find a chance to use it for Freya. Bloodline upgrade crystals. Can upgrade the quality of the imperial beast's bloodline. It's appropriate to use it on Black Striker. Xiao Xingyu had already calculated that these two treasures. Subsequently finding the best time would be used on the Holy Light Angelic Beast and Hell Spectral Wolf respectively. The celebration continued. None of the spectators had retired. And everyone was immersed in the joy of Green Dragon Academy's victory. Simply because Xiao Xingyu represented the grassroots class. This teenager without any background of power and influence. Single-handedly beating through the three geniuses of Vermilion Bird Academy. Star Scouts from all the major Imperial Beast Master Guilds swarmed around and handed over their business cards. Mr. Xiao. I'm a talent scout from the Prisoner Bull Guild. Leave me your contact information. I'm a scout from the Ice Spirit Guild. I wonder if Mr. Xiao is interested in our guild? Xiao Da Handsome, our Sword and Feather Guild. Two-thirds of the members are beautiful women. Even our president is also a gorgeous Imperial Sister Yo. Xiao Xingyu was sealed in one battle and was favored by all the major Imperial Beast Master Guilds. In this era, the most scarce thing was talent. Although Xiao Xingyu was only a two-star Imperial Beast Master, his potential had already reached a point where people were salivating. There was no reason for everyone not to believe that as long as they gave this teenager five years to grow, he would definitely be able to become the most first-rate Imperial Beast Master in the Dragon Kingdom. The setting sun hung in midair like a jade disc. It shone on Xiao Xingyu's handsome face as if it was gilded with a layer of gold. Xiao Xingyu stood at the center of the podium, holding the champion trophy high with one hand and thanking every star scout for their kindness. Chen Chinian smiled and asked, Xiao Xingyu, those guilds that threw out olive branches towards you just now are all mega imperial beast master guilds that are ranked in the top 50 in the country. And you just rejected them? Xiao Xingyu placed the trophy in Chen Qingyan's arms. Chen Qingyan's arm shook. Good lord. This trophy is quite heavy. Worthy of being made of pure gold. Director Chen. Don't forget. I'm the special pharmacist of the Tsong Dome Guild. I can't betray the Tsong Dome Guild. Then you have to think clearly. Those guilds just now. In terms of strength, financial power and reputation can be much higher than the Tsung Dome Guild. Xiao Xingyu shook his head with a firm attitude. I'm thinking clearly, and I won't regret it. The Tsung Dome Guild, to Xiao Xingyu was relatively special. 
Song Dong Guild President Qin Long Yue's daughter, Qin Yen Yen, was Xiao Xingyu's recognized godsister. Qin Yen Yen's sister-in-law, the vice president of the Song Dong Guild, Lu Yu, was also very good to Xiao Xingyu, and Xiao Xingyu usually called her sister-in-law, Xingyu, come here for a moment, coming. Xiao Xingyu was smiled coyly as Morong Yangshua came in front of the media camera. Morong Yangshua had a condescending look on his face as he wrapped his arm around Xiao Xingyu's shoulders and chattered to the media reporters. This is Green Dragon Academy's strongest dark horse this year, and also the supernova finalist 1 through 3, Xiao Xingyu, he is my Morong Yangshua's brother. Brother Yangshua, stop it, let's keep a low profile. Fellow reporters, is my brother awesome? All the reporters spoke in unison. Awesome. Morong Yangshua took the lead and shouted, Xiao Xingyu is awesome. The entire audience, Xiao Xingyu is bullish. Xiao Xingyu looked at Morong Xingxin on the side with a look of help. Lu Jin, can you take off your stockings and put them over my head? I don't have the face to see anyone. I didn't expect that you, a social cow, would also have a day of social terrorism. Xiao Xingyu looked dumbfounded, incredulously saying, Lu Jin, I didn't expect you to actually flirt with people anymore. The changes in Morong Xinxin were all brought about by Xiao Xingyu. Originally, she was an iceberg beauty and suffered from severe isolation. After a long period of contact with Xiao Xingyu, this white-haired beauty's character became a bit more lively and learned to flirt. The sun set and night fell. There is no feast under heaven. The audience dispersed. The stadium lights went out. The podium was empty. Only the staff remained to clean up the surrounding garbage. The end of one feast means the beginning of another. Downtown. Five-star hotel. Su Ruyan, as the dean of the Green Dragon Academy, had spent money to open a luxury box. In the box, Su Ruyan called for a waiter and opened a bottle of expensive red wine. Pour it for these three children. The waiter moved crisply, pouring red wine for Xiao Xingyu and Morong siblings respectively. Chen Qinian reminded in a low voice, Dean, our Green Dragon Academy has school rules. What school rules? You really are a nobleman. School Rule 95. Students participating in various tournaments outside, during which they cannot drink alcohol. Su Ruyan took a sip of red wine and ordered. What kind of broken school rule? Change it. Chen Qinian weakly said. This school rule, you personally wrote it in the beginning. Go back and inform the disciplinary department to delete this school rule. Chen Qinian's smile stiffened and he was sweating profusely. Yes, you are the dean. What you say is what you say. Because the dean was sitting across from him, Xiao Xingyu and Morong siblings were extraordinarily well behaved. Just like kindergartners with their little hands behind their backs, their waists straight, and a hint of stupidity in their clear eyes. All right, you three don't be formal. Drink. Even though Su Ruyan said so, the three little ones still sat upright and remained cautious. No one dared to pick up the wine glass. Chen Qinian spat from the side. You are the dean after all. It's really normal for the three kids to be so formal. Su Ruyan removed the badge on her chest. This badge was the identity symbol of the dean of Green Dragon Academy. You three see clearly at least in this box, on this night of winning the championship, I am not the dean, right now, I'm just a big sister who is older than you guys and wants to accompany you to properly celebrate this championship win, so don't be formal anymore, Xiao Xingyu, starting with you, Su Ruyan got up and sat next to Xiao Xingyu, dean, you are the biggest contributor to winning the championship, don't be formal, don't treat me as the dean, you can relax, good, relaxed, relaxed, want to say something, look at the legs, Put. Xiao Xingyu stunned the entire audience with these words. Chen Qinian sprayed a mouthful of tea five meters away. The Morong siblings all looked at Xiao Xingyu with the eyes of a fool. Seeing Su Ruyan's gloomy face, Xiao Xingyu hurriedly defended himself. Dean, it was you who said that you wouldn't let me treat you as a dean. It was you who told me to relax and not be formal. That's why I, Brother Yangshua, six gold. You guys help me say something. Morong Yangshua, Dean, I'm not familiar with Xiao Xingyu. Look at the leg this kind of words I can't say. I'll go to the toilet. Morong Xinxin, the gas in my house is not turned off. I will go out for a while. Xiao Xingyu looked at Chen Qinian again. Director Chen. I. Chen Qinian, hey I have a bad signal here. Wait for me. Seeing Chen Qinian pretending to make a call and heading out of the box, Xiao Xingyu could not cry. You three, the excuses are one more clumsy than the other. Only Su Ruyan and Xiao Xingyu remained in the box. Xiao Xingyu hated to find a crack in the ground. Su Ruyan's fiery red lips came to Xiao Xingyu's ear. You kid, you want to see my legs right? Dean, I'm just joking, don't take it seriously. Su Ruyan lifted the hem of her skirt, revealing her snow white, round and straight, slender legs. Xiao Xingyu just glanced at it and instantly felt his blood rushing. I didn't expect ah, the dean is over 30 years old. 
Her skin is so well maintained, and the skin of her thighs is so watery and white. Su Ruyan's voice was slightly flirtatious. Kid, you've seen the legs. It's kind of a reward I'm giving you for bringing the championship trophy of this year's supernova competition to our Green Dragon Academy. There's no need to thank me. I'm a part of the Green Dragon Academy. It's all what I should do. Pick up the wine cup. Xiao Xingyu obediently lifted the wine cup. His handsome face flushed red. Su Ruyan took the initiative to clink glasses with Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu, amongst your peers, your talent is the best I have ever seen. Bar none. Thank you Dean for the compliment. If you can pass the 4-star Imperial Beast Master examination before the end of this semester, I will give you an extra reward. What extra reward? Xiao Xingyu raised his interest. Su Ruyan drank a lot of wine tonight. Her usual intimidating pressure was gone. Her charming eyes looking at Xiao Xingyu by her side. The extra reward is that you can not only look at my legs, but also touch them. Ah this. The blush on Xiao Xingyu's face had just faded and reddened once again. With only this man and woman in the box, the atmosphere became ambiguous. Dean, you are joking. I'm not joking. As long as you pass the 4-star Imperial Beast Master Test before the end of this semester, you can touch it, Xiao Xingyu said in a serious manner. Dean, I will pass the 4-star Imperial Beast Master Examination before the end of this semester. Su Ruyan revealed a satisfied smile. But I want to state beforehand that I am not greedy to touch your thigh. I just want to become stronger as soon as possible to bring glory to the Green Dragon Academy. Good. I believe you. The two clinked their glasses and drank from each other. Under the stimulation of alcohol, Xiao Xingyu was apoplectic, but also retained a trace of sanity. There are still three months left in this semester. I'm only a two-star Imperial Beast Master now. And if I want to pass the four-star Imperial Beast Master test, I'm still two segments short. Three months is too short, but I've already boasted in front of the dean, so I can only go ahead and try. A knock sounded on the door. Su Ruyan, enter. A long-haired woman with a cool temperament walked into the box with a golden token hanging from her waist. Mr. Xiao, the Empress Lord has an invitation to come into the palace. Xiao Xingyu pointed at himself, his face full of consternation. Lord Female Emperor, inviting me? The long-haired woman nodded with a smile. Su Ruyan gently patted Xiao Xingyu's little head. This is an invitation from the Empress Lord. Why are you still frozen? Xiao Xingyu followed the long-haired woman out of the box in confusion and got into a luxury car. For Spirit City, was not too far from the Imperial City, the most central part of the Dragon Kingdom. In less than two hours of driving, Xiao Xingyu entered the Imperial City for the first time in his life. This was the land of the Empress Shang Wanlan, the core fortress of the Dragon Kingdom, and a destination that the people of the country were longing for. Mr. Xiao, please. Xiao Xingyu got out of the car and was shocked by the sight before him. In front of him was a cluster of ancient buildings that could not be seen to the edge. Each palace towering over the clouds and glittering with gold and splendor. The tallest palace was like a palace in the sky, surrounded by clouds. Mr. Xiao. Mr. Xiao. I'm sorry. It's my first time in the Imperial City. I haven't seen the world and lost my temper. The long-haired woman smiled. Mr. Xiao. Follow me. Xiao Xingyu had some impression of this long-haired woman. She was the maid beside Shang Wanlan, named Fu Ling. Don't look at this woman's thin figure, but she was actually a member of the Imperial Soul Organization, ranked as a silver priest. The Imperial Soul Organization, was Shang Wanlan's most trusted forbidden army? Each member's strength was above a seven-star Imperial Beast Master, specializing in assassination, infiltration, tracking and undercover work. Passing through one tall palace gate after another, Xiao Xingyu encountered countless bigwigs along the way, and looking at the number of badges on his chest, there was no segment lower than seven stars. Poria stopped and stopped at the entrance of a palace. This palace, the largest and tallest palace in the entire imperial city, was magnificent, with two pure gold Qilin divine beasts standing at the entrance. Ooh, this Qilin is alive. Xiao Xingyu was startled when he saw the pure gold griffin's abdomen rise and fall as it breathed. The eye of the demon god opened and the data panel came into view. TSK TSK, these two big guys watching the door are actually beast god body level imperial beasts. The golden sacred Qilin. This is the Empress's platoon, Poria, Mr. Xiao. The Empress Lord is waiting for you inside the hall. Please. Xiao Xingyu walked through the red carpet and entered the main hall. This was the main hall of the Imperial City, the Night Lawn Hall. On weekdays, Shang Wan Lan would discuss important military matters with various ministers here. Logically, there would be no one in the Night Lawn Hall late at night. But tonight, Shang Wan Lan was here waiting for Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu entered the palace and felt an unprecedented pressure. The interior of the palace was beautifully decorated. Carved beams and paintings. Gorgeous. The murals were simple and elegant. 
and the colorful and gorgeous paintings highlighted the prosperity and prosperity of the dynasty. From this scene, it was like a replica of an ancient glorious dynasty, making people unable to connect with the current world background of global wasteland in magical beast invasion. Xiaoxing Yu looked up and saw a golden dragon chair. At this moment, a woman with the beauty of the country was leaning back on the dragon chair, wearing a phoenix crown on her head and a red tunic. Her beauty was like a fairy coming out of a scroll. This woman was the ruler of the dragon kingdom, and the only imperial beast emperor in the dragon kingdom whose strength was higher than a ten-star imperial beast master. Shang Wanlan. Shang Wanlan opened her beautiful eyes and her sight landed on Xiao Xingyu. This was the first time the two were alone. Shanglong Academy Xiao Xingyu. See Lord Empress. Xiao Xingyu knelt on one knee and clasped his hands in an unassuming manner, but the sweat on his temples still betrayed his nervousness at the moment. Do you know why this emperor summoned you alone? Xiao Xingyu shook his head. Shang Wanlan smiled faintly, her splendor showing, as if the spring breeze had brushed over the fallen dragon lake and the autumn rain had soaked the heavenly demon gully. This emperor is deeply pleased with your performance at the supernova competition. Or rather, I like you a lot. Xiao Xingyu couldn't fathom Shang Wanlan's heart, and could only promise, thanks to Lord Empress's love, I will definitely work harder. And in the future, I will relieve Lord Empress's worries and solve the problems for the people of the Dragon Kingdom. Shang Wanlan held her delicate chin in one hand and asked curiously, when you graduate from the Green Dragon Academy in the future, what are your plans? I'm a new student at the Green Dragon Academy, and I'll still be at the academy for three more years. As for things after graduation, I haven't thought much about it yet. Shang Wanlan's eyes flickered as he said with a smile, any student, after graduating from the Imperial Beast Academy, there are nothing but three choices. First, join the Imperial Beast Master Guild. Second, join the army and become a part of the navy, army, and air force. Third, join an international mercenary organization outside of the country and become a bounty hunter. These three choices were the three paths for graduates of the Imperial Beast Academy. Shang Wanlan got up and slowly walked over to Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu, if this emperor were to give you a fourth choice right now, would you be willing to accept it? Xiao Xingyu appeared to be as steady as an old dog, but in reality, he was panicking inside. Fourth choice? Crap. This woman wouldn't want to subvert me, right? I'm still a virgin. If her needs are too great and she squeezes me dry every night, what should I do? Xiao Xingyu pinched his thighs, stopping his rambling thoughts, and asked sincerely, Lord Empress, what exactly is the fourth choice you mentioned? Become a member of the Imperial Soul. Even though Shang Wanlan's voice was magnetic and melodious, it was like a bomb exploding in Xiao Xingyu's ears. Xiao Xingyu felt his ears buzzing and his entire body was like a log that had been struck by lightning frozen in place at a loss for words. She asked me to become a member of the Imperial Soul? Xiao Xingyu's forehead was sweating. The Imperial Soul organization was Shang Wanlan's heart and soul. Every member of the Imperial Soul was a dead soldier with an extremely high mortality rate. Xiao Xingyu had heard rumors that the mortality rate of the Silver Priests, the basic members of the Imperial Souls, was as high as 90%. The fact that the Silver Priests would be replaced every other month was enough to illustrate the danger of this profession. Above the Silver Priests, there were the Red Priests and the Black All Night High Priests, the death rate of the Red Priests was also high, and most of them died on undercover missions, and their deaths were even worse than those of the Silver Priests. In the Emperor's Soul Organization, only the Black All Night High Priest had the highest survival rate, as well as the highest strength. Becoming a Black All Night High Priest required three conditions. 1. To reach the rank of 8 Star Beast Master. 2. To have accomplished the first class merit of the Emperor's Soul. 3. The Trust of the Empress. For the average person, they wouldn't even dare to dream of becoming a black all-night high priestess. Xiao Xingyu, are you willing to accept the fourth choice? Xiao Xingyu struggled inwardly. He knew the truth that accompanying a ruler was like accompanying a tiger. Once he graduated and joined the imperial soul, becoming a silver priest with a mortality rate of over 90%, he would have to stay and work beside this monster Shang Wanlan again. This hadn't happened yet. Yet Xiao Xingyu would get goosebumps just thinking about it. Night Lan Palace. Late at night. There were only two people in the entire hall. One was the Dragon Empire Empress Shang Wanlan, and the other was Xiao Xingyu, who was suffering inwardly. Staying in this environment for even a second longer, Xiao Xingyu would feel a deep chill. Xiao Xingyu, how long do you intend to fret before you are willing to answer this emperor's question? Shang Wanlan's clear and cold tone was characterized by a slight impatience. Lord Empress, first of all, thank you for your favor and trust in me. Listening to what you're saying, are you going to reject me and send me a good guy card? Xiao Xingyu suddenly felt a powerful pressure. The pressure came from the aura emitted by Shang Wanlan. Dragon Dragon Force. Xiao Xingyu had come into contact with Shang Wanlan as a black-robed man on the Great Sea. 
The aura emitted by Shang Wan Lan's incarnation as a black dragon was the same as the aura at this moment. This power was ethereal, colorless and tasteless, but it could bring destructive spiritual pressure to any species. In just three seconds, Xiao Xingyu's face turned white and sweat soaked through his clothes. Lord Empress, Shang Wan Lan smiled. Have you figured it out? I figured it out. I'm willing to accept the fourth choice. Xiao Xingyu was forced to make a decision. It was an expedient plan with no other choice. Shang Wan Lan revealed an expression of a teachable child and personally helped Xiao Xingyu, who was kneeling on one knee. To be able to be in such close contact with the Empress, and even have skin-to-skin -skin contact, when looking at the whole country, Xiao Xingyu was the only one. You're a smart person, making the most correct choice. Xiao Xingyu secretly spat inside, choice? I meow have a choice? Temporarily stabilize this woman. When I develop obscenely later, I will definitely submit you to my crotch. With Xiao Xingyu's current strength, he could not disobey a character of Shang Wan Lan's level. Xiao Xingyu thought for a second and his brows relaxed. Although accompanying a ruler is like accompanying a tiger, it is not a bad thing. Since I have gained Shang Wan Lan's trust and have the opportunity to become a member of the Imperial Soul Organization, I will have the opportunity to take my metaphysical loyalty in the future and become the most valued person beside Shang Wan Lan. At that time, my Xiao Xingyu's position in the Dragon Kingdom will be that of one person above all others, coupled with the identity of the Black Robed Man. I will one day work together inside and outside to bring this Empress down to the altar. Xiao Xingyu got ambitious. His demon gods I bypassed Shang Wan Lan and landed on that dragon chair. Shang Wan Lan knew countless people, but he couldn't see through the heart of this teenager in front of him. This kid is different from anyone. He has a special aura about him, clean and pure. At the moment, Xiao Xingyu was thinking about how to seek power and usurp the throne in the future. Shang Wan Lan, on the other hand, had developed an indefinable good feeling towards Xiao Xingyu. This favorable feeling was not a whim, but more like fate karma. In the underworld, there existed some sort of cut-through connection between the two. Lord Empress, do you have anything else? Xiao Xingyu only wanted to leave the Nightlon Palace as soon as possible. After all, if he stayed in front of Shang Wan Lan for a long time, the fear and panic inside would continue to fester. Wait a moment. Shang Wan Lan had no intention of letting Xiao Xingyu leave, but instead urged his spiritual power. Sensing Shang Wan Lan's spiritual energy fluctuation, a clattering sound of footsteps came from outside the hall. Whoosh. A residual shadow swept past Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu fixed his eyes on Shang Wan Lan's side, and an imperial beast appeared. Dragon head. Deer body. Snake skin. Horse hooves. This is a Qilin lineage imperial beast. Throughout the long history of the imperial beast master civilization, the three major bloodlines of the dragon, phoenix, and Kirin clans stood at the tip of the pyramid. The purebred dragon race became extinct and died out in the dragon slaying war 200 years ago, forever remaining in the dust of that past history. Currently, within the dragon kingdom, only the phoenix and the griffin remained of the three major bloodlines. The Yi family, one of the four great imperial beast families, specialized in harnessing the phoenix lineage imperial beasts. For example, the second year genius girl of the Green Dragon Academy, Yi Bingning, who was also Yi Shermun's older sister, had contracted a royal beast that was a phoenix type royal beast. The Yi family's family head, Yi Baodian, had a beast god body level burning heavenly divine phoenix under his command which was a phoenix lineage imperial beast ceiling of battle power. As for the Qilin bloodline imperial beasts, they were also known as royal imperial beasts. This was because the imperial beast that Shang Wan Lan was best at manipulating was the Qilin. Xiao Xingyu had heard that Shang Wan Lan had contracted hundreds of Kirin lineage royal beasts since she became the empress of the dragon kingdom. At this moment, the griffin beside Shang Wan Lan was at a relatively low level and should be a newborn cub. Xiao Xingyu looked closely and was deeply attracted by the appearance of this griffin. The griffin's body was eerie blue, with blue currents coursing recklessly between its scales. A diamond-shaped jade stone was set on the griffin's forehead. Without talking about bloodline and talent, the appearance of this griffin could be described as handsome, and could capture the heart of any imperial beast master by its face value alone. Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god, and the data panel was at a glance. Level, complete body, first order. Bloodline, Kirin bloodline, illusory god quality. Talent 1 Thunderbolt Sensation, Thunder Sky and Thunderstorm Weather, Attack, Defense, Agility, and other full attributes are tripled. Talent 2 Flying Thunder Seal, after marking an enemy with lightning, you can instantly move behind the enemy. Talent 3 Not yet activated. Activation Condition Level Breakthrough Transcendental Body Bloodbath Divine Thunder, one's own blood is transformed into red colored thunderbolt, which has the effect of confusing the enemy's thinking. Talent 4 Not yet activated. Activation Condition Level Breakthrough Transcendental Body Thunder Purification Baptize oneself and friends with Heavenly Thunder
purify the body of negative effects such as burning, poisoning, slowing down, etc. Attribute, thunder, healing, loyalty, 30, skill, thunderbolt, hissing towards the sky, drawing in 18 heavenly thunderbolts, inflicting ranged explosive damage to the enemy. The number of heavenly thunderbolts increases with strength. Lightning chain, waves his tail and throws out a lightning chain, imprisoning enemy units. Awakening skills, not yet activated. Evolutionary root, thunder jade griffin thunder fury griffin beast thunder griffin king purple sky thunder lin emperor. Hobbies, getting wet, grinding teeth. Xiao Xing Yu browsed through the densely packed data panel in one breath, and was doubly shocked inwardly. Worthy of being one of the three major bloodlines, the Qilin lineage imperial beast. All the data is too comprehensive. Almost no shortcomings. The Thunder Jade Qilin squatted beside Shang Guan Lan, spitting out its tongue and revealing a soulful smile. Shang Guan Lan gently stroked the Thunder Rain Qilin's head and looked at Xiao Xingyu in front of him. Do you like it? Ha! Huh? This emperor asks you. Do you like this imperial beast? Xiao Xingyu answered truthfully, looking at the entire Dragon Kingdom. I'm afraid there aren't any imperial beast masters that can resist the temptation of a Qilin type imperial beast. If you like it, this imperial beast, this emperor grants it to you. Xiao Xingyu thought he had heard wrongly. The word shock written all over his face. The Qilin lineage imperial beast was a royal imperial beast, only Shang Guan Lan and Shang Guan Lan's daughter, the Dragon Kingdom's princess Shang Guan Shallow, were qualified to harness it. Shang Guan Lan's smile contained deep meaning. Xiao Xingyu, this imperial beast will not be given to you for nothing. It requires you to fulfill a condition. In next month's supernova trial, you must take an S-ranked trial mission and complete it. There was no such thing as a free lunch, and this saying was fulfilled in Xiao Xingyu. Shang Guan Lan did not intend to directly reward Xiao Xingyu with the Thunder Jade Qilin, but instead added a prerequisite. The supernova trial was a trial for the contestants of every supernova competition. One month after the supernova competition ended, the supernova trial would open. Xiao Xingyu, Morong's siblings, Xia Guanan, Xia Ren, Zhou Knight, anyone who had been in the ring during the competition would be able to participate in the trial. The difficulty of the trial was categorized into four levels, with the increasing order of difficulty being C, B, A, and S. Typically, most contestants would choose the B-level difficulty trial tasks. Past winners of the supernova competition would increase the difficulty a bit and choose trial tasks of a level difficulty. Xiao Xingyu had consulted with Chen Qinian for information. In any of the past supernova trials, there were only eight contestants who had chosen S-rank difficulty trial missions. Among them, there were six contestants that failed to perform the task. There were only two contestants that barely passed the S-rank trial mission. Just judging from the probability, it was enough to see how terrifying the difficulty of the S-rank trial task was. That was why it was rumored that the S-rank mission, which was also jokingly referred to as the Hell Mission, would only be attempted by fools who didn't think they could do it. Xiao Xingyu lowered his head in deep thought, and Shang Wan Lan interrupted his thoughts. S-rank mission, too difficult for you? I know that Lord Empress. It's to test my potential, whether or not I can meet the conditions to become a candidate for membership in the Imperial Soul Organization. Shang Wan Lan's eyes flickered as he nodded in satisfaction. You are indeed smart. Judging Xiao Xingyu's potential based only on winning the supernova competition, the sample was too small. Moreover, the essence of the ring battle was a duel between Imperial Beast Masters and Imperial Beast Masters, not a true battlefield. The supernova trial, on the other hand, was a true battlefield. Regardless of any level of task, the enemies faced by the trialists were all bloodthirsty and ferocious magical beasts. Only after such a cruel trial could one see the true potential of an imperial beast master. Lord Empress, I will choose the S-rank mission at the supernova trial in a month's time. Very well, I hope you won't fail this emperor's expectations of you. Shang Wan Lan had never held such a young person in such high regard before, and no one knew what exactly was playing in his heart. It's getting late, you may retire. Xiao Xingyu was relieved. And after saluting Shang Guan Lan, he turned around and walked towards the door of the hall. Just as Xiao Xingyu reached the door, Shang Guan Lan's voice came from behind him. Xia Guanan, that is, the talented young man that you defeated in the ring. His father, Xia Zhong, has approached this emperor many times to get close to him, hoping that this emperor will train Xia Guan as a candidate for membership in the Imperial Soul Organization. Xiao Xingyu stopped. Regarding this point in Xia Zhong's mind, he could understand it very well the Imperial Soul Organization, but Shang Wan Lan's most trusted forbidden army, was also the military intelligence network of the entire Dragon Kingdom. Xia Zhong is the first military division of the Dragon Kingdom, was already in a high position of power. If his son could enter the Imperial Soul Organization, the power of the Xia family would be even higher. Shang Wan Lan continued, regarding Xia Zhong's proposal, 
This emperor has been slow to agree. Do you know what this emperor has in mind for you? Xiao Xingyu turned around and saluted Shang Wanlan once again, his fist on his chest, his voice resounding. I, Xiao Xingyu, will never let Lord Empress down. Smart people conversing, no need to speak through. Each other's hearts were in the right place. Shang Wanlan watched Xiao Xingyu leave the Nightlan Palace, his eyes a little more profound, casually moving a white piece on the chessboard. Originally, the white pieces have already lost the momentum. Because of the movement of a chess piece, the whole game is alive. Black and white are evenly matched. Xiao Xingyu, I hope this emperor has not misjudged you. Xiao Xingyu left the Nightlan Palace and left the Imperial City in the Royal Imperial Car. However, Xiao Xingyu did not return to the Five Star Hotel in Four Spirit City, but instead came to the woods on the outskirts of Four Spirit City. Under the moonlight, the woods were filled with fog and the Tyndall effect was beautiful. Xiao Xingyu sat under a tree with two beauties standing beside him, the nine-tailed dragon fox Dai Lu, and the heavenly tribulation ghost python Medusa. Lu Lu, Sasha, you guys are so serious and making the atmosphere stagnant. Can you smile? Dai Lu raised her hand to hold the tree trunk and walloped Xiao Xingyu, her eyes blazing. Fool, do you know that accompanying a king is like accompanying a tiger? Xiao Xingyu sighed helplessly. Of course I know, but ask my dear Lulu. At that time in that situation, if I didn't agree to Shang Wanlan, she would have pinched me to death on the spot. Dai Lu was dumbfounded. She was clear about Shang Wanlan's way of dealing with things. At that time Xiao Xingyu simply had no other choice. Medusa's emotions were a bit more stable than Dai Lu's, and her tone was more gentle. Royal Master, I can understand your situation at that time. Agreeing to Shang Wanlan was a stopgap measure with no other way. But it is necessary for me to remind the Imperial Lord that the mortality rate of the Imperial Soul Organization's grassroots personnel, the Silver Priests, is over 90%. If you graduate from the Green Dragon Academy in three years and really join the Imperial Soul Organization, you are going to experience nine deaths. Xiao Xingyu gathered his cynical expression and looked serious. Sha Sha, there are times when the only way to live is hidden in a dead end. Royal Lord, what do you mean? Xiao Xingyu brought up the conversation at the Nightlan Palace. Both of you, do you remember Shang Wan Lan's last words before I left the Nightlan Palace? She said that Xie Zhong wanted Xie Guanan to enter the Imperial Soul Organization later, but she refused Xie Zhong's offer. Medusa analyzed along with what Xiao Xingyu said. Shang Wan Lan is suspicious by nature, and she doesn't completely trust Xie Zhong. Dai Lu added. Besides, the Xie family is getting more and more powerful and may even break away from Shang Wan Lan's control in the future. Xiao Xingyu snapped his fingers, his shining eyes penetrating with wisdom. That's right. This is the way to life in a dead end. Why does Shang Wan Lan value me? Is it because of my talent? Yes, but not all. Xiao Xingyu stood with his arms folded, standing under the moonlight, his back hazy. Shang Wan Lan believes in her heart that as long as she cultivates me, I won't form a party. I will only serve her wholeheartedly. Be the sword in her hand, the chess piece in the game. This is because I, Xiao Xingyu, have no power or influence. Grassroots origin. My background is cleaner than white paper. Dai Lu and Medusa nodded at the same time, agreeing with Xiao Xingyu's analysis. Xiao Xingyu turned around and looked at the two beauties, his smile dripping with ambition. So as long as I continue to act, I will be able to gain Shang Wan Lan's trust little by little, until I become the person she trusts the most in this world. Dai Lu's shell teeth clenched her lips. You're playing with fire. Xiao Xingyu, no, I'm just playing with hearts. Medusa, royal lord, there is no turning back from the bow. In this matter, once we fail, we will. Don't worry. This game of chess. You guys follow me? I will bring you to win until the end. Xiao Xingyu's voice was very light and thin, and the childishness of a young teenager hung on his face. Medusa knelt down on one knee. This life of mine is given to me by the royal lord. Even if there is an abyssal cliff in front of me, and my body is broken to pieces I will follow the royal lord. Dai Lu was confused. You snake. When did you learn to kiss ass? Sasha has already taken a stand. What about you Lulu? That's just it. You can do whatever you want. I will always stand behind you. One person and two beasts. Looking up at the bright bright moon. Looking into the future. Ambition stirred in the forest fog. In the future. If Xiao Xingyu can call himself king. These two. Then. Were the two wings of the king. The all night rainstorm washed away every inch of Four Spirits City. And the air was refreshing. Four Spirits Airport. Xiao Xingyu was the first to board the airplane. And the first class cabin was empty. How could there be no one? Xiao Xingyu was full of doubts. A magnetic female voice came from behind him. Because I spent money to charter the plane. Dean, you're also too broke. Su Ruyan was dressed in a professional wraparound skirt. Wearing black framed glasses. A pair of slender jade legs wrapped in black silk. 
paired with a pair of red-bottomed high-heeled shoes, it was simply a walking man beheading machine. You guys won the supernova competition for Qinglong Academy. This is what you deserve. The Morong siblings and Chen Chinian also boarded the plane one after another. And everyone enjoyed the chartered airplane treatment together. The airplane took off and passed through the clouds. Xiao Xingyu sat in the window seat, his eyes looking through the porthole glass, overlooking the great mountains and rivers of the Dragon Kingdom. Finally I can go home. This time, after being away from home for half a month, the people Xiao Xingyu had been thinking about were his sister, Xiao Ruashue, and that quirky younger sister, Yi Shermeng. Xingyu, just now before we got on the airplane, what did you buy ah? Uh, let me see. Moron Yangshua came over to Xiao Xingyu's side, curious about the heavy package in Xiao Xingyu's arms. These are the local specialties of Four Spirit City. Feng Yao beef jerky, Qing Jing sugar melon. My sister must like to eat. Morong Yangshua couldn't help but be staggered. You're really a cis control ah. Uh. My sister is the best woman in the world. As long as Xiao Ruashue was mentioned, Xiao Xingyu would always have a naive and silly smile appearing on his face. The emotional bond between the two siblings who had grown up depending on each other was the most precious thing in Xiao Xingyu's heart. Bar none. Yes, yes, yes. Your sister is the best woman in the world Morong Yangshua echoed, then suddenly asked, What about my sister? Morong Xinxin was sitting right behind Xiao Xingyu, and even with her headphones on and listening to the song, she could hear Xiao Xingyu and Morong Yangshua chatting. Brother Yangshua, what exactly do you want to ask? Don't play dumb. I'm asking you, what do you think of my sister? Morong Yangshua's expression was a bit subtle, especially the dripping eyes, like a matchmaker at the entrance of the village helping to match people. Xiao Xingyu did not think twice and blurted out, Lu Jin is very good ah, she is pretty and has a good figure, although her personality is a bit withdrawn, but she is very kind. Morong Xinxin is the daughter of Morong Ashes, a great general of the Dragon Kingdom Navy, and her appearance and figure and talent are extremely outstanding. Such an outstanding girl, since childhood. I don't know how many compliments I've heard, and I've long since gotten tired of hearing them, but after hearing the words of praise from Xiao Xingyu's mouth, Morong Xinxin suddenly trembled delicately and took off her earphones. Her ears seemed to stand up. Morong Yangshua raised his arm and rested it on Xiao Xingyu's body. Xingyu, let me ask you again. If you find a wife in the future, what type do you plan to find? One like my sister. Besides your sister? Then one like six gold. Xiao Xingyu's casual sentence is like a huge stone, thrown into Morong Xinxin's heart whirlpool, splashing and rippling. Could I you Xiao Xingyu? I take you as a brother, but you want to be my brother-in-law. I'll strangle you, brother Yangshua. I was joking. Morong Yangshua feigned anger. But in reality, he was secretly happy inside. Looks like Xiao Xingyu and my sister. Have a chance. He 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 he. Morong Yangshua and Xiao Xingyu were playing with each other. Neither of them noticed Morong Xinxin in the back row. At this time, Morong Xinxin's sitting posture waist straight. Re-wearing headphones. Volume turned up to the maximum. Seemingly calm. She was unable to hide her mood swings at all. Her face was like a ripe red Fuji apple. Her earlobes were hot, and her pupils were slightly trembling. A young girl's heart, not moving is already, a move in deep love. Chen Qinian, Xiao Xingyu, Morong Xinxin, jostling is prohibited on the airplane. Xiao Xingyu, Director Chen, why do I smell a smell of alcohol? Su Ruyan, uh, sound of wine hiccups. Morong Yangshua, Dean, your alcohol addiction is acting up again? Drink less. You look like you're about to get drunk. Su Ruyan, I'm not drunk. Xiao Xingyu, Dean, the restroom is on the right hand side. Why are you heading towards the driver's side? Su Ruyan, I want to fly the plane. Crowd, crap. Dean, calm down. Above the clouds, the airplane had a noticeable bump. After this incident, Xiao Xingyu reacquainted himself with Su Ruyan as a person. Su Ruyan in her normal state, danger index 3 stars. Su Ruyan in a drunken state, danger index 3000 stars. At noon, the airplane landed. Xiao Xingyu and his group had just stepped out of Longin Airport when they were surrounded by enthusiastic Longin City residents. Welcome home little heroes, Xiao Xingyu, old lady loves you, Morong Xinxin, Morong Xinxin, Morong Xinxin, young master Morong is mighty. Xiao Xingyu and the Morong siblings, were the ones who were responsible for the Green Dragon Academy's victory, bringing great honor to Longin City. It was a welcome party held spontaneously by the residents, not only the airport, but the streets lined with onlookers on the way from the airport to the Green Dragon Academy. Xiao Xingyu and his group rode in a special car, slowly moving forward through the crowd. In order to interact with the residents, Xiao Xingyu climbed onto the roof of the car, holding the Supernova Competitions Championship trophy in his hand, revealing a sunny smile. Xiao Xingyu is awesome. Brother Yu you are the strongest dark horse of the century. 
forever dropping God, you God you God, God of the universe. The crowd's chants for Shaoxing Yu were enough to prove Shaoxing Yu's status in Dragon Hidden City today. The entire nation had watched the live broadcast of the Supernova competition and knew that Shaoxing Yu was the biggest contributor to Qinglong Academy's victory. For a moment, Shaoxing Yu became a hero in the eyes of the masses of Dragon Hidden City, sending him high respect and cheers. The specialized car slowly stopped at the entrance of Green Dragon Academy. The entire faculty and students of Qinglong Academy greeted it, especially Xiao Xingyu's fellow classmates. Everyone was so excited that they scrambled and pounced towards Xiao Xingyu. On this day, the entire city was immersed in the joy of Green Dragon Academy's championship victory, and all the major TV stations were broadcasting the championship parade of Xiao Xingyu and the others. In the crowd, there was a beggar with a disheveled head and ragged clothes. This beggar ruffled his dry and frizzy hair, and a pair of scarlet eyes stared deathly at Xiao Xingyu who was surrounded by the crowd. Wang Yan, the son of Wang Dongsheng, the former vice president of Green Dragon Academy. Thinking about it, Wang Yan was expelled from school because he violated the school rules. Wang Dongsheng wanted to avenge his son's death, but he was killed by the enlightened Xiao Xingyu's pit in the mountains on the outskirts. Wang Yan did not know that his father was dead and thought he was just missing, but because of his father's inexplicable disappearance, Wang Flame was reduced to a bereaved dog and became a beggar that everyone spurned. Xiao Xingyu Wang Yan gritted his teeth and whispered Xiao Xingyu's name. A few months ago, Xiao Xingyu and Wang Yan were both freshmen at Green Dragon Academy. Time had changed and things were different. Xiao Xingyu won the supernova competition and became a teenage hero in the eyes of the people of Longin City, as well as a future pillar of the country. On the contrary, Wang Yan, not only no school registration, and even lost the qualification of the royal beast master, reduced to begging along the street beggars. The gap between the two sides, the difference between the clouds and mud, cannot be made up. Wang Yan suddenly felt that someone tapped his shoulder, turned his head to look, and was startled. A man in a strange costume, his hat brim pressed down, his purple lips upturned in a smile. Wang Yan, son of Wang Dongsheng, who are you, recognize my father? The mysterious man did not answer Wang Yan's question, but glanced at Xiao Xingyu in the crowd. It looks like you extremely hate this genius hero. What kind of bullshit genius is he? Wang Yan clenched his fists as his anger soared. The mysterious man left a business card. If you want to defeat Xiao Xingyu, come find me. Wang Yan was in a trance as the mysterious man disappeared into the bustling crowd. What the hell is that guy? Business card. Wang Yan looked down and his pupils shook when he read the words on the business card. Business card text. Dark Abyss Imperial Beast Master Guild. After the championship parade ended, Xiao Xingyu and the others resumed their daily lessons. The Morong siblings returned to their own classes for lessons and Xiao Xingyu returned to the third class. Wu Shangyu and Song who were not only Xiao Xingyu's classmates, but also Xiao Xingyu's dormitory roommates. The two of them squatted by Xiao Xingyu's side like toadstools, saying father you in every breath. Come on, it's not just winning the championship, just have a hand. There's no need to brag about me so much. You father, my Wu Shangyu in this life can be with you this great god as a classmate, also can be a roommate. Really my past life to repair the blessing. I, Song Hu, will only serve you, Father Yu, in my life, and I'll be hanging out with Father Yu from now on. After the two bragged, they spoke in unison. Follow Papa Yu and eat nine meals a day. Compared to Xiao Xingyu, Wu Shengyu and Song whose talent could only be considered mediocre. With Xiao Xingyu's current status, it was possible to alienate these two people, as they were unable to bring any value to Xiao Xingyu. However, Xiao Xingyu was a man of love and justice. As the only righteous father of the 312 boys' bedroom, he had the obligation to pull these two children along. Old Wu, I heard that you and Tiger have both passed the two-star Imperial Beast Master examination? The two nodded their heads. Xiao Xingyu took out his notebook from his school bag. I have prepared some cultivation plans and training arrangements based on your Imperial Beast's habits, which will be helpful for you to improve your strength. Seeing the dense notebook, Wu Shengyu burst into tears. Father Yu, you're really my big daddy. You spoil me too much. Song Hu flipped through the notebook, his emotions growing more and more excited. In the notebook, there are even records of effective methods on how to alleviate the royal beast's muscle soreness and other ailments. Song who carefully put away the notebook and gave Xiao Xingyu a big bear hug. Thank you my righteous father. As the righteous father of his dormitory roommates, Xiao Xingyu was really qualified. At this time, Chen Qinian walked into the third classroom holding a textbook. Ahem, students in the back row, don't talk to each other, go back to your seats. Wu Shengyu and Song who had to return to their seats, the whole class straightened their backs extraordinarily well behaved in front of Chun Qinian, the class teacher. I know that everyone is immersed in the joy of Green Dragon Academy winning the championship, and the person who is responsible for winning the championship, Mr. Xiao Xingyu, 
is in our class, so I can understand your excitement, but it's important to collect yourselves. As Chen Chinian spoke, his tone became serious, his eyes sharp as he swept over each and every one of his classmates. Today, next week, is the midterm exam, as soon as the words fell, the class erupted in an uproar. Oh my god, time flies so fast? I feel like school just started not long ago, I didn't realize that it's already close to the midterm exams, I get a headache when I hear exams. Getting a headache when hearing about exams was a common problem in the student era. Green Dragon Academy's midterm exams were divided into two programs. One was a written exam, examining the student's theoretical knowledge. The second one was practical, where students had to personally visit the battlefield and kill with magical beasts. Chen Chinian opened the electronic PPT and began to introduce the practical program of the midterm exam. For this midterm exam, the location is train 13. Everyone should know that in the Dragon Kingdom, trains with numerical numbers are the ones responsible for transporting military supplies. Long In City Yellow Smoke City, that's the starting and ending station of train number 13. Exam content, escort the train and deliver the military supplies safely to Yellow Smoke City. Chen Chinian explained while accompanying the PPT presentation. On the electronic screen, the students could see the harsh environment of Yellow Smoke City. Yellow Smoke City was located on the western border of the Dragon Kingdom, where it was a desert hinterland. Train number 13, from Long In City, it would take a day and a night, a whole 24 hours to reach Yellow Smoke City. Chen Chinian reminded, the train will pass through three dangerous points along the way, the Five Poison Canyon, Kunmi Mountain, and the White Bone Abyss, and there will be magical beasts that will attack the train. One of the students asked weakly, how high is the level of the magical beasts? Chen Chinian cleared his throat. Ahem, there is a probability that there will be transcendent body level magical beasts, or even beast king body magical beasts. The entire class went white with fear. Director Chen, I still want to live for two more years. I'm dropping out of school. Don't anyone stop me. How is this a midterm exam? The exam paper is full of giveaway questions. Chen Chinian smiled slightly. His classmates' reactions were within his expectations. Students, don't panic yet. The team responsible for escorting train 13 is the Vault Guild. You are just students. The purpose of participating in the escort is to learn and exercise. If you do encounter a higher ranked magical beast on the way, the Vault Guild will naturally step in. After Chun Chinian finished speaking, the students breathed a sigh of relief. After all, the Tsong Dome Guild was the second highest ranked guild in Longin City, and its strength was guaranteed. So ah, uh, all you need to do is follow the seniors of the Tsong Dome Guild. Carefully learn from them along the way, and kill low-ranked magical beasts as far as you are able. And that's enough. Xiao Xingyu cupped his chin chin and analyzed in his heart. With the Tsong Dome Guild's team in place, the risk of this midterm exam isn't that big. To put it bluntly, it's just for the students to go out and get a long look at the experience and techniques of the seniors' battles. Right. Since the team responsible for escorting train 13 is the Vault Guild, then Yin Ran's sister, a vibration came from Xiao Xingyu's fart pocket, and taking out his phone, he saw that it was none other than Qin Yan Yan who sent a text message. Brother Xing Yu, I just received news that your third class midterm exam is following our Tsong Dome Guild, escorting the military supplies of train 13. Xiao Xing Yu returned a nodding emoticon. Qin Yan Ran replied back in seconds. Great, our siblings will finally have our first chance to fight side by side. Qin Yan Yan was very excited about this, and sent many consecutive text messages, the last of which, asked Xiao Xing Yu to have dinner together tomorrow night. Why about tomorrow night? Because tonight Xiao Xingyu still had something important to do, and that was to go home to accompany his sister and Yi Shi Meng. After finishing the notes for the midterm exam, Chen Qinian announced that this class would be a self-study. Students review yesterday's theory lesson. Xiao Xingyu, come out. Chen Qinian called Xiao Xingyu alone to the corridor outside the class. Director Chen, what is it that you're looking for me for? Midterm exam next week. Do you have any confidence? Don't worry. Director Chen, I won't let you down. Chen Qinian patted Xiao Xingyu's shoulder, his face full of relief. One of the midterm exams had a great favor for Xiao Xingyu. The terminus of Train 13 was the Yellow Smoke City on the western border of the Dragon Kingdom. The city lord, Zhou Xiong, had returned to Yellow Smoke City to continue stationing himself. Xiao Xingyu and Zhou Xiong were forgotten friends, as he had cured the war giant rhinoceros emperor's shaman sworn disease with his miraculous medical skills. Moreover, Zhou Xiong also promised to help Xiao Xingyu pick the magic firefly flower unique to the ancient glacier. Currently, Xiao Xingyu already had phoenix tail grass in his hand, as well as the feces of the beast god body magical beast. With the addition of the demon firefly flower, the heavenly soul vine beast in its shoot form could be cultivated. Xiao Xingyu thought well, this time when he went to Yellow Smoke City, 
he would look for Zhou Xiong to get the demon glow flower. By the way, Dean asked me to give this to you. Chen Xinian took out a fiery red magic beast crystal core and handed it to Xiao Xingyu. This is, this is the complete body magic beast crystal core. From the flaming demon lizard. It's from the Dean's heart. To help the Hell Spectre Wolf break through for promotion. Xiao Xingyu's mind conjured up that beautiful alcoholic Dean. Director Chen, help me thank the Dean. You helped Green Dragon Academy win the championship. It's only right for the Dean to reward you. There's no need to thank her. Master and Disciple chatted for a few moments. Chen Qinian warmly reminded. It's not long before school ends. Go home after school and keep your sister company. And by the way, prepare well and build up your strength. You still have to take the midterm exams next week. Xiao Xingyu returned to the classroom. The other students were revising their theory courses. Only his thoughts had flown to the family apartment. There are still five minutes until the end of class. So I'll be able to see my sister when I get home. Right at this moment, Xiao Xingyu's tiger body shook as he turned his head to look out the window. The aura of dragon power? Shang Wan Lan? No, this dragon power is very pure. Very holy. It's definitely not that black dragon of Shang Wan Lan. Xiao Xingyu looked out of the window. The sky under the dusk had a soft reddish hue. Only a line of white pigeons crossed the sky. The atmosphere was quiet and peaceful. Dragon power was the most special breath in the world. Ordinary people could not detect it at all. Xiao Xingyu could sense the fluctuations of dragon power even without using the perception of the eye of the demon god. Regarding this, it seemed to be his innate talent. The source of the fluctuations of dragon force seems to be. Xiao Xingyu raised the arc of his vision and looked up at the high sky through the classroom window with a frown on his face. I can't see anything, but I can vaguely feel it. In this world, besides Shang Wan Lan's black dragon, there are actually other purebred dragons surviving? Above the clouds, 10,000 meters high, a behemoth swept past above Dragon Hidden City. Nine golden claws, soaring through the clouds, red-colored dragon scales, opening and closing with the wind. A huge dragon's head broke through the clouds and mist, with a reddish golden flame in its mouth, and a narrow scar remained on its domineering side face, adding a bit of gangliness. It wasn't hard to judge from the breath emitted by the dragon that the great exceeded the beast god body and reached the god slayer body level. A god slayer body level imperial beast, as the name implied, possessed the terrifying power to kill gods. On top of the red golden dragon's head stood a man and a woman. The man was clad in brown robes, his hair was a bit messy, and the left side of his face had a triangle shaped brand. But the handsome look between his brows was enough to capture the hearts of thousands of young women. From this man, one could see endless vicissitudes. However, if one looked closely, one would feel like he was a sword that had been dusty for a thousand years. Although the blade of the sword was covered in dust, when the wind blew, it would be sharp and chilling. This man's looks were exactly the same as the list one portrait on the Dragon Kingdom's bounty wanted list. He was the leader of the Rebel Army Amazing Alliance. Xiao Lai Yen. The woman beside Xiao Lai Yen was wearing a leather jacket and pants, with a catgirl mask on her face and long hair draped over her shoulders. This was the chief commander of the Amazing Alliance. Night Mistress. Not to mention how huge the overall power of the Amazing Alliance was, these two people alone could stir up the headquarters of the Dragon Kingdom's Navy, Army, and Air Force. Chieftain, we are located in the sky above Longin City, and the Green Dragon Academy that Xiaoyu is in, is located in this city. H.M. I know, should we go and meet him? Nightmist's proposal touched Xiao Lian's heart. Xiao Lian took a deep breath and overlooked the city under the clouds, his sharp gaze locking right onto the teaching building of the Green Dragon Academy. At this moment, Xiao Xingyu's entire head poked out the window and looked up at the sky. Xiao Xingyu couldn't see what was above the clouds. Xiao Laiyan's limit of vision could only see the outline of the Green Dragon Academy, and could not see Xiao Xingyu's head at all. It's not the time for me to meet with him yet. Chief, what kind of timing do you want to wait for before you meet him? Xiao Laiyan pondered for a long time, and a kind smile appeared on his rigidly handsome face. This child is growing fast. I believe that it won't be too long until the day we meet. The red golden dragon sensed its master's will and accelerated its flight, instantly disappearing into the depths of the clouds. Xiao Xingyu's head retracted from the window, his head lowered to rest his cheeks, his right index finger tapping on the desk. Strange, that fluctuation of dragon power, fleeting, and now I can't even sense the slightest breath. Just what kind of dragon is that? The bell rang for the end of class. Xiao Xingyu put the distracting thoughts behind him and rushed out of the classroom with his book bag at fire speed. The teaching building, the school entrance, the back street of the college, and the family apartments. Xiao Xingyu all the way to run wildly, because of pining for his sister's heart, not even willing to wait for the elevator, stomping to climb the stairs, hearing the knock on the door, Xiao Ruashue, who was cooking in the kitchen, shouted, Meng Meng, go open the door, 
the door to the room opened, and when Yi Shermeng saw the person in front of her, she instantly smiled with joy and directly pounced on her. Brother, Yi Shermeng was like a wombat, hanging onto Xiao Xingyu's body, her arms tightly wrapped around the back of Xiao Xingyu's neck. Meng Meng, I'm back. Xiao Xingyu dislodged Yi Shermeng, the human pendant, from his arms and dotingly stroked the other party's twin ponytails. Brother, you've been away from home for half a month. I've missed you to death. Every day, Sister Ruashue and I stayed in front of the TV to watch the Supernova Tournament. Brother's performance in the ring was handsome. When Meng Meng becomes an adult, she wants to marry a powerful man like brother. Xiao Xingyu pinched Yi Shermeng's fleshy cheeks. Meng Meng, you're still young, and your brother I'm not interested in lowly. Brother likes imperial sisters. What's so good about a royal sister? What a royal sister has, Meng Meng also has. Yi Shermeng skimmed her mouth with an aggrieved face and lowered her head to look at her large breasts. It wasn't too much to describe Yi Shermeng with a childish face and huge breasts. This young girl just had a lowly's face, and in terms of body shape, she did not lose to an imperial sister. Xiao Ruashue walked out of the kitchen with the last dish. Meng Meng, come over and get the dishes. Yi Shermeng took the dish from Xiao Ruashiyue's hand and placed it on the dining table before setting the dishes. Xiao Xingyu could no longer hold back his excitement and rushed up in an arrow step, embracing Xiao Ruashiyue's thin and delicate body into his arms. Sister, I miss you so much. Xiao Xingyu's arms embracing Xiao Ruashiyue gradually exerted force, his handsome face buried into the other party's fragrant hair, itching to incorporate it into his body. Xiao Yu, sister also misses you. Since childhood, the two siblings had depended on each other. This time, Xiao Xingyu traveled to Four Spirit City to participate in the supernova competition, and was separated from Xiao Ruashiyue for half a whole month. This was also the first time that the two siblings had been separated for so long, and the affectionate image of hugging each other was quite a bit like a small farewell. The hug was just a moment of warmth. Next everyone sat down to eat. At the dinner table, Yi Shermeng didn't wolf down her own food, but kept using her slightly baby fat little hands to clip food for Xiao Xingyu. Brother, eat more. You've lost weight. Xiao Xingyu had indeed lost a bunch of weight, but it had nothing to do with the supernova competition, but rather with the black-robed man's night battle against the naval headquarters. In that battle, Xiao Xingyu swallowed two dragon spirit pills in a row. His physical strength and spiritual power were both overdrawn, and in the end, he was chased by Shang Wan Lan, relying on the dragon tear to escape from death. Fortunately, during the days of coma, Dai Lu and Medusa fed Xiao Xingyu a lot of beast milk from magical beasts. Currently for Xiao Ruashiyue and Yi Shermeng, Xiao Xingyu had only lost a circle of weight, and his mental state looked plentiful. Sister, did you and Meng Meng watch the live broadcast? Of course I watched it. Xiao Yu's performance was fantastic, winning the championship and bringing honor to Qinglong Academy. Xiao Ruashiyue looked at her brother with a doting face and personally served him soup. For her, as long as her brother could grow up peacefully and strongly, she was satisfied. Xiao Xingyu finished his fourth bowl of rice and suddenly thought of something. By the way sister, today next week, I'm going to go on a long trip again. Xiao Ruashiyue's smile froze and despondency flowed from her eyes. Ah, going out of town again? Xiao Xingyu holds his sister's soft hand and explains helplessly. I've only just come back, and I'd love to spend more time with my sister. But next week is the midterm exams. After listening to Xiao Xingyu's explanation, Xiao Ruashiyue's face showed worry. Escorting train number 13 to Yellow Smoke City? That's a city on the western border of the Dragon Kingdom. The environment along the way is harsh. You'll encounter quite a few magical beasts. Sis, don't worry. I'll come back safely. The night was deep. Yi Shermeng lay on the sofa and fell asleep, still holding the teddy bear Xiao Xingyu bought for her in her arms. This girl, sleeping on the sofa again. Xiao Xingyu was afraid of waking up Yi Shermeng, so he simply carried a quilt and covered Yi Shermeng's body. And by the way, put a comfortable pillow under her head. Brother, I also want to become a true imperial beast master. I also want to go to the Imperial Beast Academy for school. Xiao Xingyu froze in place. Yi Shermeng's dreamy ravings. He heard them clearly. The reason Yi Shermeng was unable to become a true Imperial Beast Master was because she suffered from magical beast phobia. Xiao Xingyu knew all about it. This condition belonged to both the mental and physical aspects of the disease. As long as one saw a magical beast, one would faint on the spot. And no Royal Beast Academy would take in such a problematic student. Meng Meng. When I free up my time after the midterm exams, I will definitely cure your phobia of magical beasts, so that you can enter the Green Dragon Academy and become a true Imperial Beast Master. Xiao Xingyu squatted beside the sofa and whispered while gently caressing Yi Shermeng's small face. Xiao Yu, your room is packed for you. Quickly go to bed. Xiao Xingyu turned around, and Xiao Ruashue, who was wearing silk pajamas, walked over. 
Shawruashiwa's figure was typically concave and convex, plump breasts, slender willow waist, and firm buttocks. Sis, what's wrong? Can I sleep with you tonight like when I was a child? What did you say? Say it again. Shawruashiwa thought she heard wrong. Shaoxingyu showed a rare coy expression. His voice weak. Sister, can I sleep with you tonight? The atmosphere became awkward and ambiguous. Just when Xiao Xingyu thought that his sister was angry, Xiao Ruoxiuo snorted with a gentle watery smile. Xiao Yu, why do you suddenly have such thoughts? Sister, since childhood, we have been sleeping together. This is our norm. How can we say suddenly? Xiao Xingyu was telling the truth. Because the two siblings grew up fatherless and motherless, relying on his sister's meager income from her part-time job, they could only rent a one-bedroom apartment. So in the past 10 years, Xiao Xingyu could only sleep in the same bed with Xiao Ruoxiuo. Xiao Yu, you're right, but now that we're in a better condition, the family apartment has a master bedroom as well as a guest bedroom, and there's enough room for us to sleep separately. Xiao Xingyu's mind was made up, so he simply jumped into Xiao Ruoxiuo's arms and pouted. Sis, please, I want to sleep with you, otherwise I'll have nightmares. Xiao Ruoxiuo rolled her eyes and lifted her hand to give Xiao Xingyu a loving headbutt. You, you're not a six-year-old child. Still clinging to your sister and pampering her? It's no good. Quickly go back to your own room and sleep. Sister, I want to sleep with you. Xiao Xingyu's main fight was a deadbeat beggar. Under Xiao Xingyu's soft persuasion, Xiao Ruoxiuai could only compromise. Apart from the fact that Xiao Ruoxiuai's ears were soft, there was also an external factor. Tonight, Longin City had heavy rain again, and it was rain with snow, and the temperature plummeted. Xiao Xingyu's room had no heating, and the windows were leaking. Xiao Ruoxiuai couldn't bear to let her brother freeze, so she could only agree to her brother's unreasonable request. As for Yi Shermeng, she was sound asleep on the sofa in the living room. The living room was heated, so this superb big-breasted lowly wouldn't freeze. Sis, I'm coming. After Xiao Xingyu washed up, he tiptoed into Xiao Ruoxiuai's room and jumped onto the bed like a nimble rabbit. Xiao Yu, be gentle. I'm bouncing off of you. Xiao Ruoxiuai cried and laughed, a flash of trance in her eyes. More than ten years ago, when Xiao Xingyu was still a little kid, Xiao Ruoxiuai was both a father and a mother. When she slept at night, Xiao Ruoxiuai only needed one arm to hold the skinny Xiao Xingyu in her arms. Time flew by, and now Xiao Xingyu has grown into a bloodthirsty and handsome teenager. 180 plus tall, erect and robust, Xiao Ruoxiuai lamented. In a blink of an eye, you've grown so big that your sister can't even wrap one arm around you. It's okay, I'll put my arm around my sister. Xiao Xingyu burrowed into the comforter and wrapped one arm around Xiao Ruoxiuai into his arms. Xiao Ruoxiuai's delicate body trembled, and then released, the corners of her lips hooked into a pleased smile. Time flies, this kid has really grown up. After turning off the lights, the rainstorm outside the window intensified, which was mixed with thick snowflakes. It was cold, and the night was late, but the comforter was warm. The two siblings used each other's body heat to bring each other the most comfortable sleeping environment. This night, Xiao Xingyu and Xiao Ruoxiuai talked a lot, from childhood to the present, and then thought about the future together. Sis, when I graduate, I'll make a lot of money. I'll buy a villa facing the sea with flowers blooming in spring. Sister, you can pick up shells on the seashore every day. And when I return from killing countless magical beasts one and making great feats of war, I will be able to eat your cooking, and this life will be enough. Every word from Xiao Xingyu came from the bottom of his heart. Xiao Ruoxiuai leaned into her brother's arms. The smile on her face was like a blooming sweet flower. The sense of picture is very strong. I'm already looking forward to the future you've depicted. Born in a chaotic world, the most valuable thing was to live one's life plainly. Countless great divine imperial beastmasters with extremely high segments and decades of military service had not lived such a life. The chat lasted until one in the morning, and the room returned to silence. Xiao Xingyu fell asleep. Before falling asleep, it had been Xiao Xingyu cradling Xiao Ruoxiuai. After falling asleep, Everything seemed to have returned to 10 years ago. Xiao Xingyu's 180 body, curled up in a ball, snuggled in Xiao Ruoxiuai's arms. The next morning, Xiao Ruoxiuai was the first to wake up, seeing Xiao Xingyu in her arms, who was emitting light snoring. Xiao Ruoxiuai was in a trance, and then laughed softly in a low voice. It's been a long time since I've slept with this brat. This feeling, familiar and unfamiliar. Xiao Ruoxiuai did not get up in a hurry, but raised her snow white smooth jade hand. Her fingertips traced from Xiao Xingyu's eyebrow bone, then across the upright bridge of his nose. The eyes of the older sister looking at her younger brother were forever filled with overflowing favor. Just then, Xiao Xingyu seemed to sleepwalk and kicked the covers away. Xiao Xingyu hadn't worn pajamas when he slept, and was only wearing a pair of large pants. Xiao Ruoxiuai subconsciously looked to places she shouldn't have, 
and immediately her pretty face blushed. So Xiao Yu has really grown up. According to Xiao Xingyu's age, it was puberty. In the morning there would be male-specific physiological reactions. It was really not suitable to sleep with his sister anymore. Otherwise he would face the embarrassing situation at this moment. Xiao Ruoshua touched her hot cheeks, hurriedly grayed out of bed and washed her face eight times with cold water before regaining her composure. Xiao Yu, get up for breakfast. Fifteen minutes later, Xiao Xingyu was stimulated awake by the aroma coming from the kitchen. A harrier flip jumped off the bed and walked into the bathroom to wash up. After washing up, Xiao Xingyu suddenly remembered something and immediately unlocked the bathroom door and opened his spatial ring. It's been a long time since I paid attention to the growth of the heavenly soul vine beast. I haven't looked at it since the last time I fertilized it, and I don't know how it is now. Xiao Xingyu muttered to himself while extracting the flower pot from the spatial ring. I Lu Go. The growth speed is also too fast. Xiao Xingyu held the flower pot in his hand and was shocked by the sight in front of him. Inside the flower pot, a silver-colored vine that spiraled upward grew. The length of the vine was like the game console's gluttony snake, filling the entire bathroom. On the silver-colored vine, tiny barbs grew. Each barb had a strong vitality, gently rhythmic with Xiao Xingyu's breathing, compared to the previous drop of green shoots. At this moment, this glossy and delicate silver vine already looked like it had the compulsion and momentum of the ancient system of plant imperial beasts. Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god and checked the data information of the silver vine. There's still one last material missing. As long as we get the nectar of the magic firefly flower, we can make the heavenly soul vine beast detach itself from the flower pot and the soil, and become a true imperial beast. The vine wrapped around Xiao Xingyu's body, its tentacles sticking to Xiao Xingyu's face, expressing intimacy. Everything was ready. All we needed was the east wind. The nectar of the devil firefly flower had to go to Yellow Smoke City on the western border to get it. Xiao Yu, you took so long to wash up? Soy milk fritters won't taste good when they're cold. Sis, I'll be right out. Xiao Xingyu took the flower pot back into his spatial ring, straightened his clothes, and walked out of the bathroom. Breakfast is so sumptuous. Xiao Xingyu had a feast. Xiao Ruoshue peeled eggs for her brother and served Yi Shermeng soup. Sister Ruoshue, I want more papaya milk soup. Xiao Xingyu spat from the sidelines. Meng Meng, this soup is for breast enhancement. You drink less. Your breasts are already big enough. Does brother like it? Put. Xiao Xingyu sprayed out a mouthful of soy milk. During the day Xiao Xingyu attended classes as usual, and the atmosphere of each class was very heavy. After all, the midterm exams were approaching and the students were nervous. Wu Shengyu had the tip of a pencil in his mouth, holding the slaying wraith's raiders in his hand, his head hanging down. Alas, smashing the exam is small, leaving your life in the exam room is big. Train number 13. Was the exam room for the midterm exam? When the time came, the train would pass through dangerous zones along the way, and there would be all sorts of magical beasts swarming and attacking the train. Once the train overturned and fell into the canyon and river, everyone in the entire train would be killed. Although the probability of such an accident was small, it was not impossible. Wu Xingyu's concern is also the concern of the whole class. During the study hall, everyone is talking about the topic of making a will in advance. In the afternoon after school, Song Wu sat on Xiao Xingyu's desk with his but in his hand, holding his meal card. Father Yu, going to the cafeteria or not? I'm treating you today. Thank you righteous son for the treat. I appreciate the thought, but I have an appointment. Xiao Xingyu packed up his book bag, leaving Song Hu and Wu Shengyu who were dazed in place. Old Wu, who do you think Father Yu has a date with today? Wu Sang Yu analyzed in a decent manner. Daddy Yu is now the most famous person in Qinglong Academy, so I guess the schoolgirls will all fall for him. Our Qinglong Academy school flower is just a few. Counted on one hand. Sister Yi Shuangning, Morong Xinxin, Chan Karen, and that heavy pupil woman. Called. Bai Bing. Right. 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 Bai Bing. The topic of discussion between Wu Sheng Yu and Song who was the four school flowers of Qinglong Academy. Among them, the one with the highest popularity was naturally the proud daughter of heaven. Yi Shuangning. In addition to Yi Shuangning, right now. Morong Xinxin's popularity was also on a breakneck rise. This was because Morong Xinxin often appeared by Xiao Xingyu's side, and the two participated in the supernova competition together. Xiao Xingyu's topic of conversation could be much higher than the four major school flowers. Therefore Morong Xinxin's popularity among the four major school flowers had Xiao Xingyu's fame added to it. The school building after school was like a freshly opened can of sardines, with the crowd pouring out from the narrow gate. The most dazzling in the crowd was a pair of white-haired siblings. Morong Yangshua and Morong Xinxin were walking side by side. Since tomorrow was the weekend, the two siblings were planning to take a trip home. Older sister, I heard that our old man is back, so we'll have good food when we go home tonight. 
Morong Yangshua pursed the corners of his lips, his appetite was flying out. On the surface, Morong Ashes was a Dragon Kingdom Navy Admiral with a majestic and solemn image. But at home, he was a family cook who specialized in cooking. This was because Morong Ashes' wife died early. And as a father, Morong Ashes pulled his two siblings up all by himself. Although he couldn't give his two children the love of a mother, he took care of all the things that a mother should do, such as cooking. A rare smile surfaced on Morong Xinxin's iceberg-like cold face. I also miss father's cooking. Suddenly, Morong Yangshua stopped and looked sideways. Brother, what's wrong? Older sister, look at that guy. Doesn't he look a bit familiar? Morong Xinxin saw Morong Yangshua's gaze and looked over. Xiao Xingyu. Morong Xinxin recognized Xiao Xingyu himself just by seeing a blurry back shadow in the dense crowd. It's really that kid. Morong Yangshua grabbed Morong Xinxin's arm and darted towards Xiao Xingyu. Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu felt someone patting his back shoulder and turned his head to see that it was two acquaintances. Brother Yangshua, Lu Jin, what a coincidence. Xingyu, you're smiling so happily. The corners of your mouth are grinning to the roots of your ears. Your gums are exposed. What happy things did you encounter? Xiao Xingyu was extraordinarily happy today. Morong Yangshua couldn't help but be curious. I'm the same as usual ah, poor and happy. Morong Xinxin suddenly interjected. You purposely did a new hairstyle today and also changed into new clothes. Xiao Xingyu usually didn't pay attention to his image, but today it was a rare occasion that he dressed up and looked even more handsome. Morong Yangshua put his arm around Xiao Xingyu's shoulders. Xingyu, come with us tonight. Where to? To my house. Morong Yangshua initiated the invitation, wanting to take Xiao Xingyu home. Going to Morong's house as a guest was a good opportunity to expand one's network. One had to know that in a normal person's lifetime, they would not be able to climb up to a prestigious family of the Morong family's level. My father is home today. Come to my house for dinner and get to know each other. Morong Yangshua was very brotherly and righteous. He wanted to help Xiao Xingyu build up his network, so that his brother would have something to rely on in the future. Xiao Xingyu scratched his head in embarrassment. When he thought of his identity as a black-robed man, he fought with Morong Ashes on the ice and fire island of the Navy headquarters. He was too embarrassed to go to Morong's house as a guest. Brother Yangshua, thank you for the invitation. Next time, no way old brother, why did you refuse? I have an appointment today. Xiao Xingyu's words caused Morong Xinxin to feel uncomfortable. Morong Yangshua had a gossipy face. An appointment with who, male or female? Asked out his sister. Xiao Rua Xue? No, it's a god sister. The cell phone rang and Xiao Xingyu answered the call. Xin Yenron's voice came through. Brother Xingyu, I'm waiting for you at the back door of the school. Yo, sister Yen Yen, I'll be right over. After hanging up the phone, Xiao Xingyu waved goodbye to the Morong siblings. Brother Yangshua, six gold, let's get together some other day. I'll treat you then. Morong Yangshua froze, muttering under his breath. God sister, that's no blood relationship. Wouldn't it be? Old sister, let's follow and take a look. The Morong siblings arrived at the back door of the Green Dragon Academy and saw a super convertible sports car worth a lot of money parked on the side of the road. A poised beauty sat in the driver's seat exuding the charm of an imperial sister with her hands and feet. This was the daughter of the Tsong Dome Guild president, Qin Yen Yen. Sister Yen Yen, Brother Xingyu, it's been a long time, sister missed you. The siblings reunited and embraced each other. The Morong siblings witnessed everything and watched Xiao Xingyu get into Qin Yen Yen's passenger car until he disappeared around the corner of the street. That beauty, isn't that Qin Yen Ran of the Tsong Dome Guild? Her body is indeed hot. Morong Yangshua suddenly felt a chill as he spoke. Cough cough. Although Qin Yin Yin's body is good, it's not as pretty as my sister. This was Morong Yangshua's desire to survive as Morong Xinxin's own brother. Morong Xinxin looked at the corner of the street and fumed. No one knew what this young girl was thinking at the moment. Morong Yangshua patted Morong Xinxin's head. Older sister, as you can see, a boy like Xingyu, whose talent and face value are both online, is very popular with beautiful women. If you want Xingyu to become the son-in-law of our Morong family, you need to be more proactive as well. Morong Xinxing blinked, the white doll hair on his head swaying in the wind. I don't know how to take the initiative. Dating this kind of thing, it's really not good for a girl to take the initiative. After all, you have to be a bit more reserved. Morong Yangshua pondered for a long time, and had a bright idea, old sister. Let's do it this way. When the midterm exams are over, I'll look for an opportunity to help you create a chance for the two of you to be alone together. How much Morong Yangshua resisted Xiaoxing you before? Now how much he wanted Xiao Xingyu to become his brother-in-law. Ghost ideas ensued. Tian Hai Restaurant. Window Seat. Brother Xingyu. This is one of the most delicious private food restaurants in Longyin City. Order whatever you want. Sister's Treat. 
Xiao Xingyu's eyes went straight as he looked at the wide array of menus. These prices are too expensive. Sister isn't poor. Just order whatever you want. Qin Yanyan looked at Xiao Xingyu's formal appearance and simply handed the menu to the waiter. Fried one book. Okay ms. Qin, please wait. Stir frying a book means serving all the dishes on the menu all over again. Xiao Xingyu said with embarrassment. Sister Yan Ran, you're also too broke. We're just two people. We can't eat that much. If you can't eat it, pack it up. I'll bring it back to the Guild Brothers as a night snack. Although Qin Yan Yan was young, she already had the basic qualities to inherit the position of Guild President and only lacked the strength. Treating the members of the guild, Qin Yan Yan took them as her brothers and sisters, and would think of them when there were benefits. In the entire Longin city, in terms of strength, the Hurricane Guild barely pressed the Vault Guild, ranking first, but if on the welfare treatment that the guild members get, Song Dong Guild is the most perfect work unit in people's eyes, even more desirable than the iron rice bowl in the system. After the meal was served, Xiao Xingyu and Qin Yan Ran pushed their cups together, drinking warm wine, chucking in two mouthfuls of flavorful dishes, and enjoying the night view from the window in the meantime. This kind of peaceful life was the most precious thing in this era. One must know that the demonic beast army outside the pass was on the move. Once one day, the demonic beast army broke through the four directions of the dragon kingdom's borders and drove in. The entire country would be plunged into a situation of no return. At that time, not to mention sitting around drinking and eating meat, probably the only source of food for the survivors would be the corpses of their companions or even their relatives and loved ones. Xiao Xingyu was clear about the cruelty of the times, so he extraordinarily cherished the joy of this moment. Sister Yan Ran, thank you for inviting me to dinner. Brother Xingyu, to celebrate you leading the Green Dragon Academy and winning the Supernova competition, the two siblings raised their hands in a toast and drank it all in one go, laughing painfully and chatting about the little bits and pieces of their lives. At this time, the conversation at the next table attracted Xiao Xingyu's attention. Brother, drink some more can't drink anymore. The auction at Tianji Lu is about to start. I want to find a precious material for upgrading and advancing my imperial beast. Then I won't eat either. Let's go. Not only the next table. Many guests in the restaurant left one after another, and the content of their mouths could not be separated from the three words Tianji Lu. You kid. You're interested in Tianji Lu? Qin Yan Yan saw Xiao Xingyu's mind at a glance. Sister Yan Yan, what are these people in a hurry to go to the heavenly chance building for? Qin Yan Yan poured Xiao Xingyu a glass of wine before patiently explaining for him. Brother Xingyu, see that classical building across the road that is lit up with light? Xiao Xingyu turned his head to look, and to his eyes, there was an ancient style pavilion with a height of over 200 meters, with each floor lit up with bright lights. Below the pavilion, it was overcrowded with people who seemed to be queuing up for admission. This is the Tianji building, the place where the largest auction in Longyin City is held. Tonight, it's the opening time of the Tianji building's auction. Hundreds of treasures will be exhibited at the auction, such as heavenly treasures, rare magical beasts crystal cores, magical beasts bones that possess medicinal value, and imperial beast cubs. Of course, this level of auction is not something that anyone is qualified to participate in. One must at least have a certain status. After Qin Yan Yan explained clearly, her beautiful eyes flashed with luster as she stared at Xiao Xingyu. Brother Xingyu, isn't it true that you want to participate in the Tian Ji Lu auction? Xiao Xingyu nodded. The auction? was the best place to pick up leaks. Xiao Xingyu was very interested in this. Go! Qin Yan Yan suddenly pulled Xiao Xingyu's hand. Sister Yan Yan, where are you taking me? Tian Ji building. Ah, ah what ah? Firstly, to take you to see more. Second, there's a favorite treasure in the auction. Sister will buy it and give it to you as a gift to celebrate your winning the championship. The joy of having a rich woman god sister. Xiao Xingyu experienced. Waiter, pack the leftovers and send them to the Tsong Dome Guild. Yes. M.S. Qin. Within moments, Qin Yan Yan held Xiao Xingyu's hand and arrived downstairs at Tianji. There was a sea of people at the entrance, lining up to enter. Xiao Xingyu looked up and saw that the two entrances had different markings. The entrance with a long line of people was labeled General Passage. The entrance with scattered people was labeled VIP Passage. Qin Yan Yan brought Xiao Xingyu to the entrance of the VIP channel and showed the Tsong Dong Guild's token. The doorman immediately made a big salute and nodded his head at Qin Yan Yan. Miss Qin, please. This was the face of the Tsong Dome Guild, which could walk horizontally in Dragon Hidden City. Entering the first floor hall of the Tianji building, Xiao Xingyu was deeply attracted by the sight before him. The walls of the hall were covered with various kinds of magical beast skulls and skins, as well as various specimens. The feathers of the Windwing Falcon King, the fishtail of the Ice Storm Naga Queen, and the skull of the Black Diamond. These are all rare treasures ah. Brother Xingyu, 
These treasures exhibited on the first floor are all non-sale items, belonging to the building owner's personal collection. Building owner? The owner of the building is the owner of Tianji Lu, Jiang Shuero. Xiao Xingyu hadn't heard of this figure, but in his heart, he was able to guess about it. To be able to own such a building full of treasures in Longing City, the Tianji building, and to be qualified to hold the largest auction in the city, one's strength background should not be underestimated. Get out of the way. All get out of the way. Don't block my family's Yunli's path. The environment became noisy as a clash broke out at the entrance of the first floor hall. Xiao Xingyu turned to look, and there were a few guests lying on the ground with bruises and swollen noses. The crowd retreated. Anger was on everyone's face, but they were suppressed by scorn and dared not speak. Surrounded by a group of black-clothed men, a young man wearing expensive clothes walked into the first floor hall. The man's appearance could not be described as handsome, and his stature was not tall enough, and his unattractive stance was revolting. The credential that allowed this man to be so arrogant was the purple token hanging on his waist. The token was engraved with the totem symbol of the Hurricane Guild. Looks like this is the flighty young master of the Hurricane Guild. Xiao Xingyu shattered his thoughts. Li Han was chewing gum in his mouth with a domineering and arrogant demeanor. What are you looking at? Treating this young master as a monkey? If you dare to look one more time, I'll gouge your eyes out. Everyone hid away, not daring to provoke Li Han. Hurricane Guild was the number one ranked guild in Dragon Hidden City. Li Han was the son of Hurricane Guild's president, Li Jiangha, and was also a single descendant of the Li family. Because of this, Li Han has done a lot of unethical things in Dragon Hidden City. With the name of his old man, no one dares to touch a hair on his head. Li Han noticed Qin Yan then couldn't help but reveal a lewd smile. Yan Yan, you are also here. What a coincidence. Qin Yan Ran looked cold. Li Han, stay away from me. We're not familiar. Only then did Li Han notice the teenager beside Qin Yan Yan. Xiao Xingyu and Qin Yan Yan were close to each other. And Qin Yan Yan was holding Xiao Xingyu's hand. This scene caused Li Han's face to instantly darken. Qin Yan Yan didn't want to have too many interactions with Li Han and held Xiao Xingyu's hand as she prepared to go to the second floor to stroll around. Li Han was like a dog skin plaster, sticking behind Qin Yan Yan. A few of his black clad henchmen understood and blocked the stairway. Qin Yan Ran could only stop and turn around with her phoenix eyes glaring, her pretty face surfacing with anger. Li Han, what exactly do you want? Yan Yan, this little kid beside you who looks like his hair hasn't even grown. Who is he? Li Han's sight fell on Xiao Xingyu. Seeing a boy taller than himself and more handsome than himself so close to the woman he desired. Even holding hands, he was jealous and angry inside. A middle-aged man with a pockmarked face walked up to Li Han with a humble posture and thieving eyes. He was Hurricane Guild's butler Qian Feng. Young Li, I've checked. That guy beside Miss Qin is Xiao Xingyu, the new student of Green Dragon Academy, who just led Green Dragon Academy and won the Supernova competition. Xiao Xingyu was also considered a popular figure in Dragon Hidden City, and information about him was easy to find out. Qian Feng came to Li Han's ear and added, Young Li, although this Xiao Xingyu has a big reputation, he is only a two-star royal beast master and has no powerful background. He is just a poor boy who came out from a small city. Li Han narrowed his eyes and re-examined the tall and upright teenager in front of him. He he, winning the supernova competition is marvelous? Li Han looked over at Qin Yan Yan, his smile dripping with unrivaled arrogance. Yan Yan ah, your vision is really getting worse now. Even if you don't accept this young master's pursuit, you can't pay out of your own pocket to support a powerless little white boy, right? Qin Yan Ran was enraged and droned. Li Han, keep your mouth clean. My brother Xing Yu is not a little white boy. Yo 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 yo. You're still talking about Xing Yu's younger brother. So you're a disciple controller who likes this kind of tender little brother. With every word, Li Han was explicitly and implicitly humiliating Xiao Xing Yu. Not only that, Li Han took a step forward and stared at Xiao Xing Yu, directly threatening with a threat. Kid, Yin Yan is the woman I have my eye on. If you are sensible, get out of the Tianji building. Otherwise, because his father was the president of the Hurricane Guild, Li Han rarely encountered people who dared to go against him in Dragon Hidden City. And he was certain that Xiao Xingyu would be jealous of his identity and take the initiative to leave Qin Yan Yan. Xiao Xingyu revealed his harmless signature smile. Or else what? Qin Feng stood out, his posture arrogant to the extreme. Brat, dare to talk to my family's Li Xiao with this attitude? Believe it or not, a single word from my family's Li Xiao will make you unable to mix in Longin City. This group of people, under the name of the Hurricane Guild, had done nothing wrong, and had long since stirred up the people's anger. But the people around them all dared to be angry. After all, no one in Longin City was willing to dare to go against the number one ranked Hurricane Guild. Li Han walked towards Qin Yan Yan, his eyes unsuspecting, his colorful appearance sickening. Yan Yan, talk about you. 
with such a rigid nature, you just don't know how to change. Our Hurricane Guild ranks number one in the entire city. Your Song Dome Guild is ranked second in the city. You and I are the right family. If you are willing to marry me, do my eighth aunt, our family's power will only get bigger and bigger. Isn't it a win-win situation? Xiao Xingyu couldn't help but shake his head and sneer after hearing this. Li Xiao, your calculations are really loud. The guard dog at the entrance of the village 10 kilometers away can hear the sound. You guys are worthy of being of the same kind. Brat, you called me a dog? Looking for death. Li Han was furious. Normally no one would dare to offend him like this. You have seven ants already. You still want to find an eighth ant. Spermatozoa is better to go to the pigsty to find an old sow. Don't think about my Yen Yen sister. Besides, besides coveting my Yen Yen sister's beauty, you also covet the Vault Guild. If I'm not mistaken, you're worried that the rapid development of the Vault Guild over the past two years has threatened the Hurricane Guild's position. And only then did you pursue sister Yen Yen like a mad dog, right? Striking the snake seven inches, Xiao Xingyu's rambling speech hit the nail on the head. Li Han was poked and prodded in the pain point, so angry that his chest tightened, stuttering and not knowing how to retort. Xiao Xingyu, you are talking nonsense. Our Hurricane Guild is the number one ranked guild in the whole city. How is it possible? Before Li Han could finish, he heard the crowd murmuring, that little brother is right. In these two years, the Hurricane Guild has been developing very fast. Yes, yes, yes. In terms of reputation and popularity, I think the Vault Guild has surpassed the Hurricane Guild. I've heard that Hurricane Guild has already had two S-Class missions declared failed this month. The latest internal news, Hurricane Guild has several orders that have been intercepted by Tsung Dome Guild. The crowd's eyes were bright. In these two years, Tsung Dome Guild had captured the trust of the residents of Longin City by virtue of its conscience and reputation. On the contrary, the Hurricane Guild, which was ostensibly ranked number one, was becoming less and less trusted by the masses because of issues such as malicious price hikes, elevated mission failure rates, and poor after-sales service. Li Han was the young master of the Hurricane Guild, and he was naturally aware of this. Objectively speaking, in at most one more year, the strength of the Vault Guild would surpass the Hurricane Guild and ascend to the top of the city. As the president of the Hurricane Guild, Li Zhangha was burnt out because of this matter, which was why he sent out his own son, Li Han, to frantically pursue Qin Yin Yin. I can kind of see it. This Li family is trying to annex the Vault Guild through a family marriage. Who says it isn't? In this way, the Hurricane Guild will be able to stand in a position of dominance and continue to earn the people's black money. This Hurricane Guild is a ruthless money machine. Last time I asked the Hurricane Guild to help me kill a full-bodied level magical beast, they actually charged me 5 million gold coins. The anger of the masses was answered with a single cry. Three feet of ice was not cold in a day. The Hurricane Guild's reputation had collapsed not in a day or two. And on this big occasion, Li Han's face turned green and he couldn't get off the stage in the face of the long crowd. Damn bedbug. This young man will crush you like an ant. Li Han was furious, intending to vent all his anger on Xiao Xingyu, while the atmosphere was tense. A leisurely and melodious female voice resounded through the first floor hall of the Tianji building. This is the Tianji building. If you all have personal grudges, please go out and settle them. Don't touch my treasures here. Before seeing the person, one could hear his voice. A nice sound. Xiao Xingyu held his curiosity and turned to look. The crowd retreated and made way. A woman in a classical Chongsam walked into the light. Xiao Xingyu had seen many beautiful women, but this was the first time he had seen this kind of ancient flavor pulling beauty. The beautiful woman held a rocking fan and her body was graceful and elegant. Her gait was light and graceful, like a dancing colorful butterfly. Xiao Xingyu looked dumbfounded, having the illusion of traveling 10,000 years back to ancient times. The owner has come out. Boss Jiang deserves to be Boss Jiang. The title of Longin City's number one classical beauty lives up to its name. The clear eyes are radiant, as deep as a lake, like they contain the secrets of thousands of stars. Her lips are vividly colored like cherry blossoms in full bloom, just like a fairy who has fallen to earth. Wonderful, truly wonderful. This classical beauty of undefeated years was the owner of Tianji Mansion, the organizer of the auction, Jian Xueluwa. Stunned by Boss John's beauty, Qin Yanran poked Xiao Xingyu's shoulder with her finger. Only then did Xiao Xingyu come back to his senses and smiled coyly. I was a bit lost in thought just now. He he, men, they really can't walk when they see a beautiful woman. Qin Yen Yen's tone, a bit jealous. Sister Yen Yen, she's the Tian Ji Lu's owner? That's right, her name is Jiang Xueluwa. Although she's ostensibly a merchant in business, she's very prestigious. Even Li Han wouldn't dare to go against her head on. Xiao Xingyu noticed a ferret with snow white fur lying on Jiang Xueluwa's shoulder. This ferret looked to be only palm-sized, stupidly cute and harmless. Treading snow dimming ferret, 
Beast King Body, Third Order, Imperial Beast. Xiao Xingyu felt surprised, not realizing that a ferret with such a petite physique was actually a Beast King Body level Imperial Beast. This indicated that Jiang Shuelua's strength was at least above a 6 star Imperial Beast Master. While Xiao Xingyu was observing Jiang Shuelua, Jiang Shuelua's afterglow also landed on Xiao Xingyu's body, and a flash of color flashed under her eyes. Li Han's arrogant stance was tempered after seeing Jiang Shuelua. Boss Jiang, I also have no intention of causing trouble on your territory. No offense. Jiang Shuelua just smiled lightly and did not interact too much with Li Han. For the sake of Hurricane Guild President Li Jianha, Jiang Shuelua wouldn't kick Li Han out. Everyone, the auction is about to begin. Please move to the top floor conference hall. There were still five minutes before the auction started, and all the guests took the elevator and arrived at the top floor of the Tianji building. The top floor of the Tianji building was located on the 88th floor, and through the windows, one could overlook the night view of Longin City. The exhibition hall was decorated in a grand manner, and the quality of the ceremonial ladies was very high. All of them were big-breasted and buttocked young ladies, one more than the other watery. Xiao Xingyu followed beside Qin Yin Yin. Sister Yen Ran, that Li Han has bad intentions towards you. Why don't we leave first? Brother Xingyu, we are here to participate in the auction. I want to pick a gift of your choice for you at the auction. But that Li Han, don't mind him. Qin Yin Yin took Xiao Xingyu's arm and her breasts touched Xiao Xingyu's elbow. So soft and big. Yen Yen's sister's body is even better than I imagined. This is Xiao Xingyu's exclusive welfare treatment. Qin Yin Yin does not care about men and women by his side, allowing to give Xiao Xingyu the opportunity to take advantage. Li Han stood not far away. Looking at Qin Yin Yin's intimate treatment of Xiao Xingyu, the anger in his heart was hard to suppress. Qian Feng whispered, Young Li, why don't we wait for the auction to end? I'll find someone to drag the kid into the small alley and teach him a good lesson? If you want to teach this brat a lesson, why do you need to wait until the auction ends? Butler Qian, do as I say later. The two men conspired in low voices while revealing sinister smiles. Five minutes later, Jiang Shuelua, dressed in an ink chongsam, ascended the auction stage. Welcome to the Tianji Lu's Autumn Auction. I am the Tianji Lu's owner. Jiang Shuelua. Loud applause and cheers rang out from the stage. Xiao Xingyu and Qin Yin Yan sat in the corner of the VIP seats and clapped along with everyone else. Sister Yen Ran, why do I feel that the few big brothers around me don't look like they're here to participate in the auction? but rather like they're here to chase stars. Xin Yin Yan explained in a low voice. As you can see, half of the guests who came to the auction are really here to search for treasures, and the other half are fans of Boss Jiang, attracted by Boss Jiang's face value. The venue was overcrowded and almost entirely male. A classical beauty like Jiang Shu Elua, who seemed to come out of a scroll, could seduce any man's soul with her knitted brows and smile. Xiao Xingyu applauded while looking at Jiang Shu Elua on the stage, and couldn't help but sigh. Don't say. Really don't say, Boss Jiang is indeed a special thing on earth, that I really hooks people's heart ah. Qin Yan Ran wrapped her arms around Xiao Xingyu's neck and smiled. Brother Xingyu, do you prefer Jiang Xuelua's type or my type? This appeared to be a double choice question, but it was actually a single choice question. Xiao Xingyu did not hesitate. His desire to survive was overwhelming. Of course I like Sister Yan Ran's type of valiant female heroine. Count on your kid's high emotional intelligence. You can coax your sister to be happy. Coaxing his sister to be happy was Xiao Xingyu's forte. Next, the auction officially begins. The first lot, the Skull of the Heavens I Spirit Beast. This treasure contains the medicinal value of nourishing and nourishing the body, boiled and taken in soup. It can help the Imperial Beast remove toxins from the body and enhance the armor value. Starting bid, 3, 5 million gold coins. Jiang Shuelua's words had just fallen, and the guests under the stage were still dumbfounded, immersed in admiring Jiang Shuelua's beauty. At this moment, Jiang Shuelua guffawed, a fragrant breeze blowing in every corner of the venue. I'll offer four million dollars. Me me me. I'll offer four. Five. I'll offer six million dollars. Just for one more smile from Boss Jiang. As long as Boss Jiang can give a chance to have dinner together. I'll offer ten million dollars. Looking around at these guests scrambling to raise the price, Xiao Xingyu's smile stiffened and he approached Qin Yin Yin's ear to spit. Sister Yin Yin, this skull of the heavens I spirit beast does have some medicinal value. But the starting bit of 3, 5 million gold coins is already a bit inflated. Even so, these VIPs are still frantically raising the price. Is there money they have nowhere to spend? Qin Yin Yin patted Xiao Xing Yu's head, her tone dripping with favor. Silly brother, you are so simple. These men's minds are very simple. They don't spend money in order to buy the auction itself, but in order to attract Boss John's attention. Wanting to find a chance to get a kiss, Xiao Xing Yu was curious in her heart and couldn't help but ask. I know that a woman's age is a secret, but I'm really curious. 
This boss Jung, how old is he this year? You've really put sister on the spot. Sister doesn't know boss Jung's exact age either. Xiao Xingyu's gaze returned to Jung Shuelua as the eye of the demon god opened. On this woman, there seems to be a mysterious veil shrouded over her. Unable to see through it, unable to see through it at all. Xiao Xingyu's sixth sense was very strong. He was certain of one thing. This Tian Ji Lu's owner was definitely not as simple as it seemed on the surface. All in all, this boss Jiang is not simple. He's a character that can be befriended when he has the chance. Xiao Xingyu never forgot the planning of expanding his network. He was clear that now that his wings were not yet full, befriending more wonders would also pave the way for the future king. Because of Jiang Shuelua's charisma effect, every lot on display would be speculated by the guests to sky-high prices. After an hour had passed, Jiang Shuelua had earned at least half a billion dollars. Next, please Miss Manners, present the ninth lot. The two misses of ceremony came onto the stage together holding the glass cabinet. When the red veil on the glass cabinet was unwrapped, the entire room boiled. This this is the dragon horn ginseng? That's right, it's the dragon horn ginseng. This is a treasure that is hard to come by in a hundred years. Its medicinal value is said to be able to bring dying imperial beasts back to life. In the glass cabinet, a red-colored wild mountain ginseng was displayed. The shape of the mountain ginseng resembled a dragon's horn. So it was called the dragon's horn ginseng. This was the most valuable lot that was auctioned in this auction. John Shuelua was all smiles. Guests, I believe you all know the value of the dragon horn ginseng even better than I do. Starting bid, $80 million. This kind of auction that could reach $80 million in starting price. The final selling price would be at least hundreds of millions. Just at the moment when the guests were about to raise their cards to raise the price, the sound of a wine glass breaking suddenly rang out. Everyone looked to the corner. Xiao Xingyu's face was apologetic. At his feet were broken wine glasses. His chest shirt was wet with red wine. Jiang Xueluan noticed Xiao Xingyu. This gentleman, are you alright? I'm fine. Seeing this, Li Han sneered and taunted. A poor boy is a poor boy. Coming to a place like this will only disgrace you. Someone, help this gentleman to the restroom to clean up. Boss Jiang, can I trouble you? Help me to the restroom? Xiao Xingyu shocked the entire room with one sentence. Who are you kid? Who are you to let Boss Jiang help you? What a toad wanting to eat swan meat. Trying to take advantage of Boss Jiang. Delusional. Xiao Xingyu ignored the public opinion and winked subtly towards Jiang Shuelua, receiving Xiao Xingyu's eye hint. Jiang Shuelua hesitated for a moment, but still walked off the stage and came to Xiao Xingyu's side. Sir, I'll take you to the restroom. Thank you, Boss Jiang. All the guests present, who witnessed Jiang Shuelua accompanying Xiao Xingyu to the restroom, one by one was worse than eating a fly. What about the heavens? My goddess actually likes the white boy type? It's over. It's over. All those things that I spent money on earlier to shoot down are wasted. What does that kid have? Just by being handsome? I'm not bad. Just a little cross-eyed. This flaw is nothing. Brother, your cockeye flaw is big. You've been talking to the doorpost. Xin Yenron's face was full of suspicion. And she was also a bit jealous. Just now, Brother Xingyu seemed to have intentionally broken the wine glass and got himself covered in red wine. He was intentionally approaching Jiang Shuelua. Could it be that he likes women who wear Chong Sams? Hmph. Next time I'll also buy a Chong Sam with a high slit to wear. Show my thighs and charm this brat who forgets his sister when he sees color. Restroom. Jiang Shuelua took out paper towels. Unscrewed the faucet. Soaked the paper towels and handed them to Xiao Xingyu. Sir, wipe it off. Boss Jiang. Thanks. Xiao Xingyu simply wiped the wine stains near his chest. What is your name? Sir? Xiao Xingyu. Jiang Shuelua smiled with picturesque eyebrows and her voice was as gentle as a human being. Late bloomers can be feared. But I've heard that you led the Green Dragon Academy and just won the Supernova competition. Xiao Xingyu waved his hand, keeping a low profile and humble. Boss Jiang, I purposely looked for you in this way because I have something to say. Mr. Xiao but there's no harm in saying it. Xiao Xingyu was straightforward. The ninth lot of the dragon horn ginseng that you auctioned just now is a fake. Jiang Shuelua's brows showed her anger. Mr. Xiao, please be more careful with your words. Since my Tianji house opened, I have never auctioned off a single fake counterfeit item. If you're here to discredit our Tianji house, then I'll have to see you off. The treading snow dimming sable that was lying on Jiang Shuelua's shoulder, its pupils lit up with purple essence, and a chill enveloped Xiao Xingyu's entire body. Boss Jiang, I'm just a two-star imperial beast master. While this treading snow dimming sable of yours is a beast king body imperial beast, why would I deliberately discredit Tianji house and feud with a great person like you? You recognize the treading snow dimming sable? Jiang Shuelua revealed a surprised gaze. Very few people could tell the true rank of the treading snow dimming sable at a glance. In the eyes of ordinary people, 
The treading snow dimming ferret was just an inconspicuous pet. Xiao Xingyu smiled blandly and continued. I'm just being honest. The dragon horn ginseng is indeed a fake. And if Tian Ji Lu's auction of fake goods is exposed, it's your reputation that will be damaged. Jiang Shuelua collected her anger. Then tell me, how can you tell that my dragon horn ginseng is a fake? Xiao Xingyu, who possessed the eye of the demon god, was a ceiling level treasure appraisal master when it came to treasure appraisal. The dragon horn ginseng grows in the cold ice valley in the northern border of the dragon kingdom, absorbing the essence of heaven and earth, and will give off a faint grassy flavor. And the dragon horn ginseng that you exhibited on the stage is only shaped like a dragon's horn, but has no grass flavor. According to my judgment, it's the blood beard of a scaly dragon that also comes from the cold ice valley, but grows under a cold pool. Jiang Shuelua fell into deep thought and muttered in a low voice, Jiao dragon blood whiskers, and dragon horn ginseng do look similar. Can it be that it's really a fake? Jiang Shuelua hurriedly had someone remove the dragon horn ginseng on the exhibition stage. Five minutes later, a staff member came over. Boss Jiang, the appraisal results are out. Speak. This dragon horn ginseng is indeed a fake. A forgery of the Jiao dragon's blood whisker after it was packaged and reshaped. Everything was the same as Xiao Xingyu's judgment. This dragon horn ginseng was a fake for real. Jiang Shuelua coldly said. The supplier of this dragon horn ginseng. Who is it? Lingnan City, Shue family, refused to cooperate with the Shue family in the future. Yes, Boss Jiang. Jiang Shuelua turned her head to look at Xiao Xingyu and smiled charmingly. Many thanks, Mr. Xiao. If it wasn't for your pair of discerning eyes, the consequences of this fake dragon horn ginseng would be unimaginable once it was auctioned off. For Tian Ji Lu, reputation was the greatest treasure. If it was exposed for auctioning fake goods, Jiang Shuelua would be the one most responsible. And in addition to paying out the money, she would also have to face the crisis of public opinion. A trivial matter. What's the point? Xiao Xingyu still kept a low profile, hiding his merits and fame deeply. Zhang Shuelua took out a gold card from her bag. The gold card had a hot stamp textured pattern of roses on it, as well as the pattern of Tian Ji Lu. This is the exclusive gold card for our Tian Ji Lu Supreme VIP, as a way to repay Mr. Zhao's kindness. This isn't good. Take it. Jiang Shuelua forced the supreme gold card into Xiao Xingyu's hand. Xiao Xingyu appeared to be squirming and pushing it away, but in reality, he was secretly happy inside. It's coincidental, taking this opportunity to expand a network. This Jiang Shuelua is ostensibly only the owner of the Tianji building, but she has raised a beast king body imperial beast treading snow dimming sable. Her background must not be simple. Every move Xiao Xingyu made had a significant meaning. He wouldn't be acquainted with a guy like Li Han who rode rushout over people based on his family background. Only someone like Jiang Shuelua would raise his interest. Mr. Xiao, the auction will continue to start. Please return to the venue and take your seat. I will come later. Good. The auction continued to start and Xiao Xingyu returned to Qin Yanran's side. Qin Yanran had a curious look on her face. Brother Xingyu, what did you and Jiang Shuelua talk about? Nothing much, just building a friendship with her. Friendship? You just met her and established a friendship? You brat really forget your sister when you see color. Qin Yan Yan was jealous and turned her head to feign sulking. Sister Yan Yan, Boss Jiang and I are just ordinary friends. We are siblings who are not related by blood but are better than blood relatives. It's not the same. Count on your kid's sweet mouth. A few moments later, Zhang Shuelua once again walked onto the auction stage. The guests underneath the stage were buzzing. Boss Jiang, why is the knife lot off the shelf? I really like that dragon horn ginseng. Even if the auction price exceeds 100 million, I'm willing to shoot it. That's right. Put the dragon horn ginseng back on the shelf. The dragon horn ginseng had an extremely rich medicinal value and could bring dying imperial beasts back to life. Even without looking at Jiang Shuelua's face, these guests were willing to pay a high price to auction it home. Jiang Shuelua glanced at Xiao Xingyu in the corner with grateful eyes. If it wasn't for Xiao Xingyu, that fake dragon horn ginseng would have been auctioned off by a certain tycoon on the stage at a sky-high price of hundreds of millions of dollars. When this mobile realized that the dragon horn ginseng was fake, I'm afraid the Tian Ji house would be discredited. Sorry everyone. The dragon horn ginseng has already been reserved by my acquaintance seller and will no longer be participating in the exhibition auction. Next we skip the dragon horn ginseng. The next lot. The ceremonial lady walked onto the stage and unwrapped the red veil. Inside the glass cabinet lay a magical beast crystal core that shimmered with golden light. Jiang Shuelua began to introduce it. This is a holy light attribute magical beast crystal core. When Jiang Shuelua introduced it, the guests under the stage were not very excited, because holy light attribute royal beasts were extremely rare. For most royal beast masters, even if they bought a holy light attribute magical beast crystal core, 
It wouldn't be of any use and would only be a waste of money. This is not an ordinary holy light attribute magical beast crystal core. Xiao Xingyu's reaction was worlds apart from the other guests. And when he saw the magical beast crystal core inside the glass cabinet, his emotions instantly flared up and he couldn't hide the desire in his eyes. The eye of the demon god opened. In Xiao Xingyu's field of vision, the center of the magical beast crystal core shone with a bit of starlight. Around the magical beast crystal core, constellation totems also faintly emerged. Star power. Xiao Xingyu could be certain of one thing. This holy light attribute magical beast crystal core had hidden star power in it. Star power was a power that was even more powerful than demonic power. A power that could gather the light of the stars outside of space and exert terrifying power in battle. The holy light angel beasts under Xiao Xingyu's command needed this power too much. Brother Xingyu, you like this lot? Qin Yan Yan saw Xiao Xingyu's mind. Sister Yan Yan, I, no need to say it. Sister will help you shoot it down. Having a rich sister was such a happy thing. Regarding this holy light attribute magical beast crystal core, the details are all introduced. Starting auction price, 10 million. This starting price was in line with today's market conditions. The holy light attribute was originally a rare attribute, and this crystal core was useless to ordinary people. But in the eyes of those who needed it, it was a rare treasure. Xiao Xingyu's holy light angel beast was a holy light royal beast. This magical beast crystal core was a perfect match for the holy light angel beast. Moreover, Xiao Xingyu also used the eye of the demon god to discern the hidden star power within the magic beast crystal core. This magic beast crystal core, Xiao Xingyu was determined to get it. I'll offer 11 million dollars. For the sake of boss Jiang, I'll go out on a limb. 12 million. Qin Yan Yan raised her card. 15 million. Everyone in the room looked at Qin Yan Yan and Xiao Xingyu in unison. Jiang Xuelua smiled lightly and said, 15 million once. The crowd murmured, but no one raised their cards. These guests, none of them had a contracted holy light attribute imperial beast under their command. There was no need to continue to raise the price to get a smile from the red face. That would be too much of a loss. 15 million twice. 15 million three. Right at the critical moment. Someone raised their card to increase the price. Jiang Xuelua, Yunli has bid to 18 million. Xiao Xingyu tilted his head to look. Li Han crossed his legs and was smug. Xian Feng, the butler beside Li Han, held up the 18 million dollar sign with a lewd smile. Qin Yanran said angrily, Li Han. You haven't contracted a holy light attribute imperial beast, so why do you have to maliciously inflate the bidding price? Li Han raised his eyebrows and smiled not to mention how arrogant he was. It's true that I haven't contracted a holy light familiar imperial beast. Even if I were to auction off this magical beast crystal core, it would just be left at home to collect dust. As Li Han spoke, his eyes locked onto Xiao Xingyu and said viciously, Brat, Qin Yanran spent money to bid on this magical beast crystal core. It's for you, isn't it? Xiao Xingyu was also a public figure now, and it only took a simple investigation to find out that he had contracted a holy light angelic beast under his command. So Li Han was certain that Qin Yan Yan had spent the money to bid on the auction just for Xiao Xingyu. Li Han, you've gone too far. Yan Yan, I'm just going overboard with this little white boy. Qin Yan Yan's face was filled with anger as she raised her card again. Jiang Xuelua, Emma's, Qin bids 20 million. Li Han personally raised his card. 25 million. 30 million. 50 million. The crowd boiled. My god, is Young Li crazy, bidding half a billion dollars just to fight with Xiao Xingyu? I wonder if Miss Qin will continue to raise the price. Miss Qin has an ugly face. Just as Qin Yan Yan was planning to continue shouting the price, Xiao Xingyu blocked it. Sister Yan Yan, don't go up. This Li Han is deliberately provoking you. I know he's deliberately provoking me, but I have to auction this magical beast crystal core. Xiao Xingyu's heart warmed. He knew that Qin Yan Yan was not a reckless person. The reason why she did this was all for him. Brother Xingyu, don't worry, no matter how much money, I am willing to spend. As long as you like it, sister will definitely get it for you. Qin Yanran's favoritism towards Xiao Xingyu had already exceeded sibling love. Without knowing it, she thought she was raising Xiao Xingyu as her own son. Li Han looked like he was winning and looked towards Zhang Xuelua on the stage. Boss Jiang, I'm bidding 50 million dollars. If no one continues to raise the bid, it's time for you to announce the result. Qin Yanran raised her card again. I bid 60 million. This time, before Li Han could open his mouth, Jiang Xuelua snapped. MS. Qin, calm down first. Jiang Xuelua took out the magical beast crystal cores from the glass cabinet and had the staff put them into an exquisite gift box. Under the puzzled gazes of the crowd, Jiang Xuelua carried the gift box in both hands and walked over to Xiao Xingyu's side. Everyone, Mr. Xiao is our Tianji Lu supreme gold card holder, and a friend of mine. Jiang Xuelua, 
I announce that this holy light attribute magical beast crystal core is withdrawn from the auction process as a personal gift from me to Mr. Xiao. Zhang Xuelua stunned the crowd with these words. Xiao Xingyu has the Tian Lu supreme gold card in his hand? Half of my family's fortune was spent on Tian Lu's past auctions. And up until now, I'm only a diamond member. I didn't expect this kid to be a friend of Boss Jiang. What a bargain. Looking at the entire Longin city, the line of people who wanted to be friends with Zhang Xuelua could line up 18 streets. Which of the guests who came here were not dignitaries, but they didn't even have a chance to have a single conversation with Zhang Xuelua. Qin Yanran had the same reaction as everyone else. Her eyes filled with incredulity. Brother Xingyu, when did you become friends with Boss Jiang? Xiao Xingyu smiled and explained. Just now, Qin Yanran fell into deep thought. Brother Xingyu and Jiang Xuelua, what exactly happened when they went to the restroom just now? Li Han was not happy and stood out to pester. Boss Jiang, I'm offering 60 million dollars. You're not even impressed? I'm sorry young Li. Mr. Xiao is one of my best friends. I'm not going to auction off this magical beast crystal core. Jiang Xuelua handed the gift box to Xiao Xingyu with a bright and moving smile. Thank you, Boss Jiang. Xiao Xingyu accepted the gift box, seemingly calm and collected, but in reality, he was ecstatic in his heart. The arrival of this holy light attribute magical beast crystal core was of great significance to Xiao Xingyu. It could help the holy light angelic beast break through for promotion while absorbing the power of the stars. Brother Xingyu, are you interested in any other lots? Sister Yen Ran, I've gotten what I wanted. Let's go. This time, after harvesting a holy light attribute magical beast crystal core that contained the power of the stars, Xiao Xingyu was already satisfied. Moreover, it was getting late, and his cell phone showed several missed calls from Xiao Ruoshue, just as the two siblings were about to leave. A group of black-clothed men blocked the way. Qin Yanran coldly said, Li Han, what do you want? Li Han stuck his hands in his pockets and walked towards to Xiao Xingyu's front. What do I want? Oh, this younger brother of yours spoke out against me today refuting my face and going against me. If I just let him go, then where will I put my Hurricane Guild young master's face? Li Han's attitude was clear. He wanted to teach Xiao Xingyu a lesson in public. Qin Yan Yan blocked in front of Xiao Xingyu. Come at me with what you have. Don't move my brother. Li Han laughed up to the sky, his tone frivolous. Yan Yan, if you're willing to be my eighth aunt, then we're family. This brother of yours is my brother-in-law. I naturally won't make things difficult for him. Shameless guy. That's right. This young man is shameless. Either you agree to marry me, or I break your brother's leg. You choose. In comparison, the Tsong Dome Guild's overall strength was inferior to the Hurricane Guild. If the two guilds had a head-on conflict as a result, it would not be beneficial to the Tsong Dome Guild. Furthermore, Tsong Dome Guild's president Qin Longyue was currently not in Dragon Hidden City. Qin Yan Yan did not have her father to back her up, and was in a bit of a predicament at the moment. Zhang Xuelua wanted to step in but suddenly realized that the corner of Xiao Xingyu's lips hooked up in a hidden smile. Look at his expression. He seems to have a bottom card. Zhang Xuelua gave up stepping in. She wanted to see how Xiao Xingyu would handle the current crisis. Tian Ji Lu had always been peaceful. No one dared to cause trouble on Zhang Xuelua's territory. However, Li Han, relying on his identity as the Hurricane Guild's young master, ignored the rules of the Heavenly Opportunity Building and insisted on making things difficult for Xiao Xingyu. Although everyone knew that Li Han was an unrelenting bully, no one dared to come forward to stop him. They were all afraid of the power of the Hurricane Guild. Qin Yan Yan held Xiao Xingyu's hand, intending to force his way out. Li Han waved his hand, and a large number of Hurricane Guild members poured into the venue on the top floor of the Tianji building, surrounding the pair of siblings. All get out of the way. Qin Yan Yan huffed and shouted lowly. Li Han shook his folding fan in his hand and looked at Qin Yan Yan with a gaze that did not hide his ugly greed. Yan Yan, I've just made it very clear. As long as you're willing to marry me and be my eighth concubine, we'll be a family. As long as we become a family, I will naturally forgive your brother for the disrespect and offense he just gave me. But if you don't agree, then don't blame me for being impolite. Qin Yan Yan shrugged her shoulders and sneered, looking Li Han up and down. With this sharp-tongued look of yours, you still want me to marry you? You also don't take a piss and look at yourself. If your father is not Li Jiang Ha, on this condition of yours, the sows in the village are not willing to pair up with you. Qin Yanran is a woman with a fiery character, disliking people without mercy, and what she said is the big truth. Laugh? What are you laughing at? Everyone in the surroundings was trying to hold in their laughter, but they really couldn't help it. Qin Yan Yan was right. Li Han was relying on his father to be so arrogant in Longin City. Being poked in the sore spot by Qin Yan Yan, Li Han was furious, but he didn't dare to directly strike at Qin Yan Yan, so he could only spread his anger on Xiao Xingyu once again. 
Xiao Xingyu, if you're a man, don't hide behind a woman. Xiao Xingyu walked out from behind Xin Yanran, without the slightest bit of fear on his face, only the elegance and calmness of an older generation of artists between his hands and feet. Yang Li, there are people outside of people, and there are heavens outside of heaven. Don't think you can do whatever you want just because you have a good father. As if he had heard a big joke, Li Han hilariously laughed and raised his hand to point at Xiao Xingyu's nose. Ha ha ha, Xiao Xingyu ah Xiao Xingyu, if you are so humorous, why are you still a royal beast master? Isn't it good to go to the entertainment industry and become a clown harmonic star? First of all you have a sentence right, I just have a good father. My father Hurricane Guild President Li Jiangha. Secondly, I, Li Han, can do whatever I want in this part of Longin City? What can you do about it? Li Han's arrogant and uninhibited posture caused everyone present to resent. If not for the Hurricane Guild behind Li Han, this turtle grandson would have been beaten to death by the group. At this time, the butler Chin Fong walked quickly to Li Han's side, holding a picture in his hand. Young Li, this is the information our people just found out. Who is this chick in the photo? So pretty. Li Han stared at the silver-haired beauty on the photo and couldn't take his eyes off of her. Like a fierce beast in heat, this purple stunning chick is Xiao Xingyu's sister. Xiao Ruwa Xue. After Qian Feng finished speaking, he also handed Li Han a lewd look. Li Han thought for a moment and his smile gradually perverted. Xiao Xingyu, I didn't expect it. Your sister is very pretty. Xiao Xingyu, whose face was previously as calm as stopping water. His eyes erupted with intense killing intent. Li Han once again looked at Qin Yan Yan, smiling and flirting. Yan Yan, your nature is too strong. I can wait a little longer and leave the position of ninth ant to you. As for the eighth ant's position, leave it to your sister. Ha ha ha, Li Han laughed sardonically while picking up the photo and placing it on the tip of his nose to sniff it. Xiao Xingyu, through the photo, I seem to smell your sister's body odor. Li Han's every move showed the pervert's ugly heart to the fullest. The Hurricane Guild members clustered around Li Han laughed along with them. Snap, a clear and loud slap resounded throughout the entire Tianji building. Li Han fell to the ground, covering his red and swollen cheeks. The word dumbfounded written in his trembling pupils. Young lord, are you alright? The members of the Hurricane Guild rushed forward to assist. Xiao Xingyu, you dare to hit me? Li Han's eyes were filled with anger, and his facial muscles became more and more hideous due to his emotions. Xiao Xingyu was currently covered in a layer of terrifying aura that was unrecognizable to the naked eye. His head hung low, his eyes were covered by the bangs in front of his forehead, and no one could see his demeanor and expression. Li Han, if you dare to insult my sister one more time, I want you to live a life worse than death. Xiao Xingyu's words, the tone of each word was flat, but brought Li Han a soul-shattering pressure. Li Han did not want to lose face in front of the crowd, and stiffly rushed to Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu, my father is Li Jiangha, have the guts to hit me again to try. Snap, Xiao Xingyu, you, snap, F asterisk CK, pa 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 pa, outside the Tianji building. The crowd on the street stopped and looked up at the top floor of the Tianji building. This isn't a New Year's festival either. Why are the Sky Machine buildings setting off firecrackers? Listen to this popping sound. Firecracker's quality is really good. Where to buy? Also do not know whether the package. Not right ah. Firecrackers on firecrackers. How also mixed with killing pigs screaming. Tianji building top floor meeting place. The atmosphere was silent. Even a trace of wind passing through the lobby would fall into stasis. Xiao Xingyu stood in the center of the venue. Moving his sore wrists. Li Han stood right in front of Xiao Xingyu. At this moment, his face had swollen into a pig's head. His eyes looked as if he had been stung by a bee, and clearly visible slap marks crisscrossed his face. Cough. Li Han coughed violently, with a large amount of blood spilling out from the corner of his mouth. In the past 10 seconds, Xiao Xingyu had slapped Li Han a full 18 times. Each slap was powerful, steady and hard. Young Li, are you alright Young Li? Why is this face swollen like this? Ouch. Young Li, let's go to the hospital first. Li Han came out of his daze after a long time and yelled lowly. Mirror. Give me a mirror. Chen Feng raised his shivering hand and handed the mirror to Li Han. Li Han looked at himself in the mirror, as if he saw the pig's head that made offerings to the Taeyukai at the Qingming festival. Crackle. Li Han angrily slammed the mirror. His anger burned through the sky, and there were a few points of aggression in his hoarse voice. Xiao Xingyu, what gives you the right to hit me? Xiao Xingyu said blandly, just now, you were the one who said in person, let me try hitting you. To be honest, a request as perverted as this. I have never heard of it in my life. The crowd nodded their heads, testifying for Xiao Xingyu. Li Han's anger burned himself into confusion. I said that? Jian Feng smiled bitterly. Young lord, you did say it. Xiao Xingyu shook his tingling wrist and muttered. The gym teacher was right. 
The forces are mutual. Slapping my hand hurts. Xiao Xingyu provoked Li Han again, and Li Han's anger reached its peak. Xiao Xingyu, try hitting me again if you have the guts. Good. Xiao Xingyu once again swung his arm round to provide an acceleration to the slap. This time Li Han was afraid and hastily backed away, stumbling and planting his head. His wretched appearance was laughable. You told me to try. What are you hiding for? Xiao Xingyu, you special meow sick ah. I let you try you try ah. Family father Li Jiang ha ah. Li Han's mantra, family father Li Jiang ha. This mantra was Li Han's passport to rampaging through Dragon Hidden City all these years. Anyone who dared to go against Li Han would concede and bow their head once they heard this phrase. Only Xiao Xingyu treated this mantra as if it fell on deaf ears. Xiao Xingyu took an arrow step forward and grabbed Li Han's collar before anyone else could react. Don't say your father is Li Jiangha. Even if your father is a god or devil, as long as you dare to insult my sister, I will still beat you up. Slap. Xiao Xingyu slapped with all his strength. Li Han's body spun in the air for three and a half weeks, with a difficulty factor of five. Zero and crashed heavily into a side column, tears indisputably overflowing out of his eyes, wetting the bean shoes on his feet. Who is bullying my son? Outside the door of the venue, there came a mid-range baritone voice. Chen Feng assisted the starry-eyed Li Han, as if relieved, and shouted excitedly, President, you finally come. Tian Ji Building, top floor venue. The crowds of people poured in and surrounded the venue. These people were all wearing purple uniforms with the Hurricane Guild's totem symbol printed on their chests. Under the crowd's clusters and followers, a middle-aged man clad in a purple coat walked into the venue. The man had a worm-like wriggling hideous scar on his face and a cigar in his mouth. All of the guests revealed expressions of fear upon seeing this man, and involuntarily retreated towards the surrounding corners. This man with a full aura was the president of the Hurricane Guild, Li Jiangha. On Li Jiangha's chest, there were eight star badges, symbolizing the identity of an eight-star imperial beast master. Dad. Dad. Oh. Li Han was like a wounded dog that had found its master on a leash, turning all his grievances into tears. Where is my son? Li Jianha looked around and could only hear the sound of his son crying, but could not find his son's silhouette. Dad, I'm right in front of you ah dad. Only then did Li Jianha notice the person in front of him. At this time, Li Han's face had swollen into a pig's head and his eyes were only a slit. All thanks to Xiao Xingyu. It could only be said that Xiao Xingyu's hand was a bit heavy, beating Li Han to the point where he couldn't even recognize his own father. Are you chill? Dad, even if you can't recognize my appearance, you still can't recognize my voice? Woo woo. Li Han knelt in front of Li Jiangha, his arms tightly hugging Li Jiangha's thighs, sobbing uncontrollably. It's really honor. Li Jiangha reigned supreme for his entire life, bringing Hurricane Guild to the position of the number one guild in Dragon Hidden City. But he had problems with his kidney function. And although he had married more than a dozen wives, he only had one son at his knee. Li Han. Treating Li Han as his only son, Li Jiangha has always doted on him. No matter what mistakes Li Han made or what people he messed with, he would wipe his ass for the sun. This was also the reason why Li Han was infamous in Dragon Hidden City. Chill. Who in the world beat you up like this? Dad. It's him. Not only did he beat me up, he also threatened to say that even if you came, he wasn't afraid. Li Han pointed at Xiao Xingyu. His teeth were all about to be clenched, and a fiery burning sensation still lingered on the swollen side of his face. Xiao Xingyu raised his hand. Li Han reacted out of instinct, hiding behind Li Jiangha in fear, his red swollen face slightly pale. However, Xiao Xingyu raised his hand not to hit Li Han, but just brushed the ends of his hair and straightened the bangs in front of his forehead. Vague jeers came from the crowd. This Li Han was scared by Xiao Xingyu's beating. The other Xiao Xingyu just raised his hand and this guy was scared out of his wits. The dogs in our village are like this too. As soon as I squatted down and pretended to pick up a stone, the dogs wailed backward in fear. The surrounding people's comments and mockery seemed to be satirizing Li Han, but in reality, they were hitting Li Jiangha's face. Li Jiangha's face at the moment was as dark as nightfall. Kid, were you the one who bullied my son? Li Jiangha walked up to Xiao Xingyu, the pressure of an eight-star imperial beast master enveloping the entire venue. Qin Yan Yan stood up for Xiao Xingyu. President Li, it was your son who picked a fight first, and it was my brother who beat him up. Miss Qin, on account of your father being Qin Longyue, I won't hold you accountable. Get out of the way. Cold sweat broke out on Qin Yan Yan's forehead, her heart beating straight. Now that Qin Longyue was not in Longyin City, if Li Jiangha insisted on taking revenge on Xiao Xingyu for Li Han, Qin Yan Yan could not stop her at all. Zhang Xuelua stood on the side and witnessed everything. She delayed stepping in to help Xiao Xingyu and had other plans within her heart. Xian Feng, who was the steward of the Hurricane Guild, came to Li Jiangha's side and whispered to explain how the whole thing happened, while handing Li Jiangha an information sheet. 
On the information sheet, Xiao Xingyu's background information was recorded. Xiao Xingyu has just led the Green Dragon Academy and won the Supernova Competition Championship. Li Jianha read the first few lines of the information sheet before throwing it away and crushing it with his leather shoes. Xiao Xingyu, judging from your resume, it's a rare genius, but if you dare to hurt my son, I'm going to teach you to behave. Li Jianha looked towards the wailing Li Han and asked, Han Er, which hand did Xiao Xingyu use to hit you just now? Li Han wailed, right hand, he hit me with his right hand. Li Jianha swept a glance at Xiao Xingyu's right hand and ordered, someone come, waste this kid's right hand. The members of the Hurricane Guild swarmed up, each with a ferocious face. Qin Yanyan was anxious and once again blocked in front of Xiao Xingyu. Presidently, he's not only my brother, he's also our Tsong Dome Guild's special pharmacist. If you dare to touch our Tsong Dome Guild's special hired apothecary, you are declaring war with the Tsong Dome Guild. Li Jianha was silent. He didn't dare to tear his face off with the Tsong Dome Guild right now. Although the Hurricane Guild ranked first in Dragon Hidden City and the Tsong Dome Guild ranked second, as long as he tore his face off, Li Jianha wasn't sure of annexing the Tsong Dome Guild, and there was even the risk of self-destruction. This kid is your Tsong Dome Guild special pharmacist right, but the matter of him injuring my son can't just be forgotten. President Li, what else do you want? Miss Qin, as far as I know, President Qin is currently not in Dragon Hidden City, right? Li Jianha's words hit the nail on the head. Qin Yanyan was dumbfounded as a heartfelt expression surfaced on her face. Since President Qin is away, then it would make sense for me to teach the special appointed apothecary who doesn't know the heights of heaven a lesson on behalf of President Qin, wouldn't it? Li Jianghe's intentions were obvious. Taking advantage of Qin Longyue's absence from Longing City, he utilized his power to strike out at Xiao Xingyu, and Qin Yan Yan couldn't do anything about it. What are all frozen for? Waste his right hand as a lesson for President Qin. As things stood, Xiao Xingyu was in a desperate situation. Zhang Shuelua was watching from the sidelines. Qin Yan Yan had done her best and no one could bail him out. Even so, Xiao Xingyu's face did not have a trace of panic, only endless calm. Splat! Xiao Xingyu's body shook and a token fell out of his pocket, landing at Li Zhenghe's feet. Oops, sorry, I dropped something. Xiao Xingyu pretended to be surprised with poor acting skills. Li Zhenghe looked down and his face instantly turned pale. The 8-star royal beast master, the president of the Hurricane Guild, suddenly had his legs go weak, and his eyes were filled with panic and fear. Come together. My father has given the word. Go waste Xiao Xingyu's right hand. Li Han hadn't realized the severity of the problem and screamed hysterically. All stop. Li Jiangha roared. The members of the Hurricane Guild all froze in place, staring at each other. All stand down. The president had ordered. So even if these guild members were confused in a hundred ways, they had no choice but to do as they were told and retreated. In the next second, Li Jiangha made a move that stunned the entire audience. He slowly crouched down, kneeled on one knee and picked up the token that Xiao Xingyu had dropped with both hands. After getting up, Li Jianha carefully held the token, his mouth blowing to blow off the dust on the token, with nothing but cold sweat on his face but a believer-like devotion. Exclamations of surprise came from the crowd. Emperor Emperor's Soul Order? Dragon Head Totem on the front. Phoenix Tail Texture on the back. Crap, it's really an Emperor's Soul Order. Once the Emperor's Soul comes out, who will compete with it? As we all know, in the power system of the entire Dragon Kingdom, Military Master Xie Zhong, the four sides of the Imperial King, and the three great generals who respectively lead the sea, land, and air armies, these powerhouses are the most capable ministers beside Shang Wan Lan, and are also the weight of the country. However, these great men were not the people that Empress Shang Wan Lan trusted the most. Even Shang Wan Lan has to take out all kinds of means through the Emperor's art, explicitly and implicitly, to balance the power between these big shots so as to ensure that he sits steadily in the only chair of the ruler of the Dragon Kingdom. If the power of the three great generals is getting bigger and bigger, Shang Wan Lan will weaken the military power of the three great generals. If the military advisor meddles in the affairs of state more and more frequently, Shang Wan Lan will also use the way of the smile hidden dagger to hammer on him. As for the four imperial kings, Shang Wan Lan will also convene these four mysterious big brothers from time to time. In the Night Lan Palace a gathering, as a warning, from this point of view, these powerful people are just swords in Shang Wan Lan's hands, usually the sharp tip of the sword pointing at the enemy, but the moment the blade is reversed, it may also hurt themselves. Therefore, Shang Wan Lan did not have absolute trust in these people. Looking at the entire Dragon Kingdom, the only organization that could gain Shang Wan Lan's absolute trust was the Imperial Soul. Every silver priest of the Imperial Soul, and even the leader of the Imperial Soul, the High Priest of the Black Noon, were all in Shang Wan Lan's inner circle equivalent to the emperor's side dead guards, 
Every member of the Imperial Soul would wear the Imperial Soul Order. There was an unwritten rule within the Dragon Kingdom that seeing the Imperial Soul Order was like seeing a female emperor. Tian Ji Building. Top Floor Venue. After the crowd recognized the Emperor's Soul Order, without exception, all of them knelt down on one knee, with their right hand clenched in a fist and placed at the heart position, with awe and devotion written all over their faces, as if the Dragon Country's female emperor Shang Wanlan was right in front of them. Li Junha's hands were dedicated to God's Soul Order. His cold sweat had soaked through his clothes, and the trepidation in his eyes was like haunted ghosts that fluttered about. President Li, thank you for helping me pick it up. Priest Xiao, what are you talking about? I should. It's all what I should do. The hallowed Hurricane Guild President. A segment as high as an 8-star Imperial Beastmaster. At this moment was behaving coyly in front of a 19-year-old teenager. The arc of his bending over was even more exaggerated than the years of wheat in the fall. Xiao Xingyu was so playful that he was just about to take the Imperial Soul Order in Li Zhengha's hand when he suddenly let go. Splat. The Emperor's Soul Order fell to the ground again. Aya. Uh, sorry. Li I didn't hold it steady. The Emperor's Soul Order fell to the ground. And Li Zhengha was so scared that his face was whiter than a corpse in the morgue. Hurriedly squatting down to pick it up. His voice trembling from panic. No. 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 Not on you. On me. On me for not holding it steady. This time. Li Jiangha had a long memory, and presented the Emperor's Soul Order with both hands, holding it directly in front of Xiao Xingyu, not daring to slack off in the slightest. Emperor's Soul Order is just a token. Even its material is ordinary quartz stone. Its own value is not even enough to eat a hot pot. But the significance that the word Imperial Soul gave to this token could not be measured in monetary terms. The Emperor's Soul Organization is the forbidden army cultivated by Shang Wanlan, and seeing the Emperor's Soul Order is like seeing the Empress which is the real value of this token. Not to mention that Li Jiangha was the president of the Hurricane Guild. It was the three great generals of the sea, land and air, even the military division Xie Zhong, who would have to smile when they saw the holder of the Imperial Soul Order. Dad, what are you up to? Why are you nodding to Xiao Xingyu? Quickly order to get him killed. The only fool in the entire crowd of crowds stood out and barked, appearing particularly raucous. Li Jiangha twisted his neck and looked at Li Han with eyes that burned red. Dad. What kind of expression is this, asshole? Snap. After a loud, crisp sound, Li Han fell to the ground, covering his already swollen face as tears came out of his eyes. A few teeth were scattered on the ground, and Li Han's speech leaked. Dad, why are you hitting me, unworthy dog? Dare to disrespect Priest Xiao. Are you tired of living? Dad, how can you speak for outsiders? I am your son. I don't have an extremely stupid son like you. Li Han froze. He then realized that his father was not right forcing himself to hold back his anger and aggression, bowing his head and shutting up. Li Jianha took a deep breath and forced a smile in front of Xiao Xingyu. Priest Xiao, it is our Hurricane Guild's fault for sweeping your fun today. In order to show our sincerity in apologizing, we are willing to pay up an auction off the other lots and give them to you. The remaining lots of this auction were worth more than two to three hundred million dollars combined. And how much sincerity Li Jianha had showed how much he was afraid of the word imperial soul. I'm not interested in money. When Xiao Xingyu said this, John Shuelua on the side couldn't help but laugh. Boss Jiang, what are you laughing at? Ahem, Mr. Xiao, I'm professionally trained. I usually don't laugh unless I can't help it. Xiao Xingyu walked to Li Jiangha and raised his hand on the other party's shoulder. Li Jiangha's shoulders sank and his legs trembled in fear. To be able to make an 8-star Imperial Beast Master lose his mind in front of a 2-star Imperial Beast Master. It was evident how terrifying the deterrent power of the Imperial Soul Order was. President Li, since you admit that you were wrong and want to apologize, then the way to apologize would have to be chosen by me, wouldn't it? Li Jiangha smiled fawningly. Yes yes yes. Priest Xiao, how do you want us to apologize? Xiao Xingyu's smile froze, his icy sight bypassing Li Jiangha and locking onto Li Han, who was covering his face and whimpering. I will break his arm. For a moment, the surroundings were silent. It was as if all the oxygen in the venue was drained away by Xiao Xingyu's sentence, and everyone felt a strong sense of suffocation their chests tightening, and their legs and feet weakening. Xiao Xingyu, what are you talking about? I, I'm warning you, don't mess around. Li Han was scared out of his wits, frantically backing away, but losing his ability to walk due to fear, he fell to the ground with a plop, unable to crawl. When it came to his son's problem, Li Jiangha, as his father, had to step forward. Priest Xiao, calm down, Han's son is not guilty of this. Not guilty to this? He verbally insulted my two sisters and even threatened to break my right arm. This is not too much for me to ask. Xiao Xingyu emphasized love and justice. Whether it was Xiao Ruashiwei or Qin Yanran, they were all relatives in his eyes. 
When Li Han verbally insulted Xiao Ruoxue and Qin Yinyin, Xiao Xingyu had already had the intention to kill, only not wanting to make a big deal out of it, he gave Li Han a life, but he had to be given a lesson in blood. Priest Xiao, President Li doesn't have to plead for mercy, either your son breaks his arm or suffer the consequences. Xiao Xingyu changed his usual image of a sunny and cheerful big boy. At this moment, he was like a fierce beast that had broken out of its cage, forcing Li Jianghe to have no way to retreat. Li Jianghe was silent for less than three seconds and made an immediate decision. Incoming. Several members of the Hurricane Guild dragged the limp and crying Li Han to Li Jianghe. Dad. I'm your own son. I'm the only son you have. Dad. Dad. In the future, you have to rely on me to inherit the family business. If I break my arm, won't it be? Li Jianghe picked up an iron rod and smashed down hard towards Li Han's right arm. Sharp pain hit his entire body, and a pig-killing scream resounded through the venue. Everyone closed their eyes, not daring to look at such a cruel scene. Li Jianghe did not have the slightest reservation with this stick. Li Han crushed his right arm on the spot and fainted from the pain. Li Jianghe's eyes flashed with a touch of heartache, and his blood-filled eyes looked at Xiao Xingyu. Priest Xiao, are you satisfied with the sincerity of our apology this time? Xiao Xingyu nodded. Then my son. Xiao Xingyu nodded again. Li Jianghe breathed a long sigh of relief and commanded, Thank you Priest Xiao for your high honor. Someone, send him to the hospital. Several Hurricane Guild members dragged away the unconscious Li Han. Li Jianghe could not harbor any grudges or resentment towards Xiao Xingyu in his heart at this moment. He even felt grateful. Fortunately, Xiao Xingyu just want Li Han to break his arm to calm the anger. If Xiao Xingyu must pursue, the entire Hurricane Guild will suffer. In the Dragon Kingdom, you can mess with anyone, but don't mess with the Imperial Soul. Under the watchful eyes of the melon-eating crowd, Li Jianghe bent over and apologized to Xiao Xingyu with a smiling face. Priest Xiao, you should feel the sincerity of our apology. Don't worry, I will definitely discipline my unintelligent son severely back home. So you see, Xiao Xingyu smiled faintly. Roll. Li Jianghe didn't have any temper at all. When he heard the word roll, he instead felt relieved, and the heavy stone in his chest instantly fell to the ground. The members of Hurricane Guild were also relieved and turned to run towards the door. Li Jianghe hurriedly shouted, You bunch of losers, didn't you understand Priest Zhao's words? All the guild members stopped in their tracks, and all of them had a heart to heart as they simultaneously fell to the ground, curled up into a ball, and rolled towards the door. Even Li Jianghe, a powerful big shot, crouched down in front of the public and honestly left the Tianji building in a forward roll. After all the people from the Hurricane Guild left, the atmosphere of the venue became even colder and stiffer. All the guests held their breath, not daring to breathe. Although these guests were all prominent figures in Dragon Hidden City, they weren't even worthy of lifting Li Jianghe's shoes, and Li Jianghe was nothing in front of Xiao Xingyu, constrained by the intimidating power of the Emperor's Soul Order. Every guest's face turned pale and their legs trembled. Some guests with poor resistance to pressure even peed their pants, and the faint smell of urine gradually spread. Xiao Xingyu put away the Emperor's Soul Order and looked around, his lazy eyes sweeping over the guests. Do you guys want to live? Everyone nodded their heads violently like chickens pecking at rice, since you want to live, then what to do next, you should all understand, right, smart people spoke to smart people, Xiao Xingyu didn't need to say much, and the entire audience of guests already understood, who is Xiao Xingyu, I haven't seen it before, an auction, where is there an auction, never heard of it, someone broke their arm, I don't know, imperial soul order, never seen it, it's a nice day today, let's go, let's drink, the guests retreated one after another, and everyone coincidentally chose to forget about everything that happened within the Tianji building this night. The Imperial Soul Organization was the forbidden army beside the Empress Shang Lan, the Emperor's Soul Order and the holder of the Emperor's Soul Order, no matter where they appeared, meant that they were on a confidential mission. That was why there was an unwritten rule in the Dragon Kingdom. Seeing the Emperor's Soul Order is like seeing the Empress, and seeing the Emperor's Soul Person is like never having met. The meaning of this sentence is as literal as that. The Emperor's Soul Order has the intimidating power of the Empress herself, and anyone who meets the Emperor's Soul Organization has to pretend that they have never met before. It was because of this unwritten rule that all the guests, to forget everything they heard and heard and saw this night in the Tianji building, in order to save their lives, even if they couldn't forget, they had to rot this matter in their stomachs. By now, only Xiao Xingyu and Qin Yinyin, as well as Zhang Xuelua remained in the meeting place, the night outside the window was as heavy as water, the moonlight was bright as if nothing had happened, not even a ripple aftermath could be seen, Sister Yen Ran, your jaw is dislocated, Qin Yin Yen's expression at this moment could be described as dumbstruck, her jaw was about to drop in shock, after a long time of slowing down, 
Xin Yan Yan pulled Xiao Xing Yu's hand. Brother Xing Yu, how did you get the Emperor's Soul Order in your hand? Where did you steal it from? This thing can't be stolen. Qin Yan Ran looked alarmed. After all, stealing the Emperor's Soul Order was a capital offense. There was even a moment when Qin Yan Yan thought about how to collect Xiao Xing Yu's corpse. Sister Yan Yan, where are you thinking? This Emperor's Soul Order was given to me by the Empress Lord herself. The Empress, personally, gave it to you? Qin Yan Yan could not believe her ears. Xiao Xingyu shrugged his shoulders and laughed helplessly. I'm telling the truth. If you don't believe me, there's nothing I can do. Time went back to that night. Xiao Xingyu was summoned by Shang Wanlan and the two of them met at the Nightlan Palace. After talking to each other, Xiao Xingyu promised to be willing to be Shang Wanlan's person and serve Shang Wanlan forever. Before leaving the Nightlan Palace, Shang Wanlan called out to Xiao Xingyu and stuffed this Emperor's Soul Order into Xiao Xingyu's pocket. Lord Empress, what are you doing here? Xiao Xingyu was filled with doubt. Reaching the segment level of 7 star Imperial Beast Master is one of the necessary conditions to become a member of the Imperial Soul. Although you don't meet the standard, this Emperor has decided to first bestow the Imperial Soul Order, which symbolizes the identity of the Imperial Soul. To you, your kid has a clean identity background, which is beneficial to me, but is a flaw for yourself. The Emperor's Soul Order will remove the obstacles for you, and ensure that you get through your academy career in peace. This was Shang Wanlan's small mind. Thank you. Lord Empress, for granting the order, Xiao Xingyu, I am present. I hope that the next time you step into the Nightlan Palace, it will be as a full member of the Imperial Soul. Appearing in front of this emperor, Shang Wanlan was always like this, using the most bland tone to speak extremely penetrating words. These words, if translated, could be summarized in five simple words. I'm waiting for you here. Shang Wanlan was waiting. She was waiting for Xiao Xingyu to grow. She had inexplicable expectations for this teenager. She hoped that this teenager would one day become the sharpest sword in her hands. Mr. Xiao, I didn't expect you to be the red man beside Lord Empress. No, it's my slip of the tongue. I should honor you with the title of Priest Xiao. Zhang Xuelua treated Xiao Xingyu with more respect and admiration. Boss Jiang, we are friends. Don't get so raw because of the Emperor's Soul Order. If you really take me as a friend, call me Mi Shui Ro directly in the future. Is it possible? Zhang Xuelua was the number one classical beauty in Longin City and the line of young talents who wanted to kiss her could circle around Dragon Lake. At this moment, Jiang Xuelua stood in front of Xiao Xingyu, a pair of talking eyes blinking and blinking, as if two pools of spring water, moistening things silently. Xiao Xingyu took the initiative to extend his hand. Xue Ro, then I call you. Xingyu, it's good if you like it. Qin Yanran almost exploded. Brother Xingyu, why are you holding someone else's girl's hand so tightly? Loosen it for me. Qin Yanran was jealous and pulled Xiao Xingyu aside. Shua Ro, today's matter. Don't worry, the memories of tonight, I've thrown them all into the trash. I only remember you. Xiao Xingyu, are my Jiang Xuelua's best friend at first sight. As for what Emperor's Soul Order, I've never seen it. Shua Ro, goodbye. Xiao Xingyu and Qin Yanyan left the Tianji building. Jiang Xuelua was the only one left in the venue. The cell phone rang. Jiang Xuelua stood by the window and picked up the phone while looking at the street below. Qin Yan Yan held Xiao Xingyu's hand as the two siblings strolled down the street. From this viewpoint, Zhang Xuelua could see Xiao Xingyu's back as he gradually walked away. Hey, blowing snow, have you seen our young master? Saw him, he's more mature and stable than I thought. Phantom, seriously, he's really grown up. The young lord is not yet fully fledged. The stronghold of Longin City, you're the only one. You're responsible for protecting him. Zhang Xuelua pursed her lips and smiled bitterly. This kid has the Emperor's Soul Order in his hand and needs me to protect him? Imperial Soul Order? Young Lord actually got involved with Shang Wanlan. Let's not chat for now. I'll protect him. Hang up. Zhang Xuelua hung up the phone and leaned on the windowsill, watching Xiao Xingyu's back disappear at the end of her sight. Brother Xingyu, what happened to you? The street corner. Xiao Xingyu suddenly stopped and turned to look at the Tianji building, because the distance was too far. The outline of the Tianji building was petite and blurred, like a grain of rice corn. Jiang Xuelua, what exactly are you? Xiao Xingyu could feel the fine details that normal people could not feel. The moment the Emperor's Soul Order appeared, all the guests, even Qin Yanran, were in a state of shock, or rather fear. But on this night, Jiang Xuelua, as the witness of the whole thing, never had the slightest bit of shock or fear on her face, which was out of character. Thunder rumbled and storms were coming. Brother Xingyu, it's going to change, let's go. Aha, Hurricane Sanatorium. This was a private sanatorium under the Hurricane Guild, and it was home to dozens of highly skilled internal and external surgeons. On weekdays, 
When members of the Hurricane Guild went out on missions, it was inevitable that they would be injured, especially when carrying out missions that were more difficult than A rank or above. It was already fortunate that they were missing arms and legs, but no matter how badly injured they were, as long as there was still a breath in them, the doctors of the Hurricane Sanatorium would be able to save the day. In the hospital room, Li Han was lying on the bed, his body was full of catheters connected to various medical devices, and his right arm was wrapped in heavy gauze. Li Jianha walked into the hospital room. President, how is my son doing? I'm sorry, Chairman. The young master's life is not in danger, but his right arm experienced a comminuted fracture that will leave him with a lifelong disability. Li Jianha's heart was like a strangling pain, and his eyes misted up as he looked at his son on the hospital bed. Regardless of the circumstances at Tianji building at that time, the fact was that this father, with his own hands, had broken his son's right arm. Hearing Li Jianha's voice, Li Han slowly opened his eyes, his hoarse voice filled with endless grievances. Dad, Li Jiangha commanded, you guys go down first. All the doctors and nurses left the ward, leaving father and son alone. Li Jiangha came to the bedside and sighed with his head bowed. This originally spirited Hurricane Guild president seemed to have aged a dozen years overnight, and his hands were shaking as he served water. Hanur, you've suffered. Dad, I'm your own son. You actually broke my arm for that outsider shouting you. It was obvious that this foppish young master, whose IQ was too low, had yet to realize the seriousness of the problem. Li Jianha had to get serious and said in a deep voice, Do you know what Xiao Xingyu is? Isn't he the one who won the supernova competition? Just a two-star royal beast master. I'm at least a four-star royal beast master. I can crush him with one hand. Li Han's eyes were bloodshot. His body was weak, but he still talked tough. You're really a no-good thing ah. I Li Jiangha step by step. It's not easy to bring the Hurricane Guild to this height, but I gave birth to such a foolish and ignorant son like you. Once again being counted down by his father, Li Han was like a deflated leather ball. Dad, what exactly is the Emperor's Soul Order? And why are you afraid of a token? I'm too lazy to explain too much to you. You just need to remember one thing. The holder of the Emperor's Soul Order. The one who backs it up must be the Empress Lord. Li Han was stunned as the pain from his wounds intensified. His face pale and twisted as a result. Chill. We should be thankful that Xiao Xingyu didn't pursue us. If he had to make a big deal out of today's matter. Not to mention one of your arms. Even our father and son's heads would not be saved. Li Han bit through his lips. Looking at his right arm that did not have any sensation. The anger within him still could not be calmed. Dad. Could it be that this arm of mine? Is just broken for nothing? Fool. At this point in time. Do you still want to take revenge? My old man made it very clear. Xiao Xingyu is the Empress person. If you dare to touch him, you're dead. Dad, but I can't swallow. Don't say you can't swallow this. Even if Xiao Xingyu shoves a pile of shit into your mouth, you still have to swallow it. Understand. Li Jianha's tough attitude is enough to prove that he can come to today, relying not only on strength, but also on eye power. After tonight's farce, Li Jianha could see very clearly that in Longin City, messing with anyone would be fine. Just can't mess with Xiao Xingyu. Chill. Breaking an arm is just a matter of breaking an arm. At least your life is saved. Listen to dad. In the future, when you see Xiao Xingyu, take a detour and don't have the slightest intention to retaliate. If you have to go against Xiao Xingyu, then we will sever our father-son relationship. Hearing these words, Li Han's eyes widened. The anger building up in his pupils turning into confusion. Dad. Why? I have to take revenge. Why? You still have the face to ask why. You pitiful thing. I don't want to destroy the foundation I fought for decades because of you. The Hurricane Guild was Li Jiangha's life. If he had to make a trade-off, Li Jiangha would only choose the Hurricane Guild, not a waste of a son who didn't know how to assess the situation. You take a good rest. I still have to deal with the things of the Guild. By the way, to remind you one last goodbye, don't mess with that big Buddha Xiaoxingyu. Our family's background can't afford to mess with others. After Li Jiangha left the hospital room, Li Han's emotions erupted. His left hand clenched his fist and pounded the bed. Xiao Xingyu, it's all your fault. Because of you, I broke my right arm and became a cripple. Because of you, I lost my value in my father's eyes. Li Han was a typical person with little ability and a lot of resentment. He couldn't swallow this breath. This revenge, I must avenge. Once he thought of Li Jiangha's scorn for the Emperor's soul order, Li Han still calmed down. After thinking about it, Li Han revealed a sinister smile and dialed the phone, pretending to sob. Hello? Third uncle? It's been a long time. Oof. Third uncle ah. I've been beaten up. My right arm is broken. The way Li Han thought of to take revenge was to kill someone with a borrowed knife. At this moment, Li Jianha hadn't realized that he was going to be pitted by his own son to the point of losing his family. The family apartment downstairs. 
Sister Yen Ran, just send it here. Brother Xing Yu, I, Xiao Xing Yu would smile. You want to ask me about my imperial soul order? How did it come about? Aha! Lord Empress appreciates me. She wants me to join the imperial soul and become a silver priest after I graduate from the Green Dragon Academy. Xin Yen Ran's expression was dull, worry building up between her brows. Brother Xing Yu, if you join the imperial soul after graduation, then we, don't worry. I told Lord Empress that even if you join the Imperial Soul, you'll still be able to work part-time as a special pharmacist for the Tsong Dong Guild. Qin Yin Yan was ecstatic and excitedly embraced the teenager in front of her. Great, really great. Sister Yen Yan, you're strangling me. Cough cough. The Imperial Soul was Shang Wan Lan's inner circle, an organization that carried out secret missions. Any member of the Imperial Soul had multiple identities outside, as a way to facilitate intelligence gathering, covert reconnaissance, and so on. So Shang Wan Lan wouldn't mind Xiao Xing Yu having other identities besides being a member of the Imperial Soul. Instead, he even supported Xiao Xing Yu to create more identities. Brother Xing Yu, you're truly amazing. Currently only a two-star segment. And Lord Empress made an exception and granted you an Imperial Soul Order. Sister Yen Yu, keep a low profile. It's just a basic operation. It's not impressive to talk about. Tell Sis, what exactly is the Emperor Soul Organization like? Is there any gossip? I don't know much about it. I only know that the leader of the Emperor's Soul Organization, the one and only High Priest of the Black All Night is very powerful. Legend has it that he has more than 100 identities within the Dragon Kingdom. A god and a dragon. Night Lan Palace. The snowflakes outside the window drifted into the hall and landed on the desk. Shang Wan Lan put down the state affairs documents in his hands and rested his cheek with one hand. Witnessing the entire process of the snowflakes melting. Report. A masked man clad in silver robes walked into the Night Lan Palace. He was one of the members of the Imperial Soul Organization. Lord Empress, the latest news about Xiao Xingyu. He clashed with the Hurricane Guild's people at the Tianji building and used the Emperor's Soul Order once. Shang Wan Lan raised his eyes, the corners of his lips curling up into a smile if nothing else. Oh, the life-preserving talisman given by this Emperor. This kid used it so quickly. It doesn't fit his character. According to the investigation, Hurricane Guild's young master, Li Han, verbally humiliated Xiao Xingyu's sister. Xiao Ruashu eh, that's why. Shang Wan Lan narrowed his eyes. Xiao Xing Yu, it seems like you and I are the same. There are scales on our bodies that no one else can touch. Brother, get up. Big lazy pig, get up. Brother, Xiao Xing Yu was sleeping soundly when he suddenly felt a softness pressing on him. Meng Meng? Xiao Xing Yu woke up, rubbed his sleepy eyes and realized that Yi Shi Meng was sitting on his abs. Yi Shi Meng was wearing pink pajamas and a cute nightcap. Her face was full of collagen when she smiled and she was worthy of being the ultimate lowly. Meng Meng, what are you doing writing on me? Brother, the sun is going to shine on your butt. It's time to get up and eat breakfast. Xiao Xing Yu was nestled in the quilt with a lazy demeanor. It's the weekend. Let brother sleep a little longer. In the living room, Xiao Ruash Yu's voice came. Xiao Yu, hurry up and get up. The soy milk is getting cold. 10 o'clock in the morning. The family sat at the dining table. Xiao Xing Yu had a donut in his mouth and his right hand received a peeled poached egg from Xiao Ruashiwa's hand. Xiao Yu, eat one more egg to replenish your nutrition. Got it. Meng Meng, you also eat one more. It's the time to grow your body. Thank you Sister Ruashiwa. Although the family apartment was not considered a mansion, and the decoration was also very simple. As long as the family of three got together, it looked extraordinarily cozy. After this period of time, Yi Shi Meng, a foreigner, had already fully integrated into this family. Whether it was Xiao Ruashiwei or Xiao Xingyu, they all spoiled her as if she was their own sister. Sis, I'm full. Xiao Yu, it's snowing outside. Where are you going? I'm going for extra practice. I'll be back before dark. Weekends were the students' rest time. In the dormitory of Qinglong Academy, everyone was playing games or sleeping. Xiao Xingyu didn't want to waste his time. He chose to increase his training in the snowy suburban forest. Deep in the snow-covered forest. The thinly clothed Xiao Xingyu catalyzed his spiritual energy. Freya, the holy light cross chopped just now. It was powerful enough, but not precise enough. Do it again. No, no, no. The rhythm of this combo is wrong. Do it again. Freya, work hard again. Re-release the light wing impact once more. Pay attention to the timing of the release. Good job. Freya, in the icy sky and snow, those magical beasts with thick skin and flesh were unwilling to come out to forage for food and all of them chose to hibernate in the caves. Only Xiao Xingyu and the holy light angelic beasts, sweating in the snowflakes, practiced various complicated coordination over and over again to improve their battle tacit understanding. Freya, 
It's time to take a rest. Xiao Xingyu searched for a cave, collected firewood, and then summoned the Hell Spectral Wolf. Black Striker, build a fire. Ow. The Hell Spectral Wolf spat out a mouthful of breath. The firewood burned, and the firelight illuminated the cave. The holy light angelic beast sat beside Xiao Xingyu. Its stunningly beautiful features more three-dimensional under the firelight. One was a holy angel, and the other was a demon with demonic power. These two imperial beasts would become Xiao Xingyu's right and left arms in the future. As for the nine-tailed dragon fox Dai Lu, and the heavenly tribulation ghost python Medusa, they would be the black-robed man's right-hand man. Chirp! A small rabbit jumped on top of the hell's ghost wolf's head. This was that new imperial beast Xiao Xingyu had contracted in the Tsong Lei mountain range. The mutant species electric ear rabbit. Don't look at the fact that the electric ear rabbit had a poor talent and didn't have any combat ability, but it was able to help a friendly army refresh its moves three times in an instant. Based on this, the electric hare is the world's most promising auxiliary imperial beast. Even under certain circumstances, the electric hare was able to turn the tide of battle and help a building fall. The relationship between the hell's underworld wolf and the electric eared rabbit was very good. Although there was a big difference in size, it didn't affect each other being friends. The electric eared rabbit climbed up to the ears of the hell specter wolf and helped to tickle it. The hell spectral wolf lay on the ground, eyes closed, with a face of enjoyment. In a few days, the midterm exams will begin. Before the exams, Freya, I intend to let you break through for promotion. Xiao Xingyu opened his spatial ring and extracted a magical beast crystal core that shimmered with golden light. This was the holy light attribute magical beast crystal core that Xiao Xingyu had obtained at the Tianji Lu auction without spending a penny. A gift from Zhang Xu Eluwa. Both the Hell Spectral Wolf and the Electric Eared Rabbit were attracted by this magical beast crystal core and came over to sniff it. This was because in addition to the holy light attribute, there was also a special power hidden in this magical beast crystal core. The power of the stars. Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god. The Holy Light Angel Beast's data panel came into view. Currently, Freya's strength is at the initial body, second order. Theoretically, there is a possibility of breakthrough promotion only after the rank of the Imperial Beast reaches the initial body, third order. It's a good thing that the star power is hidden in this magical beast's crystal core. So if we're lucky, it can help Freya to directly cross the third rank and breakthrough to promote to the mature body for a royal beast master. While talent and strength were important, hardiness was also important. Xiao Xingyu's hardiness could be summarized in four words, bold and careful. There was a certain amount of risk involved in allowing a royal beast to attempt a cross-stage breakthrough promotion. The fact that Xiao Xingyu dared to try it was enough to show his boldness. At the same time, Xiao Xingyu had prepared the vein protecting grass and heart strengthening pill in advance to ensure the safety of the holy light angelic beast. This was being meticulous. Freya, follow me. The holy light angelic beast followed behind Xiao Xingyu to the center of the snowy ground outside the cave. The snow was as heavy as goose feathers, spilling out and falling on the holy light feathered wings, instantly purifying and disappearing. The angelic royal beasts were more humane than the orsish royal beasts. Before Xiao Xingyu could say anything, the holy light angelic beast had already knelt on one knee in front of Xiao Xingyu and opened its delicate lips. Freya, after taking this magical beast crystal core, you may experience physical discomfort. Hold on. Of course, if you really can't hold on, just use your finger to draw a circle on the snow. I will stop releasing spiritual energy and interrupt this breakthrough. The holy light angelic beast gently nodded its head. A pair of beautiful eyes filled with trust in Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu stuffed the magical beast crystal core into the holy light angelic beast's mouth. And out of concern, fed the pulse protecting grass and heart strengthening pill in. The pulse protecting grass and heart strengthening pill were both high grade tonics that were expensive. Almost emptying Xiao Xingyu's wallet. Freya, are you ready? The holy light angel beast flapped its wings indicating that it was ready. Then it's time to start. Xiao Xingyu catalyzed his spiritual energy, and the one person and one beast had a heart to heart. With Xiao Xingyu's roar, the energy of the magical beast's crystal core exploded within the holy light angelic beast. How to absorb this energy was the key to whether or not the holy light angelic beast could successfully cross-stage breakthrough promotion. Sharp pain came, and the holy light angelic beast lifted up into the air, its wings opening and closing, revealing a pained expression. Boom. Thud. Clang! The magical beast's crystal core contained rich star power. The holy light angel beast had difficulty absorbing it, and its body experienced intense discomfort as it rampaged through the woods. As one ancient sky-high tree after another collapsed, the woods were a mess. The holy light angelic beast fell to the ground from a high altitude, its body covered in scars. The snow-white skin gradually tore apart, the cracks overflowing with star power that could not be absorbed and digested. Plop! The holy light angelic beast fell to both knees. The color of the holy light feathers behind it dimmed, 
and it became increasingly difficult to breathe. Blood overflowed from the eye sockets, ears, nostrils and other parts of the body, staining the snow. Xiao Xingyu had a heartbroken look on his face and roared in a low voice. Freya, if you really can't hold on, just do as I say. As long as the holy light angelic beast drew a circle in the snow with its finger, Xiao Xingyu would not have any hesitation and would definitely stop releasing spiritual energy immediately to interrupt this breakthrough. But once the breakthrough was interrupted, that one holy light attribute magical beast crystal core that hid the power of the stars would be completely wasted. Right now Xiao Xingyu couldn't care about that much. He only cared about the safety of the holy light angel beast. Right at this moment, the pain and pressure Freya had endured reached its limit, and her body was already crippled. She raised her trembling fingers and stuck them in the snow. Xiao Xingyu thought that she was going to start drawing circles, so he planned to just collect his spiritual energy. Freya, you, in the next second. Xiao Xingyu's pupils tightened and his soul was greatly shaken. Freya's fingers, instead of drawing circles in the snow, wrote down three words, I can. These three words, crooked and even a little ugly, were even more green than the handwriting of an elementary school student. Freya, Xiao Xingyu's eyes moistened and froze in the snow, gazing at her fondly. The holy light angelic beast lifted her head, her face covered in blood was still stunningly beautiful, and her eyes were still so clear. She will never forget. She was once just a spurned elf, only worthy of being sold to the rich and powerful, as a slave for pleasure. It was Xiao Xingyu's appearance that gave her the opportunity to be reborn, allowing her to transform into an angel of noble bloodline. The entire forest was as icy as jade, and the shadows of the trees swayed in the snow. Blood dripped down the fingertips of the born holy light angelic beast, and the warm blood melted the snow covers on the ground. The blood flowing in the body of the angelic royal beasts was the same as that of humans. All of it was bright red in color. At this moment the holy light angelic beast was at the borderline between life and death. As long as it took one step forward it could break through to promotion. If it took one step back it would fall into the abyss of doom. The tonic medicine that Xiao Xingyu had spent a large amount of money on had a minimal effect. The pain that the holy light angelic beast was enduring had already surpassed its physical limits. Every inch of her body showed signs of tearing, blood spurting outwards from her wounds. If she couldn't completely digest the star power in the magical beast's crystal core, the holy light angel beast's end would be to explode and die. Freya, don't hold on hard. You can give up. Xiao Xingyu's eyes were red, his voice even hoarser in the silent snow. Whoosh. The holy light angel beast suddenly flapped its light wings and soared into the sky. Xiao Xingyu looked up and chased through the woods on his hell's spectral wolf. Freya, stop. There are mountains ahead. Stop. Once you hit it, you'll. You're thinking of staying awake by crashing. Xiao Xingyu's realization dawned on him at this moment, and he wanted to say something. The holy light angelic beast accelerated its flight speed, and its body transformed into a stream of light, crashing heavily into the snow-covered mountain peak. Rumble. Explosions resounded through the clouds as the violent impact triggered an avalanche. The blizzard was like a tsunami, lifting up a hundred feet high curtain that enveloped the sky, pouring down towards Xiao Xingyu's location, resembling that flooding beast. Black striker. Ow. The hell specter wolf roared up to the sky, and a pillar of black fire erupted from its mouth. The fire of hell blazed, instantly melting the overwhelming waves of blizzard, and the starlight-like flames swept the clear sky. Freya. Freya. Give me a response when you hear my voice. Xiao Xingyu panicked, his small face white his eyes crawling with crisscrossing bloodlines. The Xiao Xingyu who was usually unperturbed and unruffled in a crisis temporarily went offline. He was now just a teenager who was worried about the safety of the imperial beast. Halfway up the mountainside, Xiao Xingyu dug through the thick snow with his bare hands, because he was afraid of accidentally injuring the holy light angelic beast. Xiao Xingyu didn't dare to let the hell spectral wolf release the flame to melt all the snow, and could only find the holy light angelic beast's traces through this method. The Inferno Underwolf and the Electric Ear Rabbit also accompanied Xiao Xingyu, digging the snow on the ground together. Time passed as the day grew late. The snowy mountains under the setting sun were like a poignant painting. Chirp! The Electric-Eared Rabbit let out a sharp and urgent cry. Xiao Xingyu turned his head to see hot blood seeping out of the snow not far away. Freya! Xiao Xingyu rolled and rushed over, digging through the thick snow cover with his frostbitten hands to see a white tender hand. Five minutes later. Xiao Xingyu dragged out the petite body of the holy light angelic beast from the snow. The holy light angelic beast's eyes were tightly closed, and her body was covered in blood stains and ice crystals. The holy light feathers on her back had disappeared, and there was not a trace of warmth in her tattered body. Freya, Xiao Xingyu raised his trembling hand and gently caressed her face. In this instant, regret flooded his heart. I shouldn't have been so reckless and rushed you to cross-stage breakthrough. Cross-step breakthrough was already a huge risk. 
Not to mention the fact that there was a huge amount of star power hidden in that one magical beast's crystal core. This was a life-fighting experience for the Holy Light Angel Beast. Suddenly, Xiao Xingyu felt a familiar temperature. The Holy Light Angelic Beast opened its eyes at some point, and she raised her hand, her palm touching the side of Xiao Xingyu's face. Freya, you, at this time, Freya's palm, restored its proper temperature. Under the setting sun, the body of the Holy Light Angelic Beast gradually vaporized, turning into countless particles of light that flew with the wind. Xiaoxing Yu looked up and saw the countless grains of light converge into a winding river that flowed towards the scarlet clouds. A gust of wind blew by and the clouds dispersed. Xiaoxing Yu stared wide-eyed, moved by this. In the sky, a delicate light shadow was suspended. The light shadow gradually became clear. It was an angel bathed in holy light, with four light wings about three meters long spread out on its back. The domineering yet ethereal and light golden armor was imprinted with ancient and mysterious runes. Underneath the armor was a pair of snow white and slender legs like works of art jade feet, stepping on a totemic light formation of seven stars. The only thing that hadn't changed was the world-shattering face. Angelic face, devilish body. This was Freya who had successfully broken through to promotion. The eye of the demon god opened. Xiao Xingyu saw the updated data panel. Name, four-winged holy angel. Rank, mature body, first order. Bloodline, angelic bloodline, mythical bloodline. Talent 1, holy light guardian, dispels negative effects from enemies and provides a holy light shield for friends. Talent 2 Star Power, can use the power of the 12 constellations and other major astrological signs, with a low probability of triggering a tenfold super strike effect. Talent 3 Star Marking, inflicts damage to the enemy, and can put a crescent mark on the enemy's head as a way to refresh the cooldown time of Holy Light Star Chop. Attribute Angel System, Flight System, Holy Light System, Loyalty, 100. Skill, Lightsaber Cross Chop, Swing Both Swords at the same time, Chopping Out Cross-Shaped Sword Chi, inflicting triple bludgeoning damage on the enemy, while stacking the layers of the holy light shield of itself and its friends. Streaming light sword formation, flap two wings of light, releasing a feather-shaped holy light sword formation with 188 light swords, dealing ranged damage. Holy light star chop, instantly moves at the speed of light to the marked enemy while dealing chopping damage to all enemies along the way. Starburst, one flash of light, absorbs the power of the stars and inflicts a kick to a single enemy, 100% triggering 10 times the bludgeoning damage. Evolutionary Root, Holy Light Angel Beast 4-Winged Holy Angel 6-Winged Holy Angel Holy Lady Angel Beast 8-Winged, Holy Angel Queen 10-Winged, 12-Winged Blazing Angel Habits and Hobbies, Absorbing Moonlight Accompanying the Royal Master After browsing through the complex attribute panel, Xiao Xingyu's heart blossomed. Success! Success! The 4-Winged Holy Angel slowly landed, put away the 4 Holy Light Feathers, and knelt on one knee in front of Xiao Xingyu. This breakthrough promotion could be described as a thrilling one. The Holy Light Angel Beast had successfully crossed the ranks and was promoted to a four-winged Holy Angel, while at the same time fusing the power of the stars. Angelic Royal Beasts, their bloodline was of mythological quality, and with the Star Force, their potential could not be described in words, and in the future, they would definitely be able to grow into a King Royal Beast that could resist 10,000 armies with their own strength. Freya, Xiaoxing Yu pounced up and gave the four-winged Holy Angel a bear hug. Although this angel was an Imperial Beast, she was an orc-type imperial beast just like Dai Lu and Medusa, possessing human physical characteristics. The four-winged saint angel's breasts were a bit more voluptuous compared to before, and even the thick golden armor couldn't completely hide the sexy figure in the front and back. Freya, your breasts seem to have gotten bigger. Are they swollen? Take off your armor and I'll take a look at your wound. Xiaoxing Yu's use of a serious tone to lasso a simple and holy angel was really sinful. Nowadays, the four-winged holy angel still couldn't speak, but she could write. The four-winged holy angel stretched out her fingers and wrote down a few crooked words in the snow. Imperial Lord Lustful. Ahem Freya. Meals can be eaten indiscriminately. Words can't be spoken indiscriminately. Oh, I'm a decent person. Hell Spectral Wolf secretly rolled his eyes. Hey, you just rolled your eyes didn't you? Ow, I didn't. Let's see if I don't kill you. Ow. Under the setting sun, the teenagers and the imperial beasts jousted, and the noise spread throughout the frozen valley. The bell rang and Chan Chinian walked into the classroom of the third class. The originally jostling students instantly quieted down. One more well behaved than the other. Chen Chinian opened the lid of the thermos cup and took a sip of the wolfberry tea. Classmates, this is the last class of the day. It's also the last class before the midterm exams. These two words from Chen Chinian made the students' faces change drastically. Wilting like frosted eggplants. Time is so fast. A week has passed just like this. Tomorrow is the midterm exam. I'm panicking. My third uncle and grandpa who are far away in heaven. I hope you bless me and bless me to pass the exam. Pass the exam? 
That's such a luxury. I just want to come back alive. The students were talking a lot. They were all worried about tomorrow's midterm exam. Their faces were filled with sorrow and panic. Xiao Xingyu sat in the last row, looking as calm as ever, holding a neutral pen and scratching around on the draft paper. On the draft paper, various tactical strategies were recorded, as well as moves for the imperial beasts to work together. After a week of preparation, Xiao Xingyu was ready to go, bound to take this midterm exam with the highest grade. Wu Sheng Yu, who was sitting at the next table, threw over a small ball of paper. Xiao Xingyu opened the paper ball and took a look. Father Yu, tomorrow we will go to war. Don't you panic? Tiger and I are panicked to death. Xiao Xingyu wrote a reply, and then threw the ball of paper back. Wu Sheng Yu opened the ball of paper, suddenly excited. The words on the paper ball, with me, no accidents. These six words brought Wu Sheng Yu a full sense of security. Whoosh. Wu Sheng Yu throws over three paper balls. Father Yu, it's great to have you here. If I were a woman, I'd be your girlfriend and feel safe. Don't worry, Papa Yu. After the midterm exams, I'll help you go to the cafeteria every day to get food. As the saying goes, a family with an old man has a treasure. For dormitory 312, having a righteous father in the family is like having a god. With Xiao Xingyu, Wu Shengyu and Song who not only relax, but also have confidence in this midterm exam, maybe they can lie down and get a high score. Chen Qinian opened the electronic projection screen and explained the notes of the midterm exam again by showing the PPT. Class, every station that train 13 passes through, as well as the route details, are in the map manual. When you encounter a wraith attacking the train, don't panic, play out the group battle coordination you usually train for, and passing won't be a problem. The passing line is a C rating. It's not that hard to achieve this rating. The highest rating is S. It's very difficult to get this rating. When Chen Qinian spoke here, a student stood up and asked a question. Director Chen, I remember a few years ago there was a senior who took the midterm exam and got an SS rating. What's going on? The question raised by this student is very valuable. Let me explain it to you. Chen Qinian's expression suddenly became serious and his voice became much more somber. Theoretically speaking, the highest grade for a midterm exam is S. But if the candidate encounters a variable in the exam, encounters a greater danger, and turns it around, or even makes a merit for the country, the rating will break through S and reach SS, or even SSS. Wu Shengyu raised his hand. Director Chen, in the history of Qinglong Academy, are there any seniors and sisters who have gotten SSS ratings? Not yet. The highest rating set at SS is a fellow named Nia Qingfeng, who is a senior five years above you. Chen Qinian's utterance of the name caused the classmates to discuss it enthusiastically. Nia Qingfeng? What a familiar name. I've heard of this character. He's the vice general stationed in Yellow Smoke City. His segment is a six-star imperial beast master. And he's got a lot of battle achievements. Isn't the terminus of train number 13, Yellow Smoke City? Then if we take the exam this time, won't we be able to meet this senior? Chen Qinian said in a conspiratorial manner. Classmates, your senior Nia, back in the day, got an SS grade rating. I'm not asking you to compare yourselves to him. As long as the class is above the passing line, I'll be satisfied. Director Chen, don't worry, I'll definitely pass. I'm going to try to break through the B rating. I'm confident of getting an A rating. Chen Qinian laughed and asked, Is there not a single student who dares to say they can get an S? The class turned their heads and looked at the last row. Xiao Xingyu was stealing instant noodles from a small raccoon. Chen Qinian's head was filled with black lines as he yelled lowly, You kid is stealing snacks again. Confiscate them, confiscate them all. In fact, the comprehensive qualifications of the third class were mediocre, and the only one who had a chance to get an S rating was Xiao Xingyu. Chen Xinyan's attitude towards Xiao Xingyu was one of love and hate, and after confiscating the snacks, he couldn't bear to do so and return a handful of chili strips. I won't confiscate this pack of spicy strips. Director Chen, what do you mean by this? You kid must get an S rating, as long as you can. I'll buy you a truckload of chili fries to reward you. Xiao Xingyu came to Chen Xinyan's ear and said with a smile. A truckload of chili fries doesn't seem like enough, does it? Hey you little fox, what are you playing at again? Director Chen, if I get an S rating, how about you send me a transcendent body thunder beast crystal core? Chen Xinian was so angry that his chest was stuffy. A transcendent body thunder system magical beast crystal core of moderate quality sells for around 15 million. Are you trying to pry away my wife Ben? Director Chen, you're in your 30s going on 40 and you still haven't got no wife? Xiao Xingyu, Chen Xinian roared angrily and the surrounding students cast puzzled gazes. In the classroom, Chen Qinian was not in a good position to lash out and could only communicate with Xiao Xingyu in whispers. Fine, fine, count on you kid being shady enough. I promise you, 
As long as you get an S rating, I'll send you a transcendent body thunder system magical beast crystal core. Chen Chinian was also helpless. This year he wanted to select the honorary title of outstanding tutor. He wanted Xiao Xingyu, so he could only be held by Xiao Xingyu. After school, Xiao Xingyu hummed a little song and walked towards the back door of the school. Xingyu, a familiar voice came from behind. Brother Yang Shua, six gold. The three of them met by chance and walked together towards the school gate. Xingyu, are you going home? Yeah, tomorrow is the midterm exam. I'm going back to accompany my sister. Before leaving home, Xiao Xingyu only wanted to be with his sister. Xingyu, can you go back later? Brother Yang Shua, do you have something to do? Morong Yang Shua had a big personality and didn't hide anything. I want to invite you to my house for a meal. To your home? My father is also at home. He's eager to meet you. General Morong? Wants to meet me? Xiao Xingyu's face was ugly. So embarrassed that his toes were picking out three rooms on the ground. Once at the Navy headquarters ice and fire island, Xiao Xingyu had fucked Morong ashes as a black-robed man. Now Morong Yangshua invited Xiao Xingyu to his home as a guest. And Morong ashes was also there. Which made Xiao Xingyu cry and laugh. Brother Yangshua, why don't we choose another day? Don't. Choose a day. Follow me. Morong Yangshua wrapped his arm around Xiao Xingyu's shoulders and got into a luxury car. The setting sun in the evening was like an old man, kissing the earth with its gentle light, bringing a deep tranquility to this crumbling world. The limousine spiraled and climbed along the mountain ring road, finally stopping at the entrance of a manor. Xingyu, this is my home. After getting out of the car, Morong Yangshua wrapped his arm around Xiao Xingyu's shoulders, and with his other hand, pointed at the plaque above the manor's gate. Xiao Xingyu looked up, only to see three big words engraved in hot gold on the plaque. General's Mansion. In the Dragon Kingdom's military system, only warriors at the level of general were qualified to receive a mansion rewarded by the Empress. This manor that covered half of the mountain was the mansion that Shang Wan Lan had bestowed on Navy Admiral Morong Ashes. Young master, miss, this is, the guards at the entrance treated the Morong siblings with respect. He is my classmate, my sister and I invited him to be our guest at home. So it's young master Mrs. classmate, please come in. After entering the manor, Xiao Xingyu was surprised. Although the manor covered a large area, the decoration style looked very simple, and there were only some carefully cultivated flowers and plants in the courtyard, not even a single decent sculpture ornament. From this, it could be seen that Morong Ashes was a thrifty and frugal person, and was not in the same league as those profligate and powerful people. Dad, we're back. In the kitchen, a strong voice came from the kitchen. Quickly go and wash your hands. I'll fry one more dish here, and dinner will be ready. Xiao Xingyu looked incredulous and couldn't help but ask. Brother Yang Shua, your dad is a grand admiral of the navy. He actually cooks himself? Yeah, my old sister and I grew up eating dad's cooking since we were six years old. Xiao Xingyu did not say more. He knew that the Morong siblings' mother had passed away many years ago. The childhood period of Morong siblings relied on Morong ashes alone to be a father and a mother before they came all the way through in good health. Ten minutes later, the dining table was filled with colorful and delicious food. Although they were all home-cooked dishes, it could be seen that the chef's handiwork was pure fire. This chef, at the moment, was sitting opposite Xiao Xingyu. In the eyes of the world, this chef was the Navy Admiral who commanded the 10,000 cruising fleet. Morong Ashes. Good day Admiral Morong. This is my first visit, and it's an honor for me to meet a great person like you. Morong Ashes smiled as he scrutinized the young man in front of him. Young man, I heard Shuor say that you have an outgoing and spirited personality. Why is it that you seem to be a bit formal when you first meet today? Xiao Xingyu forced a smile. His forehead was covered in cold sweat as he crumbled inside. Ah, uh, can I not be formal? At first I had a fight with you on Ice Fire Island. At this moment, a scar remained on the side of Morong Ash's face. This scar was thanks to the nine-tailed dragon fox Dailu. Morong Ashes stared at Xiao Xingyu again and again, and his heart rippled. I don't know what's going on. Even though it's the first time I've seen this little guy, there's always a sense of deja vu. And just by looking at him two more times, my face hurts. Morong Ashes subconsciously touched the side of his face, but he wouldn't associate the black-robed man with this youthful teenager in front of him no matter what. Xiao Xingyu, no need to be so formal. Eat, try this sweet and sour pork. Thank you General Morong. You brat, what's the point of being polite? You are sure an ex good friend. Just call me uncle directly. Uncle Morong, your cooking is really good. Morong Ashes' cooking skill is really not bad. It's a match with the chef of the restaurant. Xiao Xingyu ate all the rice in the bowl in a moment's time. Xingyu, I'll serve you another bowl. Brother Yang Shua, I can do it myself. How can that be? It's your first time in my house. You're a guest. Of course I have to treat you well. Looking at Morong Yang Shua personally serving himself rice, 
Xiao Xingyu was warm inside. To be able to make such a sincere friend in this era of malicious hearts, it was an unattainable fortune for Xiao Xingyu. At the dinner table, Xiao Xingyu quickly integrated into the family with his humorous conversation. Morong Ashes looked at Xiao Xingyu with admiration and praised him heartily. Xiao Xingyu, I've seen your performance in the supernova competition through the internet video. I only had one feeling after watching it. The waves of the Yangtze River push forward the waves of the future. The future generations are fearful. The future generations are fearful. Every bigwig who had contact with Xiao Xingyu could not help but say the term, the future generation is fearful. Xiao Xingyu's talent and strength need not be mentioned. While his combat IQ and his calmness of heart that far exceeded that of his peers were all traits that only the great ones had. Uncle Morong is too kind. I'm just lucky. Ha ha ha. You kid is modest. Morong Ashes had traversed the sands for dozens of years and had seen countless heavenly prides. His eye for people was naturally very accurate. He knew very well that Xiao Xingyu was able to get to where he was today. Not by luck, but by that terrifying talent and wisdom. Even Morong Ashes would coldly appear in a trance for a moment when he was pushing cups with Xiao Xingyu. He always felt that this teenager's face was shrouded in a murky veil, making it impossible for him to see through this teenager's true face. Dad, I have good news for you. The composition I wrote in my theory class won the first prize in the whole school. Do you have to reward me? Morong Yangshua couldn't wait to claim the credit while opening his book bag. Morong Ashes frowned. I remember you were very bad in theory class ah, the composition can win the first prize? Plagiarize it. Morong Yangshua took out the award certificate from his school bag. Morong Ashes fixed his eyes on it. On the award certificate it was clearly written. Congratulations to Mr. Morong Yangshua for winning the first prize of the Qinglong Academy Literature Cup with his essay, My Great General Father. The atmosphere became awkward. Morong Ashes held his forehead and smiled bitterly. You kid, is worthy of being my son. Xiao Xingyu weakly asked. Six Qin, what does your father mean by that? Morong Xinxin answered truthfully. When my dad went to school that year, he also wrote a My Great General Father and also won the first prize. After learning about Xiao Xingyu, he realized that Morong's family had been admirals for generations. So this essay was passed down from his ancestors. Only many years ago, the grandfather of the Morong siblings was sacrificed at sea. Nowadays, in the Morong family, only Morong ashes and the Morong siblings are left in the direct lineage, and everyone else died on the battlefield, sacrificing their lives for their country. The Morong lineage is full of loyalists. This is also the reason why the Morong family is the most loved by the people among the four great families. Morong Xinxin was originally eating his own meal when his afterglow suddenly glanced at Xiao Xingyu. The dining table was large and had many dishes. One of them, a cassoulet prawn, was far away from Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu repeatedly stretched out his arm, and his chopsticks were unable to catch the cassoulet prawns. As a first-time guest, it was obviously a rude behavior if he stood up to clip the food. Xiao Xingyu simply gave up. Just then, a cassoulet prawn landed in Xiao Xingyu's bowl. Morong Ashes looked dumbfounded. Just a moment ago, Morong Xinxin had personally clamped a cassoulet prawn and put it into Xiao Xingyu's bowl. Morong Ashes froze for a long time, his heart stirring up a thousand waves. This daughter of mine has been raised for more than ten years. She has never given me as a father to clip a dish. Xiao Xingyu chewed the delicious prawns with a face of enjoyment and thanked him in passing. Lu Jin, thank you. What else do you want to eat? If it's out of reach, I'll just clip it for you. Before Xiao Xingyu could say anything, Morong Xinxin took it upon himself to clip all of the several dishes that were farthest away from Xiao Xingyu. Try the steamed sea base. It tastes fresh. This chili pepper stir fry is also delicious. Make sure to use the soup with rice. And this kung pao chicken. It's my dad's specialty. You try it too. Eat slowly. Don't choke. Try the lotus seed silver ear soup. Xiao Xingyu accepted everything as it was and feasted. Morong Xinxin kept pinching food for Xiao Xingyu. Her mouth was still broken. She looked like she had the flavor of a good wife and mother. Dad, why are you dazed? Morong Yangshua raised his hand and waved it in front of Morong Ash's dull face. Doesn't this daughter of mine suffer from autism? Why is she talking to Xiao Xingyu so much in one breath? I remember this girl usually chats with me. Never more than two sentences. Shuor, what's going on here? Dad is confused. In the eyes of Morong Ashes, his daughter Morong Xinxin is a withdrawn person with a serious psychological disorder since childhood. During Morong Xinxin's early childhood, she witnessed her mother die in front of her. Since then, Morong Xinxin has become reticent and is extremely repulsed by strangers, even if it was her elder brother and father. Morong Xinxin rarely interacted with them. As Morong Ashes said, every time he tried to chat more with his daughter, Morong Xin Xin replied to him with two sentences at most and the chat ended. However, the Morong Xin Xin at this moment had subverted Morong Ashes' previous perception of more than 10 years. Morong Xinxin, in front of Xiao Xingyu, 
although she was still frosty and unsmiling, she had become more talkative. The dishes that Xiao Xingyu couldn't reach, she would help Xiao Xingyu clip into the bowl, and there would also be some words attached. In the few seconds that Morong ashes froze, Morong Xingxin said no less than 20 words to Xiao Xingyu. What was the concept of 20 words? Morong Ashes would have to chat with Morong Xian Xian 20 times to get enough of these 20 sentences from his daughter's mouth. Shuor, come over here with me. Morong Ashes called Morong Yangshua into the study, leaving only Xiao Xingyu and Morong Xinxin at the table. Dad, what are you looking for me alone for? Being secretive. Brat, tell me. Your sister only attended Green Dragon Academy for a few days. Why has her temperament suddenly changed drastically? Morong Yangshua scratched his head with a bewildered expression. My sister's disposition hasn't changed. She's still the same at Qinglong Academy. She doesn't talk to her classmate tutors and doesn't make friends. And she froze her face every day, causing me as a brother to feel like I owe her money from my previous life. After Morong Yangshua spat, Morong Ashes anxiously pursued. Then why do Xiener and Xiao Xingyu have so much to talk about? She never chatted with your father and I for more than two sentences. And when she chatted with Xiao Xingyu, she chatted for no less than 20 sentences just for the sake of pinching food. Dad. Are you jealous? Hey, you kid dare to flirt with me. Morong Ashes couldn't talk about being jealous. He was just puzzled by his daughter's change. Dad, you saw it just now at the dinner table. Sister's attitude towards Xingyu is different from that of any boy. What do you mean? Morong Yangshua rolled his eyes and lowered his voice. Of course it's because my sister has a favorable impression of Xingyu. Favorable feelings? Could it be that? Morong Ashes' face changed in shock. Dad, you are also a person from the past. You definitely know more about the feelings of men and women than I do. Morong Yangshua said while scowling at Morong Ashes. Within moments, father and son walked out of the study and returned to the dining table. Uncle Morong, thank you for giving the late generation the opportunity to come to your home as a guest. I'll toast you. Kid, don't drink first. Let me ask you a few questions. The air instantly froze. Xiao Xingyu felt embarrassed to breathe. Strange, after coming out of the study, Morong Ashes' attitude towards me seems to have changed a lot. Morong Ashes had initially received Xiao Xingyu as a friend and classmate of his own child, and he also appreciated Xiao Xingyu's talent. But now, Morong Ashes treated Xiao Xingyu as a son-in-law who came to his door to propose marriage. Mother-in-law looks at her son-in-law, and the more she looks at him, the better she looks at him. Father-in-law looked at his son-in-law, and the more he looked at him, the more angry he became. Kid, let me ask you, how many people in your family? How many acres of land do you have? What industry do your parents work in? What do your grandparents do? How many stars of Imperial Beastmaster is your Thai milk? Morong Ashes asked more than a dozen questions in one breath, like a guard who was strictly checking the ancestors of a suspect. Dad, Xingyu is my friend. You're checking his account. It's not necessary. Bastard shut up. Are you dad or am I dad? Oh, Morong Yangshua had no choice but to shut up. Handing Xiao Xingyu a look of love. Xiao Xingyu, don't play dumb. Answer my question. Morong Xinxin suddenly spoke up. Dad. Don't make things difficult for him. Ah this. Well well well. Dad don't make things difficult for him. He he he. Xiao Xingyu's eyebrows jumped. Inwardly thinking. Which is a navy admiral ah. This is simply a daughter slave ah. Out of politeness. Xiao Xingyu still answered the questions thrown out by Morong Ashes next. After understanding Xiao Xingyu's identity background. Morong Ashes fell into deep thought. This kid is of grassroots origin. Fatherless and motherless. Without a powerful background. It all relies on exceptional talent to get to where he is today. Although I have no requirements for my future son-in-law's family background, but this kid is penniless. What if Xiener marries him in the future and suffers? This was the unified voice of all the old fathers in the country. None of them were willing to let their daughters get married. And all of them were prejudiced against their future son-in-laws. Six gold. Your father's eyes are not right when he looks at me. He won't cut me with a knife. Right? Morong Xinxin was still chucking food into Xiao Xingyu's bowl. You eat a little more. I'm so propped up. I'm pinching vegetables for you and you're not eating? Uh, this. Me eat me eat. No leftovers. Obey. I won't waste a single grain of food. Xiao Xingyu and Morong Xinxin were less than 40 years old combined. But the way they got along was like an old married couple who had been married for many years. Morong Ashes took everything in. His eyes gradually mildened and the corners of his lips rose. I have to say. Xiener has become a lot more lively around this kid and her face isn't so cold anymore. For Morong Ashes, what he cared most about was not how much Morong Xinxin could achieve in the future, whether she could inherit his mantle or not. He only cared about whether this daughter was happy or not. Only by Xiao Xingyu's side, Morong Xinxin seemed to be able to get rid of her identity as a withdrawn person, and could live like a normal flower girl. Lu Jin, 
I'm really full. My stomach is going to explode. No leftovers allowed. I really can't eat anymore. Ah, count on me to beg you. Don't let me eat. Leftovers are shameful. Xiao Xing you had a bright idea. I know leftovers are shameful. You forgive me this time. When the midterm exams come back, I'll treat you to a movie. How about it? The air was suddenly quiet. Morong father and son simultaneously side-eyed and stared at Morong Xinxin. After a few seconds, Morong Xinxin broke the silence. Good. Xiao Xing you exhaled a mouthful of turbid breath. Great. Finally I don't have to eat anymore. My stomach is really going to explode. Morong Ashes and Morong Yangshua stared wide-eyed as both father and son revealed expressions of disbelief. There were three reasons why this father and son were shocked. 1. Morong Xinxin never went to the movie theater. 2. Morong Xinxin never accepted any male's invitation. 3. Morong Xinxin actually agreed to date Xiao Xingyu, adolescent teenage boys and girls, making a date to watch a movie alone and spend the world of two together. What else could it be if not a date? Brother Yang Shua, why are you looking at me with such eyes? Xingyu, you're awesome, you're so damn awesome, you're the most awesome person I've ever seen. Morong Yang Shua looked at Xiao Xingyu with a touch more admiration in his eyes. This guy can actually pick up my sister? Love saint, must be the reincarnation of a love saint. Xingyu Ah Xingyu, I didn't expect that you usually look honest and simple, but it turns out that you're deep in hiding. Find a chance. I must find you to learn some girl pickup skills. These were Morong Yangshua's heartfelt words. He was admiring Xiao Xingyu from the bottom of his heart. After all, there was only one person in the world who could pick up Morong Xinxin. After dinner was over, the nanny brought in after dinner fruits. The news was being broadcast on the TV, and the microphone of the media reporter was passed to the mouth of the Empress Shang Wanlan. As the king of a country, Shang Wanlan had to deal with these media reporters every day. In front of the camera, Shang Wanlan was always talking loudly and giving impassioned speeches as a way to brainwash the people of the Dragon Kingdom, making the whole country believe that the Dragon Kingdom had a bright future. No one would know that this woman is a patriotic and loving Dragon Kingdom empress on the surface, but behind her back, she is a bloodthirsty black dragon. Xiao Xingyu stared at the TV screen, secretly spitting inside. Xingyu ah, uncle is curious about one thing. Uncle Morong, you say. Morong Ashes opened the door. At your young age, not long after you were admitted to the Green Dragon Academy, how did you get accepted by the Tsung Dong Guild to become a special pharmacist within the guild? Now Morong Ashes had already seen how his daughter treated Xiao Xingyu, so he also had a few good feelings towards this future son-in-law. But under this chaotic era of strife, love and marriage, both needed hard power to sustain them. The Morong family was at least one of the four great families of the Dragon Kingdom, and Morong Xinxin was Morong Ash's most beloved daughter. Therefore Morong Ash's assessment standard for his future son-in-law was very high. Even if Xiao Xingyu did not have a powerful background, he himself had to have a flashpoint that far exceeded the norm before he could do so. Uncle Morong, my junior is not talented. I have some talent in medical arts. I can develop potions and elixirs that are not available on the market and help some injured imperial beasts to recover their peak. After Morong Ashes heard this, he couldn't help but laugh aloud. Ha ha ha, you kid is not very old, but your breath is not small. Uncle Morong doesn't believe me? A special pharmacist is originally a scarce resource for today's major royal beast master guilds. If you only know a little bit about medicine, how could you possibly be appreciated by the Tsung Dong Guild? Xiao Xing you guessed what Morong Ashes was thinking. So Uncle Morong thinks that I relied on the backdoor and connections to obtain the status of Tsung Dong Guild's special pharmacist? Otherwise, I have found someone to investigate. You have a close relationship with the Tsung Dong Guild's president's daughter. Xin Yin Ran, Morong Ashes mentioned Xin Yin Yin, and Morong Xinxin, who was originally silent, suddenly perked up, his gaze locking onto Xiao Xingyu. Xin Yin Ran is my godsister. The friendship between us is pure. Morong Yangshua took the opportunity to ask, Xingyu. If my sister and Qin Yin Yan fell into the river at the same time, who would you save first? Save Lu Jin. Xiao Xingyu's answer satisfied Morong's father and son. Morong Xinxin couldn't help but ask, Why? Sister Yin Yan told me that she is the champion of the Dragon Hidden City Swimming Championships. She can't drown. The corner of Morong Yangshua's mouth twitched. Xingyu, this explanation of yours is really redundant. Morong Ashes hurriedly interjected. All right, all right. Why did you bring it to swimming? Xingyu. Uncle asked you, did you go through the back door or not? Xiao Xingyu was too young to have seen more than a few magical beasts in his life, and he hadn't been exposed to systematic learning in medicine. Logically, it was impossible for such a brat to become a special pharmacist for any of the Imperial Beast Master Guilds, so it was no wonder Morong Ashes questioned it. Uncle Morong, no matter how I explain it, you will still question me, so it might as well speak with the facts. You kid is trying to. Xiao Xingyu got up. 
a wise light emerging in his eyes. Uncle Morong you are a Navy Admiral, stationed at the Navy headquarters all year round, with the sea as your home. However the sea is not only home, but also a bloody battlefield. Whenever the water demonic beasts invade, the Navy warriors have to summon their respective Imperial beasts and fight desperately on the sea. The Imperial beast's skin, after being soaked in seawater for a long time, and then suffering from the scorching sun after surfacing, would inevitably suffer from a special disease? Tortoise cracking. Morong ashes revealed a surprised gaze. You kid even knows about the tortoise cracking syndrome? Xiao Xingyu smiled bashfully and continued to speak eloquently. Imperial beasts suffering from tortoise cracking syndrome will have densely packed cracks in their skin, with the cracks shaped like a tortoise's shell. As time passes, the cracked wounds on the skin cannot heal, and the imperial beast will feel itching and stinging pain. As the tortoise cracks become more and more severe, it will also cause the blood clotting function of the imperial beast to drop drastically. As long as one is injured by a magical beast, the wound will continue to bleed, and there will even be blood loss and death, which is irreversible damage to the imperial beast. Xiao Xingyu's long speech shook Morong ashes. That's right, you've said it very well. Torpidity is, indeed, one of the imperial beast's diseases that our naval warriors have the most headaches with. As you said just now, this disease causes the imperial beast's blood clotting function to decline, and it is irreversible. According to the statistics, in our navy headquarters, the incidence rate of tortoise cracking disease is 99%. After the tortoise cracking disease develops to the point of severe illness, it will cause the imperial beast's combat power to decline by 20% 30%. Xiao Xingyu revealed a meaningful smile. Uncle Morong, so far, no medication has been developed on the market that can effectively treat tortoise cracking syndrome, right? Morong ashes let out a long sigh, his dark face filled with helplessness. Alas, yes, the highest level medical institutions in the Dragon Kingdom, which have been cultivating this field for 30 to 40 years, have not developed a drug to treat tortoise cracking syndrome. I have medicine. Xiao Xingyu spoke out of turn. Morong ashes froze for a moment, frowning as he pursued. What did you say? I have medicine for tortoise cracking. Morong Yangshuo whispered a reminder. Xingyu, in front of my father, it's not a good idea to brag. Once you're dismantled, my father will really beat you up. Brother Yangshuo, you know me as a person. Since I dare to say it, it means that I really have medicine in my hand. Xiao Xingyu pulled out his pocket and pulled out a delicate little blue bottle. Even though the cap of the small blue bottle was in a sealed state, a refreshing aroma still wafted in the air. Uncle Morong, this is the special effect medicine I developed for Torticollis, the high energy, skin care and antioxidant herbal essence little blue bottle. High energy, skin care, herbal what? Morong ashes almost turned into a stuttering uncle suffering from mental retardation in order to pronounce the name correctly. If the name is too long, you can just call it little blue bottle. This little blue bottle, can it really cure torpidity? Uncle, it's still the same sentence. If you question it, it's better to speak with facts. Morong Ashes nodded and led everyone to the large courtyard. There was a pool of fountain in the courtyard. Morong Ashes called an attendant, who was the captain of the 972nd Detachment of the Naval Headquarters. Lu Sandong, little Lu, summon your imperial beast. Obey. Lu Sandong opened the imperial beast crest and a stream of light flashed by. A massive sea lion appeared in the fountain pool. Its sharp teeth exposed in the air and a whirlwind around its body. Storm Fury Tooth Beast, that was the name of this large sea lion, and its level was at the transcendent body, third order. Under the moonlight, everyone could clearly see every inch of the Storm Fury Tooth Beast's skin. The skin was cracked, the cracks were dense, and a steady stream of blood seeped out of the wounds, quickly coloring the fountain pool red. At this moment, the Storm Wind Fury Tooth Beast was tired and had lax eyes, obviously tortured by the tortoise cracking disease for a long time. Morong Ashes patted Xiao Xingyu's shoulder. Kid, I'd like to see, the little blue bottle in your hand, whether it's a panacea or a fake medicine used to woo people. In the fountain pool, the storm raging tooth beast was mentally drained, suffering under the torment of the tortoise sickness. Watching Xiao Xingyu approaching towards him, the stormy wind raging tooth beast violently arched its body, forming many wind blades around it that were strong enough to cut through steel. Lu Sandong stepped forward to pacify it. Tooth, relax getting pacified by its master. The storm raging tooth beast collected its wind blades and became well behaved. Xiao Xingyu raised his hand and gently caressed the storm raging tooth beast's skin. The partially torn wound in the skin gurgled blood outwards, which was caused by the drastic drop in blood clotting function. Your name is Tooth, right? Don't worry. Next I will make you feel comfortable like never before. Xiao Xingyu smiled faintly and opened the small blue bottle, dropping a drop of blue medicinal liquid onto the storm fury tooth beast's skin cracks. 
The medicinal liquid went deep into the depths of the wound and spread along the skin cracks. After three seconds passed, the skin cracks on the entire body of the storm raging tooth beast flashed with blue light. And from a distance, it looked like it was covered in blue LED light strips. The storm raging tooth beast suddenly let out a roar. Its eyes narrowed slightly and the corners of its lips rose, clearly enjoying itself. Lu Sandone's eyes widened as he exclaimed, General, tooth skin cracks have healed. Morong Ash's eyes fluctuated as he witnessed the entire process of the skin cracks healing. The entire process? Not more than a minute. By now, the storm rage tooth beast's entire body skin returned to its original appearance. Smooth and delicate, just like a perfect black jade. All those densely packed cracks from before had disappeared. Not even a scar remained. Many thanks, Mr. Xiao, for curing my family's tooth. A man's tears are not light. It's just that he hasn't reached the place of sadness. Lu Sandong, the naval warrior who had thrown his head on the battlefield and spilled his blood, was at this moment revealing his fragile side? Every day, looking at the imperial beasts with his own life and death, suffered from the torment of tortoise cracking disease, Lu Sandong's sleep and food difficult to eat and rest. However, at this moment, the storm raging tooth's cracking disease was completely cured, recovering its former liveliness, with a simple and honest smile on its face. How could this not bring tears to the eyes of a royal beast master? Captain Lu, there's no need to thank me. No, Mr. Xiao, my family's tooth has suffered from tortoise sickness for three years. It was you who cured it, your great kindness. I, Lu Sandong, will remember, and will definitely repay you in the future. Lu Sandong saluted towards Xiao Xingyu. The salute was very special. This was the highest etiquette within the navy. Morong Ashes was still in shock. Looking at the Storm Fury Tooth Beast that was alive and kicking in the fountain pool, it always felt a bit unreal, and his heart set off shock waves. Tortuosity, can it really be completely cured? The special effect medicine developed by this kid is actually more powerful than the SK-92 agent of the Imperial Academy of Sciences. Xiao Xingyu, you are truly a genius monster. Uncle Morong. Morong Ashes was pulled back into his thoughts by Xiao Xingyu. Now do you believe in my medical skills? Morong Ashes was so emotional that he suddenly pulled Xiao Xingyu's arm. Xingyu, let me ask you, this little blue bottle of yours, can it be mass produced? Of course it can, but it requires you to give me a potion factory. We have everything at the naval headquarters, and there are three potion factories on ice and fire island. I want you to mass produce the little blue vial. At this moment, Morong Ashes' facial muscles were constantly twitching. The surging and excitement within him could not be described in words. Tortuosity had always been one of the most severe problems faced by the navy. After all, this symptom would cause the combat power of imperial beasts to slump by 20 to 30 percent. It would also cut down on the lifespan of the imperial beasts, and even lead to the imperial masters and imperial beasts being emotionally drained and suffering from mental illnesses at the same time. If the little blue vials were mass-produced to completely solve the problem of tortoise sickness, then the overall strength of the navy could be increased by 20 percent to 30 percent. This cold data seemed to have little feeling when viewed on its own. But if it was reflected in reality, Morong Ashes, as a Navy Admiral, knew best what it meant. It meant that the naval forces could continue to expand the territorial sea area of the Dragon Kingdom. It meant that the islands that had been overrun by high-level magical beasts could be recovered. It meant that there were more young talents willing to join the Navy as a big family. Morong Ashes had to admit that the little blue bottle in Xiao Xingyu's hand was related to the lifeblood of the entire naval force. Xingyu, you are truly a genius that is hard to come by in a hundred years. Uncle likes you a lot. Ha ha ha. Morong Ashes wrapped his arm around Xiao Xingyu's shoulders, overflowing with praise, as if treating this teenager as his future son-in-law. Old sister. What are you laughing at? Happy. Happy? Happy for him. Morong Xinxin rarely revealed a smile, and at this moment, her delicate and innocent face was overflowing with a delighted smile. She was happy for Xiao Xingyu because Xiao Xingyu had been appreciated by Morong Ashes. Uncle Morong, I have my midterm exams tomorrow. The matter of mass producing the little blue bottle will have to wait until after my exams are over. No problem. There's no rush. When your exams are over, I'll pick you up and take you to the Navy headquarters. And by the way, I'll take you to visit our Dragon Kingdom Navy's God Extinguishing Battleship. Cough cough cough. Choking? Cough cough. No. When Morong Ashes mentioned the God Extinguishing Battleship, Xiao Xingyu could choke even if he drank air. The God Extinguishing Battleship, the strongest battleship model of the Navy was the core weapon of the navy. When Xiao Xingyu robbed the court as a black-robed man, he manipulated the nine-tailed dragon fox to blow up three god exterminating battleships with one punch. Now Morong Ashes looked at Xiao Xingyu. The more he looked at him, the more he liked him, and he recognized this future son-in-law. But Xiao Xingyu's next sentence made the admiral break his defense on the spot. Uncle Morong, 
Shouldn't we talk about the patent technology fee next? Talk about what? Patent technology fees. Morong Ash's face was written with confusion and froze for a long time before he slowed down. You kid is planning to do business with me. What else? I spent a lot of effort developing the little blue bottle, and if I use it for mass production at the Navy headquarters, I definitely need to charge a patent technology fee. Morong Ash's face pulled down, exasperated. You brat. How to say you are also counted as half of my son-in-law? Actually talk to me about money? This time it was Xiao Xingyu's turn to be confused. I didn't hear you. Half what? Morong Yangshua hurriedly tugged on Morong Ash's sleeve, whispering in a dark voice, Dad, you're more reserved. If you don't know, you'll think you're trying to sell your daughter. You don't want to lose face. Our XINR is a girl. She doesn't want to lose face either. At this time there were some naval warriors around, including Lu Sandong. In public, Morong Ash's words just now did have the suspicion of selling his daughter. Morong Ashes adjusted his mind and lightly coughed a few times. Cough cough cough. Xing Yu ah, you have a point. About the patent technology fee, how much do you intend to ask for? Xiao Xingyu stretched out a finger. Morong Ashes was overjoyed. Ten million dollars is no problem. For the sake of our relationship, I'll give you two million more. Twelve million in total. How about it? Xiao Xingyu shook his head. I mean, I want a hundred million. Morong Ashes froze, then glared angrily, looking for something all over the ground. Uncle Morong, what are you looking for all over the ground? Looking for slates. Morong Ashes swung up a slate. Bastard. Lion's share of money I you. I'll slap you to death with a slate. Dad. Calm down. Impulse is the devil. Morong Yangshua stepped forward to block, afraid that if Morong Ashes slammed a brick down, his sister would be widowed for the rest of her life. Xiao Xingyu. You can ah. Uh, the moment you open your mouth, it's a hundred million dollars. Uncle Morong. To be fair, do I want more? Morong Ashes was momentarily speechless. Xiao Xingyu held the small blue bottle and was calm. As far as I know, our Dragon Kingdom's highest level pharmaceutical research and development organization, the Imperial Academy of Sciences, spent $300 million on the cost of developing the SK-92 potion in the first place, and the patent fee was as high as $500 million. Even so, the SK-92 potion is not an all-purpose medicine. It cannot cure tortoise sickness. That is to say, in the field of treating tortuosity, I, Xiao Xingyu, and the only authority, my little blue bottle, is the only killer of torpidity. Morong Ashes clenched his teeth and said grudgingly, you kid is very crazy, but I admit that you do have the capital to be crazy as well, so I want 100 million, more, ah this, Morong Yangshua came to Morong Ashes ear, dad, this little blue bottle can cure torpidity, 100 million is truly not expensive, silly son, I want this kid to be my son-in-law, XIN are married to him, we are a family. Why spend money? Dad ah, uh, you just take this 100 million as the dowry for Xiener's marriage in the future. Won't it hurt? Morong Ashes was stunned. This is reasonable. Xiao Xingyu scratched his head and muttered in his heart. What is this father and son plotting? It always feels like I'm going to be counted. 100 million dollars. For a powerful family like the Morong family was a drop in the bucket. But for Xiao Xingyu, 100 million could directly improve his and his sister's daily life. Moreover, the growth process of the Hell Spectre Wolf and the Four-Winged Saint Angel could not help but consume a large amount of expensive evolutionary materials and heavenly treasures. This additional income of 100 million, together with the salary and commission he received from the Vault Guild every month, could greatly alleviate Xiao Xingyu's financial pressure. Xingyu, give me your bank card number. Morong Ashes then instructed the staff under his command, and in less than 10 seconds, Xiao Xingyu received a text message alert that his bank card had arrived. Ding arrival amount of 50 million gold coins. Morong Ashes smiled and patted Xiao Xingyu's shoulder with a kind and benevolent face. Xingyu ah, this 50 million, is the deposit that our naval headquarters paid you in advance. When you develop enough little blue bottle potion in bulk, I will pay the 50 million final payment at that time, and I won't short you a penny. Xiao Xingyu nodded. Uncle Morong, happy cooperation. Well, happy cooperation. The two shook each other's hands and reached an agreement of mutual trust. With the midterm exams coming up tomorrow. Xiao Xingyu could only wait until the end of the exams before he could follow Morong Ashes to the naval headquarters, Ice and Fire Island, to fulfill the agreement to develop the little blue bottle in bulk. As the night deepened, Xiao Xingyu prepared to go home. The Morong siblings walked Xiao Xingyu to the entrance of the manor together. Xingyu, the next time we meet will be after the midterm exams. Brother Yang Shua, I wish you a good grade on the exam. You too. The two hugged each other, full of brotherly affection. Xiao Xingyu let go of Morong Yangshua and looked at Morong Xingxin who was dumbfounded on the side. The balmy mountain breeze blew her hair, and the aroma lingered. 
Under the clear moonlight, her side face was like a painting from the hand of a famous artist. The elegant contour lines were flawless, as if they were as crystal clear as the dewdrops in the morning, making it impossible to take one's eyes off of them. Morong Xinxin's face value and figure could not be questioned. After all, she could squeeze into the ranks of the four school beauties in the beautiful Green Dragon Academy. Xiao Xingyu and Morong Xinxin had known each other for so long, but every time Morong Xinxin stood under the moonlight, her side face always amazed Xiao Xingyu time and time again, and she would not be aesthetically fatigued at all. Lu Jin, hmm, tomorrow is the midterm exam. I heard that the difficulty of the test for your class is not low. Make sure to pay attention to safety. Every class in Qinglong Academy had a different test content and the difficulty deviated. Morong Yangshua couldn't help but let out a cold snort, his face filled with piles of resentment. My sister and I are in the same class. The content of the test is the same. You remind my sister to pay attention to safety, yet you only wish me a good grade? Brother Yangshua, you're jealous even of this? Apparently you care more about my sister's safety oh. The guy who forgets his honor when he sees color. Morong Yangshua appeared to be adding oil and vinegar to nothing. But in reality, he was using side conversations to set up Xiao Xingyu and Morong Xinxin. A cold wind came, and the temperature of the mountain field plummeted. Xiao Xingyu subconsciously raised his hand and tied the scarf for Morong Xinxin. It's too cold. You and your brother go back. After Xiao Xingyu finished speaking, he turned around and prepared to get into the car. Morong Xinxin froze in place for a while and suddenly chased after him. Xiao Xingyu just opened the car door and saw Morong Xinxin chasing after him. Six gold. You. Morong Xinxin took off the scarf around her neck, stood on her tiptoes, and wrapped the scarf around Xiao Xingyu's neck. The wind at night was piercing, and a wisp of residual warmth remained on the scarf, as well as her body odor. Lu Jin. Thank you. It's very warm. Seeing Xiao Xingyu get into the car, Morong Xinxin stood at the intersection until the car disappeared at the end of the darkness. Morong Yangshuo walked over the fire of gossip burning on his face. Hey, old sister, did you just give Xingyu a token of love? I'm afraid he's cold. Uh, you're not afraid that your brother I'm cold? Ever since I was a kid, I haven't seen you put a scarf on me. Humph, forgetting your brother when you see color. Morong Xinxin is an isolationist. The world in her eyes is different from normal people. And what she feels and thinks is also different from normal people. In Morong Xinxin's opinion, Xiao Xingyu needed a scarf. It just so happened that she had a scarf. In other words, whatever Xiao Xingyu needed, as long as she had it, she willingly gave it all. In her world, everything is so simple, so pure. Pure and sincere emotions have always been the rarest thing in this age of doom. Under the tree at the entrance of the manor, Morong Ashes had a cigarette in his mouth and witnessed everything just now. Morong Ashes smiled as he pinched out the cigarette and took out a photo from his bosom. On the yellowish photo was a smiling young woman with a head of white hair as smooth as a waterfall. Xiao Min, the children have grown up. By the way, I have to tell you, our XINR seems to have a good home. The limousine drove into the downtown area. Brother Lu, I'll get off here. The one responsible for driving the car was Lu Sandong, whose imperial beast, the storm raging tooth beast, was the first beneficiary of the little blue bottle potion. Mr. Xiao, the general has ordered me to make sure I send you down to the family apartment building. No need, I have other things to do, so I'll get off here. Don't worry. I'll talk to Uncle Morong on the phone after I get off. All right then, Mr. Xiao, we'll see you next time. Xiao Xingyu got off the bus and happily drilled into the brightly lit mall, weaving and sweeping between the countless luxury stores. Two hours passed. Xiao Xingyu walked out of the mall with a large bag. The smile on his face was even more arrogant than the late night cold wind. The mall was not far from the family's apartment, but Xiao Xingyu did not hurry home, but came to a remote abandoned alley, opening the Imperial Beast Heraldry. He triggered the summoning with a blood contract. Two silhouettes appeared in the Hudong. One was the nine-tailed dragon fox Dailu, and the other was the heavenly plague ghost python Medusa. Dailu leaned against the tree, her two fox ears twitching slightly, her gaze falling on the large bag in Xiao Xingyu's hand, a clear color of high-end luxury goods. You kid just made a fortune, and you're splurging like this? Xiao Xingyu smiled and said, My sister brought me up from a young age. Now that I've earned a large sum of money, of course I have to repay my sister. Dai Lu ruffled the hair at her temples and nodded slightly. Well, you guys are really siblings. But then again, the word affection will always be the biggest weakness of you humans. Medusa walked over. Royal Master, I was under the impression that you have been secretly developing the little blue bottle since a week ago. Right. So you planned everything from a week ago? Xiaoxing Yu raised his eyebrows and smiled. Everything was in the air. Medusa took a deep breath, her heart shaking. Xiaoxing Yu was very clear about one thing. With his relationship with the Morong siblings, 
Sooner or later, he would go to the Morong family as a guest and meet Morong Ashes himself, Xiao Xingyu, who was born from grassroots, had to show his value if he wanted to befriend a big shot of this level and establish a stable and friendly relationship. The problem of torpidity was seen by Xiao Xingyu the last time he went to the Navy headquarters to rob the penal colony as a black-robed man. After that, Xiao Xingyu began to work on the development of the little blue bottle. Waiting for this moment today, everything seemed to be a coincidence, but in reality, it was all Xiao Xingyu strategizing. Dai Lu felt creeped out and couldn't help but sigh. Your kid is really a monster with an unbelievable IQ. Being in a chess game, you can always be 10 steps ahead of others. Lu Lu, this is my gift to you. And Sasha, this is for you. Xiao Xingyu suddenly took out two exquisite gift boxes from his large bag and handed them to Dai Lu and Medusa respectively. The fox and snake were both confused. They weren't humans, their essence was a beast. And after living most of their lives, they had never received any gifts. What are you two waiting for? Quickly unwrap it and see if you like it. Xiao Xingyu at this moment was not a divine calculator with unbelievable intelligence, but a young and tender teenager. His clear eyes were full of anticipation, expecting that the gift he gave would be liked by the little fox and the little black snake in front of him. Dai Lu and Medusa glanced at each other. They were both receiving gifts from humans for the first time, and for a moment they were in a bit of a trance. Xiao Xingyu urged, You guys open it quickly. Dai Lu opened the gift box first. There were a lot of things in the gift box, and what caught her eyes was a set of black slim-fitting small suit and professional wraparound skirt. Other than that, there was a pair of high heels, a pair of black stockings, and a pair of gold-rimmed glasses. Lu Lu, do you like it? I'm not interested in human attire. This was carefully selected by me, and I think your temperament and figure are very suitable for this outfit. Seeing the despondency on Xiao Xingyu's face, Dai Lu couldn't bear it and changed her words. I'll go try it on. Dai Lu took the gift box and walked behind the tree, and in less than five seconds, rejoined in front of Xiao Xingyu. People depended on their clothes and horses depended on their saddles, and the same was true for the beastmen department's imperial beasts. At this moment, Dai Lu, dressed in a professional hip dress, her erect hip line extended downward to a pair of slender legs wrapped in black silk, her slender jade feet stepped on a pair of red-soled high-heeled shoes, and her gorgeous face was paired with gold-rimmed glasses, she was just short of a teaching pole in her hand and she could have transformed into a beautiful homeroom teacher of a certain college, and it was the kind that taught English. You humans have such strange clothes to wear. It's not strange. Lu Lu, you look so beautiful right now. If you were my elementary school homeroom teacher, there's no way I'd only get a 6 in math. This set of seemingly regular professional beauty teacher outfit is actually all luxury big brands. The stockings are from Paris House, the glasses are from Dior, and the high heels are from YSL. Anyway, Xiao Xingyu had just gotten a $50 million deposit from Morong Ashes, so a little splurge wouldn't hurt. What are you laughing at? Dai Lu was already uncomfortable in this outfit, and she also heard Medusa's silver bell-like laughter. Little fox, I didn't expect you to fit so well in human clothes, I can't even feel the bestiality in you anymore. Dai Lu's bestiality had indeed weakened quite a bit, but not because of this set of clothes, but because of the special relationship she had with Xiao Xingyu on that night of her breakthrough promotion. Once an orc lineage imperial beast had a skin-to-skin -skin relationship with a human, its bestiality would weaken. By the same token, humanity would also be strengthened. Because of this, Dai Lu wore this human costume that fits so well without the slightest sense of incongruity. Sasha, it's your turn. Medusa opened the gift box, which also contained a set of costumes. In less than a cup of tea, Medusa came from the darkness. Under the backdrop of a red dress skirt, her figure swayed even more delicately. As the breeze blew by, the hem of the dress fluttered, and her longer-than-life jade legs were exposed to the cold air, just like a perfect work of art without a single flaw. This set of red dress skirt is a high-end customized model. The selling price can top a suite in the city. It had to be said that Xiao Xingyu had put blood money into these two imperial beasts. Imperial master, how is it? Medusa seemed to favor this red dress skirt. She lifted the hem and turned around in front of Xiao Xingyu. Good looking, damn good looking. The design of the red dress skirt was a low-cut strapless model. Medusa under the moonlight. Her chest showed a charming career line. Her snow-white shoulders were thin and tender. Coupled with her noble swan neck, her hands and feet exuded a queenly demeanor. Sasha, this red dress skirt suits you very well. The queen's temperament pulls full weight. I'm going to call you Queen Medusa from now on. Royal Lord overpraised. I'm just a little bit better looking than the little fox. Dai Lu rolled her eyes furiously, cursing under her breath. Since you've all received your gifts, there's nothing more for you to do. Hurry back to the Imperial Beast Heraldry. I'm going home. Xiao Xingyu picked up the large bag on the ground and crumbled. This set of skin care products and massager. It's for my sister. 
these snacks and new clothes are for Meng Meng. Director Chen likes to drink tea. This jar of poor is cheap for him. The dean is an alcoholic. She has a bad temper but she's good to me. This bottle of wine is for her. These game consoles and video cards. Those three righteous sons in my dormitory should kneel in front of me to be grateful. Ha ha ha. And sister Yen Yen. Xiao Xing Yu shattered all the way. His face overflowing with joy. It was late at night. Even the streetlights were out on the street. Not a single car. Dai Lu and Medusa did not return to the Imperial Beast Heraldry, but silently followed behind Xiao Xingyu. Little fox, did you hear all his broken thoughts? Heard it. Our Imperial Lord has prepared gifts for everyone around him. Well, but he's the only one who hasn't bought anything for himself. Even if his shoes are all torn and his sweater is off the line. Fox and Snake looked at each other. Their minds hardly at peace. This little guy, he's unlike any human I've ever met. So, Fox, since we're his contracted Imperial Beasts now, in the days to come, let's guard the smile on his face at this moment together. That's natural. Dai Lu nodded. Her feelings towards Xiao Xingyu had long surpassed the feelings of a royal beast towards its royal master. After all, that night, she and he had been honest with each other and were in love with each other. Family apartment. Sister Rua Xue, it's snowing outside. Brother hasn't come back yet. This brat, coming home late and still not answering the phone. Just as Xiao Rua Xue was about to put on her jacket and go out to look for someone. The knock on the door sounded. It must be brother coming back. Yi Shi Meng jumped up from the sofa, her double ponytails jumping along with her cheerful steps. The moment she opened the door to her room, Yi Shi Meng was overjoyed. Brother, Meng Meng, look what I bought for you. Wow, so many snacks. Yi Shi Meng was a snacker and was hooked by the snacks gift bag. Xiao Ruoshiwei huffed and walked over, pinching the side of Xiao Xingyu's face. Xiao Yu, you don't come home after school. It's now one in the morning and the phone doesn't answer. You want to hurry up and kill your sister. Sister, the cell phone is out of power. Well well well, I won't explain. I'm wrong, don't be angry. See what I bought for you. Xiao Xingyu put a big bag of small bags on the table in a brain, piling up into a mountain. Xiao Ruoshiwei was stunned, her pupils trembling. This these are all luxury big brands, adding up to several millions. Xiao Yu, did you win the lottery? Xiao Xingyu shook his head. Then did you rob a bank? No. My confused brother ah, naked loans are even worse. Xiao Xingyu cried and laughed, his hands resting on Xiao Ruoshiwei's shoulders. Sis, don't worry, I got this money legally. Xiao Xingyu bought a lot of things for Xiao Ruoshiwei, besides clothes and skin care products. There were also new cell phones and designer bags. Sis, as I said before, I will definitely let you live a good life and make you the happiest woman in the world. Xiao Ruoshiwei pursed her lips, her eyes red, with you by my sister's side. My sister doesn't need these things and is already the happiest woman. Yi Shi Meng ran over holding a bag of potato chips. Brother, then am I the second happiest woman in the world? Meng Meng, you're not considered a woman. You're just a lowly. How can I become a woman? Just wait until you grow up and get a boyfriend. Then when Meng Meng grows up, she wants to be her brother's girlfriend. Xiao Xingyu smiled helplessly and bitterly, and dotingly touched Yi Shi Meng's head again. You girl, you're really childish. Brother, Sister Ruoshiwei said that I'm a childish girl. Ah this. Words are coarse. Xiao Xingyu was so speechless last time. Or the last time. Xiao Yu. Thank you for buying so many gifts for sister. Sister. In the future. I want you to use the best skincare products for the rest of your life. Live in a big house. And hire a few maids wearing black silk to cook for you and pound your legs. Xiao Ruoshiwei's face turned cold. Brat. You hired a couple of maids in black silk to really just cook for me and pound my legs? Xiao Xingyu scratched his head in embarrassment. Sis, don't think wrong. I'm really doing this for your own good. He he, I think you're doing it for your own good. Yi Shi Meng was on the side, holding a pen and a diary in her hand. The cover of the diary had four big words written on it. The diary of Meng Meng. Weekend. Snow. Night. Today found out my brother's little mind. My brother likes black silk and maids. Sometimes my brother sleeps on the sofa and talks in his sleep, and says that he likes queens wearing leather clothes and pants and it's best to hold a leather whip in his hand and tie him up. My brother likes a lot of different types of things, and he's a fraternizing tomboy. In the near future, when Xiao Xingyu becomes a great hero of the Dragon Kingdom, he will be in a great position and look out of the world. Then the black information recorded in this insignificant diary, as long as it was exposed, would be enough to make Xiao Xingyu lose his reputation and even die a social death. Xiao Yu, the water is running in the bathroom. Go take a shower. Okay sis. Xiao Ruoshiwa helped Xiao Xingyu take off his jacket and suddenly realized something strange. Xiao Yu. Hmm. Why haven't I seen this scarf before? Did you just buy it? 
No, Xiao Ruoshiwei came over and sniffed the smell on the scarf. Faint gardenia aroma. This is a woman's scarf. Right, Xiao Xingyu had no intention of hiding it in front of his sister. This is the scarf my good friend gave me. Her name is Morong Xinxin, the daughter of Navy Admiral Morong Ashes. Yi Shermang was chewing chocolate in her mouth, and it didn't stop her from interjecting. Sister Morong? I know I know. She has long white hair and is very pretty. As pretty as my sister Yi Shuangning. It was well known that a girl giving a boy a scarf meant affection and ambiguity beyond friendship. Xiao Ruoshiwei was also a girl. She realized something and asked tentatively. Xiao Yu, you like that girl? Of course I like it. Lu Jin is kind. Although he doesn't say much, but he's very good to me. He's my good brother. Xiao Xingyu seems to be a girl teasing expert. Really also has the side of a straight man of steel. He hasn't realized how far he treats Morong Xinxin's feelings. Currently just treats Morong Xinxin as a brother. In a word, the relationship between the two. In a layer of window paper is still missing the point of the window paper is not pierced. As for the two sides who to poke this layer of window paper. Depends on the couple movie date after the examination. Xiao Ruoshiwe, however, had an anti-smile on her face. Her beautiful eyes full of relief as the waves of light flowed. This child is older, and it's time to fall in love. Xiao Yu, wake up, don't sleep, little lazy pig, time to get up. Today is the midterm exam. Xiao Xingyu was sleeping really soundly when he was suddenly pulled and tugged by a pair of jade hands. The moment he opened his eyes, Xiao Xingyu saw Xiao Ruoshiwe whose face muscles were straining. Sis, good morning, what morning, the sun is on your ass, forgot what day today is? Xiao Xingyu glanced at the bedside alarm clock and jumped up with a jolt. It's over, it's over, I'm going to be late. The no, 13 train from Longin City to Yellow Smoke City was about to depart in 20 minutes. Xiao Yu, you don't get excited yet. Sis, I might miss the exam, can I not get excited? I know, but even if you're in a hurry, can you put on your pants first? Xiao Ruoshiwe's face was full of blush. Her eyes lowered as she handed Xiao Xingyu a pair of pants. Xiao Xingyu looked down and was instantly petrified. Because of his habit of sleeping naked, Xiao Xingyu never wore pants at night. Just now, because of his excited mood, Xiao Xingyu ignored this point and directly lifted the covers and jumped out of bed, creating the awkward meditative scene at this moment. After putting on his clothes, Xiao Xingyu rushed towards the door. Yi Shermeng was sitting at the dining table, holding up a donut in her hand. Brother cheer up. Meng Meng wishes you first place in the midterm exam. Xiao Ruoshiwei chased after her. Xiao Yu, you haven't eaten yet. Sis, I'm too late. Then take it with you and eat on the way. Xiao Xingyu took the donut from Xiao Ruoshiwei's hand and hurriedly grabbed the door. Sis, you and Meng Meng be good at home. Wait for me to come back. By the time the words landed, Xiao Xingyu had already run out two miles on his Hell Spectre Wolf. Xiao Ruoshiwei stood on the balcony, looking at her brother's figure disappearing into the white snow. The image she had just seen in the bedroom once again surfaced in her mind. This boy Xiao Yu, he has really grown up and turned into a big man with a strong bloodline. If this sentiment of Xiao Ruoshiwei is put in the reading comprehension of the language exam, the full score answer is as follows. There are two meanings of growing up mentioned in the author's article. One is spiritual growth. The second is to grow up physically. Long in station. A train whizzes by. Waiting platform. A lengthy armored train stops at platform 13. This train was train number 13. On the shell of the train, dense claw marks of magical beasts remained, as well as blood stains that could not be washed away. Inside the carriage, it was filled with food, drinking water, cotton clothes and quilts, and other living materials, as well as many nutrients and pills to replenish energy for the imperial beasts, and so on. At the entrance of the carriage, the students of Green Dragon Academy's Year 1 Class 3 were fully loaded and ready to go. Everyone's face was nothing but nervous. Chen Chini and soothed. Students, relax in order to get good grades. Director Chen, there's only two minutes left before the start, and Xiao Xingyu hasn't arrived yet. He's the only one left in the class. This dude wouldn't have overslept, would he? Just as everyone was talking, a wolf whistle came from the distance. In the heavy snow, the teenager with half a donut in his mouth rode a giant wolf at a rapid pace. Wu Shengyu cried out in excitement. Father Yu, Song who followed and shouted, Brothers and sisters, look, righteous father. My righteous father is here. The hell spectral wolf braked sharply. Xiao Xingyu fell out. His stance on the ground was a bit lopsided, and the donuts landed on the ground. Brother Yu, this way of your appearance. Collapsed ah. You guys don't watch the fun. Come give me a hand. Oh, my lumbar disc. The students teamed up together to assist Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu blared at the hellish spectral wolf. Breaking sharply ha? Huh? Making a public spectacle out of me ha? Huh? Just to cheat me out of this half a frying pan right? 
I'll clean you up when the exam is over. Hell Spectral Wolf twisted his head to look into the distance, pretending to be deaf in a really funny way, with half a fritter in his mouth. Kids, get in the car. Chen Chinian started to rush. The train honked, signifying that there was only a minute left before departure. The class waved goodbye towards Chen Chinian and boarded the train one after another. Xiao Xingyu, Chen Chinian shouted. Xiao Xingyu was the last one to board the train. He stood at the joint of the carriages and turned to look at Chen Chinian. Don't forget what you promised me. I won't honor my promise until you achieve an S rating on the exam. Director Chen, I'll remember. There's one more thing. What is it? Chen Chinian rubbed his nose. Come back safely. Xiao Xingyu froze and nodded with a smile. The train honked again and started slowly, heading towards the snow drifting in from the west. Chen Chinian stood on the platform, looking at the train as it drifted away. It's just a midterm exam. There shouldn't be any accidents. Chen Chinian comforted himself, wrapped his coat tightly, walked out of the station, diluted in the crowd, and disappeared. After getting on the bus, the students heard the radio broadcast. All the candidates of Qinglong Academy's Year 1 Class 3, please proceed to Carriage 2 to gather. Xiao Xingyu walked through the crowd and followed everyone to Carriage 2. Wu Shengyu and Song who followed behind Xiao Xingyu's butt. Righteous father, your scarf is not bad, but it seems to be a lady's scarf. Father Yu, could it be that you are a pseudo lady? Xiao Xingyu lifted his hand and gave Song Hu a headbutt. Father Yu, it hurts. Ouch is right. Let you learn your lesson. See if you still dare to talk nonsense in the future. The scarf tied around Xiao Xingyu's neck was the one Morong Xingxin had sent him. Although it was a lady's scarf, Xiao Xingyu didn't care. It was warm. At the same time, Morong Yangshua and Morong Xingxin walked into another examination room to take the midterm exam. The examination system of Qinglong Academy was rather special. The examination room for each class was different, and the content of the examination was also different. The only thing that was the same was the rating of the exam scores, which were all from C to S. Older sister, when the exams are over, you're going to go see a movie with Xing Yu, right? Aha, uh -huh. right. Brother remind you, bring your ID card with you when you get there. Morong Yangshua squeezed his eyebrows. The hint was already spot on. Morong Xinxin looked puzzled to watch a movie. Do you still need to check your ID card? Morong Yangshua waved his hand. No, 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 no. You don't need an ID card to watch a movie. But after the movie, you might need an ID card. Why? Because you need an ID card to stay in an express hotel. Why do I need to stay in an express hotel after watching the movie? Am I without a home? Morong Yangshua covered his forehead and let out a long sigh. Alas, my stupid sister who is as simple as snow. Train number 13, speeding on the snow-covered track. Xiao Xingyu and his classmates came to the no. Two compartment. Carriage two had a lot of space, probably about equal to three normal carriages. And from the decor it looked like a huge conference room. Students, welcome aboard train number 13. I am the leader responsible for escorting the supplies. Qin Yen Yen. Qin Yen Ran was wearing a long ink-colored trench coat. Her long hair was draped over her shoulders. Her slender and slender figure was more upright than some of the male students. And her temperament was like that of a female general from the ancient times. Overbearing and mighty, with sword brows and starry eyes. She's President Qin's daughter, the young master of the Tsang Dong Guild. With this temperament, it's true that a woman is a woman of honor. She's not much older than us and she's already a five-star imperial beast master. The students were talking. Qin Yenran was not only a senior but also an idol in everyone's eyes. Qin Yenran's gaze swept through the crowd and landed on Xiao Xingyu. The two siblings met again, and Qin Yenran greeted Xiao Xingyu with a hidden look. Xiao Xingyu smiled faintly and responded to this valiant godsister with a smile. Students, we, the Tsung Dome Guild, are the main force responsible for escorting the supplies, while you only need to assist well enough. Once Qin Yenran's words came out, the students sighed in relief. With the vault guild around, at least everyone's safety would be maximized. Next, Qin Yen Yen began to introduce the train's construction. Carriages 2 to 5 are the front part of the train. This part is the most vulnerable to sneak attacks and assaults from high level magical beasts. Carriage hashtag 6 10 belongs to the center of the train. When a battle occurs, this part is the safest. Carriage 11 to 15 is the tail part of the train and is also the part where the most accidents occur. Not only do they have to face high-level magical beast attacks, there is also a certain probability of derailment and dislocation. Qin Yan Yan made it clear that the train was divided into the front, center, and rear parts. The most dangerous part was the rear carriages. The second most dangerous was the front carriages. The relatively safest was the center carriage. Students, choose the carriage that suits you according to your needs. After Qin Yan Ran finished speaking, everyone gathered and whispered, 
I'm a person who doesn't have much to pursue, just pass the exam, I'll choose the central carriage. My dad promised me that as long as I can get an A grade on this midterm exam, he'll give me a superpower department imperial beast. So what do you choose? I'll spell it out. I'll try the front compartment. Five minutes passed, and everyone was pretty much done with the discussion. Half of the students chose the center compartment. These people didn't want to get a high rating, they just wanted a safety and a passing grade. Of the remaining half of the students, most chose the front compartment. The front carriages were moderately dangerous and had a chance to get an A grade. As for the students who chose the rear compartment, there were only three. Qin Yin Yan looked at the submitted list and asked again, Xiao Xing Yu, Wu Sheng Yu, and Song Hu, are you three sure you choose to station in the rear compartment? Determined. Xiao Xing Yu was resolute. Wu Sheng Yu and Song Hu glanced at each other, and after hesitating for a moment, they gritted their teeth and replied, Okay, okay. Qin Yin Yan smiled and said, I'll remind you once more that the rear compartment, that is, the tail of train 13, is the compartment with the greatest danger factor? In fact, from before boarding the train, everyone could see the exterior of the train. The several carriages at the rear of the train had the most severely damaged shells and the most residual magical beast claw marks. From this, it wasn't hard to see that Qin Yin Yan wasn't lying, and the person in charge of guarding the tail of the train might even pay with his life. Alright, the division of labor has been completed. Everyone go to their respective posts. Xiao Xing Yu brought his two righteous sons to the last car of the train which was car number 15. Carriage 15 was piled with metal containers filled with nutrients and potions that were incredibly costly. Achu! Wu Sheng Yu wiped his nose and also sneezed. Why is the temperature so low in this carriage? It's just like an ice cellar. Song Hu wrapped his clothes tightly, freezing and beating his upper and lower teeth. The supplies piled up in this carriage need a low temperature environment to be preserved. Xiao Xing Yu gave an explanation. Wu Sheng Yu huddled in the corner, wanting to cry. Next! We're going to spend a day and a night in this carriage. Will we freeze to death without waiting for the magical beasts to invade? You guys won't freeze to death. Leader Qin? Qin Yan Yan and a few members of the vault guild walked into the carriage. Great. There are new clothes. Tiger, one set of clothes is plus size. Let's change. Qin Yan Yan delivered three sets of gray coats. Is it warm? He he he. Warm. Leader Qin. These clothes come with their own heating and air conditioning right. Qin Yan Yan smiled lightly and explained. This is a protective suit that specializes in dealing with low temperature environments. A black technology developed by our Tsong Dome Guild. Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god and was able to see through the material of the inner layer of the clothes with a single glance. The raw material of the inner material of this clothing is taken from the animal skin of the magical beast Heavenly Flame Vudra Bear. No wonder the warmth keeping effect is so good. Qin Yan Yan suddenly wrapped her arms around Xiao Xingyu's shoulders, her right eye blinking. Brother Xingyu, have you been to Yellow Smoke City before? Haven't been. That's great. Sister will bring you to see more this time. Yellow Smoke City Scorpion Wine is one of the best. Let's not get drunk at that time. Xiao Xing you couldn't help but spit out. Sister Yen Ran, I'm not here to accompany you on a trip. I'm taking the midterm exams. Several members of the Tsung Dome Guild also gathered around. Xing you, when we get to the terminal, you have to have a drink with me. Yes, yes, yes. You're the national treasure of our Tsung Dome Guild. We'll definitely treat you well. Yellow Smoke City has a lot of good food and fun. The guild will reimburse you for the food and drinks. So you can have a good time at that time. In addition to Xiao Xingyu's identity as a candidate of the Green Dragon Academy, there was also a layer of Tsung Dome Guild's identity as a special pharmacist. Looking at Xiao Xingyu mingling with the bigwigs of the Tsung Dome Guild and chatting up a storm, Wu Shengyu and Song who could not help but hang their heads. Tiger, are we here for the midterm exams or not? We are indeed here for the exams. But it seems like Father Yu is here for the guild reunion. The car radio broadcast. Lunchtime is here. Please proceed to car 8 to gather for lunch. Train number 13 ran smoothly on the rambling track as the time came to 12 noon. All the candidates came to gather in compartment 8. Carriage 8, located in the middle of the entire train, had both rest and dining functions. All the candidates were seated, and each of them was given a boxed lunch of one meat and two vegetables, plus a bottle of hot milk. Up to this point, the train hadn't suffered any sneak attack attacks from any magical beasts. However the less danger that occurred, the more nervous the candidates became, because untimely bombs are far more terrifying than time bombs. Ghosts know at what point in time the beasts will sneak attack the train. We can only always be vigilant. Some students were therefore distracted, and the boxed lunch in their hands was tasteless and discarded. Seeing this, Qin Yin Yan smiled with a flourish. Classmates, you don't have to look like birds of a feather. According to my many years of experience in escorting trains, there will not be any sneak attacks by magical beasts on this section. 
The closest road section to the occurrence of a magical beast sneak attack is the Five Poison Canyon. Based on the speed at which the train is traveling, there are still two hours before it passes through the Five Poison Canyon zone. Xin Yenlan's words gave the students a great deal of peace. This indicated that within two hours, the probability of danger was low, and everyone could enjoy this lunch without worry. Tiger, this boxed lunch tastes pretty good. Yeah, old Wu, you're not eating this chicken leg. Give it to me? Who said I won't eat it? Don't grab it. Xiao Xingyu pushed the boxed lunch in front of Song Hu. I'm not hungry. You eat this one of mine too. Thank you, righteous father. These two righteous sons beside Xiao Xingyu only knew how to bury their heads in dry rice, not seeing the slightest bit of nervousness or panic. Unlike the other students, these two had Xiao Xingyu as their righteous father to back them up, so they naturally had no worries. Brother Xingyu, come and sit. Xiao Xingyu was pulled over by Qin Yanran. In compartment 8, the candidates sat together and the members of the Tsang Dome Guild sat together. Xiao Xingyu mingled with the members of the guild, chatting about interesting things in the guild. Laughter after laughter. The students couldn't watch and couldn't help but spit it out. If it wasn't for the fact that he still had the school license plate of the Green Dragon Academy on his chest, I would have thought that he was a patriarchal figure of the Tsung Dong Guild. Brother Yu is really awesome. He hasn't even graduated yet and he's already been rewarded by the Tsung Dong Guild. Leader Qin is also Brother Yu's godsister. Envious. Don't be sour. Everyone, if Xiao Xing Yu didn't have the ability, could he make an exception to become the special pharmacist of the Tsung Dong Guild? Ever since the supernova competition, all the freshmen of Qinglong Academy were in awe of Xiao Xing Yu. What's more, the candidates on the train were all Xiao Xing Yu's classmates. And although there was some envy and jealousy when they spat, deep down they were all in awe and admiration of Xiao Xing Yu. However, when some of the candidates mentioned special pharmacist, an inappropriate voice rang out. Special pharmacist? Oh, at such a young age, making an exception to become the special pharmacist of the Tsung Dome Guild. Isn't it just through the back door? What's so great about it? The carriage fell into a silence, and everyone's eyes looked towards a man around 30 years old in the corner. The man wore a duck-tongued cap. His appearance could not be described as decent. His pair of Danfang eyes were slightly narrowed, and his temperament was slightly lewd. Deputy Leader Li Kai was not used to hearing the man's yin and yang, and got up to dislike him. Lin Yu, you can't rate as a special pharmacist. You're the problem of your own strength. Don't use this tone of voice to yin and yang xing yu. Lin Yu picked up the brim of his hat, a cold smile spreading across his thin lips. Li Kai, did I say anything wrong? Xiao Xing Yu, an outsider? If he didn't rely on Leader Qin's connections through the back door, could he be rated as a special pharmacist? Bang! Qin Yanran's pink fist slammed on the table and the braced pork ribs in the boxed lunch bounced. Lin Yu, it's true that I treat Qin Yu as my own brother, but I didn't insert any subjective emotions in the matter of selecting the special pharmacist. Lin Yu was still unconvinced and questioned loudly. Leader Qin, I, Lin Yu, have been inducted into the Tsung Dome Guild for eight years, and I've done a lot of credit and hard work in these eight years. Previously, I traveled for half a year and assisted the guild members in completing several S-ranked missions. The day I came back, I thought that I would definitely be reused by the guild and rated as a special pharmacist. And what happened? Lin Yu became more and more emotional and pointed at Xiao Xingyu's face. As a result, this outsider actually robbed me of the title of special appointed apothecary. May I ask how many times he has been born and died for the Tsung Dome Guild? Leader Qin, just because you're the president's daughter, can you blatantly defend an outsider and help him through the back door? The other guild members couldn't help themselves and rose up to curse angrily. Lin Yu, watch your words. How are you talking to Missy? Believe it or not I'll abolish you. Dare to slander Missy one more time. I'll throw you off the train and feed you to the wolves along the edge. Xin Yanran was just about to say something when she was held down by Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu still maintained his elegant smile, his mind not fluctuating in the slightest. Dr. Li, if you want to be evaluated as a special pharmacist, it's not based on merit and hard work. It's based on medical skills. Yo, listening to Dr. Zhao's words, is he confident in his medical skills? The smell of gunpowder filled the carriage. Dr. Xiao, do you dare to bet on a game? What's the bet? Let's have a medical skill competition. If your medical skill is above mine, I'll take the initiative to hand in my resignation and leave the Tsung Dome Guild. As Lin Yu said this, a fierce color surfaced under his eyes. On the contrary, if your medical skills are below mine, you must take the initiative to leave the Tsung Dome Guild. Xiao Xingyu did not hesitate in the slightest. Fine, I'll bet with you on this one. Lin Yu was stunned, not expecting Xiao Xingyu to agree so readily. Qin Yan Yan tugged on Xiao Xingyu's sleeve and whispered with her ear. Brother Xingyu, don't fall for his agitation. You boarded this train for the midterm exams. Don't waste your energy on Lin Yu. 
Xiao Xingyu patted the back of Qin Yin Yin's hand. Sister Yin Yin, don't worry, competing in medical skills is just a matter of raising my hand. I'll just go with the flow. I won't delay the midterm exams. Lin Yu's posture rose arrogantly and said aloud. Classmates, you all heard it. Help me be a witness. If Xiao Xingyu's medical skills are below mine, he has to voluntarily withdraw from the Tsong Dong Guild. All the students didn't squeak in response, but instead looked at Lin Yu with contemptuous dislike. Lin Yu didn't care about this and even lit a cigarette, crossing his legs and rejoicing inwardly. Xiao Xingyu, at first I was worried that you wouldn't dare to answer the battle. It's good now. The moment you are crushed by me in the field of medical arts, even if Qin Yin Yan protects you, I'd like to see if you have the face to die begging to stay in the Tsung Dong Guild. After lunch, everyone took a short break. The time came to 1.50 p.m. The radio rang out. Warm reminder, there is still a 10-minute drive to the Five Poison Canyon section. Please be vigilant and be ready to deal with unexpected situations. Hearing the broadcast, all the candidate's sleepiness was gone, and every nerve was once again taut. Father Yu, there are still 10 minutes to go before the train passes through the Five Poison Canyon. I'm a bit panicked. Director Chen said that the Five Poison Canyon is coiled with a large number of highly poisonous magical beasts. My legs are starting to go weak. Xiao Xingyu leaned against the window, the corners of his mouth gradually rising. It's been a long time since I've done a fight, and my hands are itching. Somehow, I'm suddenly a little excited and ready to start warming up. Next, it would be the first battle after the Holy Light Angel Beast evolved into a four-winged Holy Angel. The train's traveling speed began to slow down. The time came to two o'clock in the afternoon. The radio sounded once again. Full alert. All hands on alert. The train is about to pass through the dangerous section, Five Poison Canyon. Personnel from all departments remember to brace themselves and be ready to fight at any time. Xiao Xingyu opened his eyes and looked sideways out the window. The train traveled to a narrow and magnificent bridge with layers of mountains on both sides. And underneath the bridge was a river that had not yet frozen over. This V-shaped Grand Canyon was the Five Poison Canyon where magical beasts were endless, and it was also one of the three dangerous points that Train 13 was bound to pass through. Tiger, look, the river under this canyon. Not only is it not frozen, the river water is actually black. Unbelievable. This is the first time I've seen black river water. The temperature outside the train reached about 10 degrees below zero. The mountains on both sides of the canyon were covered with a thick blanket of snow. Only this river under the canyon was still surging with waves. The black water bubbled out continuously, emitting an inky mist that enveloped the canyon. Even through the car windows, the atmosphere was depressing. The river water is polluted by the feces of the highly poisonous magical beasts. That's why it's black. Don't make a fuss. You daddy. The toxin can actually dye the entire river basin black? Then wouldn't the number of magical beasts inhabiting the canyon be? Thud. Crap. What's that sound? Knock knock. Old woo. The crashing sound seems to be coming from the top of the head. Overhead? Boom. With a loud bang. A huge fist crushed the roof of compartment 15 and penetrated the interior of the compartment. The fist was covered in blackened hair, and the dirty nail crevices oozed viscous venom outwards. Old Wu. Song Wu shouted sharply. The black fist suddenly spread out and instantly clutched Wu Xingyu's body. Although Wu Sheng Yu was short, he was at least an adult. However, his body looked exceptionally small in front of this large hand. Oh. The gusty wind mixed with snowflakes and ice crystals seemed like a relentless tsunami, crazily pouring into compartment 15. Song Wu fell to the ground, his forehead knocking out blood stains. Father Yu, old Wu has been captured. Xiao Xing Yu leapt to the top of the carriage, and the image in front of him made his pupils clench. The train was located on the bridge across the river and was traveling at a constant speed. An ape that was over 5 meters tall and wrapped in black fur was hanging upside down from the diagonal ropes on the side of the bridge with its tail. Mature body, third order, magical beast, blood-eyed spirit ape. Xiao Xingyu did not even need to open the eye of the demon god to easily see through the data panel of this magical beast. At this moment, the blood-eyed spirit ape was clutching Wu Xingyu's body in its right hand. Wu Xingyu's face was pale with fear, but he didn't even have the strength to summon the imperial beast, and he was deathly suppressed by the blood-eyed spirit ape. The blood-eyed spirit ape grinned and spat out a tongue that emitted a fishy odor, while raising his hand. Intending to stuff Wu Sheng Yu into his mouth as if it were afternoon tea. Black Striker. Ow. The pitch black hellfire blazed as the hell specter wolf appeared beside Xiao Xing Yu. Xiao Xing Yu did not panic and mobilized his spiritual energy. The hell spectral wolf sensed its master's will and opened its mouth, spewing out a black pillar of fire. The pillar of fire instantly penetrated the shoulder blade of the blood eye spirit ape. Sharp pain struck the blood eye spirit ape as it let out a wail and lost strength in its palms. Father Yu. Save me. Wu Shang Yu fell from a high altitude, and below him was the black river that was soaked in toxins. 
Once a human fell into the river, it was even more terrifying than falling into a chemical workshop's dye stuff tank. The blood, flesh and bones would melt instantly, leaving behind only a wisp of curling smoke. At this time, Song Hu also climbed out of the carriage and came to the roof to join Xiao Xingyu. Old Wu, seeing Wu Xingyu's rapid descent, Song Hu anxiously yelled, Don't worry, let him do it himself. Xiao Xingyu did not make a move. Although Wu Shangyu had always called him his righteous father, even if he was his own father, he could not protect his own son for the rest of his life. Facing the threat of death, Wu Shangyu erupted with the desire to survive and urged his entire body's spiritual energy. A blue butterfly with a body that was one size larger than an eagle appeared out of thin air. Wu Shangyu rode on the back of the butterfly, and with a steep climb, flew high into the air, away from the dark river. Song Hu patted his lean chest and let out a big breath. Great! Wu Xingyu's blue butterfly in the middle of summer was none other than his imperial beast, the rainstorm butterfly. It was an imperial beast with a water attribute combined with a flight attribute. Its bloodline wasn't considered to be much stronger, but it could play an unexpected role in group battles. Wu Shangyu held his breath and roared, Dead monkey, I'll kill you. The storm rain butterfly flapped its wings, and the surrounding water vapor condensed into densely packed sharp ice needles, which Qi Shui shot towards the blood-eyed spirit monkey. This was the signature battle skill of the storm rain butterfly, the ice-sealed pear blossom needle, which caused a freezing and slowing down effect on the enemy. The blood-eyed spirit ape once again let out a painful howl. Its right shoulder blade was penetrated by hell's roar, leaving a shocking bloody hole. Its left arm, stuck with ice needles, quickly froze into ice and could not even be lifted. This wave of attacks from Xiao Xingyu and Wu Shangyu struck the effect of ice and fire, completely enraging this monkey. The blood-eyed spirit ape leapt high into the air and made a dive like a cannonball smashing into compartment 15. Once this giant ape smashed onto carriage 15, the entire carriage would definitely explode and be damaged. Tiger, understood. This was the tacit understanding between a righteous father and a righteous son. Song who opened the imperial beast crest and summoned the imperial beast. An upright walking minotaur appeared on the roof of the car. This was Song who's contracted orc type imperial beast, the berserk bull demon. The berserk bull demon raised its arms and crossed them part against the impact of the blood-eyed spirit ape falling from the sky. In the previous assessment orientation, Song Hu had obtained an occupational orientation of tank, as his imperial beast could resist massive amounts of damage for the team. Right at this moment, the window of another carriage opened and a pretty figure flipped upwards and landed on the roof. Brother Xingyu, is everything alright? It's fine. Just a blood-eyed spirit ape, with Xiao Xingyu's current strength. Dealing with a mature body-level magical beast was as simple as crushing an ant. Do you need my help? No need. Song Hu catalyzed his spiritual power, and the berserk bull demon used its milk strength to push the blood-eyed spirit ape away with its terrifying brute force. The blood-eyed spirit ape's feet were hanging in the air, and it tried to use its tail to hook the train's window. Freya, holy light flashed and the stars shook, a ray of light swept past, and the corpse of the blood-eyed spirit ape separated. The body of the blood-eyed spirit ape was like a headless ghost, falling down the black river. Xin Yanran raised her eyes to look and above the train floated a four-winged angel clad in golden armor. The four holy light feathers gently opened and closed, setting off dense and brilliant star-like particles around it. Brother Xingyu, is this that holy light angel beast? Four feathered wings. It evolved. Xiao Xingyu smiled proudly. Freya is now a mature body imperial beast, a four-winged holy angel. At this moment, the four-winged holy angel was holding a three-foot lightsaber in its left hand and carrying the blood-eyed spirit ape's dead head in its right hand. The public debut of the four-winged saint angel opened the prelude to the bloody battle in the canyon. The four-winged saint angel flapped its feathered wings and landed beside Xiao Xingyu, still carrying the head of the blood-eyed spirit ape in his hand. The hell spectral wolf opened its mouth and swallowed the blood-eyed spirit ape's head in one gulp, and with a baleful grunt of its mouth, spat out a magical beast crystal core. Xiao Xingyu opened his spatial ring and stowed the magical beast crystal core in it. A mature body highly poisonous system magical beast crystal core could fetch a good price on the market. Leader Qin, the ape swarm is here. Blood-eyed spirit apes were typical swarming magical beasts, and the death of one blood-eyed spirit ape drew retaliation from a large number of blood-eyed spirit apes. In the canyon filled with black mist, ear-piercingly sharp ape cries rose and fell. Holy shit, so many dead monkeys. Wu Shengyu had just survived the calamity and couldn't relax in time to be shocked by the sight before him. The blood-eyed spirit apes possessed powerful jumping abilities. They leapt high from the canyon and quickly climbed up to the bridge spanning the river. Their scarlet eyes burning with rage as they frantically chased after the tail of the train with their hands and feet. A guild member proposed. Leader Qin, I don't think it's necessary to fight with these monkeys. You can get rid of them by ordering the train to accelerate. Xiao Xingyu directly interrupted. No, it can't accelerate. 
It's coming. Just as Xiao Xingyu's words fell, a huge black shadow flashed by. Before everyone could react, the train seemed to hit a mountain, shaking violently and sharply decreasing in speed. In less than 10 seconds, the train was unexpectedly forced to a stop. Jin Yan Yan looked back, only to see a pair of huge, wide, black hands, which were rigidly holding down the front of the train. Blood-eyed great king ape? How did you come across it? The monster that was able to easily force train 13 to a halt with just a pair of hands was a black-furred great ape with a size like a mountain. Father Yu, what is this monster from? It looks as big as Godzilla. Blood-eyed great king ape. Transcendent body, third order, magical beast. The leader of this group of blood-eyed spirit apes. Crap. Encountering a transcendent mortal body level magical beast so soon? Our luck is too bad. Qin Yan Yan's face was slightly gloomy as she murmured in a low voice. According to my past experience, the five poison canyon is the least dangerous of the three dangerous sections of train 13's route. This is still the first time I've encountered a transcendent mortal body level magical beast here. Xiao Xingyu calmly analyzed. The blood-eyed great king ape is sleepy by nature. And in the snowy weather, it should have been hibernating in a cave. Sleeping one without squeaking. But, Sister Yen Ran, if you look at its abdomen, you'll know why it gave up hibernation and chose to ambush our train here. Qin Yin Yin picked up her sight and locked onto the abdomen of the blood-eyed great king ape. The blood-eyed great king ape's abdomen showed an obvious bulge. I see. It's pregnant. That's right. That's why it didn't hibernate. When a magical beast was pregnant, it urgently needed to replenish a large amount of nutrients. For the sake of its child's smooth birth, the blood-eyed great king ape gave up its hibernation and hid under the bridge, waiting for this moment. At the moment when the train traveled to the middle of the bridge, the blood eyes great king ape tumbled up from under the bridge and forced the train to stop with its terrifying physical qualities. The blood eyed great ape revealed a bloodthirsty expression, and the fishy saliva dripped down from the corner of his mouth, corroding the ground and setting off a smoke of zip, zip, zip. In the eyes of the blood eyed great king ape, all the humans on the train were rations to provide nourishment for its children. As far as I remember, the blood eyed great king ape only gets pregnant once every five years. Brother Xingyu, I have to say, your class is really unlucky. Just in time for it to get pregnant. Xiao Xingyu shook his head and laughed straight. This is fate, right? A loud noise came. The blood-eyed great king ape shattered the windshield of the front of the car, grabbed the scared and pissed driver, and swallowed it into its mouth. The driver's cries for help couldn't even penetrate the demonic beast's body. And a human life ended in such a hasty manner. Qin Yan Yan ordered. All members get off the train. Guard the train. And repel the wraith. The members of the vault guild were the first to get off the train, forming a tight line of defense in front of the front of the train. A portion of the candidates summoned up the courage to get off the train one after another and came to the rear of the train to meet up with Xiao Xingyu. There was also a portion of the candidates that didn't even have the courage to get off the train. These cowards lay on their backs under the seats of the carriages, covering their ears with their hands and shivering. Qin Yan Yan did not force these candidates to get off the train, as the safety of the candidates was most important. As for the grade of the midterm exam, these candidates who didn't dare to get out of the car would be listed as failing. The blood-eyed great king ape let out a roar and pounded its arms against its chest. Xiao Xingyu saw Qin Yan Yan's entanglement and said confidently, Sister Yan Yan, you're the only five-star royal beast master we have, so you go deal with the blood-eyed great king ape, leave the rest to us. Good. Although Qin Yan Yan was worried about Xiao Xingyu, she also believed in Xiao Xingyu's strength. The blood-eyed great king ape was a transcendent body, third stage, level magical beast. Just one step away from breaking through to the beast king body. A monster of this level could only be dealt with by a five-star imperial beast master. The situation was critical. And everyone was clearly divided. Qin Yan Yan led the members of the Tsong Dong Guild and launched a siege towards the blood-eyed great king ape. Electricity flickered and thunder rose in all directions. A three-tailed fox appeared on top of the front of the vehicle. Its entire body entwined with lightning. The tips of its three tails releasing three balls of electricity that simultaneously bombarded the chest of the blood-eyed great king ape. The blood-eyed great king ape roared in pain. Its chest was roasted by the lightning, and a sense of paralysis ran through the sky. Under the intense electric shock, the blood-eyed great king ape rolled its eyes. This fox capable of releasing lightning was Qin Yan Yan's usual imperial beast, the three-tailed thunder fox. In terms of rank, the three-tailed thunder fox was a transcendent mortal body, third stage, imperial beast, equal to the blood-eyed great king ape. Qin Yan Yan and the others were focused on dealing with the blood-eyed great king ape. While the enemy that Xiao Xingyu and his classmates had to deal with was the ominous swarm of apes, there were quite a number of blood-eyed spirit apes inhabiting the canyon, and they all surged onto the bridge, coming towards the tail of the train. Visually, the number of blood-eyed spirit apes is over 200. This midterm is literally killing me. Mom, I want to go home. Being timid was a big no-no in battle. 
These candidates were all brats under the age of 20, and had not usually come into contact with groups of magical beasts in such large numbers, so it was only natural that they would wimp out right before the battle. However, Xiao Xingyu did not curse a single word, but only used his magnetic voice to encourage. Putting aside the fact that this is a midterm exam, is it possible that after graduation when we set foot on the battlefield, we will also surrender before the battle like we are doing at this moment? Xiao Xingyu, you talk a good game, we will die. Xiao Xingyu turned around and stared at a freckle-faced teenager. I remember you. You're Ding Tao who scored second in our class theory class. The first place was naturally Xiao Xingyu. Theory grades are useless. Our whole class adds up to less than 50 people. And there are more than 200 blood-eyed spirit apes. How can we fight? Can't win at all. Just giving away heads. Xiao Xingyu raised his eyes and smiled. Ding Tao. You can go back to the car. Just go back. Before going back, you shout three times in public that I, Ding Tao, am not a royal beast master. Ding Tao's face was unsightly as he bit through his dry mouth. Shouted out. I, Ding Tao, am not a royal beast master. I, Ding Tao, am not a royal beast master. I, Ding Tao, under the gaze of his classmates, Ding Tao's little face was suffocatingly red. Damn it. Obviously if I just shout the last sentence again, I'll be able to return to the car. I don't want to die in this shithole. It's like my throat is sticking. It was just one sentence. It wouldn't even take three seconds to shout it out. But Ding Tao was unable to shout it out. Xiao Xingyu scanned the circle and yelled lowly. Now whoever still wants to go back to the car, shout three times. At this time, a female student who was usually the most timid, raised her right hand and opened the Imperial Beast Heraldry. She was very timid and was usually at the bottom of the class. But at this moment, she chose to summon the Imperial Beast to answer the battle. Immediately after that, everyone opened their Imperial Beast crest one after another, and their own Imperial Beasts appeared beside each of them. At this moment, the apes attacked, and Xiao Xingyu shouted aloud, Battle! This was a midterm exam. At the same time, it was also the first joint group battle of the first year class 3 of the Green Dragon Academy, facing the mature body level blood eye spirit ape. It was inevitable for these green candidates to beat their hearts. However, under Xiao Xingyu's appeal, the candidates endeavored to overcome their physiological fears and summon their vibrant will to fight. Xiao Xingyu reminded, Don't forget, everyone, as long as you kill a mature bodied magical beast, you'll get a C rating. The crowd shouted in unison, Fight for the pass. The passing line was the greatest motivation for the candidates to devote themselves to fighting. Song who catalyzed his spiritual energy, the berserk bull demon took heavy steps and was the first to rush towards the crawling group of apes. My bull is responsible for resisting damage. You guys do your best to play. The greatest advantage of the berserk bull demon was that it possessed a defense that far surpassed that of other imperial beasts, and it could also increase blood recovery by 10% for nearby friends. One after another, the blood-eyed spirit ape swarmed. With his own strength, the berserk bull demon used his lanky body as a wall, stopping five blood-eyed spirit apes in one breath. Brothers, don't let Song who carry it alone. Let's go too. My royal beast is also a defense system royal beast. Count me in. If I die, I'll still be a good man 20 years later. I'll fight. Once in a practical assessment class, Chen Chinian had planned different career paths for each of the students in class 3. At this moment, the tank squad led by Song Hu, each summoned a royal beast with strong defense, forming a sturdy line of defense to stand hard against the attacks of the apes. Xiao Xingyu began to give orders. Archer in position. Long range attack. The students of the third class took Xiao Xingyu as their backbone and listened to all of his arrangements. The imperial beasts with long-range attack abilities hid behind the defense line and shot wildly. An ice arrow poured down, and a flame cannonball drew a perfect parabola from mid-air, striking the back row of the ape group with precision. Old Wu, take charge of controlling the field. Wu Xinyo's occupational positioning was that of a mage, and his imperial beast, the Stormbringer Butterfly, was able to inflict a wide range of frost damage. The rainstorm butterfly soared into the sky and flapped its large, wide wings, spilling out blue powder that enveloped the entire bridge. The blue powder penetrated the skin of the blood-eyed spirit apes, triggering the frost effect. Some blood-eyed spirit apes instantly froze into ice sculptures, and some blood-eyed spirit apes with strong resistance had their movement speed drastically reduced even if they did not freeze into ice sculptures. This created a good opportunity for Xiao Xingyu. Black Striker. Ow. The Hell Spectral Wolf rushed in front of Xiao Xingyu opening its mouth wide and building up flames deep in its throat. As Xiao Xingyu urged his spiritual energy, the hell spectral wolf spewed out a fire lotus. The fire lotus swelled and grew as it spun faster and faster. The hellfire lotus, the heaven-defying battle technique that had once ignited the entire arena at the supernova competition, was as terrifying as it was powerful. 
When the Hellfire Lotus swelled to its limit, it landed right in the middle of the apes and exploded. Rumble. The sound of the explosion was as loud as thunder, and the black waves of fire rippled in all directions, as brilliant and eye-catching as the fireworks blooming in the air. In the turbid and cold air, there was a reddish-black aerosol remaining, which was the demonic factor that contained the power of demons. Hellfire Lotus. Awesome. Brother you deserves to be the supernova champion. It's really pale. This move, secured more than 50 blood-eyed spirit apes. Underneath the battle flames were the corpses of 52 blood-eyed spirit apes, already roasted into charcoal by the inferno flames. When the wind blew, only a green magical beast crystal core remained. Everyone, this isn't my work alone. It was you guys who teamed up earlier to consume the enemy's blood, so I could harvest their bloodied and kill them all in one go. So, you guys are far stronger than you think you are, aren't you? Xiao Xingyu's every word was the greatest encouragement to all the candidates, even his back could make those around him feel at ease. With that, Xiao Xingyu turned around, his gaze sweeping over the faces of every candidate. If there are still wimps amongst you, you can shout three times that I'm not a royal beast master and return to the car. No, I'm not going to back down, brother you, I'm going to keep fighting, even though I was injured by a dead monkey's tail just now, I'm not going to fight with a minor injury. Human courage and bloodlust always thickened in battle. After the first round of battles, the confusion in the eyes of these youthful and tender teenage girls were transformed into firm fighting spirit. Brother Yu, watch your back. The position Xiao Xingyu was in was right next to the guardrail of the bridge. A sinister and cunning blood-eyed spirit ape suddenly rolled over the guardrail from under the bridge and sneak attacked Xiao Xingyu's back. Everyone was too late to react. The blood-eyed spirit ape's sneak attack was too fast, and its fist slammed fiercely towards Xiao Xingyu. Swoosh. At the critical moment, a flexible spider silk cut through the air. Xiao Xingyu turned around, and the fist of the blood-eyed spirit ape was only 10 centimeters away from his face. But this short 10 centimeters, the blood-eyed spirit ape was unable to cross, because its fist was wrapped by a layer of thick spider silk, and its feet were also fixed in place by the spider silk and mucus, unable to move by half. Above the bridge, there was a red-colored spider hanging upside down. The spider's size was equivalent to a Mercedes-Benz sedan, and a pair of purple eyes flashed with a demonic light. There were three pairs of weavers on its tail each spewing out spider silk with different properties to inflict different damage effects on the enemy. Red Shadow Spider? Isn't this Ding Tao's Imperial Beast? Ding Tao He. Everyone looked towards the rear of the train. Ding Tao's back was against the door of the train compartment. He hadn't finished shouting I'm not a royal beast master. So he didn't return to the train. Xiao Xingyu smiled and asked. Figured it out? Xiao Xingyu. Cut the crap. The spider silk is not going to last much longer. Ding Tao was sweating profusely and shouted at the top of his voice. The blood-eyed spirit ape was powerful. It let out a furious roar as the spider silks broke one after another. When the last spider silk snapped, the blood-eyed spirit ape completely broke free from the spider web and opened its mouth wide, wanting to eat Xiao Xingyu in one bite. Me so. Holy light flashed as a lightsaber penetrated the blood-eyed spirit ape's head. The light in the blood-eyed spirit ape's eyes gradually extinguished, and it planted itself backward, falling into the river setting off waves until the ripples disappeared. A lightsaber reappeared in the hands of the four-winged holy angel, without the slightest ripple of emotions on her stunningly beautiful face. Killing a blood-eyed spirit ape was effortless for her. As the smell of blood filled the air, the sleeping magical beasts in the canyon awoke one after another. Ape cries, tiger whistles, bird calls, the cries of various magical beasts intertwined and replayed, evolving a terrifying waltz. Xiao Xingyu, there are too many magical beasts. We can't win. How do you know we can't win if we haven't fought? Ding Tao wanted to say something. Ding Tao. I still say that. You can go back to the car as long as you were yelling three times. Enough. I'm a royal beast master. Ding Tao clenched his fist and shouted. Xiao Xingyu nodded in satisfaction. Since you are a royal beast master. Next. Do what a royal beast master should do. Ding Tao gritted his teeth and nodded heavily. Alright. Xiao Xingyu. I'll take this life of mine and gamble with you. At the front of the train. The battle became even more intense. Qin Yan Yan and the guild members were besieging the transcendent mortal body magical beast Blood Eyes Great King Ape. While fighting, everyone also used their afterimages to focus on the rear of the train. Leader Qin. This batch of candidates is of good quality. At least they dare to fight. Yeah, and very disciplined. I originally thought that these kids would be like headless flies, but I didn't expect the group battle to be so well coordinated. Qin Yan Yan's remaining light fell on Xiao Xing Yu's body. For these kids to be able to play tacit teamwork, it's all due to my brother Xing Yu's good leadership. Xiao Xing Yu acted as the commander of the battlefield, and his every word not only boosted morale, but also allowed the candidates to establish tacit understanding in a short period of time. Leader Qin, 
The bridge seems to be shaking a lot. There's movement underwater. Not good. It happened suddenly. The originally calm water under the bridge suddenly rose high. A huge monster rushed out of the water. Brother you, something is coming out from underwater. Crap. What kind of monster is this? Help. Whenever an unexpected moment came, no one would be given the chance to react. Under the crowd's panicked gaze, a giant snake rushed out of the water. The head of this giant snake was three times the size of a locomotive, causing a soul-shattering visual impact on the candidates. On top of the giant snake's head, there was also a rose-colored crown, adding a bit of ferocity and dominance to it. Not good. This is a full-bodied, first-order, magical beast. The crown boa. Ding Tao was worthy of being the second highest ranking student in the theory scores of the first year class 3. He had stayed up all night in the library of the Green Dragon Academy lighting lamps and boiling oil, repeatedly memorizing one magical beast atlas after another. The moment the crown boa rushed out of the water, Ding Tao instantly recognized the magical beast. The crown boa was a full-bodied level magical beast, possessing powerful attack and defense. According to common sense, in order to deal with a full-bodied level magical beast, a beast master would need to be at least at the three-star level. However, most of the candidates who participated in this midterm exam were two-star imperial beast masters, and there were even a few poor students whose segments were still stuck at the one-star imperial beast master level. The crown boa was the famous king of sneak attacks in the Five Poison Canyon. It usually lurked in the black water of the river without making a sound. Whenever the train passes over the bridge, it will suddenly rush out of the water, open its bloody mouth, and bite off the bridge with the speed of a thunderbolt. As soon as the bridge breaks, the train will fall into the river. All the humans on the train would naturally fall into the food of the crown boa. Leader Qin. It's the crown boa. It's a full-bodied level magical beast. Xing Yu and his segments are less than three stars. They're definitely no match. Crap. Our side can't spare a hand either. The blood-eyed great king ape suddenly went berserk and frantically pounded its chest. The roar emitted waves of sound that shook through the canyon, causing a paralyzing stun effect on the guild members' imperial beasts. Everything happened so fast that Qin Yan Yan didn't have time to support the candidates located at the rear of the train. Qin Yan Yan only blinked, and the crown boa had already completely leapt out of the water, its thick body of over a hundred meters squirming in the air, touching the nerve center of every giant object phobic patient. The eyes of the crown boa were burning with greed, and its mouth was completely open. According to this plot projection, in the next second, the crown boa could bite off the bridge. If the bridge breaks, the train will inevitably fall into the river. The train was carrying military supplies to support Yellow Smoke City, so there was no room for error. Medusa's voice came from Xiao Xingyu's mind. Royal Master, do you need my concubine to make a move? With Medusa's strength, she could completely suppress this crown boa instantly without revealing her identity. Simply by using the bloodline of the Heavenly Tribulation Ghost Python, there's no use in killing a chicken. Xiao Xingyu rebuffed Medusa's good intentions. At this moment, the sharp fangs of the crown boa were only less than a meter away from the cross-section of the bridge. All the candidates panicked and their minds went blank. Freya, a holy light flashed by. Xiao Xingyu urged a large amount of spiritual energy, and telepathy was generated between the imperial master and the imperial beast. The four-winged saint angel swooped down from high altitude, flinging its slender legs and kicking the seven-inch part of the crown boa. Crap! Light speed kick! I've seen this move in the live broadcast of the supernova competition. That's right! This move is the high-level holy light attribute battle technique, light one flash, light one flash, the signature battle technique of the four-winged saint angel. In a matter of moments, the four-winged holy angel stored up his strength to release a kick that approached the speed of light, striking the enemy's vitals. This battle technique was simple and rough, specializing in fancy tricks. Boom, 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 boom. The explosions rang out 12 times in a row, hating to shatter everyone's eardrums, and incidentally, everyone's three views. As the smoke cleared, everyone was dumbstruck. This kick of the four-winged holy angel directly exploded the head of the crown boa. Under everyone's unbelievable gaze, the body of the crown boa that had lost its head was like a deflated ball, falling down softly. Clatter! Water splashed everywhere. As the body of the crown boa sank, the dark river water returned to calm, as if nothing had happened. The bridge was intact, the train and the supplies on board saved. Although the smoke from the explosion cleared, Countless brilliant particles of light floated in the air. These flying particles of light seemed to form some sort of pattern. I counted. Twelve patterns. Like constellation totems. It's the twelve constellations. The particles of light floating in the air formed the connecting totems of the twelve constellations. Looking magnificent and atmospheric. And also exuding a mysterious and mysterious aura. Not only that. On the blue sky. Something flickered. As if it was a star intersecting in outer space. 
The four-winged holy angel was bathed in holy light, its skillfully crafted features presenting a divine beauty. Qin Yan Yan was greatly shocked, the goosebumps standing up on her arms uncontrollable. This this is, the power of the stars. Leader Qin, Xing Yu's imperial beast has actually mastered the power of the stars? SS grade beast energy? This is too unbelievable. Star power was a special power that was even rarer than demonic power. Normally, regardless of whether it was a magical beast or an imperial beast, the rank had to reach a beast king body or above before this power could be awakened, and the probability was pitifully low. However, the rank of the four-winged holy angel was currently only mature body, first order, and there was still a large rank gap from the beast king body, but the aura emanating from the four-winged saint angel at this moment was undoubtedly the power of the stars. Father Yu, this imperial beast of yours is too awesome, a move that secured the crown boa. I thought there was something wrong with my eyes. The crown mori boa is a full-bodied level magical beast. It was actually killed in seconds by the mature-bodied angel sister. Outsiders look at the scene. Insiders look at the doorway. Ding Tao tried to calm down and swallowed his saliva. This ability to resonate with the stars of the heavens and to incorporate the power of the 12 constellations into battle techniques is the SS grade beast energy. The power of the stars. It wasn't without reason that Ding Tao's theoretical exam scores were second only to Xiao Xingyu every time and ranked second in the entire year. He had judged that the four-winged saint angel had mastered the power of the stars by capturing the minutiae of the battlefield. In the system of imperial and magical beasts, there was something called beast energy. Beast energy was categorized into A, S, SS, and SSS according to their grades. Most imperial beasts with mediocre qualifications would never awaken their beast energy in their lifetime. As long as they awakened their beast energy, their beast energy grade started at a rank. The demonic power of the Hell Spectre Wolf was an S-rank beast energy. The star power of a four-winged holy angel is an SS-class beast energy. The beast energy would be developed step by step as the imperial beasts grew in rank. After the shock, everyone's hearts palpitated. That crown boa, is it really dead? It shouldn't still be able to surface, right? Now that I think about it, I'm still scared. That mouth of its, it's even bigger than the pie that the dean drew for us. Shu, the dean might be listening in remotely. Not long after, a blue magical beast crystal core surfaced, rolling with the tiny waves. This was the magical beast crystal core of the crown boa. When everyone saw the scene, they simultaneously lowered their hearts. As the magical beast crystal core leaving the body meant that the magical beast could be confirmed to be truly dead. The four-winged holy angel flew across the water, picked up the magical beast crystal core, and flew back to Xiao Xingyu's side. Xiao Xingyu grinned and tenderly stroked the four-winged saint angel's hair. Freya, hard work. A full-bodied magical beast crystal core was not low in value and could be used for future market transactions. The crown bowl was seconded, and the crisis on Xiao Xingyu's side was lifted. Sister Yen Ran, don't worry about our side. You guys deal with the blood-eyed great king ape as soon as possible. Hearing Xiao Xingyu shout, Xin Yen Yen slowed down and a flash of determination surfaced in her eyes. Brothers, let's go together and slaughter this big guy. The members of the Tsung Dome Guild were each experienced and had established a deep tacit understanding in countless battles. Under the crowd's hold, the blood-eyed great king ape was unable to defeat both of its fists, and a trail of blood appeared on its body. Feeling the pain coming from its wounds, the blood-eyed great king ape once again went berserk and lost its mind. When a magical beast lost its mind, it was the time to expose its weaknesses. Qin Yan Yan had a precise judgment of the situation and mobilized her spiritual energy. The three-tailed thunder fox senses its master's will and leaps high into the air, opening its mouth and spewing out a huge ball of thunder. The thunderball cut through the air and steadily smashed into the abdomen of the blood-eyed great king ape. Because of pregnancy, the abdomen was the blood-eyed great king ape's greatest weakness. The moment the thunderball hit the blood-eyed great ape, miserable screams shook endlessly in the canyon. The thunderball expanded rapidly, like an out-of-control hot air balloon, until it reached the upper limit of its volume and exploded with a bang. Thunder filled the sky. The blue current was like a painter's brushstroke, sketching out atmospheric irregular contours in the air, presenting an abstract beauty. As the smoke gradually cleared, the blood-eyed great king ape was scorched black, its skin fried, and the luster in its eyes completely dimmed. Whoosh! Plop! The blood-eyed great king ape crashed into the river, its body sinking a little. A member of the Vault Guild, catalyzed his spiritual energy and summoned an amphibious imperial beast, the Sonic Boom Pelican. The Sonic Boom Pelican made a dive and plunged into the river. About a minute later, the Sonic Boom Pelican rushed out of the water and flew back to the bridge with a magical beast crystal core in its mouth. This was the nucleus of a magical beast of the blood-eyed great king ape. A transcendent mortal body magical beast had fallen. Leader Chin is worthy of being a 5-star imperial beast master. The seniors are too powerful. 
A wave of tacit cooperation easily killed the transcendent mortal body magical beast. Then again, our class's bearer Xiao Xingyu is also very strong. Just now he killed the crown morpho boa in a single move. Qin Yan Yan immediately ordered. Everyone, don't linger. Hurry up and get on the bus. The number of magical beasts inhabiting the canyon was extremely large. And there was no end to killing them. The river began to boil and dense black shadows emerged from the surface. The hissing of different magical beasts came from the large mountains on both sides. Everyone returned to the train as fast as they could. The driver was dead. So it was good that the vault guild trained all rounders. And a guild member entered the front compartment and assumed the role of the driver. The train started and the cheerful honking of the whistle overrode the roar of the wraiths. Ten seconds later, the train successfully crossed the bridge, away from the Five Poison Canyon. The bridge was filled with vicious magical beasts that tried to chase the train, but were finally forced to give up due to their physical strength and could only express their exasperation through impotent rage. Inside the carriage, the gray-haired examinees were relieved and then cheered together, one to celebrate the aftermath of the robbery and the other to celebrate passing the exam. Xin Yan Yan held the scoring sheet in her hand, a still satisfied smile on her face. According to the rules of your Green Dragon Academy, passing the exam requires getting a C grade, killing a mature body level magical beast, or assisting twice, is considered passing, and you can get a C rating. All the candidates who got off the bus to participate in the battle just now have all met this standard. As soon as Qin Yan Yan's words fell, everyone was ecstatic, ignoring their injured bodies, jumping and dancing, celebrating with abandon. Of course, in that battle in the Five Poison Canyon, there were some candidates who didn't get off the bus. When Qin Yan Yan mentioned this, some of the candidates lowered their heads, their eyes filled with tears and despondency. These candidates who didn't get off, I can understand your feelings, after all, it is human instinct to be timid when facing magical beasts, but this is not a human survival exam, but the imperial beast master exam. Therefore, these candidates are deemed to have failed the exam. Please get off at the next station and end this trip. Qin Yan Yan was impartial and didn't give any of the candidates the green light. With 50 students in the class, there were 12 students who did not get off the bus to fight. These 12 would get off at the next stop and bid farewell to this midterm exam with a failing grade. Qin Yan Yan took a sip of lemonade to clear her throat and continued to announce the results. As of now, some of you candidates have excelled. Wu Sheng Yu, Song Hu, Grade B, Ding Tao, Grade A. In that battle just now, Wu Sheng Yu and Song Hu had performed excellently. Achieving B ratings for kills and assists. Ding Tao's performance was above these two as he had 50 assists. More assists meant a high battle IQ and a strong sense of the big picture. Even on weekends, Ding Tao would soak in the library, checking out information on various magical beasts and understanding the strengths and weaknesses of his enemies. In this battle, Ding Tao put his theoretical knowledge into practice, assisting his teammates to take the heads of 50 blood eyed spirit apes. Ding Tao, good job. Xiao Xing Yu gave praise. Boss, don't make fun of me, I was able to take 50 assists, all because I took advantage of you. Ding Tao's name to Xiao Xingyu changed. In his eyes, Xiao Xingyu was his boss. During the battle, Ding Tao had been following Xiao Xingyu. His royal beast, Red Shadow Spider, was a control system royal beast, its attack power was not strong. After the Red Shadow Spider utilized its spider web to imprison the enemy unit, Xiao Xingyu struck out and was able to harvest heads, although it was the first time that the two of them worked together. They were more in sync than expected. Next, announce a candidate with a rating of S. Qin Yan Yan said this, and everyone looked at Xiao Xingyu. That's right, the candidate who has achieved an S rating is Xiao Xingyu. After Qin Yan Yan announced Xiao Xingyu's score, everyone was even more excited than if they had gotten an S themselves, shouting around Xiao Xingyu. The endless applause and cheers in the carriage were the greatest respect for Xiao Xingyu. Student Xiao Xingyu, in the Battle of the Five Poison Canyon. He single killed the full bodied magical beast crown boa, killed 103 blood eyed spirit apes, and had 36 assists. This was the S rating that did not contain any water, and no one was unconvinced. Qin Yan Yan added, just to remind everyone, the current rating is not the final score. Leader Qin, if the next battle, we perform even better than this one, the rating will go up, right? That's right, the rating will go up because of your even better performance next time. Qin Yan Yan suddenly aggravated her tone and put away her smile. However, the rating could also go down. For example, if you guys make mistakes in the next battle, the rating will go down instead of up, hearing that the ratings might even drop. The smiles on the students' faces instantly disappeared and shifted to Qin Yan Ran's face. If you want to get good grades, it depends on your next performance. After finishing her official business, Qin Yan Yan walked over to Xiao Xingyu's side, her beautiful eyes filled with doubt. Brother Xingyu, 
that angelic imperial beast of yours has actually awakened the SS grade beast energy star power. It seems that you have a couple of tricks up your sleeve when it comes to the cultivation of imperial beasts. Sister Yan Yu is flattered. But sis, I have a question. Even with the star force added, the four-winged saint angel is only a mature body imperial beast. How could it kill a full body level crown boa in seconds? Xiao Xing Yu came to Qin Yan Yan's ear. Sister Yan Yan, the star power has a special attribute that can trigger a tenfold blast with a low probability. I know this, but how can you be sure which of the four-winged saint angel's attacks can trigger a tenfold blitz? Xiao Xing Yu smiled evilly. Prejudgment. The eye of the demon god could prejudge the timing of triggering a tenfold blitz. You kid. So for me, even if the crown boa is full-blooded, it's still within my decapitation line. Qin Yan Yan took a deep breath, her sweaty hair standing on end. Full blood is the decapitation line? This brother of mine is truly a demon. The train traveled at an even speed, surrounded by an endless wilderness, without the remnants of half a dozen magical beasts. The radio rang out. Entering a safe section, everyone can relax and rest. Time came to dusk, and the train was bathed in an icy sunset. Its metal casing dyed a bright blood red. Everyone gathered in carriage 8 to relax and consume some snacks and refreshments. And each person also received a cup of lemon hot tea. Qin Yan Yan sat beside Xiao Xingyu and shared the bread she was holding with him. Sister Yan Yan, I'm not hungry. Nonsense, you didn't even eat at lunch. You gave the boxed lunch to Song Hu. I saw it all. Sister's heart, Xiao Xingyu is hard to refuse. Took the toast bread from Qin Yan Yan's hand and nibbled on it. Eat slowly, don't choke. Seeing that the corner of Xiao Xingyu's mouth was stained with some bread crumbs, Qin Yan Yan took out a tissue and thoughtfully wiped Xiao Xingyu's mouth. Under the gaze of the crowd, Xiao Xingyu, no matter how thick-skinned he was, was somewhat uncomfortable. Sister Yan Yan, I'll do it myself. I'm not a three-year-old. You are a three-year-old in my eyes. Open your mouth. Sister feed you. Qin Yan Yan's usual image was similar to a domineering and heroic female general. However, in front of Xiao Xingyu, she would reveal her most gentle side. Hand feeding Xiao Xingyu lemon black tea, as if a layer of maternal radiance was shrouding her body. Brother Xingyu, it's not that sister is deliberately bragging about you, with your strength in killing the full-bodied magical beast crown boa single-handedly. Your segment has already reached the standard of a three-star imperial beast master. Qin Yan Yan had actually tried her best to say these words in a restrained manner. In reality, a three-star royal beast master would have to fight for at least 30 rounds before he could kill a magical beast like the crown morpho boa and his own royal beast would have to molt layers of skin as well. On the contrary, Xiao Xingyu's imperial beast, the four-winged saint angel, only used one move to easily kill the full-blooded crown morpho boa, which could be described as unscientific. Sister Yen Ran, when the midterm exams are over, I don't intend to take the three-star imperial beast master exam. Xiao Xingyu confused Qin Yan Yan with one sentence. Ah, I didn't hear it wrong, did I? Your strength has long reached the three-star segment. Why? Because I plan to cross over the three stars and directly take the four star imperial beast master exam. Xiao Xingyu's sentence caused Qin Yan Ran to fall into shock. Her eyes stagnant, unable to speak for a long time. After slowing down for a long time, Qin Yan Yan said with a straight face, Older brother, are you serious? Xiao Xingyu smiled and nodded. Qin Yan Yan sucked in a sharp breath as a way to ease her inner shock. Brother Xingyu, if it was someone else who said these words, I would have thought it was a fool's errand. But since these words came out of your mouth, I have no reason not to believe them. After all, you kid has always been creating originally impossible miracles, refreshing our cognition time and time again. Qin Yan Ran gave a high evaluation as she wrapped her arms around Xiao Xingyu's shoulders, her face full of relief and doting. Xiao Xingyu had already planned that after the midterm exams were over, and after grinding for another month or so, he would go and take the four-star imperial beast master exam. The two siblings chatted for a while, and Qin Yan Yan gradually glowed with both eyes. Brother Xingyu, your future is unlimited, when you get rich in the future, don't forget about me as your sister oh, don't worry, I won't forget sister Yen Ran, then when you marry a daughter-in-law, you can't forget your sister either, good, Qin Yan Yan was a bit uneasy, holding Xiao Xingyu's hand tightly on a whim, no, I'm still uneasy, I'm afraid that you'll forget your sister after marrying a daughter-in-law, then what do you say, how about this, when you marry your daughter-in-law, by the way, marry your sister too, Xiao Xingyu blushed. Ahem. Sister Yen Ran, don't joke. I'm not joking. You're such an excellent man. It's only right to marry a few more daughters-in-law. It's conducive to perpetuating your demonic excellent genes for the Dragon Kingdom. Ah this. Xiao Xingyu was rarely speechless. His face burning. Seeing Xiao Xingyu's shy and coy side. Qin Yen Ran became even more energized as she directly pressed Xiao Xingyu's head onto her surging and plump chest. 
Brother Xingyu, as you can see, sister I have a good figure and a nice ass. Isn't there that old saying? It's called a big ass is good for giving birth to children. Don't worry. In the future, I will give you a few more big fat boys to contribute to the population growth program of the Dragon Kingdom. Xiao Xingyu's red face buried in Qin Yenran's soft chest. Heartbeat accelerated. I Lu Go. Yenran's sister's body is also too heavenly. At least 36 D. Xiao Xingyu ah Xiao Xingyu. Hold on. Never get a nosebleed. In a situation where welfare and torment coexisted, Xiao Xingyu silently recited the mantra for clearing the mind, but it seemed to have little effect. Wu Shangyu and Song who muttered darkly from the sidelines. Old Wu, take a gamble. Good. I'll bet that leader Qin's first child looks like dad. I bet it looks like mom. Raise the bet. Let's bet again on who the second child looks like. The sun set in the west, and the night covered the sky. The train stopped at a station called Crescent Lake. After arriving at the station, Everyone got off the train and went to the lounge near the platform to regroup. Qin Yan Yan shouted aloud. The train will stop at this station for 30 minutes. Everyone take a good rest. Then Qin Yan Yan added. If anyone's imperial beast was injured in the previous battle, please receive treatment from the imperial beast doctor as soon as possible. This time, the Tsang Dome Guild's accompanying imperial beast doctor was Lin Yu, who had argued with Xiao Xing Yu in the car. Dr. Lin, my imperial beast's ribs are broken. Dr. Lin. We need your help over here, Dr. Lin. Although there were no casualties in that bloody battle in Five Poison Canyon, many Imperial beasts were injured. Moreover, all of the magical beasts that inhabited the Five Poison Canyon belonged to the highly poisonous lineage, and any time an Imperial beast was injured by one of these magical beasts, it would be struck by a highly poisonous poison. At this moment, Lin Yu was treating a red armored male lion with acupuncture, because Imperial beasts tended to be large and thick-skinned. The tools used for acupuncture on imperial beasts looked exaggerated. The length of a silver needle had to be at least more than 20 centimeters in order to penetrate the imperial beast's scaled armor and skin and stimulate the corresponding acupoints. Ow! The red-armored male lion suddenly let out a sharp roar. His expression agonized and his facial muscles wildly twisted. Dr. Lin, you're using too much force. It's bleeding from the puncture. The imperial beast master on the side couldn't stand to watch. She was Xiao Xingyu's classmate. Li Lei Lei. However, Lin Yu didn't take it seriously and continued to needle the red-armored male lion in a rough manner. The red-armored male lion let out a cry of agony, but because his limbs were confined by the specialized medical machinery, he could only allow Lin Yu to zap around his body. Li Lei Lei couldn't bear to watch and chortled. Dr. Lin, you've gone too far. Are you treating the imperial beast or are you hurting it? Lin Yu raised his eyes, glanced at Li Lei Lei, and couldn't help but let out a cold laugh with yin and yang implications. I say this student. Are you the imperial beast doctor or am I the imperial beast doctor? I don't mean that. Can you be a little lighter when you're needling? My imperial beast was already injured. And you're still being so rough. Lin Yu deliberately increased the force of the needles. The red armored male lion's wail raised in decibels. Enough to see what kind of pain it was enduring. Dr. Lin. Stop it. This student. I'm a professional imperial beast doctor. Only by applying the needle with increased force can I stimulate the corresponding acupoints allowing your imperial beast to recover its health as soon as possible. But every time you apply the needles, you're stabbing out blood. Lin Yu got impatient and yelled lowly, You're a layman. You don't know anything. Get lost. Li Lei Lei was just a student, being yelled at by Lin Yu. She didn't dare say anything else. But as she watched her imperial beast continuously emit miserable screams, her eyes couldn't help but well up with hot tears. Dr. Lin, your technique of administering the needle was too lame. That needle just now. Not only did it not hit the right acupoint, it also pierced through the diaphragm in the chest area of the red armored male lion. Lin Yu stopped and looked up as Xiao Xingyu came face to face. Xiao Xingyu, what are you babbling about? I'm talking about your medical dishes. Do you hear me clearly? Mr. Quack Doctor. Quack Doctor? You're calling me a quack. Lin Yu was furious and was just about to lash out towards Xiao Xingyu when Qin Yanran rushed over. What's all the noise about? Leader Qin, your good brother really doesn't know how to respect his seniors. Actually using the word quack to humiliate me. Qin Yan Yan walked over to Xiao Xingyu's side and whispered. Brother Xingyu, what's going on? Sister Yan Ran, I just can't watch Lin Yu's medical skills anymore. The way he gave the red armored male lion acupuncture was very rough. He couldn't find the acupoints correctly. And he also mistakenly injured the muscle tissue near the wound. Qin Yan Yan nodded. She trusted Xiao Xingyu 100%. Lin Yu, step back and let Xiao Xingyu treat the red armored male lion. Leader Qin, I. Stand down. Qin Yanran's eyes were cold, her strong tone making it impossible to refute. Lin Yu helplessly shut up and took three steps back, 
staring at Xiao Xingyu's back with sinister eyes. Boss, my imperial beast keeps bleeding. Will it, Lele, with me here? Your imperial beast won't have an accident. Okay, please boss. Li Lele chose to believe Xiao Xingyu and squatted to the side. Calming the red armored male lion's head, Xiao Xingyu first sterilized the acupuncture instruments with alcohol and then began to apply the needles. Compared to Lin Yu's rough medical skills, Xiao Xingyu's every needle was steady and accurate. Quite a divine doctor's style. Seven silver needles were stabbed into different points, and Xiao Xingyu gently twisted the needles, precisely stimulating the corresponding points. During the entire acupuncture process, the red armored lion didn't utter a word. Its original panicked eyes became soft, and even squinted its eyes to enjoy it. Three minutes passed. Li Lele wiped away her tears and excitedly shouted, The blood has stopped. Great. When Xiao Xingyu pulled out the silver needle, the red armored male lion stood up, shook its head, and sprayed a mouthful of bruised blood from its mouth. By now, the red armored male lion returned to its lively state, bouncing and jumping around Xiao Xingyu, and lifting its forelimbs in a gesture to express its gratitude to its savior. Everyone in the surroundings sent applause. Boss, awesome. I didn't expect you to be able to give Imperial Beasts acupuncture. Worthy of being a special pharmacist who made an exception and was accepted by the Vault Guild. I'm convinced. Boss, my royal beast's ribs are broken. Can you help me heal them? Xiao Xingyu slightly exerted his medical skills and once again conquered the students of the third year class. In the eyes of the students, Xiao Xingyu was the bearer of this class, and even became their faith. In addition to the classmates, the members of the Vault Guild also appreciated Xiao Xingyu. Xingyu, your medical skills are too powerful. That Lin Yu is a clown compared to you. Lin Yu, as you can see, that's why you couldn't become a special pharmacist. If I were you, I would have left the Tsung Dome Guild in disgrace and had no face to stay. Lin Yu's face was red. He knew that in terms of the level of acupuncture, he was no match for Xiao Xingyu. In order to get back the game, Lin Yu sent up a challenge. Xiao Xingyu, do you still remember our bet during the day? Of course I remember. Lin Yu clapped his palms together, his smile gradually twisting. Good then, let's officially compete in medical skills. If you lose, you'll take the initiative to quit the Tsung Dome Guild and give up the position of special pharmacist. On the contrary, if I lose, I'll immediately hand in my resignation letter and leave the Tsung Dome Guild. The words had been said to this point. Xiao Xingyu and Lin Yu, only one of them could stay in the Tsung Dome Guild. Qin Yan Yan didn't have the slightest hint of worry in her eyes because she believed in this demonic brother. Li Kai, summon your imperial beast. Yes, Li Kai was Qin Yan Yan's most trusted deputy, and like Qin Yan Yan, he was a four-star imperial beast master. The imperial beast crest opened, and Li Kai summoned a burly orc-type imperial beast. This imperial beast possessed the head of a brown bear, maintained a standing posture, and stood over eight meters tall. On top of its head, there was a handful of silver-colored hair that looked like a short, sharp silver dagger under the moonlight. Silver blade bear head warrior. That was the name of this imperial beast, with a rank of transcendent body, first order, and an epic bloodline. It possessed extremely terrifying strength. However, the silver blade bear head warrior was in a poor state. It sat paralyzed on the ground. Its eyes were lax and it was breathing heavily. On its left and right arms, all of its hair had fallen off. Its skin was purple black, and large wounds exposed its white snowy bones. In the constantly twitching flesh and sinews, there were many small black shadows vaguely writhing. They were parasites that carried high levels of poison. Qin Yin Yan explained in public, in the Battle of the Five Poison Canyon, the Silver Blade Bearhead Warrior resisted an attack from the Blood-Eyed Great King Ape in order to protect the train. It was that one attack that caused heavy damage to the Silver Blade Bearhead Warrior, poisoning both arms and necrosis of the nerves in the elbow area. Xiao Xingyu carefully observed the wounds on the Silver Blade Bearhead Warrior's arms as the eye of the Demon God opened. The toxin has spread to the shoulder and neck area. It must be treated as soon as possible. It's a good thing that I brought the little green bottle with me this time out. Qin Yanran looked coldly at Lin Yu and then gestured at Xiao Xingyu with a doting gaze. For your medical skill competition this time, you'll use the Silver Blade Bear Head Warrior as the test topic. Lin Yu, you are responsible for treating the Silver Blade Bear Head Warrior's left arm. Xiao Xingyu, you will treat the Silver Blade Bear Head Warrior's right arm. Lin Yu was the first to step forward and walked over to the Silver Blade Bear Head Warrior's side, his face showing confidence and arrogance. Leader Qin, during these half a year that I've been out, not only have I accompanied the guild members to complete many bounty quests, but I've also visited many renowned healers specializing in the field of detoxification along the way. After my heartfelt efforts, I developed this antidote potion, named Lin's Antidote Serum. Lin Yu opened his backpack and took out a bottle of bright red serum. Hundreds of herbs with detoxifying properties have been added to this serum. It's gentle and skin-friendly, 
and can detoxify a hundred poisons. Li Kai had no patience. Lin Yu, can you cut the crap? We're not here to see you bragging. Please speak in terms of efficacy. Li Kai, watch what happens next. Lin Yu arrogantly snorted coldly, his demeanor frivolous, utilizing a syringe in public. He injected the serum potion into the silver blade bare head warrior's left arm. The serum's medicinal effects quickly began to take effect. The wound on the silver blade bare head warrior's left arm slowly healed, and his skin turned from purple black to lavender. This indicated that the serum was gradually neutralizing the toxins in the silver blade bare head warrior's body. The good times didn't last long as the silver blade bare head warrior suddenly revealed a pained expression. Crap! Why is my imperial beast starting to roll its eyes? What the hell? Is this a cramp? The fifth minute after the serum potion was injected into the silver blade bare headed warrior's left arm, it began to produce an adverse reaction. The silver blade bare head warrior rolled its eyes and twitched again, taking steps that were unrecognizable to all six of its relatives, and its two bare paws even gestured in the shape of very six plus one. Very six plus one. Is this bear poisoned, or has it got a cerebral thrombosis? Good lord. The way the silver blade bear head warrior is walking right now is exactly the same as my third uncle who's had a cerebral infarction for years. Li Kai glared angrily at Lin Yu. Lin Yu stammered and explained. Ahem. Don't don't worry. It's medicine that's three times poisonous. It's just a little adverse reaction. Don't make a big deal out of it. Put. P-F-F-F-F-F-F. F asterisk C-K. It stinks. Is this a fart or a biochemical weapon? Cam, I accidentally took a deep breath just now, and now I can already see that I'm two tits. The silver blade bare head warrior's adverse reaction was getting worse and worse. Not only was he rolling his eyes and twitching, he even suddenly started farting. The smell of the farts was already enough to rival a murderous biochemical weapon. Li Kai grabbed Lin Yu's collar. Bastard. You call this a medicine that's three parts poison? I think it's nine points of poison. Xiao Xing Yu couldn't look at it anymore and took out a delicate little green bottle from his pocket. This is the 10,000 poison solution I developed three days ago. You guys can also call it the little green bottle. Lin Yu disdained it. Little green bottle. Ha, huh? this is cough syrup to water. Get out of the way. I'm going to start pretending. Xiao Xing Yu pushed Lin Yu away and came to the side of the silver blade bare head warrior. Opening the small green bottle, Xiao Xing Yu gently applied the medicinal liquid, which emitted a strange odor. Onto the silver blade bare head warrior's right arm wound. Everyone, next is the moment to witness the miracle. The corners of Xiao Xingyu's lips took pressure than even AK. The silver blade bare head warrior's adverse reaction from the serum potion was getting worse and worse. At the moment, its muscles were tense and it was twitching violently as if it was possessed by something dirty. After Xiao Xingyu came to the silver blade bare head warrior's side, its mental state was a bit better. Although it was full of pain, its eyes were soft and it looked a bit more well-behaved. This was Xiao Xingyu's natural affinity. No imperial beast could resist this charm. Xiao Xingyu raised his hand and stroked the silver blade bare head warrior's head, using a gentle tone to soothe this imperial beast's fragile heart. There will be some burning sensation next. Just hold on for a minute. Orc line imperial beasts were more humane than other types of imperial beasts. The silver blade bare head warrior seemed to understand Xiao Xingyu's words, its huge head shrugging up and down to express its trust in Xiao Xingyu. The green medicinal liquid seeped into the skin, and the silver blade bare head warrior felt a burning sensation. The pain coming from the wound made the large bear with a mountainous physique grimace, but it had absolute trust in Xiao Xingyu and did not make any noise, obediently squatting beside Xiao Xingyu. One minute later, the miracle began to unfold. Everyone, look, the wound is healing so fast. The little green bottle developed by the boss is truly a miracle medicine. The effect is immediate. It's unbelievable. Rotting away flesh and blood can actually be reborn? The little green bottle's medicinal effect was heaven-defying. The wounds of the silver blade bare head warrior healed at a speed visible to the naked eye. The blood and flesh that was previously corroded due to the toxin, as well as the festering bones, all regrew within a minute. Gradually, the silver blade bare head warrior's right arm returned to its original state, and not a single trace of having been injured could be seen. The skin also returned to its normal color, meaning that the toxin was completely removed. Li Kai, as the silver blade bare head warrior's royal master, was overjoyed. Big bear. Try swinging your right arm. The silver blade bare head warrior raised his thick right arm, clenched his fist, and slammed it into the ground. After a loud bang, the concrete floor presented a deep pit three meters in diameter. This scene shocked the crowd. My god, this recovery effect is too heaven defying. In less than three minutes, the original almost ruined right arm was completely healed. This medicine is too divine. Boss, you are the reincarnation of Hua Tua. No, even if Hua Tua was alive, he wouldn't be worthy of your shoes. At this moment, 
The silver blade bare head warrior's left arm was in stark contrast to his right arm. Qi Nian Yan walked over, observing and judging at the same time. The wound on the left arm is healing very slowly, and the skin is still in a lavender state, indicating that the toxin hasn't been removed yet. A closer look reveals that deep within the wound, there are still parasitic worms carrying high levels of poison writhing around uncontrollably, indicating that the serum potion developed by Lin Yu is unable to effectively kill the worms. Leader Qin, I, Lin Yu still wanted to argue, but facts speak louder than words, so he had to be smart and shut up. Qin Yan Yan looked at the right arm of the silver-bladed bareheaded warrior, her serious face spreading into a smile. The recovery of the right arm is excellent, and judging from the color of the skin, the toxins are all cleared. The wound healing degree is 100%, leaving no scars or after effects. Qin Yan Yan walked in front of everyone and made a high-profile announcement. I declare this medical skill competition, Xiao Xing Yu, a complete victory. Applause thundered as everyone dedicated their respect and admiration to Xiao Xing Yu. In this era of imperial beast masters, pharmacists with superior medical skills were even more popular than some high-level imperial beast masters, enjoying the admiration of millions of people. Xiao Xing Yu did not have the slightest look of joy on his face and instead of enjoying everyone's applause, he walked over to the left-hand side of the silver-bladed bareheaded warrior. Xiao Xingyu did not mince words and poured out the remaining medicinal liquid in the small green bottle and applied it on the silver-blade bareheaded warrior's left arm wound. Three minutes later, the silver-blade bareheaded warrior's left arm returned to its original state, and just like the right arm, the toxins were all cleared without leaving any scars, and the localized newly grown muscles and skin were even firmer. Even if Qin Yan Yan didn't act as a referee and didn't announce the results, the small green bottle was still superior compared to the efficacy of the serum potion. The eyes of the crowd were bright. Xiao Xingyu's medical skills were far above Lin Yu. Li Kai wrapped his arm around Xiao Xingyu's shoulders, manipulating his rough voice, and said excitedly, Older brother Xingyu, you are worthy of being the special pharmacist of our vault guild. To show my appreciation, I'll treat you to a big meal when we get back. The silver blade bare head warrior's injuries were healed and its mental state was restored to full strength. It took the initiative to come closer to Xiao Xingyu and rubbed its large head against Xiao Xingyu's body to express its intimacy and gratitude. Wu Shengyu and Song who were filled with relief and pride. Tiger, what's the best decision we've made in our lives? Recognizing Xiao as our father. The two of them glanced at each other in unspoken agreement. Qin Yanran looked coldly at Lin Yu. What else do you have to say now? Lin Yu's face reddened under the gaze of the crowd. Groundless, his toes itching to gouge out three rooms on the ground. Qin leader. Qin Yanran said seriously. According to the bet you made with Xiao Xingyu earlier, from this moment on, you are no longer a member of the Tsung Dome Guild. Lin Yu panicked and knelt on both knees. Leader Qin, I've worked diligently in the guild all these years. I've done hard work without merit, right? You can't be so heartless. Li Kai, subordinate understands. Li Kai understood Qin Yanran's meaning in a second and rushed up with an arrow step, forcibly removing a blue badge from Lin Yu's chest. Every guild had their own guild badge symbolizing the identity of the guild members. Li Kai removing Lin Yu's guild badge meant that Lin Yu was expelled from the Tsung Dome Guild. No, don't. Lin Yu still wanted to snatch it back, but he was kicked over by Qin Yanran. Leader Qin, can't you give me a chance? Lin Yu begged bitterly, hoping that Qin Yanran would give him a chance on account of being a veteran guild employee. Qin Yanran scorned the fallen Lin Yu and sneered, give you a chance? A year ago? You privately colluded with the Golden Dragon Guild to carry out an illegal transaction amounting to over $20 million. In February of this year, you utilized your right to purchase raw materials for medicinal herbs and ate 8% of the contract kickbacks. In May of this year, Qin Yan Yan enumerated Lin Yu's crimes one by one. People and gods were outraged. Li Kai was trembling with anger. His arm muscles gnarled. Lin Yu, I didn't expect you to be such a villain. Qin Yan Ran rebuked coldly. What I just said, is it the truth? Lin Yu's body was paralyzed, his eyes lifeless. Things had come to this. It was impossible for Lin Yu to stay in the Tsung Dome Guild. Xiao Xing Yu walked over, his cold eyes looking down on this lost dog on the ground. Not to mention how mediocre your medical skills are. Even if your medical skills are above mine, with your character and virtue, it's impossible for you to become a special pharmacist of the Tsung Dome Guild. Lin Yu lowered his head and laughed insanely, taking advantage of the fact that no one was paying attention. Lin Yu suddenly stormed up the sharpness of the syringe hidden in his sleeve showing, just at the moment when the needle of the syringe was less than 10 centimeters away from Xiao Xingyu, a holy light flashed, the four-winged holy angel blocked in front of Xiao Xingyu, and the syringe fell into her hands, the syringe stored a red potion containing hundreds of magical beast viruses, Lin Yu, you seek death, Qin Yan Yan, who was a notorious fanatic protector of her younger brother, lifted her long legs and kicked Lin Yu to break three of his ribs, 
Lin Yu fell to the ground, in a sorry state, his mouth full of uneven, large yellow teeth stained red by the blood surging up his throat. Xiao Xingyu, it's all your fault. You're the one who ruined my life. You wait for me. We're not done with this. One day I will. Miso Miso Miso. A little cold aura arrived first, followed by the sword coming out like a dragon. Ah, Lin Yu let out a miserable scream. Just a moment ago, the lightsaber in the hands of the four-winged holy angel picked off Lin Yu's tendons and hamstrings. Lin Yu was thus reduced to an invalid. Qin Yan Yan was first surprised before revealing a pleased and satisfied gaze, worthy of being my demonic brother, cutting off the roots and roots to eliminate future troubles. Xiao Xing Yu wouldn't leave any chance of revenge for his enemies. Mainlining in IQ online. The train will start in 10 minutes. Everyone get on as soon as possible. The half hour break was coming to an end. And everyone returned to their respective compartments one after another. Li Kai stretched his lazy back inside. With less of that gutless, backstabbing guy Lin Yu. The air on the train is a lot fresher. Lin Yu's hamstring and leg tendons were all broken. Reduced to an invalid. Not qualified to board the train. And could only stay at the last station to fend for himself. Moreover, Qin Yan Yan had published Lin Yu's previous crimes in the guild on the internet. No Imperial Beastmaster guild would accept such a wastrel with a bad character. Li Kai. The next stop is the White Bone Abyss. There will be a large number of undead type magical beasts. Don't slack off. Team Leader Qin. We're all veteran escorts. Every time we escorted Train 13, we had no danger. What are we afraid of? Qin Yan Yan's eyes flashed as she took out the aura of the guild's young master. Don't forget that there are also students from Qinglong Academy on board this time. They're young and haven't dealt with undead type magical beasts yet. A rare bad smile appeared on Li Kai's naive face. Leader Qin, are you worried about all the students? Or just your Xing Yu brother? Qin Yanran's pretty face flushed, looking for death. I was wrong. I'll go stand guard in the tail carriage. In fact, Qin Yan Yan was just only concerned about Xiao Xing Yu. After all, the genes of a pampered brother fanatic were carved in her bones. Carriage 15. Wu Sheng Yu and Song who were stealing a late night snack, one with a chicken leg in his mouth. The other holding a bucket of instant noodles in his hand and eating it. Righteous father, your medical skills are also too awesome. An inconspicuous little green bottle. Knock that Lin Yu's arrogant face ask you. Tiger, your words are inaccurate. Amir Lin Yu, is he qualified to be compared to our father Yu? Xiao Xing Yu rolled his eyes. Alright, you two don't blow me off. The next section we're going to pass through is the white bone abyss section. And we'll encounter a large number of undead system magical beasts. Hearing undead system magical beasts. Wu Sheng Yu and Song who stopped chewing their food and revealed panicked expressions. Undead system magical beasts. What's the difference between them and ghosts? It's scary to think about. Undead system magical beasts have no sense of pain and have the ability to regenerate their bones. They can't be killed. They can't be killed at all. Wu Sheng Yu took out his cell phone and opened a mysterious URL. Song who asked, Old Wu, what are you doing? Wu Sheng Yu replied in a serious manner. I'm panicking right now. Watch a movie to calm down. I go. What time is it? You still have the heart to watch a movie? We're in the middle of midterm exams ah. You're too much. Five minutes later. Song Hu, Brother Wu, can we switch to the European and American zone? Wu Sheng Yu, no. I like this undead series. Xiao Xing Yu's facial muscles twitched slightly. Two righteous sons, one more talented than the other. Righteous father, let's watch it together. Thanks, I'm not interested. Five minutes later. Xiao Xing Yu, don't fast forward. I like to watch the drama. The two righteous sons said in unison, Righteous father has taste. Compartment 15 doesn't keep idle people. All the Tet Miao are talented. Late at night at 12 o'clock, the train is heading into darkness, and in front of it is a bottomless black abyss. Around the abyss, white bones were piled up, and above the bones, countless green ghost flames jumped back and forth. This was the white bone abyss where a large number of undead magical beasts were perched. The danger factor of this section was greater than the Five Poison Canyon. A bridge crossed the white bone abyss, and the train was about to enter one end of the bridge. The radio sounded. Warm reminder, as we pass through the white bone abyss section ahead, the train will be attacked by undead type demonic beasts. Please be alert and prepare for battle. The train climbed onto the bridge and sped above the white bone abyss. The train's major carriages were on full alert, especially the green candidates. The panic and tension on everyone's face was clearly visible. We're above the white bone abyss right now. My legs are soft. I'm about to pee myself. My bladder automatically shuts off when I think of those hideous-faced undead-type magical beasts. What about Zhang Wei? Zhang Wei has already peed himself in fear and went to the toilet to change his pants. The various reactions of the candidates were enough to show how terrifying the white bone abyss was. Five minutes passed. During these five minutes, everyone was sitting upright, maintaining the highest degree of concentration. 
not daring to have the slightest bit of slackness. However, no accidents happened. The white bone abyss outside the car window was shrouded in the darkness that could not be seen by the hand. Only endless silence and emptiness. This white bone abyss is fake. Right. Not a single undead demonic beast? I suspect that this white bone abyss is a mirage. Otherwise it couldn't be this quiet. Leader Qin. What's going on here? The panic on everyone's faces was gradually replaced by doubt. Qin Yan Yan also revealed a suspicious expression, staring sideways at the scene outside the car window. Strange. Why isn't there a single undead type magical beast? Xiao Xingyu came to Qin Yan Yan's side. Sister Yan Ran, what's the situation now? Brother Xingyu, based on my past experience of escorting train 13, 100% of the white bone abyss section will have a large number of undead system magical beasts attacking the train. Qin Yan Yan bit her lips and fell into deep thought. That's too weird. Another five minutes passed. The train crossed the bridge unharmed and entered the safe section. Xiao Xingyu opened the window and poked his head out. Looking backward as the white bone abyss grew farther and farther away until it was submerged in the blur at the end of his sight. Li Kai pinched out his cigarette and frowned sadly. I haven't figured out even after smoking three cigarettes, why there isn't a single magical beast in the white bone abyss. The others chimed in. Train 13 passing through the white bone abyss section unharmed. This would have been a heavenly joke in the past. It's too mind-boggling. I always feel that something is strange. Could it be that undead system magical beasts also need to hibernate? Everyone was spitting out this matter as you spoke and I spoke. Qin Yan Yan spat out a breath. Although this matter is bizarre, it's still a good thing. We can make less effort and arrive at Yellow Smoke City earlier. Leader Qin is right. It's better to do more than less. Wouldn't it be better if there are no magical beasts ambushing us in White Bonobus? Right. 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 Before dawn, everyone can rest well. Everyone didn't care too much about the abnormalities of the White Bonobus. They all relaxed and enjoyed this night where they could sleep well. Qin Yan Yan brought a cup of lemon hot tea and sat next to Xiao Xingyu. Brother Xingyu, looking at the serious expression on your face, it seems that you have thoughts about the white bone abyss's abnormality? Xiao Xingyu frowned. Sister Yan Ran, I have a bad premonition that there should be something else behind the scenes regarding the strangeness of the white bone abyss. Right at this moment, a system beep sounded in Xiao Xingyu's ears. Ding. Trigger special mission, obtain an SSS rating in this midterm exam. Mission reward, random SSS grade beast energy crystals plus 20, 000, 000 point coupons. Xiao Xingyu's brows furrowed even more. Passing through the white bone abyss section just now would have been the best time to increase the scoring level, but not a single undead system magical beast was encountered. So it's reasonable to say that there's no chance of getting an SSS rating for this exam, and it's not even good enough to get an SS rating. The system releases such a task at this time, and the rewards are generous. Xiao Xingyu looked out the window his deep eyes penetrating a touch of worry. What exactly will happen next? It was 3 o'clock in the morning, and the night was long. Warm reminder, the road section ahead passing through Kunmi Mountain will be infested with a large number of giant-type magical beasts. Please raise the alert and prepare for battle. The radio broadcast rang out abruptly, waking up the sleeping candidates. Wake up, we're about to arrive at Mount Kunya. Crap, Mount Kunya. Director Chin instructed that Mount Kunya is one of the five sacred mountains in the Dragon Kingdom and the valley is filled with giant-type magical beasts that are over a hundred meters tall. Don't sleep. All hands prepare for battle. Everyone raised their alertness and secretly mobilized their spiritual energy, ready to fight at any time. Xiao Xingyu looked out the window. Not far away was a towering mountain peak. This cloudy and misty mountain was Mount Kunmi, one of the five sacred mountains of the Dragon Kingdom. In this great mountain, there was a colony of giant lineage magical beasts inhabiting it. The so-called giant lineage magical beasts were simply mutated species of beastman lineage magical beasts. There was a water pool in Mount Kunya with a special water source. Once any orc-type magical beast drank from it, its body would mutate and its height and weight would instantly skyrocket. When the height of an orc beast exceeds 100 meters, it is categorized as a giant beast. Xiao Xingyu had never eaten pork, but had seen a pig run. Online, one could always find information about Mount Kunmi as well as videos. In the video, some tall black shadows emerged from time to time from the depths of the mist in the mountain. These black shadows were the giant system magical beasts. When small humans stood under the feet of giant type magical beasts, they would suffer from giant phobia, triggering the primal fear deep in their genes. Humans with poor stamina would even suffer from mental illnesses due to excessive fright. The candidates were so panicked that they didn't dare to look at the scene outside the car window. 10 minutes passed. 20 minutes passed. Half an hour. For the entire half an hour. Everyone's nerves were tense, fearing that the black mist outside the window would rush out the head of the giant-type demonic beast at any moment. However any accidents didn't happen. Just like when passing through the white bonobus, the train is about to leave the Kunmi mountain section. 
an alert came from the radio stereo, which made everyone puzzled, and then they discussed it in a variety of ways. It's really strange. The Kunmi Mountain section is almost over, and we actually haven't seen the shadow of a single giant type demonic beast. First the White Bone Abyss, then the Kunmi Mountain. The danger factor of these two dangerous sections are both higher than the Five Poison Canyon, yet we haven't encountered a single magical beast attacking the train. Leader Chin, you're experienced. Have you encountered this kind of situation before? Facing the questions thrown out by the candidates, Xin Yenron's face was embarrassed. This this is the first time I've encountered this kind of situation as well. Xin Yenron had escorted train 13 as many as a hundred times in the past two years. During these hundred or so journeys, every time she passed by the White Bone Abyss in Kunmi Mountain, it would give her a headache. This was because the White Bone Abyss would always have a huge number of undead-type demonic beasts. While the surroundings of Mount Kunya were filled with giant-type demonic beasts that were more than a hundred meters tall, it was no exaggeration to say that a full-bodied level giant-type demonic beast would be able to flatten Train 13 with just one kick. However, this time, passing through the White Bone Abyss in Kunmi Mountain, Train 13 drove steadily through the dangerous sections of the road without encountering half a single demonic beast. This was bizarre. This was beyond Qin Yin Yin's range of experience. It was also beyond everyone's cognition. Xiao Xingyu's face was dark and he knew a truth. There must be a demon when things go awry. After another 10 minutes, the train pulled out of the Kunmi mountain section. Xiao Xingyu once again probed to look out the window. The mysterious mountain peaks towering into the clouds. The train is far away from the end of the darkness. Although the candidates were confused by this, they were more than happy. The candidates who remained on the train today had all experienced the bloody battle in the Five Poison Canyon, and their grades had reached a minimum of C. In other words they had all reached the passing line. The two dangerous zones, the White Bone Abyss and Kunmi Mountain, were safely passed, meaning that the midterm exams were about to come to an end. Having saved their lives and passed the exam, this was the best result for the candidates. Only Xiao Xingyu had a low pressure cloud hanging over his head as he lowered his head in contemplation. The rate of heartbeat doesn't seem to be too steady. This feeling is so strange. Ominous ah. Xiao Xingyu had just triggered a special system mission. A mission that was like a ringing alarm signaling that the end of the train was not a terminal, but a bloodbath. The day dawned. At 6 o'clock in the morning, the first ray of sunrise passed through the train's window and fell on Xiao Xingyu's side face. The radio sounded. Station ahead. Sirius Lake Station. Wu Shangyu perked up and said excitedly, Father Yu, according to the roadmap, Tianlang Lake Station is the penultimate station. Song Wu smiled nervously, and Tianlangwu Lake Station is a safe section. The train will not be attacked by magical beasts. Xiao Xingyu glanced at the cell phone map, his expression still gloomy. The closer we get to the terminal, the heart palpitations are instead getting stronger. Xin Yenron's voice came over the radio. Everyone, come gather in compartment 8. Five minutes later, the candidates as well as the members of the vault guild all gathered in carriage 8. Xin Yenron raised her hand then pressed down, signaling everyone to be quiet. Just now, I received an impromptu notice, so I'm announcing something now. Everyone stops their noisy gossip and all of them wash their ears. The arrival station ahead is the Sirius Lake Station. Our Dragon Kingdom's Princess Shangwan Shallow has just passed the six-star Imperial Beast Master Examination. Her Highness will be boarding train number 13 at the Sirius Lake Station and traveling with us to the terminal station. Yellow Smoke City. Before Qin Yen Ron's words fell, the carriage fell into an uproar. Her Highness the Princess? I've only seen it in the newspapers and on TV. That's a stunning beauty on Earth. This trip was worth it actually having the chance to see her highness in real life. Zhang Wei, what are you stinking about? I'm going to fix my hair and greet the princess with my best spirit. Maybe I'll be chosen as the emperor's son-in-law. Although Zhang Wei's classmate's ability to handle imperial beasts was poor, his intelligence was not bad. At least he knew to try to take shortcuts in life. Shang Wan Lan only had such a daughter as Shang Wan Shallow. Whoever in the Dragon Kingdom could marry Shang Wan Shallow, the princess, and become the Dragon Kingdom's extra horse harnessed by the side of a team would be able to take a step up to the sky, and it would not be a problem for them to be powerful in the future. So excited ah, righteous father, we can see her highness the princess, aren't you excited? Tiger, calm down, the princess is also a human, not a god, no, she is my goddess. Wu Shengyu was just as excited as Song Hu, but a question also arose, why would her highness appear in a shithole like Tian Lang Lake? Xiao Xingyu thought meticulously and analyzed carelessly. Behind the Tian Wolf Lake, is the Ligu Glacier, the location of the six-star Imperial Beast Master's examination. So, that after the princess passed the six-star examination, why didn't she take the airplane to return to the Imperial City, but took the car with us to Yellow Smoke City? Righteous father, like old Wu, I don't understand the princess's choice. 
Xiao Xing Yu had to continue to patiently explain. Yellow Smoke City is the western border of the Dragon Kingdom, an important strategic fortress. Shangwan Shallow is the princess of the Dragon Kingdom, her status is honored, and her personal tour of Yellow Smoke City can bring comfort and hope to the local military and civilians, as well as the fighting spirit to continue defending the border. If I'm not wrong, this move by the princess is a mission authorized and directed by the Empress Lord. Xiao Xingyu guessed correctly that Shangwan Shallow's tour of Yellow Smoke City was Shangwan Land's decree. Not long after, the train slowed down and stopped by the platform. Near the platform, there was a huge lake, which was shaped in such a way that it was as bright as Sirius. This was the penultimate stop of train 13, Sirius Lake Station. At the back of the Sirius Lake was a group of continuous glaciers called the Laiku Glacier. Deep within the glaciers, there were powerful ice magic beasts coiled up, such as the cold ice wind falcon, frost giant eagle, and hail snow mammoth. The train stopped and the door of the no. Eight compartment opened slowly. Everyone, look, it's her highness. The princess is so beautiful, even prettier than on TV. Don't even try to steal the emperor's son-in-law's seat from me. Xiao Xingyu sat in the corner of the carriage and looked out the window with a sideways glance. The station platform was overcrowded, and the crowd was clustered around a tall and beautiful woman. Under the morning sunlight, she looked like a beautiful angel, exuding a charming aura. Her long hair was as smooth as silk, gently fluttering in the wind. Her posture was lithe and graceful. Her palm-sized melon face was flawless, revealing elegance and confidence everywhere, making people feel the presence and charm of beauty whenever and wherever they were. This beauty was the only daughter of the Dragon Kingdom's Empress Shang Wan Lan, and the only princess of the Dragon Kingdom, Shang Wan Shallow. In terms of looks, Shang Wan Shallow and Shang Wan Lan were only three times similar, but the temperament of the mother and daughter were at least seven points similar. Shang Wan Shallow just stood there, no need to raise her hand to lift her hair, no need to blink and smile, still able to make everyone's eyes can't help but gather on her body. Her existence is as bright and dazzling as the stars, the breeze blue, hair flying. Shang Wan Shallow's beautiful face displayed a hint of a warm and generous smile. Indeed, very beautiful. Xiao Xing Yu had a discerning eye and would rarely make such an assessment of a girl. It's a good thing Morong Xinxin wasn't present, or else hearing this sentence, he would definitely be jealous inside. Beside Shang Wan Shallow, a Kirin divine beast crouched. The Kirin's size was about as big as an adult male lion, not considered large among the many imperial beasts. Its body was snow white, and its scales and armor were as smooth and translucent as crystal. On top of its head, a spiral unicorn horn of about 30 centimeters grew out, flashing with a piercing cold light. Ice Spirit Unicorn, Shang Wan Shallow's favorite imperial beast, was also Shang Wan Lan's 21st birthday gift to her. It was with this imperial beast that Shang Wan Shallow had successfully passed the six-star examination to become a six-star imperial beast master. In her early twenties, to become a six-star imperial beast master was a genius among geniuses. Shang Wan Shallow did not dishonor the name of the princess and cashed in on the genetically inherited talent. Qin Yan Ran arrived at the carriage door and crossed her arms over her chest, taking out the highest etiquette. Song Dome Guild Qin Yan Yan, welcome your highness the princess. Shang Wan Shallow was far more lively and spirited than one would expect. Leader Qin, you said the princess please get on the car. Ah this, princess please get on the car. Shang Wan Shallow put the ice spirit Qilin into the imperial beast crest and boarded the train. Your highness. You're too beautiful, can you give me an autograph? Your Highness, and please, Your Highness the Princess, give a photo opportunity. The candidates were all seeing Shang Wan Shallow for the first time, one more excited and thrilled than the other. Qin Yan Ran had to invite Shang Wan Shallow into the VIP compartment to rest in order to maintain order in the compartment. VIP compartment. Qin Yan Yan was not humble, Your Highness, there is still one more stop to Yellow Smoke City, it's about a 30 minute ride, I'll go get you a glass of water. No. Qin Yan Ran stopped her steps, then heard Shang Wan Shallow's ethereal and lazy voice. Let Xiao Xing Yu come and pour me some water. Qin Yan Ran's delicate body trembled, her head full of questions. The princess named Brother Xing Yu to pour water for her? Could it be that Brother Xing Yu and the princess know each other? Because she was too curious. Qin Yan Ran couldn't help but say, My subordinate took the liberty of making one more comment. You and Xiao Xing Yu know each other? Shang Wan Shallow's pair of picturesque eyebrows twitched slightly, maintaining an elegant smile. Knowing the presumptuousness and still dare to ask, Qin Yan Ran was like falling into an ice cellar. This woman in front of her was the princess of the Dragon Kingdom, not something she could afford to offend. It was my subordinate who was rude. Qin Yan Ran bent down to apologize and left the VIP compartment. Carriage 15. Wu Sheng Yu and Song who were discussing the topic of who can be the emperor's son-in-law. Tiger, do you think her highness looks good? Old Wu, aren't you talking nonsense? With that face and body, the princess is a youthful version of the empress. 
Shang Wanlan, known as the first beauty of the Dragon Kingdom, was not because of the added value of the Empress status, even if one puts aside the identity of the Dragon Country's Empress, her face value is still deservedly the ceiling of the Dragon Country's beauty. Shang Wan Shalo was Shang Wanlan's daughter. And even though she had only inherited three points in terms of her face, it was still enough to be called amazing. I also don't know who will be able to marry her highness in the future. I think our righteous father has a chance. Xiao Xingyu didn't even bother to roll his eyes and said in a cold voice, Don't bring me along when you two brag. Father Yu, seriously, I think you and her highness are a good match. Yes, if father Yu really becomes the emperor's son-in-law, then the princess will be our righteous mother. When Lord Empress abdicates, father Yu will be the new emperor. Then I, Wu Sheng Yu, will be the crown prince. On what grounds? I'm the crown prince. Watching Wu Sheng Yu and Song Hu fight over the crown prince position, Xiao Xing Yu smiled helplessly and bitterly, not even bothering to spit. Qin Yen Yen walked into compartment 15. Brother Xing Yu, sister Yen Yen, what's wrong? Qin Yen Yen's lips pressed against Xiao Xing Yu's ear. Her Highness the Princess has orders for you to go and pour water for her. Why me? How would I know? You brat tell your sister the truth. What exactly is your relationship with Her Highness? Xiao Xingyu innocently shook his head. He did have a special relationship with Shang Wan Lan, but he did not have any interactions with Shang Wan Xiao. You brat better not have lied to me. All right, don't stare. Quickly go to the VIP carriage. In the VIP compartment, Shang Wan Xiao was sitting on the soft leather sofa, holding a document with a leading seal. Xiao Xingyu pushed the door in, holding a cup of warm tea. When Xiao Xingyu looked up, he froze and instantly lost his concentration. Only by close contact could one realize how much of a visual impact Shang Wan Shallow's beauty would bring to a man. Shang Wan Lan's beauty is the beauty of the world's independence. The beauty that should only be found in heaven. The beauty of the mature flavor that has washed away all the lead. Shang Wan Shallow, on the other hand, is the youthful version of Shang Wan Lan, more pure, more spiritual, more able to touch the young man's spring heart and find the feeling of first love. You are eight feet away from me. How can I drink water? Xiao Xingyu slowed down and took a few steps forward, handing the water cup to Shang Wan Shallow, said Princess please drink tea, Xiao Xingyu was inwardly speechless, Princess please drink tea, Shang Wan Shallow took a sip of tea, her cool phoenix eyes sparkling, Priest Xiao, this tea is good, Xiao Xingyu's heart thumped, Your Highness, you, Shang Wan Shallow lifted the hem of her skirt, revealing the token at her waist, Imperial Soul Token. This token was the Emperor's Soul Order that symbolized the identity of the Emperor's Soul Organization. Xiao Xingyu also had a piece of it, given by Shang Wan Lan himself. That woman is truly inscrutable, actually secretly placing her own daughter, also into the Imperial Soul Organization. Shang Wan Shallow put down her water cup and handed Xiao Xingyu a document. Do you know why I'm going to Yellow Smoke City to make my rounds? My subordinate doesn't know and doesn't dare to speculate. Shang Wan Shallow suddenly put away her bright smile and her voice went a few points colder. According to the Imperial Soul Organization's tip-off, a month ago, a pseudo-human lineage magical beast infiltrated Yellow Smoke City. Xiao Xingyu had expounded on books in the Green Dragon Library and knew the horror of the pseudo-human lineage magical beast. This kind of magical beast was able to infiltrate into human territory by disguising itself and taking on the appearance of a human. Xiao Xingyu subconsciously began brainstorming. There isn't a single magical beast infested in the White Bone Abyss or Kunmi Mountain. Pseudo-human type magical beasts sneaked into Yellow Smoke City. There seems to be an imperceptible connection between this information. Shang Wan Shallo spoke. Priest Xiao, listen to the order. Subordinate is here. The Empress has ordered that you and I join forces to investigate the case of Yellow Smoke City mixing with pseudo-human lineage magical beasts without fail. Xiao Xingyu's forehead was in a cold sweat. I'm a two-star imperial beast master. That old woman is actually deliberately getting me involved in such a big case. Is she testing me? Or testing me? Or is she teasing me? Imperial City. Night Lan Palace. Shang Wan Lan looked at the snowy scenery outside the hall. Her delicate rosy lips slightly raised. Xiao Xingyu. This time, don't let this emperor down. Your Highness. The tea is cold. I'll go pour you another cup. VIP Carriage. Xiao Xingyu and Shang Wan Shallo had just finished a conversation about the internal intelligence of the emperor's soul. Although Shang Wan Shallow had a bright and smiling appearance on the surface, she was Shang Wan Lan's daughter, and she did not know how many old foxes were hidden under the stunning face. Xiao Xingyu felt that the atmosphere in the carriage was too depressing and planned to take the opportunity to go out for some air. However Shang Wan Shallow immediately spoke out to stop it. I'm not thirsty anymore, so stay here and accompany me to arrive at Yellow Smoke City. In the entire carriage, there was only Xiao Xingyu and Shang Wan Shallow, and the already depressing atmosphere became more and more subtle. Xiao Xingyu, can you relax a bit? You look too tense. 
I, I'm not nervous. Shang Wan Shallow was playful and beckoned towards Xiao Xingyu. Come here. Xiao Xingyu took a step forward. At this time, he was still about a meter away from Shang Wan Shallow. It was reasonable to say that a big person with a noble status like Shang Wan Shallow would never let any outsider come within a meter of her. Xiao Xingyu had thought that he had taken a good measure. But he didn't expect Shang Wan Shallow to come back with another sentence. Lean a little closer to me. Ha! Huh? I don't want to say the same words a second time. Xiao Xingyu felt doubly helpless and could only take a step forward. At this time, the distance between the two was only 20 centimeters. At such a close distance, Xiao Xingyu couldn't help but inwardly marvel at how delicate and smooth the skin of the woman in front of him was. The aroma of cherry blossoms? No, this should be Shang Wan Shallow's body fragrance. The same as her old mom. Previously, Xiao Xingyu had come into close contact with Shang Wan Lan, and now he had come into close contact with Shang Wan Shallow. The mother and daughter both had the same scent of body fragrance, both faint cherry blossom flavor. Shang Wan Shallow raised her right hand and her green onion-like fingers touched the tip of Xiao Xingyu's nose. Xiao Xingyu was calm on the surface, but panicked inside. Crap, what does this bitch mean? Is it going to subvert me? The money for the room and the condom should be out of her. Xiao Xingyu's brain circuits were clear, brainstorming all sorts of strange plots in a second's time. Shang Wan Shallow's voice pulled Xiao Xingyu's thoughts back. Quite handsome looking especially these eyes. Very nice. Thanks for the compliment. Your Highness. Actually, I'm very curious. What kind of magic power do you have that can make my mother value you so much? Xiao Xingyu pretended to be naive and had a silly smile on his face. Maybe I'm lucky. I've spent 22 years with my mother. I know her too well. She has never been so appreciative of any young man. And she even made an exception by granting you the Emperor's Soul Order in advance. Shang Wan Shallow paused and suddenly asked, Where is your Emperor's Soul Order? Take it out for me to take a look. Xiao Xingyu was a little embarrassed. I didn't bring it. How dare you lie in front of me. Something as important as the Emperor's Soul Order. You would definitely carry it with you. Xiao Xingyu's stuttering appearance made Shang Wan Shallow a little annoyed. Xiao Xingyu, I order you as the Princess of the Dragon Kingdom to bring out the Emperor's Soul Order. Your Highness, it's not that I'm not willing to take it out. It's that it's inconvenient to take it out. If I take it out in front of you, it would be a great disrespect to you. Xiao Xingyu's squirming appearance made Shang Wan Shallow guess the general idea. Oh, you hid the Imperial Soul Order in your shoes? Don't worry, I don't mind your smelly feet. Take it out. I didn't hide it in my shoes. No matter where you hid it, you must take it out. This is an order. Xiao Xingyu pursed his lips, pouting like a little daughter-in-law. Well then, your highness, I'm offended. Xiao Xingyu's words just fell, undoing the waistband of his pants with a stabbing sound. Shang Wan Shallow the honorable and elegant Princess Highness, for the first time in her life revealed a dumbfounded expression. You what are you doing? Your Highness, it was you who told me to pull out the Imperial Soul Order. It was a good thing that there was no one else in the carriage. Xiao Xingyu unzipped his pants in front of Shang Wan Shallow. Shang Wan Shallow bit her red lips. It was difficult to maintain the poise and elegance of a princess and covered her eyes with both hands. But out of curiosity, Shang Wan Shallow left a gap between her fingers. Xiao Xingyu pulled out half a day and finally pulled out a token. Princess, please open your eyes. Shang Wan Shallow lowered her hands. Her pretty face flushed, surprisingly somewhat cute. Xiao Xingyu, you dare to disrespect me. Looking for death. It was you who told me to take out the Imperial Soul Order no matter what. If I don't pull it out, wouldn't I be disobeying your order? Shang Wan Shallow ran out of words and took a deep breath to adjust his mindset. Bring over the Emperor's Soul Order. Princess, please take a look. AI AI AI, no need to get so close, I'm not afraid that you won't be able to see it, because the distance was too close, Shang Wan Shallow could clearly smell a faint strange odor emanating from the Emperor's Soul Order, this strange odor is not a stench, but the unique male hormone scent of adolescence, although Shang Wan Shallow was a few years older than Xiao Xingyu, she was also a yellow flower girl in her early 20s, not having had any experience, she would be more or less shy in the face of this situation, Xiao Xingyu, you are really an immodest demon, Shang Wan Shallow gritted her teeth with feeling. Xiao Xingyu expressed his innocence. Where am I a modest? Ah uh, ah uh, ah. Uh. A decent person who hides the Imperial Soul Order in his underwear. Shang Wan Shallow went crazy over it. Xiao Xingyu explained with a red face. Lord Empress said that the Emperor's Soul Order is very important. That's why I hid it in the safest place. Shang Wan Shallow shook her head. Relieved. That's just it. Just it. You lift up your pants first before talking to me. After Xiao Xingyu lifted up his pants. Shang Wan Shallow confirmed that the Emperor's Soul Order in his hand was not a fake. It seems that my mother trusts you and is determined to train you. Your Highness, let me say one more thing. You are a princess with a noble status. 
Why did Lord Empress place you in the Imperial Soul Organization? Members of the Emperor's Soul Organization had an extremely high mortality rate, and the missions they carried out were all secret missions, not even to be seen. In Xiao Xingyu's opinion, it was hard for him to understand a mother who sent her own daughter into a fire pit. This is not a question you should ask. Xiao Xingyu had the sense to shut up, but he didn't stop there, but silently opened the eye of the demon god. On this woman, there's no aura of dragon power. Could it be that she is not Shang Wan Lan's own? It was known that Shang Wan Lan's true identity was the black dragon. According to normal logic, Shang Wan Shallow was the little black dragon. However, the eye of the demon god would not make a mistake. Shang Wan Shallow was the body of a human. Without the slightest bit of dragon power in her body, it seems that the relationship between Shang Wan mother and daughter is something else, but there's no need for me to overspeculate. After all, with my current strength, it's better not to fall out with Shang Wan mother and daughter. Obscene development is the king. Xiao Xingyu adhered to the strategic policy of obscene development, focusing on a cautious and steady approach. Half an hour later, the radio rang out. Attention all travelers, the station ahead, terminal, yellow smoke city. Train number 13 slowly came to a stop, and outside the window was the endless desert. Above the desert, an ancient city rose up. This was the western border crossing of the Dragon Kingdom, Yellow Smoke City. Within the Yellow Smoke City was the land of the Dragon Kingdom. Outside of Yellow Smoke City was the crisis-ridden territory of the magical beasts. Xiao Xingyu, we've arrived at the station. Aha, right, don't forget our mission. Make sure to uncover the pseudo-human lineage magical beasts hiding in Yellow Smoke City. Understood. Shang Wan Shallow got out of the car, and Xiao Xingyu followed her side. On the surface, a princess and a commoner. Behind the scenes, these two were both people of the Imperial Soul. Unload. Move neatly. Looking at this damn weather, there might be a rainstorm at any time. Everyone tried to unload all the goods before lunch. The train carriages were all opened, and a group of big-bladed workers took turns unloading the goods. The military supplies brought over by train 13 had relieved Yellow Smoke City's urgent need for a shortage of supplies. 12 o'clock at noon, inside Yellow Smoke City, the city lord's mansion, Zhou Xiong, as the master in charge of garrisoning the city, hosted a banquet in his residence to show a little bit of the landlord's hospitality. In the banquet hall, the candidates of Green Dragon Academy's Year 1 Class 3 sat together. The candidates were heartless, immersed in the joy of the end of the exams, enjoying this delicious meal to the fullest. For the candidates, they could stay overnight in Yellow Smoke City tonight and wait until early tomorrow morning to take the return train back to Green Dragon Academy. The members of the Tsung Dome Guild sat at the same table. Li Kai, Leader Jean, why aren't you eating? Don't you have an appetite? You guys eat. I'm not hungry. Jin Yen Ran was oblivious to the food on the table as she rested her chin on one hand and gazed sideways in the direction of the main table. The guests who could go to the main table could only be big shots. Shang Wan Shala was the princess of the Dragon Kingdom, so naturally it went without saying. The problem was that beside Shang Wan Shallow, there sat a surprising fellow. Your Highness, thank you for coming to Yellow Smoke City on your busy schedule to make your rounds. This cup, Mr. Joe toasts you. City Mistress Joe, you're being too kind. You have been stationed at the western border of my dragon kingdom for dozens of years. It's me who should thank you. Shang Wan Shallow clinked glasses with Zhou Xiong and drank it all in one go. Zhou Xiong finished toasting Shang Wan Shallow and immediately poured it full. Old brother Xiao, we are old friends. Have a drink. The teenager beside Shang Wan Shallow was Xiao Xingyu. At the main table, Zhou Xiong was the city lord of Yellow Smoke City. The few people around Zhou Xiong were also the most capable lieutenants under Zhou Xiong's command. Only Xiao Xingyu looked out of place. He didn't have any identity background. He was only a first year student of the Green Dragon Academy. Li Kai muttered in a low voice. Leader Qin, this kid Xing Yu can be ah. I didn't expect him to be so close to the princess that the princess even brought him along to sit at the main table. Shang Wan Shallow was a famous big beauty in the Dragon Kingdom. Coupled with the honorary status of the princess, Qin Yenron was a little jealous inside. Good Yu Xiao Xing Yu, you guy who sees color and forgets his sister. Qin Yenron secretly spat in her heart. Leader Qin, isn't Xing Yu your younger brother? You as a sister. Do you know why Xing Yu and the princess are so familiar with each other? I don't know. Drink. Qin Yan Yan was so jealous that she picked up the wine jug and poured it down her throat. Li Kai and the other members of the vault guild looked at each other in disbelief. Main table. Zhou Xiong pulled Xiao Xing Yu and drank three cups in a row as they chatted. After three glasses of wine, Zhou Xiong put his arm around Xiao Xing Yu's shoulders, just focusing on drinking. Let me formally introduce you guys. This teenager beside me is not an ordinary person. He is the most powerful imperial beast pill master I've ever seen. Bar none. Zhou Xiong's face was filled with pride and pride as he introduced Xiao Xingyu. That's him, 
My good old forgotten brother, Xiao Xingyu, it was he who developed the purple spirit essence that eradicated shaman's disease. After Zhou Xiong finished speaking, everyone cast gazes of appreciation and admiration towards Xiao Xingyu. Student Xiao is so young, but his alchemy attainments are so high. Since ancient times, heroes come out of youths. Classmate Xiao, I'll toast to you as well. In any era, the most respected were always the talents. With Xiao Xingyu's heaven-defying medical skills, as well as his talent for refining medicines, even if he wasn't a royal beast master, he would still be admired by the world, and become an object of competition for all the major powers. Shang Wan Shallow approached Xiao Xingyu's ear. Xiao Xingyu, there really is something about you. I didn't expect you to be so talented in medical arts and pill refining. No wonder my mother values you. Princess overpraised. Actually this is my most rookie time. Low key, low key. Shang Wan Shallow's face sank. I'll be damned. I shouldn't have praised you. After another glass of wine, Zhou Xiong opened his mouth. Princess, old brother Xiao, I almost forgot to introduce you guys. This one, is my vice general Zhao Ming, in charge of the three elite imperial beast master units. And this one, is the battlefield vanguard officer, Lu Ruijia. This fellow with skin darker than charcoal, named Sun Lang, is in charge of the strange raider troops. Zhou Xiong introduced the three most trusted and capable generals around him to Xiao Xingyu and Shang Wan Shallow. These three people did not look any different, but in Xiao Xingyu and Shang Wan Shallow's opinion, no difference was the biggest difference. Hot knowledge, pseudo-human lineage magical beasts, disguised as humans, magical beast Sora is completely absent, able to imitate 100% of the humans every move, and even tone and demeanor. After three rounds of wine, Shang Wan Shallow got up. This wine is too toppy. I'll go out to blow off some steam. Your Highness, it's windy outside. You're wearing too little. Xiao Xingyu picked up his jacket and followed closely behind. On the city wall, Shang Wan Shallow stood with her arms folded, looking into the distance. There was only the vast desert in the field of view, with not an inch of grass growing. A fierce wind swept across the land. Yellow sand rose in all directions. Smoke and dust covered the sky, and the temperature plummeted. When the wind blew, the wine woke up. Shang Wan Shallow out of the instinctive reaction of the human body. The delicate body trembled. Three consecutive shivers. At this time a wave of warmth enveloped from behind. Shang Wan Shallow revealed an unexpected expression. Xiao Xingyu followed and draped his own jacket over Shang Wan Shallow's body. Xiao Xingyu, I thought you were a strange demon who was not bound by the world. But I didn't realize that you also have a humane side. If you freeze and catch a cold, how can we still investigate the case of the pseudo-human lineage demonic beast? Shang Wan Shallow got back to the point, since we've mentioned business. Let's talk about what you discovered at the banquet just now. Xiao Xingyu asked rhetorically. I would like to ask first, what does the princess think? Shang Wan Shallow's face was calm, and her eyes were wise. The pseudo-human lineage magical beast possesses an extremely high IQ. When it infiltrates into human territory, it will definitely choose the identity of a human with a high enough status to disguise itself. In Yellow Smoke City, the one with the highest status is Zhou Xiong Zhou City Lord. Other than Zhou Xiong, there are also his three most trusted and capable generals, namely Zhao Ming, Lu Rui Jie, and Sun Lang. With my guess, the pseudo-human system magical beast, is amongst the four of them. Xiao Xingyu smiled faintly. Princess's view is that it's one of the four? Shang Guan Shallow twisted her head to look at Xiao Xingyu. A hint of sulking surfaced on her beautiful face. You have a strange smile. If you have something to say, just say it and fart. Xiao Xingyu was silent for a moment and opened his mouth amazingly. There's no need to choose one out of four. I'm sure, Zhao Ming is a pseudo-human system magical beast. Shang Wan Shallow's brain buzzed, and at first, she thought she had a hearing problem. What did you say? Say it again. Zhao Ming, is the pseudo-human lineage magical beast. Shang Wan Shallow's eyebrows frowned tightly, her voice low, what makes you so sure? Xiao Xingyu was serious, by these eyes of mine, everything in the world, everything, cannot escape the judgment of the demon god's eyes. Princess, why aren't you talking? With you, I'm not speechless right now, I'm helpless. Where did Shang Wan Shallow know about the existence of the eye of the demon god? She thought Xiao Xingyu was just joking. Xiao Xingyu, it's windy, let's go back. Aha, this was the western border of the dragon kingdom. Standing on the city wall, looking around one could only see continuous sand dunes, the desert area, the environment was harsh, and the weather was even more unpredictable. A moment ago, the sun was still hanging high in the sky, but in the blink of an eye, dark clouds covered the area and the temperature plummeted, seemingly signaling that Yellow Smoke City was about to usher in a bloody storm. The two were on their way back to the banquet hall when they encountered Zhou Xiong. City Lord Zhou, why have you come out as well? Your Highness, 
I'm looking for old brother Xiao for some personal matters. Shang Wan Shallow glanced at Xiao Xingyu and did not say anything more as she walked alone in the direction of the banquet hall. Zhou Xiong's sturdy body leaned under the city gate, a cigarette dangling from his mouth. Old brother Xiao, do you want one? No, I remember you can smoke, the princess said. She hates the smell of smoke. If I smoke one now, I'll go back and be read to buy her again. Zhou Xiong a big man who stepped into middle age. At this moment his face unexpectedly lit up the fire of gossip. I'm really curious. When did you get so close to the princess? You two knew each other before? Regarding the matters of the Imperial Soul Organization, Xiao Xingyu was not at liberty to reveal them, so he was unable to answer Zhou Xiong's question. That's just it. I won't talk too much. By the way old brother Xiao, I've done the thing you asked me to do last time. Zhou Xiong opened the organizer bag on his waist and took out two bunches of flowers. The flowers were shaped like starfish in the deep sea, and their petals appeared purple in color. Deep within the stamens, orange crystals shimmered emitting a refreshing fragrance, and after inhaling it into his nose he was able to experience a touch of sweetness. Xiao Xingyu's eyes were glowing as he excitedly said, Magic Firefly Flower, the nectar of the Magic Firefly Flower, the morning dew of the phoenix tail grass, and the feces of the beast god body magical beast. These three unattainable things were the three necessary conditions for cultivating the ancient lineage imperial beast, heavenly soul vine beast. Zhou Xiong handed Xiao Xingyu the two bunches of demon glow flowers in his hand and said with a smile, Old brother Xiao, you said last time that you needed demon glow flowers. Older brother. I went through a lot of trouble to get these two bunches. Thank you city lord Joe. It's just the two of us here. You're being outgoing aren't you? He he he. Thank you brother Joe. There was almost a 30 year difference in age between the two. Zhou Xiong greatly appreciated Xiao Xingyu's talent and character. Which was why he had to pull Xiao Xingyu to call him a brother. Xiao Xingyu put the demon glow flower into his spatial ring and took out a package from the spatial ring in the meantime. Brother Zhou. This is for you. What is this? Just open it and see. Zhou Xiong unwrapped the package, and inside were densely packed purple vials. Purple purple diamond essence? So many. Zhou Xiong was first shocked, and then excitedly overjoyed. A bottle of purple diamond essence could help 10 imperial beasts eradicate shaman's disease. In Xiao Xingyu's package, there were at least 300 small pill bottles. One had to know that the Yellow Smoke City's garrison was only about 2. 000 people and there were only about 500 elite imperial beast masters. The amount of medicine Xiao Xingyu had brought was enough for the entire army. Elder brother Xiao, you've really solved the urgent need of our yellow smoke city's garrison. Wait, that's not right. It's only been less than a month and you've developed such a large dose of purple diamond essence? I knew that brother Zhou was in a hurry to use it, so I rushed to finish it. Zhou Xiong felt doubly warm after hearing this and heavily patted Xiao Xingyu's shoulder. Good brother, I wasn't wrong about you. The two of them chatted for a while longer, and while they were chatting, a flat-headed man ran over. City Lord Zhou, everyone is waiting for you to go back for a drink. Xiao Xingyu glanced at him with his afterglow, and his brows furrowed slightly. This flat-headed man was Zhao Ming. Zhao Ming was the most trusted vice general under Zhou Xiong, with a segment level of six stars, controlling three elite imperial beast master units. In Yellow Smoke City, Zhou Xiong spoke the best and Zhao Ming spoke the second best. Old Zhao. I still want to catch up with old brother Xiao. You guys drink first. Don't. City Lord Zhou. Everyone is waiting for you. There are also those candidates from the Green Dragon Academy who all want to hear your strange stories about being stationed at the border for 30 years. Zhou Xiong revealed an impatient expression. But Xiao Xingyu spoke up. Brother Zhou. Why don't you go back and drink first? After all, you're the host and everyone wants to toast with you. Elder brother Xiao. Aren't you going back with me? Let's have a few more drinks. I'm not up to the task of drinking. I still want to continue blowing off steam. Alright then, this is my city lord's token. Take it. With the token in your hand, you're free to go in and out of any corner of the entire city. Enjoy the customs of the western frontier. Zhou Xiong was then pulled away by Zhao Ming, leaving Xiao Xingyu alone under the city gate. In Xiao Xingyu's hand, he held the city lord's token given by Zhou Xiong. With this token in place, Xiao Xingyu could walk around the city without any restrictions. Xiao Xingyu did not rush to go shopping, but found a secluded alley. Under the tree, Xiao Xingyu opened his spatial ring and extracted the flower pot, as well as two bunches of magic firefly flowers. Inside the flower pot, a silver-colored vine with a length of over 10 meters sprang out. The vine was a pillar in the sky. Little silver. Settle down. The plant-based imperial beasts were also humane, and the silver-colored vine took the initiative to bend its own rhizome and surrounded Xiao Xingyu's side. Little silver was the name Xiao Xingyu gave it, focusing on a simple and rough catchy name. Before this, the silver vine had been nourished by the morning dew of the phoenix tail grass, 
and Xiao Xingyu had also fertilized it with the dung of the beast god body magical beasts. Now, as long as the nectar of the demon fly flower was added, this silver-colored vine would detach itself from the flower pot and the soil and metamorphose into a true imperial beast. Without delay, Xiao Xingyu squeezed the pistol of the magic firefly flower, squeezing out the nectar that emitted a fresh fragrance and dripping it into the soil. The roots of the silver-colored vines felt the nectar's scent and absorbed it crazily. With a snap, the flower pot shattered and the dirt scattered. The silver light in the alley flickered and made some strange movements that crackled and popped. Luckily, there were no residents in the neighborhood, and it didn't cause a panic. Little Silver, congratulations, you have officially become the first plant system imperial beast under my command. Xiao Xingyu lowered his head, joy and tenderness showing in his eyes. At this moment, a silver vine that looked like a small snake was wrapped around Xiao Xingyu's right wrist. This inconspicuous silver-colored vine was the heavenly soul vine that possessed an ancient bloodline, illusory god quality. Don't look at it like a small snake that had just crawled out of a pile of grass and mud. But in reality, its rank had already reached a full body, first rank. Ancient bloodline plant type imperial beasts were different from any other imperial beasts in that the moment it broke away from the soil, its rank would reach full body. Currently, the hell spectral wolf was at the mature body, third rank. The four-winged holy angel was at the mature body, first rank. And the electric ear rabbit had no evolutionary path and would always be at the initial rank. In comparison, the heavenly soul vine had the highest segment. Thanks to the special nature of the ancient bloodline, Xiao Xingyu raised his left hand and gently caressed the heavenly soul vine wrapped around his right wrist, while opening the eye of the demon god, the data panel surfaced in his mind. Name, heavenly soul vine. Level, complete body, first order. Bloodline, ancient bloodline, illusory god quality. Talent 1, disarm, enemy units are temporarily unable to use their weapons after being confined and entangled by the vine. Talent 2, Essence of the Sun and Moon, releases a slightly scented aerosol that provides a high amount of blood restoration to friendly units within a certain range, and can also repair buildings. Talent 3, Soul Siphon, automatically absorbs the soul of any magical beast upon its death, increasing its growth rate. Attribute, Ancient System, Plant System, Superpower System, Loyalty, 100. Skill, Death Thorns, releases a large number of branching vines that burrow out of the ground and harden instantly creating a thorny land that inflicts sustained damage and slows down the enemy. Death Twist, wraps around and imprisons enemies like a giant python, constantly shrinking and tightening. Glowing Fire, releases a large number of silver-colored light particles similar to the size of fireflies, covering friendly troops and providing a high amount of blood restoration. Each blood restoration is capped at 60% of total life value. Evolutionary Root, Heavenly Soul Vine Blood Heavenly Soul Vine Soul Vine King Soul Vine Emperor Heavenly Mirage God Vine. Hidden Evolutionary Root, Heavenly Soul Vine Yellow Spring Heavenly Soul Vine Immortal Yellow Spring Flower. Habits and Hobbies, Clinging, Bathing, Bathing Water Must Be Nectar of the Magic Firefly Flower. After browsing the Attribute Panel, Xiao Xingyu revealed a satisfied smile. Ancient Bloodline, Worthy of Being a Phantom God Quality Bloodline, This Bloodline Talent is too hardcore. Xiao Xingyu made a judgment based on the Attribute Panel. With the current Heavenly Soul Vine, its positioning was on the side of a supporting Imperial Beast especially the talent of being able to provide a high amount of blood restoration for friendly troops. It could play an unexpected role for the enemy in large-scale group battles. Of course, in the future, as the heavenly soul vine grew and evolved, and continued to absorb the souls of the dead magical beasts, it would gradually be able to change from a supportive imperial beast to an attacking imperial beast. There's one thing to say, little silver, you're also too difficult to raise, simply like a thousand dollar lady from a big family. No! even harder to serve than a princess of a country. The reason why Xiao Xingyu was so emotional was because the attribute panel showed that the heavenly soul vine had a hobby of taking baths, and it would only accept the nectar of the magic glow flower if it was taken as bath water. Knowing that the devil firefly flower was originally rare in this world, Zhou Xiong had managed to get two bunches of them with great difficulty. Xiao Xingyu roughly calculated that to make up enough for a tub of bath water, at least hundreds of bunches of nectar from the magic firefly flower would be needed. Swift footsteps came from outside the alley. Report, just now it was this alley that emitted a silver-colored glow. Is it hard to believe that a magical beast has invaded? Pass the order down. Surround the alley front and back. We can't let the magical beasts escape. As the footsteps approached, the heavenly soul vine, as if frightened, slipped off Xiao Xingyu's right wrist and directly burrowed into his pants. Crap, Xiao Yin, don't do that. Goose, goose, itchy. Xiao Xingyu laughed out a goose call as the heavenly soul vine drilled into his crotch and refused to come out. At this time, two teams of people attacked back and forth, blocking Xiao Xingyu in the alley. The heavenly soul vine in his crotch shivered, which made Xiao Xingyu strangely tickled, and the effort to stifle his laughter was really pathetic. Xiao Xingyu raised his eyes and looked. 
These people were wearing military uniforms. They were the inspection force responsible for guarding Yellow Smoke City. The segment level was around four to five stars. Kid, what's your name? Wu Yenzu. Be serious. Ahem. Xiao Xingyu. I'm Han Wei, captain of the inspection force. Someone reported that the alley is flickering with silver light and seems to be infested with magical beasts. Do you know anything about it? Xiao Xingyu spread his hands and shook his head. I didn't see any magical beasts. Captain. This kid's crotch moves. All the inspector's gazes swept towards Xiao Xingyu's crotch. Xiao Xingyu was petrified on the spot. No different from social death. Han Wei prepared to summon the imperial beasts. His eyes fierce. I suspect that you're hiding magical beasts in your crotch. Big brother. Are you mistaken? Who in their right mind hides a magical beast in their pants? Furthermore, hiding a magical beast in my pants. Doesn't it sound more outrageous than decorating a three-room apartment in your pants? Captain. This kid's words are not coarse. Han Wei regained his composure. Anyway, you kid dress like this. Not like a local. Take him back for interrogation. Xiao Xing you couldn't hold back and pulled out his token. Who dares to touch me? What are you holding in your hand? Xiao Xing you froze, accidentally holding the wrong one, and actually took out the Imperial Soul token. While Han Wei didn't see it clearly, Xiao Xing you hurriedly retrieved the Imperial Soul Order and then took out the City Lord's token. Captain, it's the City Lord token. Han Wei's attitude immediately made a 180 degree turn and he kept bowing and apologizing. I'm sorry, I'm sorry mister. Xiao. It's my subordinate's eyes that didn't recognize him. Disrespect. Disrespect. Other than Zhou Xiong himself, anyone holding the city lord's token meant that he was Zhou Xiong's close friend. Seeing the token was like seeing the city lord. Han Wei had been an officer in the patrol force for 10 years, so he naturally knew that Xiao Xingyu was not a master to be messed with, and immediately conceded. Scram. All right. Han Wei sighed in relief, and led his minions to prepare to flee the alley in ashes. Stop. Han Wei stood still his back breaking out in cold sweat. Mr. Xiao, what else do you command? Xiao Xingyu pretended to ask carelessly. Your patrol unit, are you well versed in the layout map of Yellow Smoke City? Han Wei was full of pride. This is the basic business skill of our patrol unit. Only if we know enough about the city's layout map can we effectively check for all kinds of hidden dangers. Xiao Xingyu lowered his voice. Then let me ask you, during this recent period, has anyone approached you to take the city's layout map to look at? Let's see. Han Wei began to recall. After a while, Han Wei suddenly remembered something. I remember. A month ago, Vice General Zhao approached me once, and he asked me to give him a map of the city's defenses. He said that he was studying where there were loopholes and then patching them to further improve the city's defense. The corners of Xiao Xingyu's mouth rose as he thought inwardly. As expected, the case is solved. The desert is lonely and the sun sets over the Yangtze River. This majestic poem could not be more appropriate to describe the dust descending on Yellow Smoke City. On the city wall, Shang Wan Shallow held a cup of hot tea in her hand and was enjoying the bleak desert sunset. On her body, she was still draped in Xiao Xingyu's jacket. Xiao Xingyu walked up the city wall, and the surrounding sentries retreated in a sensible manner. How's the investigation going, princess? According to my investigation, Xiao Xingyu whispered in Shang Wan Shallow's ear for a long time, and Shang Wan Shallow's expression changed more and more subtly. The matter is important. There is no room for error. I'll ask you again. Are you sure that that person is a pseudo-human system magical beast? Xiao Xingyu nodded his head, with only an unwavering sense of conviction in his eyes. All right, I'll believe you once. At 8 o'clock in the evening, City Lord Zhou will have a bonfire party, so everyone can celebrate together. I understand. This is the best time to uncover the pseudo-human lineage magical beasts. Xiao Xingyu. Angry voice. What's wrong? Why is your crotch moving? Crap. Forgot about this Xiaoing thing. Your Highness. Calm down. Calm down. Misunderstanding. This is a misunderstanding. Shang Wan Shallow was thunderstruck. Misunderstanding? I think you are having crooked thoughts about this princess. Colorful wolf rogue. Lewd and despicable and nasty. Princess. It's really a misunderstanding. Humph. I'm going home to tell my mom. Auntie. Don't tell your parents. I can't afford to mess with your mom. The night in Yellow Smoke City was exceptionally charming. Under the dark night sky, the lofty sand dunes were gilded with a silver luster by the moonlight. Occasionally, a vulture's chirp came from the distance, adding a mysterious and distant touch to the silent night. Inside the city, the central square, the people of the city gathered together and danced around the bonfire with the Imperial Beastmaster Army to celebrate this wonderful night. Xiao Xingyu was very popular at the bonfire party because of his good looks. Several young girls took turns to dance with him, and from time to time, they would also throw out winks with hints. Handsome guy, do you have a girlfriend? Ahem. I'm a bit tired. 
You guys dance first. I'll take a break. Xiao Xingyu found a lame excuse to escape from the crowd and crashed into the oncoming people. Your Highness. Sorry. Shang Wan Shallow rubbed her delicate arm and droned. All right Xiao Xingyu. You dare to contradict this princess? Xiao Xingyu was sweating profusely. If he didn't have to, he didn't want to have too many interactions with Shang Wan Shallow. I just saw. You were dancing with your arms around a few little beauties. You were very happy. Why don't you dance anymore? Princess, don't make fun of me. Come with me. Shang Wan Shallow held Xiao Xingyu's hand and returned to the crowd. Princess, you, follow the customs. Hold my waist. Follow the beat of the music. Yes, just like that. Be careful not to step on my feet. On the dance floor, everyone was immersed in the joyful atmosphere, enjoying a moment of pleasure with their respective partners. Xiao Xingyu held Shang Wan Shallow's slender willow waist, and the two of them moved rhythmically on the dance floor following the ebb and flow of the music. There's one thing to say, princess this figure is really good, it's worthy of being that woman's daughter, the genetics are really powerful. Shang Wan mother and daughter's figures all had a common feature, they looked tall and slender, like heavenly fairies coming out of a scroll, but as long as they were in close contact, they would find a concave and convex carcass hidden under their clothes, thin where it should be thin and really big where it should be big. Xiao Xingyu, I'm warning you, don't slide your hand down any further. Sorry, hand mistake, hand mistake. Xiao Xingyu's hand slid down a bit more, and his fingertips moved from his back waist to his hips. The two embraced each other and danced. The dance was not exactly skillful, but at least it was watchable. Father Yu is so awesome, actually qualified to be the princess's dance partner. I told you, our righteous father, is the emperor's son-in-law of the dragon kingdom in the future? When our righteous father becomes the emperor, we will be the emperor's son. Wu Shang Yu and Song Hu, these two oddballs, one has a bigger brain than the other. Princess, the time is almost up. Aha! At the open air banquet, Zhou Xiong and a few of his good brothers drank wine together, sometimes chatting, sometimes enjoying the dance together. City Lord Zhou, this younger brother of yours is not ordinary, to be able to obtain the princess's favor. Yes, I've never seen the princess so close to a male. This mister. Xiao, will he really become the Dragon Kingdom's Emperor's son-in-law in the future? Everyone was discussing Xiao Xingyu as you spoke and I spoke. After all, Xiao Xingyu was too special. He was like a bright star in the crowd, making people unable to move their eyes. Looking at the whole country, young talents with both talent and looks were like a river of carp. But no one could get Shang Wan Shallow's favor before this. Only Xiao Xingyu, with whom Shang Wan Shallow had maintained a close relationship since the first time they met especially the way the two of them embraced each other and swayed on the dance floor. It looked very much like a couple to outsiders. Zhou Xiong drank up a bottle of wine, his reddened face showing a proud smile. Xiao Xingyu, but my Zhou Xiong's good brother. My brother is a dragon and phoenix amongst people. The fact that the princess is willing to get close to him shows that the princess has vision. Ha ha ha, out of Zhou Xiong's three sentences, two of them could not be separated from praising Xiao Xingyu. While the remaining sentence was showing off that Xiao Xingyu was the younger brother he recognized, the three seats closest to Zhou Xiong sat Zhao Ming, Lu Weijie and Sun Lang. These three, the most experienced war generals under Zhou Xiong's command, followed Zhou Xiong in the battlefield and guarded the gates of Yellow Smoke City. Ouch! A mournful roar suddenly came from the distance. Zhou Xiong immediately put down his wine cup out of instinctive reaction, his slightly drunken eyes instantly regaining clarity. This is the cry of the Beast King Body Demonic Beast the ghost-faced eagle king, city lord Zhou. It's not just the ghost-faced eagle king, I also heard the low roar of the bursting armored bone beast. Immediately afterward, the hissing and shouting of various magical beasts resounded around them. Zhou Xion got up and shouted, all troops, listen to the order. Surround the civilians in the center for protection and summon the imperial beasts to prepare for battle. These inexplicable magical beasts hissed and shouted in waves, but not a single magical beast's figure appeared in people's line of sight belatedly. City Lord Zhou, the state of affairs is a bit strange, we can only hear the magical beasts shouting, but we can't see their shadows ah, Zhou Xiong also fell into contemplation, indeed strange, it is reasonable to say that our city has strong defenses, even if there is a magical beast invasion, we can still be subjected to the expedited intelligence from the frontline sentries in advance, just as people were in a state of panic and doubt, Shang Wan Shala walked up to Zhou Xiong, City Lord Zhou, you are still really blind, a pseudo-human lineage magical beast was mixed in the city and you haven't noticed it so far. This is a serious dereliction of duty. Hearing the term pseudo-human lineage demon beast, everyone present panicked. The men and women on the dance floor moved away from each other, fearing that their dance partner was the pseudo-human lineage demon beast that the princess was talking about. Zhou Xiong's face was bewildered as he hurriedly asked, Princess, 
my subordinate doesn't understand what you mean by that. Where in the city is there a pseudo-human lineage magical beast? Shang Wan shallow sharp gaze swept over Zhao Ming, Lu Wei Jie and Sun Lang. The pseudo-human system magical beasts are amongst your right-hand men. Zhou Xiong turned back and looked at these three brothers who had once shared their suffering with him. Zhao Ming smiled bitterly to himself. Lord City Lord, we have worked together for many years, and you doubt me? Lu Wei Jie waved his hands repeatedly, excitedly defending. I'm not a pseudo-human lineage magical beast. Sun Lang was a hard and upright person with a fierce nature. Directly taking out a dagger from his waist and handing it to Zhou Xiong. City Lord, if you doubt me, then I can prove my innocence with my death. The three of them each had their own words, and Zhou Xiong felt embarrassed. Your Highness, the three of them are veterans who have accompanied me to garrison Yellow Smoke City for many years. With great achievements in battle, they are definitely not pseudo-human lineage magical beasts. Brother Zhou, the princess is right in one sentence. In this matter, you are indeed blind. Xiao Xingyu made his appearance. Elder brother Xiao, you also suspect these three brothers of mine? No, I'm not doubting. I'm certain. Xiao Xingyu raised his hand, his fingertips locking onto the flat-headed man beside Zhou Xiong. I'm certain that you are the pseudo-human system magical beast. Everyone looked at Zhao Ming, because it was him that Xiao Xingyu was pointing at. Zhao Ming coldly grunted disdainfully. Xiao Xingyu, don't dare to slander me like that just because you're a forgotten friend of the city lord. The corner of Xiao Xingyu's mouth grinned in just the right arc, revealing a row of white teeth. Just now, the hissing sound of a magical beast rang out, and Big Brother Zhou ordered the entire team to be on alert and summon the Imperial Beasts to prepare for battle. Then may I ask, why are you, the only Vice General in charge of the three elite Imperial Beast Master Units, the only one who has not summoned the Imperial Beasts? Xiao Xingyu's words landed on the ground, sending chills down one's spine. At this moment, all the Imperial Beastmasters summoned their respective Imperial Beasts. Lu Wei Jie and Sun Lang, the two veteran generals, were no exception. Only Zhao Ming did not summon a royal beast. Zhou Xiong looked at Zhao Ming and his face became gloomy. Why didn't you summon the Imperial Beasts? City Lord, I I. Xiao Xingyu smiled indifferently. Pseudo-human lineage magical beasts can mimic a human's appearance, voice, and demeanor. But it can never mimic the ability of an Imperial Beast Master to summon an Imperial Beast. After Xiao Xingyu said this, everyone retreated and moved away from Zhao Ming. Even Lu Weijie and Sun Lang subconsciously took a step back and looked at Zhao Ming with a hint of caution in their eyes. Facts spoke louder than words. Hearing the hiss of a magical beast and summoning the Imperial Beasts into a state of readiness was the physiological instinct of any Imperial Beast Master. Even the candidates of the Green Dragon Academy, who were only 20 years old and still inexperienced, all knew to summon the Imperial Beasts at the first opportunity. Wu Sheng Yu, Song Hu, Ding Tao, every single candidate of the Green Dragon Academy summoned the Imperial Beasts at the first opportunity, not to mention the warriors who had been stationed in Yellow Smoke City for many years. However, it was this instinctive reaction that swindled out Zhao Ming, the mole, Xiao Xingyu, you're talking nonsense, you're still talking tough, if you're capable of summoning a royal beast now, show it to everyone, in full view of everyone. Cold sweat seeped out of Zhao Ming's forehead, and a flash of ferocious killing intent flashed across the bottom of his eyes. Vice General Zhao is silent. With things having gotten to this point, summoning the Imperial Beasts in public is the best way to prove one's innocence, but Vice Admiral Zhao didn't do it. Which means he, he's a pseudo-human lineage magical beast. At this time, a patrol trooper ran over. It was none other than Han Wei, the captain of the patrol unit. Mr. Zhao, I'm here. Captain Han, speak in front of the city lord. Han Wei walked to Zhou Xiong and raised his hand in salute. Report city lord, a month ago. Vice General Zhao approached me privately and asked for a map of the city's defenses. Zhou Xiong froze and questioned, what did he want the city's layout map for? Vice General Zhao said that he wanted to study the drawing to see where there were places that needed to be fixed to further improve the city's defenses. After Han Wei finished speaking, he returned to Xiao Xingyu's side and said in a low voice, Mr. Zhao, I've completed what you explained to me. Zhou Xiong once again looked at Zhao Ming, his originally gloomy face even colder. You, like Lu Wei Jie and Sun Lang, are the generals in charge of conquering the battlefield, and matters relating to the city's deployment and defense are not within your jurisdiction. Zhao Ming still wanted to argue, City Lord, listen to my explanation. I didn't intentionally meddle in the affairs of the city's internal defense. I just wanted to share your worries. Now that it's come to this, you demonic beast is still believing. I'm going to avenge Zhao Ming with my own hands. Zhou Xiong reddened his eyes as hot tears filled his eyes. A false human lineage magical beast that wanted to disguise itself as a human would have to kill a human. If they wanted to disguise as Zhao Ming, they had to kill Zhao Ming first. 
This was the special ability of the false human lineage magical beasts, being able to absorb the genetic sequences of the dead and carry out a perfect disguise, sensing that Zhou Xiong was mobilizing his spiritual energy. Zhao Ming made a turn and fled towards the back. In the process of fleeing, Zhao Ming used his human body to make wild movements like a magical beast. He used his hands and feet to fly through the eaves, his scarlet eyes glowing with viciousness, and his fingernails cutting through the eaves like blades. Whoosh! An ice crystal that looked like an arrow pierced through the dark night and struck the fleeing Zhao Ming. After the explosion, a cloud of dust and fog was raised. When the dust and fog cleared, a monster with purple and black hair fell to the ground. The monster's appearance was hard to describe as an animal. It had a lizard's head, a body that resembled a black bear, and extremely long limbs, especially its legs, which were like two deathly scimitars. Demon Thirsty Night Fork. Someone in the crowd shouted out the name of this monster. Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god, and the Demon Thirsty Night Fork's data panel was clear as day. A mere transcendent body, third order, magical beast, able to assassinate Zhao Ming who was a six-star imperial beast master. It's worthy of being a pseudo-human lineage magical beast. Normally, with the combat power of a six-star imperial beast master, killing a transcendent mortal body ranked magical beast was no big deal. However, if this magical beast was a pseudo-human lineage magical beast, the situation would be reversed. It was easy to hide from the open gun, but it was hard to defend against the concealed arrows. When a pseudo-human lineage magical beast was disguised as a human, there was no semblance of a magical beast aura on its body. Although Xiao Xingyu hadn't seen it with his own eyes, he was able to brainstorm about it. A month ago, the demon Thirsty Night Fork had stolen a sentry or scout outside of the city, disguised its appearance, mixed into the city, and waited for an opportunity to sneak up on Zhao Ming. Even though Zhao Ming was a six-star imperial beast master, it was difficult for him to escape the sneak attack of the demon Thirsty Night Fork. Therefore, amongst the magical beast army, all the pseudo-human magical beasts were known as assassins. Xiao Xingyu knew in his heart that the most terrifying thing about a magical beast was not its sharp claws and teeth and its iron hooves that flatten mountains and rivers, but rather its heart that was just as insidious and deceitful as that of a human being. A single devil thirsty knife fork had caused Yellow Smoke City to lose a six-star vice general with great war achievements. At this moment, the devil thirsty knife fork fell to the ground, its right leg completely frozen, unable to move. In the darkness, a royal beast with a body of ice blue came out. This was Shang Wan Shallow's imperial beast. The Ice Spirit Chilin. Shang Wan Shallow's pretty face was cold and proud as she scorned the demon Thirsty Night Fork. Let you die with understanding. My Imperial Beast, the Ice Spirit Chilin, is able to mimic the cry of any magical beast. I see. Princess of the Dragon Kingdom. Her name is true. Blood spilled from the corner of the Devil Thirsty Night Fork's mouth, and the power of the Ice Spirit spread along its right leg, spreading all the way, already penetrating deep into its internal organs. Zhou Xion was furious and urged his spiritual power. The war giant rhinoceros emperor pulled up. Zhou Xion was a veritable seven-star imperial beast master, and his imperial beast, the war giant rhinoceros emperor, had a rank as high as beast emperor body, second stage. The devil thirsty knife fork was only a transcendent mortal body level magical beast. It couldn't even carry the roar of the war rhinoceros emperor. Its eardrums tore apart and it spewed blood outwards. With its death imminent, the demon thirsty knife fork didn't have the slightest bit of fear. Instead, it laughed uncontrollably. Jia Jia Jia, Zhou Xiong, you're just now seeing through me, everything is too late, tomorrow night when the sun sets, Yellow Smoke City will turn into a yellow earth, you, the city lord, will also be reduced to heavenly father's dish, bang, the war giant rhinoceros emperor raised its iron hoof and heavily stepped on the body of the demon thirsty night fork, with a dull thud, the earth trembled three times, smoke and dust flew up, and the air was filled with the strange and incomparable odor of blood, what a stench, Shang Wan Shallow pinched her nose, looking somewhat cute. Xiao Xingyu explained from the side. This is the smell of the demon thirsty night fork's brain matter. The stench is similar to a durian stew in a pressure cooker. Xiao Xingyu, stop it, vomit. When the war giant rhinoceros emperor lifted its iron hoof, the ground presented a large pit 5 meters in diameter. Inside the pit, it was empty. Powdery substances floated in the air. The body of the demon thirsty night fork had been reduced to pieces. This was the power of the Beast Emperor Body Imperial Beast. Only one kick was needed, and the Demon Thirsty Night Fork's corpse was nowhere to be found. Xiao Xingyu, what are you thinking? Shang Wan Shallow stared sideways at Xiao Xingyu and realized that Xiao Xingyu was still frowning, looking like he was thinking about something. Two things. The first thing, before the Demon Thirsty Night Fork died, it said that tomorrow night, Yellow Smoke City would be reduced to a yellow earth. The second thing, it also mentioned the term Heavenly Father. Shang Wan Shallow's face also became serious. 
It seems that tomorrow night, there will be an army of magical beasts attacking the city. As for Heavenly Father, Xiao Xingyu, have you ever heard of the name Heavenly Father Aldis? Xiao Xingyu's pupils shook. I've seen this name on the Magical Beast Hundred Gods Spectrum in the Green Dragon Academy Library. Heavenly Father Aldis, it is a mutant species beastman lineage beast god body, first order, magical beast. The death of the demon thirsty nightmare did not bring stability, but rather triggered an even greater panic. For the people in the city, Vice General Zhao Ming, whom everyone respected the most, had unexpectedly died a month ago. The one who had replaced Zhao Ming and lived with everyone during that month was not a human, but a pseudo-human lineage demonic beast. Just thinking about this would make anyone's heart palpitate with fear. Zhou Xiong was in the midst of grief over the loss of his brother, and Zhao Ming's death was difficult for him to accept. A beast master who was killed by a pseudo-human lineage magical beast in a sneak attack would not leave a body behind. This made Zhou Xiong not even have the chance to give Zhao Ming a burial. Big brother Zhou, Xiao Xingyu walked over and put his hand on the other's shoulder. Under the reflection of the campfire, Zhou Xiong's eyes were scarlet and streaked with tears. Now is not the time to grieve. As the city lord, you must pacify the residents of the city and not let the panic spread. Elder brother Xiao, you are right. Zhou Xiong stood on the high platform and delivered an impassioned speech as a way to calm the frightened hearts of the people. Qin Yinyan organized the candidates of Qinglong Academy's Year 1 Class 3 together. Students, your exams are over. So take the return train tonight and return to Longin City. Leader Qin, aren't we leaving early tomorrow morning? No, just tonight. Qin Yan Yan had also experienced the battlefield for a long time and had a keen sense of smell. The death of the demon Thirsty Night Fork signaled an impending killing spree in Upper Yellow Smoke City. And these candidates who were still young were the future pillars of the Dragon Kingdom. They could not be allowed to risk their lives. Therefore, Qin Yan Yan made the decision to have the candidates leave this place of wrongdoing by car overnight. Brother Xing Yu. Qin Yan Yan found Xiao Xingyu in the crowd. I've watched your performance just now. It was you who teamed up with Her Highness and uncovered that pseudo-human lineage magical beast. According to the rules, your grading is raised to SS. Normally, the upper limit of the midterm exam's grading was S. Prior to this, Xiao Xingyu had already received an S rating when he single-handedly killed the full-bodied magical beast, the crown boa. This time, Xiao Xingyu was instrumental in uncovering the pseudo-human lineage magical beast, the demon thirsty night fork so his grading could break through the regular upper limit and rise to SS. Brother Xingyu, listen to your sister and follow your classmates to leave by car. Sister Yenran, I can't leave. Why? I'm going to stay and guard the city. Xiao Xingyu's attitude was resolute, which made Qin Yinyan feel anxious. Silly brother, didn't you hear what the demon Thirsty Night Fork said before it died? It's obvious that the Devil Beast Army has been plotting for a long time and will attack the city tomorrow night. Not only that, Devil Thirsty Night Fork also mentioned Heavenly Father. Xiao Xingyu interrupted. I know, Heavenly Father Aldis, a beast god body level magical beast. Qin Yanran's eyes widened as she steeply raised her volume. You know that's a beast god body magical beast and you still dare to stay here? Don't want to live. Xiao Xingyu was very life thirsty. And according to the principle of obscene development, the best option right now was to take the train with his classmates and flee the city. But Xiao Xingyu had another principle. Riches and riches. Currently, Xiao Xingyu's midterm exam rating had just reached SS. The special mission issued by the system required the rating to reach SSS. In terms of the current situation, it seems that the only way to have a chance to get a SSS rating is to stay and accompany Zhou Xiong and the others to defend the city, and to make a bigger battle achievement. There was one thing to say, the mission rewards were too tantalizing. Random SSS grade beast energy crystals plus 20, 000, 000 points. Such a lucrative reward could help Xiao Xingyu provide more undercards and get a qualitative leap in strength. Brother Xingyu. Listen to your sister and leave this place. Sister Yen Ran, don't try to persuade me. I'm staying. You brat. Qin Yen Yen could not be persuaded at all, and finally sighed deeply, inwardly relieved. Just as well, if this kid obediently listens to me, he won't be the Xiao Xing Yu I know. Late at night at 11 o'clock. City Lord's Mansion. Conference Room. Zhou Xiong held an impromptu meeting. Lu Rui Jie, Sun Lang, and all of the captain level or higher imperial beast masters attended. The members of the Tsong Dome Guild, as well as Xiao Xingyu and Shang Wan Shallow also attended the meeting. Zhou Xiong seemed to have instantly aged a dozen years, with a few gray hairs sprouting from his head. According to the analysis of the Demon Thirsty Knight Fork's words before his death, tomorrow night, the Demon Beast Army will launch an attack on Yellow Smoke City. What do you all think? Qin Yan Yan got up and spoke out righteously. City Lord Zhou, our Vault Guild has been working with you for years and is considered an old friend. When we encounter danger, we will not stand by and watch. We will stay and defend the city with you. Zhou Xiong raised his hand in salute towards Qin Yanran. 
Thank you, Vault Guild. This favor, I, Joe, will never forget it. Jean Yin Yan's brows were furrowed, her eyes full of worry. City Lord Joe, if the one leading the magical beast army to attack the city this time is really Heavenly Father Aldi's, with our strength, I'm afraid. Jean Yin Yan didn't put words in her mouth, but everyone understood. In the face of a beast god body level magical beast, a royal beast master below 8 stars was not enough to stuff their teeth for others. Lu Weijie's face paled as he said in a low voice. Even an 8 star imperial beast master can only last for a few rounds in the face of a beast god body magical beast. Yeah, besides, Heavenly Father Aldis is still a mutated species of beast god body demonic beast, so it would require at least a 9 star royal beast master to match up against it. Sun Lang also expressed his opinion. Zhou Xiong was in trouble for this, he was the highest segmented imperial beast master in this city, with a segment of 7 stars. Further down, there were Lu Wei Jie and Sun Lang, the two 6 star royal beast masters. The warriors in the army were mostly at 4 and 5 stars. When faced with an extremely strong enemy, any number of them would be cannon fodder. This truth could not be clearer to anyone who had been on the battlefield. City Lord Zhou, is there a satellite phone? Yes, the princess is planning to. I'll contact the Empress Lord and ask her to send an additional 9 star imperial beast master to support Yellow Smoke City. Zhou Xiong was very excited as if he was grasping a life-saving straw. Quick, someone, the princess needs a satellite phone. Shang Wan Shallow took the satellite phone and walked out of the conference room, returning after five minutes. Lord Empress has agreed to my request, and will send Air Force General Lu Mingchu for support. Lu Mingchu, like Morong Ashes and Bai Yu, were all great generals of the Dragon Kingdom. Morong Ashes and Bai Yu were in charge of the Navy and Army respectively. Lu Mingchu was in charge of the Air Force, with a segment of nine stars. Rumor had it that if the three great generals fought, it wasn't certain who would be the final winner, but Lu Mingchu would definitely not lose. This was because in the past battle records, Lu Mingchu had never fought a losing battle. Your Highness, thanks to you, on behalf of all the people of Yellow Smoke City, I thank you. Zhou Xiong knew deep down that without this call from Shangguan Shallow, it would have been harder than ever to get support. After all, the strategic deployment of the Dragon Kingdom was very strict and every 9-star Imperial Beastmaster had their own duties and could not leave their posts. To be able to easily mobilize a general-level Royal Beastmaster to support the bird-like Yellow Smoke City, it would only be Princess Shangguan Shallow who had the face to do so. After all, she was the daughter of Empress Shangguan Lan. It was only natural for a mother to love her daughter. Xiao Xingyu approached Shangguan Shallow and whispered, Princess, your mom she, who are you cursing? Ahem, your mother. Did she say exactly what time Elder Lu Mingchu arrived at Yellow Smoke City? Shang Wan Shallow ruffled the hair at her temples. Early tomorrow morning. Specifically, around 6 o'clock in the morning. In any case, you can rush over as soon as it's light. Xiao Xing Yu pursed the corners of his lips, his face grave. I hope no accidents will happen before dawn. Late at night at 11.30, rain drizzled over Yellow Smoke City, and the cold air brought by the gusty wind sweeping across the desert was even more piercing. Station. The rain pounded against the shell of train 13, emitting a crisp drumbeat. The radio resounded throughout the station. There are still five minutes until the train starts. This train terminates at Long In City without stopping in the middle. Go go go. Get on the train. This damn place. Yellow Smoke City. I won't come back a second time in the future. If it weren't for the midterm exams, I wouldn't have come even once. The candidates of the Green Dragon Academy's Year 1 Class 3 got on the bus one after another. No one was willing to stay in Yellow Smoke City. For the candidates, they had already gotten a grade above the passing line, and some of them had even gotten a B grade. On the premise of passing the exam, returning to Green Dragon Academy as soon as possible to save this little life was the way to go. The doorway of the carriage. Father Yu, are you really not getting on the car? Well, I'm staying. Wu Sheng Yu was usually always playful, but this time he was surprisingly serious. Father Yu, I just don't understand. Why do you have to stay? Just now the city is haunted by pseudo-human system magical beasts. Tomorrow night the magical beast army will attack the city. You a two-star imperial beast master. Old Wu, I know you are worried about me. Wu Shengyu pulled Xiao Xingyu's arm. Xiao Xingyu, count on me to beg you. Let's get on the car together. Go back to Qinglong Academy. Eat barbecue and drink beer together. Doesn't it smell good? When Wu Shengyu got serious, he would shout Xiao Xingyu's big name. Song who showed off his lean muscles on the side and threatened. Righteous father, if you insist on staying here, I'll just carry you on the car even if I have to do it the hard way. Tiger, you and old Wu get on the car. What I have decided will not change. I must stay here. Xiao Xing you only had the chance to complete the special mission issued by the system and receive a generous reward if he stayed. 
But in the eyes of Wu Shengyu and Song Hu, Xiao Xingyu's move was for the sake of righteousness, for the sake of guarding the people of Yellow Smoke City, and the pattern was instantly sublimated. But, nothing but, you two hurry up and get on the car. Xiao Xingyu looked slim, but he was actually very strong. He casually pushed Wu Shengyu and Song Hu into the carriage. Father Yu, I promise you guys, I will return safely. You guys wait for me at Qinglong Academy and prepare a bottle of good wine. Let's make it clear first. I won't drink anything below $3,000. Wu Shengyu and Song who watched through the car window as Xiao Xingyu wrapped his coat tightly and walked through the rain curtain. At this time, the candidates were all running towards the train's carriages, scrambling to get on the train first. Only Xiao Xingyu was walking against the grain in the rain as he returned alone within Yellow Smoke City. Xiao Xingyu returned to the meeting room of the city lord's mansion and was suddenly hugged tightly by Zhou Xiong. Good brother. Thank you for staying, brother Zhou. I'm just a two-star imperial beast master with a low segment and little experience. Just don't mind that I can't help much. What is this saying? How could I dislike you? In fact, Zhou Xiong didn't want Xiao Xingyu to stay. He had the same idea as Qing Yinran. Xiao Xingyu was too young after all, and was the future pillar of the Dragon Kingdom. He shouldn't be in this predicament, facing the risk of death. But Xiao Xingyu's temper was more stubborn than a donkey in a production team. He insisted on staying. Zhou Xiong couldn't persuade him and could only be forced to accept. Of course, Xiao Xingyu staying was a good thing for the Yellow Smoke City garrison. After all, in addition to being a royal beast master, Xiao Xingyu was also the special pharmacist of the Vault Guild. Xiao Xingyu's medical skills were also a divine weapon on the battlefield. Qin Yanran walked over and held Xiao Xingyu's hand, her eyes gentle. Brother Xingyu, I can't argue with you, I can only let you stay, but you have to promise me that in the event of a war, you can't go to the front line and can only support in the logistics department. The logistics department was responsible for food supplies and medical supplies. Normally, when humans and magical beasts started a regimental war, the personnel of the logistics department would not go to the front lines of the battlefield, but would only stay in the city. Whenever the warrior's imperial beasts were injured and returned to the city, the logistics personnel were responsible for treating the imperial beasts. Okay, I promise you. Qin Yanran looked up and down at the smiling Xiao Xingyu. You kid promises so painfully. You always feel that it makes people uneasy. Qin Yan Yan understands this god brother very well. One set on the mouth. One set on the back. One set with his pants off. In short it's like a sow wearing a bra. One set after another. Zhou Xiong sent someone to bring tea. Everyone drink a cup of tea to refresh yourselves. There is still close to a full day before the battle starts tomorrow night. We have enough time to formulate a battle plan. In the conference room, Everyone brainstormed and discussed strategies and layouts. Elder Brother Xiao, when everyone was discussing just now, you didn't say a word. Is something on your mind? Zhou Xiong noticed Xiao Xingyu's strangeness. The meeting went on for half an hour and the time came to 12 midnight. Everyone was discussing the strategic deployment. Only Xiao Xingyu was silent and his face was ugly. I'm fine. Xiao Xingyu looked out the window, his eyes in a trance. The premonition is getting stronger. Before Air Force General Lu Mingchu arrives, Will there really be no accidents? At the same time, outside Yellow Smoke City, heavy rain was pouring down like a large hole had been broken in the dome of the sky. Endless rain poured down, drenching the entire desert. Hurricanes accompanied by thunder roared and traveled through every sand dune, seemingly proclaiming the majesty of the torrential rain. On the highest dunes, dark shadows emerged. They are not human. They have huge bodies, hard-scale armor, sharp claws and teeth, as well as iron hooves that can easily crush human skulls. This is a beast army, and it's the elite, surrounded by countless blood-sucking leeches. This well-trained beast army approached the border of Yellow Smoke City. The magical beast at the head had a strange appearance. It was around 5 meters tall, with a human-like body, a head on its shoulders that resembled a wolf's head and a tiger or leopard, and two crescent-shaped bull horns above its head. The head and body of a beast was the symbol of an orc-type magical beast, wearing a specially customized red costume with a pair of leather shoes on its feet. This orc lineage demonic beast sat on a throne made of skeletons, holding a wine cup in its hand. Technically, it was a wine cup filled with human blood. This magical beast gently shook the wine cup and drank it all in one go, its purple pupils showing bloodthirsty excitement. Heavenly Father Aldi's, beast god body magic beast, bloodline of legendary quality, mutated to obtain some kind of extremely terrifying power. At that moment, a butterfly flew across the desert and landed on top of Heavenly Father's head. The butterfly flapped its wings conveying a message. Aldi's grinned, revealing sharp fangs. Since the spies planted within Yellow Smoke City were exposed and sacrificed, there is no need to wait until tomorrow. The butterfly transformed into human form, a feminine-looking woman with skin whiter than a ghost. 
Judging from the aura of this demonic beast, her rank was at least in the Beast King body, Third Order, Yellow Spring Underworld Knight Butterfly Ramel, a pseudo-human lineage magical beast, was one of the vice generals beside Aldi's, in the Beast Camp. The rank system was divided similarly to humans. Every Beast God body level magical beast had many Beast King body or Beast Emperor body vice generals under their command. Heavenly Father, what do you mean? Ramel, you lead an army, take the tunnels, attack the city, and we'll take the city inside and out. Yellow Smoke City. City Lord's Mansion. Conference Room. Everyone was still discussing the strategic approach and preparing for the big battle tomorrow night. Xiao Xingyu, your face looks bad. Shang Wan Shallow's afterglow kept falling on Xiao Xingyu, who always had a worried look from the beginning of the meeting until now, as if he was contemplating something, not saying a word. Princess, I always feel that something is wrong. What's wrong? I'll think about it again. Xiao Xingyu's chest was tight. According to past experience, this was a sign of an impending crisis. Where exactly is it wrong? The palpitations are getting stronger and stronger. Xiao Xingyu held his forehead with one hand as his thoughts turned over. Oops. A sudden flash of aura caused Xiao Xingyu's body to tremble. Shang Wan Shallow hurriedly asked, What did you think of? Princess, I just remembered that the Bloodthirsty Knife Fork is a supernatural ability lineage magical beast, and its ability is to manipulate the Shaman Mistletoe. The Shaman Mistletoe is not good. Shang Wan Shallow's IQ was outstanding. Xiao Xingyu just prompted and she instantly reacted. The crowd looked at Xiao Xingyu and Shang Wan Shallow's panicked and disoriented appearance. Confused and perplexed by this, Elder Brother Xiao, the bloodthirsty knight fork is already dead. What are you worrying about? Xiao Xingyu was inwardly anxious, but with so much at stake, he forced himself to calm down and explained in the most concise way. Brother Zhou, the bloodthirsty knight fork has been lurking within the city for a whole month. During this month, he sought out Captain Han Wei to take the city's layout map, clearly having another purpose. The bloodthirsty knight fork's superpower is to manipulate the Sandman mistletoe, and if the Sandman mistletoe appears in groups, it can dig into the ground. Xiao Xingyu had already spoken very bluntly when he said this. Zhou Xiong's pupils trembled for a moment as he clenched his fists. The underground tunnel. Are you saying that the bloodthirsty knight fork secretly manipulated the shaman bird and dug through the tunnels connecting the inner and outer parts of the city? Xiao Xingyu nodded his head repeatedly, as if a layer of frost was shrouding his brows. Shang Wan Shallow's face also turned ugly. If Xiao Xingyu's guess is correct, then the root of the tunnels. The probability is that it can directly reach the major guard strongholds within the city from outside the city. And this is the fundamental reason why it stole the city's layout map. Shang Wan Shallow had just finished analyzing the situation when a city guard rushed into the conference room. Drenched in blood, his right arm bitten off by a magical beast. Reporting to City Lord, a large number of magical beasts have invaded. And the major guard positions within the city have fallen. Zhou Xiong slapped the table. Is our Yellow Smoke City's defense system for show? City Lord, they came out of the tunnels. We didn't have time to react. The brutal facts confirmed Xiao Xingyu's suspicions. During this month's time, the Bloodthirsty Knight Fork had done a good job of accomplishing the spy mission that Heavenly Father Aldis had explained. Using Zhao Ming's identity, he easily obtained the city's layout map, secretly, maneuvering tens of thousands of shamanites. More than ten tunnels were dug underneath the ground. Each of these tunnels ensured that the demonic beast army could sneak into the city unnoticed and sneak attack each of the guard strongholds. Zhou Xiong's eyes lit up with rage. Old Lu Sun Lang. Follow me. Yes. Right at this moment, a sentry responsible for manning the city walls rolled and rushed into the conference room. Report city lord. Something big has happened. The Wraith Legion is attacking. The crowd clamored. The magical beast army has attacked the city? So sudden. Isn't it tomorrow night? How come? I see. Once the bloodthirsty knight fork died, the demonic beast army temporarily changed their plans and took advantage of the sneak attack now. Wanting to catch us off guard, Zhou Xiong's face swished pale, looking even more haggard. Quantity. Eyeballing. Speak. Visualize 20,000. A visual estimate of 20,000 was just an approximate number. Hell knows if there were more reinforcements behind them. Xiao Xingyu raised his eyebrows. His heart in trouble. The garrison of Yellow Smoke City is only 5,000 troops. Now that there are internal and external troubles, this battle, I'm afraid that it will be a bloody battle. If you want to win with less, you have to pay a terrible price. Lu Weijie, city lord, we have no time to hesitate. We must go out of the city to meet the enemy. Sun Lang, that's right. 20, 000 magical beasts are enough to step on the city gates in one breath. We can only defend the city if we go out to meet the battle. Zhou Xiong's face showed difficulty, but he could not afford to dwell on it. He could only make a decision immediately. Leader Qin, our main army is going to go out of the city to answer the battle. 
those magical beasts within the city. We can only rely on your Tsung Dome Guild. Don't worry, City Lord Zhou. The magical beasts within the city will be purged by us. The division of labor was clear, and the work was done. Sister Yenran, I'll join you. Good. Stay close to me. Don't try to be brave when you encounter higher leveled magical beasts. You'll mainly take on a supporting role. Xiao Xingyu followed behind Xin Yan Yan, ready to turn on the imperial beast crest at any time. The surging spiritual energy in his body stirred stupidly. Zhou Xiong stopped Shang Wan Shallow. Princess, what are you following us for? Of course I'm going out of the city to answer the battle. Zhou Xiong shook his head and knelt on one knee. Lu Weijie and Sun Lang and the others also knelt down. Their right hands clenched fists on their chests. You guys are. Your Highness, you are the foundation of our Dragon Kingdom. We can't just stand by and see you rushing to the front line and risking your life. Please stay in the city. Princess, Shang Wan Shallow coldly colored. When is it your turn to order me? I am at least a six-star imperial beast master and can help you guys on the battlefield. Please princess stay within the city. Please princess stay within the city. The attitude of the generals was extremely tough. Shang Wan Shallow felt doubly helpless and took a deep breath. All right, I'll stay within the city for the time being and cooperate with Qin Yenran and the others to purge the city of demonic beasts. Inside the city, guard stronghold number three, the blood-chattering dark crow roamed the sky, swooping down from time to time. Its beak, which was sharper than a sword, then pecked out the eyes of a few imperial beast masters. The head of the unicorn flying tiger beast was the size of a truck. Its breath was incomparably furious, and its mouth was chewing on the corpse of a pregnant woman. The crazy demon prisoner bull launched a swift and brutal charge, driving all the way in, flying over all the obstacles, and finally pinning a six-year-old child to the wall. The chaotic air was filled with the smell of blood, miserable screams and wails, as well as the ferocious, bloodthirsty laughter of a demonic beast. The streets were reduced to a sea of fire, and the cars and houses collapsed one after another. This was the scene that the end of the world should have. A little girl of about five years old accidentally fell down on her way to escape. The moment the little girl tried her best to get up, a black shadow approached. Roar! The roar of the magical beast set off a huge wave of air, and the weak little girl fell to the ground once again. Her forehead knocked out and blood pouring out. White Bone Flame Lizard. Undead system, complete body magical beast. Mom. The White Bone Flame Lizard grinned. Its burning flaming eye sockets looking down at the tiny human toddler in front of it. The little girl covered her eyes and sobbed uncontrollably, forced to accept her impending death. As danger loomed, a black flame lifted up around the little girl. Ow. With a wolf roar, the White Bone Flame Lizard continuously retreated, its eyes showing surprise and fear. The huge and sturdy body of the Hell Spectre Wolf was like a small mountain, blocking in front of the little girl. On the wolf's back, sat a handsome teenager, Hellfire Lotus. At first, a palm-sized black fire lotus erupted from the wolf's mouth. This fire lotus swayed with the wind like a light elf, maintaining a low flying stance. In flight, the fire lotus continued to expand and grow until it enveloped the top of the white bone flame lizard's head. The white bone flame lizard's first reaction was to dodge. Its bones emitted a swooshing sound equivalent to a human's limb trembling from fear. White Bone Flame Lizard, a full-bodied, first-order, magical beast with an undead bloodline. According to common sense analysis, after an undead lineage magical beast grows to the full body level, its strength far exceeds that of magical beasts and imperial beasts of the same level. The level of the Hell's Underworld Wolf was at the mature body, third rank, and had yet to be promoted to full body. However, even in the face of the difference in rank, the roar of the Inferno Underwolf was full of confidence. On the contrary, the white bone flame lizard was in an extremely sorry state as it hurriedly dodged the hellfire lotus. This wasn't bloodline suppression, but talent suppression. The talent of the hell underwolf was hellfire, a flame from hell that could easily scorch the origin of undead magical beasts. To put it simply, hell's flame, heaven's grip on undead system magical beasts. Boom. The white bone flame lizard couldn't dodge in time, and its huge body was violently hit by the hellfire lotus. The little girl opened her eyes and witnessed the hellfire lotus which was like a bulldozer, pushing the white bone flame lizard forward at great speed. Rumble. Explosions rang out. The hellfire lotus instantly exploded, just like a firework feast that bloomed at night. As the smoke dissipated, the white bone flame lizard collapsed to the ground, its body in tatters, its bones broken, and the living hellfire still burning in its bones. Xiao Xingyu opened the eye of the demon god. In his field of vision, the top of the head of the white bone flame lizard showed the blood bar in the game screen. The blood bar showed that only one third of its blood was left. One move, just one move, knocking out two thirds of the white bone flame lizard's blood. This was the power of hellfire in the face of the undead beasts, which was enough to erase the level difference. Before the white bone flame lizard could get up, it was struck by a lightning ball. 
As the lightning flashed, the explosion sounded again. After the explosion, the body of the white bone flame lizard completely turned into powder and was lost to the wind. Brother Xing Yu, is everything all right? Xin Yan Yan rushed over, the three-tailed thunder fox following by her side. Smoke was coming out of the corners of the three-tailed thunder fox's mouth, and the thunderball just now came from its mouth. Sister Yen Ran, I'm fine, that's right, after all, the hellfire of the hell specter wolf can effectively restrain undead-type magical beasts. Xiao Xing Yu picked up the fallen little girl, it's a mess here, find a place to hide. Thank you big brother, what is big brother's name? My name is Lei Feng. Qin Yan ran on the side. Brother Lei Feng, the way you fought the magic beast just now was so handsome. The little girl's face was full of adoration. One of Xiao Xing Yu's backs gave her a dream at the moment. The dream of growing up to become a royal beast master. Xiao Xing Yu turned to look at Qin Yan ran. This group, the white bone flame lizard, inhabits his white bone abyss all year round, right? Brother Xing Yu, I understand what you mean. I'm afraid it's not just the white bone abyss, even the magical beasts of Mount Kunmi also. Dong, dong, thud. The sound of earth-shaking footsteps came from the distance, based on the vibrations of the earth alone. Xiao Xingyu and Xin Yan Yan could tell that the giant-type demonic beasts were preparing to attack the city. Mount Kunya, the territory of the giant-type demonic beasts. Xiao Xingyu's careful recollection explained everything. Previously, when they took train 13 and passed through the white bone abyss in Mount Kunya, the group had not encountered a single magical beast, and they hadn't even seen any magical beast feces. Now, it seemed that the magical beasts of the White Bone Abyss in Kunmi Mountain had all accepted the call of the beast god body magical beast Heavenly Father Aldis. From there, they carried out the Great Migration in advance, silently converging outside Yellow Smoke City to form a huge legion of magical beasts. Coupled with the Bloodthirsty Night Fork, a pseudo-human system magical beast secretly digging tunnels within the city. The Great War will be able to open up an inside-outside cooperation. Xiao Xingyu's position was guard position number 3. From the city's defense map, there were a total of 13 guard positions in the city, and all of them were suffering from the invasion of magical beasts at the moment. A large number of magical beasts had passed through the tunnels and reached straight into the city, and the wails of the city's subjects were like stimulants, stimulating the primal greed and bloodlust of these magical beasts. Brother Xingyu, watch out behind you. A golden-backed pale leopard rushed out from the ruins and leapt high, its sharp claws probing at the back of Xiao Xingyu's head. This type of magical beast, loved to suck the brain marrow of humans, and it had to be eaten alive. A cold aura leaked out, icy sky and snow, the broken and crumbling ground instantly condensed a layer of ice crystals, and a huge ice cone with a length of more than 5 meters sprang out from the cracks in the ground. Plop! In the blink of an eye, the golden-backed pale leopard's corpse hung above the ice cone like a threaded sugar gourd turning into a deathly ice sculpture. Your Highness, Qin Yanran looked back to see Shang Wan Shala walking quickly, followed by the ice spirit Qilin. I'll accompany your Tsong Dome Guild, stationed in the city to purge the city of demonic beasts. Qin Yanran froze for a second, then ordered, all listen to the order, protect her Highness, before Shang Wan Shallow could react. The members of the Vault Guild swarmed around her, forming an airtight protective circle. I'm at least a six-star imperial beast master. Do you guys have to be like this? Xiao Xing Yu all laughed at this, these imperial beast masters protecting Shang Wan Shallow, their segments were only 4 or 5 stars, not as high as Shang Wan Shallow's segment. What sound? A toad chirping? There seems to be a big guy in the tunnel about to emerge. Not good. Get out of the way. Boom. An explosion occurred at the entrance of the tunnel, and the entire no. Three guard stronghold fell into ruins. Smoke and dust rolled out and thick fog surrounded the area, greatly reducing the visibility of the human naked eye. Ah, help, in the thick fog, a loud scream was heard, these screams came to an abrupt end with loud swallowing sounds, the thick fog gradually dissipated and people saw a huge monster, the imperial beast masters closest to the monster were scared out of their wits, this this is the sand demon toad king, Xiao Xingyu raised his sight and a giant golden toad with a body taller than a six story building appeared in front of him, the golden toad's skin lines were like a ghostly face symbolizing joy, anger, sadness and joy, a pair of eyes transmitting a demonic blue light, gills bulging, and half a human calf hanging from the corner of its mouth. Sand Demon Toad King, Beast King Body, First Order, Magical Beast, Bloodline Quality Epic, possesses the power to manipulate quicksand, and its saliva carries a strong poison. Xiao Xing used demon gods I could see these data with a single sweep. The Beast King Body Magical Beast made its appearance, creating a huge stir in Stronghold 3. Xing Yan Yan's face was cold and her palms were covered in sweat. One had to know that it took an experienced six-star imperial beast master to fight a beast king body level magical beast back and forth. Of all the people present, only Shang Wan Shallow's segment reached six stars. 
Only yesterday did Shang Wan Shallow pass the six star examination, and her strength was only a little higher than five star, so she was barely able to deal with the Beast King Body Beast. Facing the Sand Demon Toad King, the crowd was slightly timid, and there was always the sound of swallowing saliva around them. However, Xiao Xingyu's eyes were glowing in the corner of his mouth raised a cruel smile. Little silver, come out. Xiao Xingyu's crotch moved twice. The silver vine with ancient bloodline was too shy to come out and fight. What are you shy about? Come out and fight quickly. Under the gaze of the crowd, Xiao Xingyu bent over and shook his crotch. Xin Yenron's face turned red. Brother Xingyu, this is an occasion now. It's not suitable for that kind of thing. Bear with it. Sister Yen Yen, you misunderstood. I don't have that kind of fetish. I just want to pull out the imperial beast in my pants. Qin Yin Yin's face turned even redder, and shyly said, You actually used imperial beast, to describe the male guy, this is the first time I've heard of this particular description. Xiao Xing Yu felt that any explanation he gave seemed pale and powerless. On the side, Shang Wan Shallow snorted. Sure enough, a pervert who would still have a physiological reaction in the face of a situation where a magical beast invades. Xiao Xing Yu wanted to cry. Oh little silver. Come out and help your master explain. Shyness was a major characteristic of the heavenly soul vine. In a flash, the wind howled and quicksand filled the sky. The beast king body fiend beasts began to lash out. The sand demon toad king raised its massive head, and a toad sound like a bell resounded throughout the city. With its gigantic body as the center of the circle, the originally hard ground became fluctuating like flowing water, gradually sanding away. Most of the beast king body level magical beasts possessed the ability to affect the environment. The Sand Demon Toad King's superpower was to manipulate quicksand. It could turn the ground into a desert and form a quicksand vortex. The center of the quicksand vortex was right under the Sand Demon Toad King's feet. It was like a black hole with a huge appetite, constantly absorbing everything around it. The civilians who couldn't escape in time plunged their legs into the sea of sand and fell into the center of the vortex under the support of the quicksand. Shoo, shoo, shoo. The Sand Demon Toad King opened its mouth wide, spitting out long and smelly curling tongues each time sucking the frightened humans into its mouth. The Beast King Body Fiend Beast is doing too much damage to the city. We must kill it as soon as possible. Princess, let's join forces and go together. Good. The picture of a beautiful woman and a beautiful woman joining forces in a strong battle was eye-pleasing. Qin Yen Yen urged her spiritual energy, and the three-tailed spirit fox waved its tail, flinging out one ball-shaped lightning chain after another, like long whips drenched in chilly water, crazily lashing the sand demon toad king's back. The Sand Demon Toad King felt the paralyzing pain of being struck by lightning and twisted his body to spray out a mouthful of quicksand tornado, directly blowing the three-tailed thunder fox high into the air. Qin Yen Ran shouted, Your Highness, right now! Shang Wan Shallow built up her spiritual energy and used her mind to manipulate the Ice Spirit Qilin. The unicorn roared to the heavens and the earth, and the terrifying power of the Ice Spirit enveloped the heavens and the earth. A burst of icy cold air came. Thick ice crystals wrapped the earth heavily. The quicksand vortex stopped operating and was reduced to a static tundra. Analyzing from the perspective of ability restraint, the ice imperial beasts were able to effectively restrain the sand magical beasts. The most powerful part of the sand system magical beasts was the manipulation of quicksand. When the sand particles were frozen by the cold ice and could not flow, they naturally lost their original lethality. Shang Wan Shallow mobilized his spiritual power again, and the ice spirit Qilin leaped up high as if it were a horse treading on a flying swallow and shot out a narrow and sharp ice cone from its mouth. The ice cone sped and flew under the night sky, constantly absorbing the surrounding rain, itself constantly expanding. When the ice cone approached the sand demon toad king, it had already expanded to the size of an iceberg. This was one of the ice spirit Chilin's surefire techniques, ice mountain descent. The huge ice mountain was in the shape of an inverted triangle, and the sharpest part was the first to hit the sand demon toad king's backbone. The power of the ice spirit entered the bloodstream along the wound and it traveled and spread crazily within the sand demon toad king's body. With a loud rumble, the sand demon toad king's body went limp and was crushed to the ground by the huge ice mountain. The cold wind was bitter, and ice crystals flew. In a radius of one kilometer, the broken streets were as bright as if they were cast in silver. Long icicles hung in front of the eaves like short swords of crystal, and the breath of the imperial beast masters turned into a stream of white smoke. Qin Yen Yen's eyes were astonished and she couldn't help but sigh. Worthy of being your highness, this is not like a novice who has just passed the six-star examination. It's simply an experienced six-star peak imperial beast master. Every royal beast master had their own area of specialization. Some people were born with a water destiny and were good at harnessing water-type imperial beasts. Some were born in fire and were able to create a wonderful bond with fire-type imperial beasts. Shang Wan Shallow was the daughter of Shang Wan Lan, 
and the Shangwan family has been good at harnessing Qilin type imperial beasts for generations. Furthermore, Shangwan Shallow's innate cold body was destined to be the most suitable imperial beast master to harness the ice spirit Qilin. Therefore, during the battle, Shangwan Shallow only needed to mobilize a small amount of spiritual energy to make the ice spirit Qilin exert a strength beyond one's imagination. The iceberg shattered, and the sand demon toad king crawled out from a pile of ice. At this moment, its skin was shrouded in a layer of frost, and its backbone presented a huge bloody hole, with the faintly beating organs within its body exposed to the people's view. Undoubtedly, the Ice Chilin's surefire technique, Iceberg Descent, had inflicted a serious injury on the Sand Demon Toad King that had almost lost half of its life. However, the situation was not optimistic. Shang Wan Shallow anxiously shouted, Ice Spirit! With a clang, the Ice Spirit Chilin collapsed into the snow, its limbs twitching, its mouth spitting out blood stained with quicksand, and from its tired eyes, it could tell that it was very weak. Qin Yin Ran ran over, puzzled. Your Highness, just now, it was clearly the Ice Spirit Qilin that struck the Sand Demon Toad King. Why would the Ice Spirit Qilin be injured as well? At this moment, a familiar voice came from behind Qin Yin Ran. The Sand Demon Toad King is not an ordinary sand-type magical beast. Besides being able to manipulate quicksand, it also possesses a special passive talent. Qin Yin Yan turned around and looked at Xiao Xingyu walking slowly. Her attention subconsciously focused on the other party's right hand. Brother Xingyu, your hand. Xiao Xingyu walked step by step. His handsome face hung with an evil smile. On his right wrist, there was a slender and soft silver-colored vine wrapped around it. The vine was like a small, spiritual snake, tightly surrounding Xiao Xingyu, with silver-colored light particles with a clear fragrance emanating from its surroundings. Shangguan Shallow was a princess and had seen a lot since she was young, so she couldn't help but show a shocked expression at this moment. This breath, the bloodline is nothing short of illusory god quality. Ancient plant lineage royal beast, heavenly soul vine. Shangguan Shallow recognized the heavenly soul vine at a glance, and a huge wave rippled within her heart. Looking at the entire dragon kingdom, only the army general, Bai Yu, was able to harness the ancient plant lineage royal beast, which was why he was named the king of plant lineage royal beasts. And at this moment, Xiao Xingyu had an ancient plant lineage royal beast attached to his wrist. The sand demon toad king's special passive talent is, damage reflection. When encountering an opponent of the same level, it can reflect 50% of the damage inflicted on itself by the opponent back to the opponent. When encountering an opponent whose level is lower than your own, you can reflect 80% of the damage. After Xiao Xingyu explained clearly, he walked over to Shang Wan Shallow. Princess, the Ice Spirit Qilin is at the same Beast King body level as the Sand Demon Toad King. That move, Ice Mountain Descent, just now. It did cause tons of damage to the Sand Demon Toad King, but 50% of that damage was reflected back to the Ice Spirit Qilin. Shangguan Shallow bit the skin of her mouth and raised her eyes to stare at Xiao Xingyu. You know quite a lot. Don't worry princess. Next please don't have any qualms about using your strongest strike to finish off the sand demon toad king. He he, you just said that the demonic beast can reflect 50% of the damage. It's hard not to let my imperial beast and a toad die together? Xiao Xingyu flicked the silver colored vine on his wrist. With this heavenly soul vine of mine in hand, what are you afraid of? Shangguan Shallow came to a realization. I read the record of the plant kingdom written by Grand Admiral White Feather, which depicts the heavenly soul vine with a thick and colorful stroke. It is an ancient plant-based imperial beast with a phantom god quality bloodline, possessing an extremely powerful ability to restore life value on its own, and is known as the god of assistance in the imperial beast world. Shangguan Shallow was not a vase princess. She had been hardworking and diligent since she was young. Besides sweating it out and learning the skills of harnessing royal beasts, she also soaked in the royal book courtyard every day reading a wide range of books. The basic information about the heavenly soul vine was recorded in the record of the plant kingdom written by Bai Yu. However, the information was not detailed, because Bai Yu himself had never contracted a heavenly soul vine, and had only met a withered heavenly soul vine in the sea oasis area, where the largest number of plant-type imperial beasts were gathered. No good. The sand demon toad king is trying to recover its strength by devouring civilians. Everyone attacked together. Although the Sand Demon Toad King could reflect 50% of the damage, it still had to take the remaining 50% of the damage itself. The Ice Spirit Chilin's attack carried the Ice Spirit Power. The Ice Spirit Power belonged to the SSS class Beast Energy, and this power could easily penetrate any armor and skin, inflicting frost damage to the enemy's internal organs. The Sand Demon Toad King was freezing and shivering. It desperately needed to replenish food to restore its strength and body temperature. Sand and dust flew, and the quicksand vortex reappeared. All the civilians fleeing nearby rolled into the quicksand. The fear on the faces of these unlucky humans became the best food for the sand devil toad king. 
The sand demon toad king stretched out its long tongue, the barbs on the tip of which could easily cut through a human scalp and absorb the fresh brain marrow. The members of the Tsang Dome Guild simultaneously activated their spiritual energy, harnessing their respective imperial beasts to deliver the strongest strikes. Battle techniques with different attributes emitted colorful light, illuminating the dark and rainy night. Two fists are hard to beat. A dozen four or five star royal beast masters. The joint attack naturally has not bad power. This is enough for the sand demon toad king to drink a pot of water. As the pain tugged at the wound again, the sand demon toad king let out a mournful cry. At the same time, the 80% damage reflection effect was instantly triggered. Why is my imperial beast vomiting blood? What the hell is going on here? My imperial beast is unconscious and in shock. The sand devil toad king was a beast king body magical beast. A royal beast under the command of 4 star and 5 star royal beast masters. With a rank between complete body, 3rd rank, and transcendent body, 3rd rank. When a royal beast's rank was lower than the sand devil toad king, then it would suffer a damage reflection of up to 80%. Against the backdrop of the flames of battle, one imperial beast was bruised and battered, and suffering 80% damage reflection almost killed them, let alone getting up and continuing to fight. Xiao Xingyu tenderly stroked the heavenly soul vine wrapped around his right wrist, and his spiritual energy flared up at the touch of a button. Sun and moon essence, glowing fire. The heavenly soul vine sensed its master's intention and grew savagely in the rainy night. Its vitality was like a burning flame, both fiery and long-lasting, and even in the face of drought, barrenness, or other adversities, it could still be revitalized with its unique vitality by virtue of its tenacity. This was the characteristic of a plant-based royal beast, and the heavenly soul vine grew into a giant vine that looked like an ancient tree in the sky in just 10 seconds. The vine opened its branches and spread its leaves, waving out silver-colored light particles that resembled the stars. The silver light mist under the Tyndall effect was like a swarm of fireflies clad in silver armor, fluttering around the injured imperial beasts and coldly drilling into their skin pores. Shang Wan Shallow's beautiful eyes trembled slightly. The depths of her pupils could not hide her shock as she watched the originally weak and seriously injured ice spirit Chilin get back on its feet. Silver-colored light particles covered the entire body of the ice spirit Chilin, and the shedding of the Lin flakes rapidly regenerated, and the wounds completely healed. The other Imperial Beast Masters Imperial Beasts also climbed up one after another, the injuries on their bodies gradually dissipating. It's unbelievable. This silver-colored vine actually has such a strong recovery effect. Qin Yan Yan was incredulous at this. And this time, she had gained some insight. The sun and moon essence released by the heavenly soul vine could produce a recovery effect of 60% of the total life value of the injured imperial beasts within its range. The ice spirit Chilin, directly recovered with full blood. The other imperial beasts of lower levels also recovered. At the same time, a holy light descended, washing away the dirt of the earth and purifying the earthly gloom. The four-winged holy angel opened his eyes as bright as stars, his hands protecting his surging chest, singing and chanting, his mouth spitting out unknown rune words. A layer of spherical golden light enveloped the bodies of all the imperial beasts. This was the four-winged holy angel's natural power. The holy light shield. The totem of the seven stars of the Big Dipper faintly emerged on the shield. A symbol of the power of the stars. The holy light shield could purify all negative effects and immunize the sand demon toad king's toxin. A wolf whistle tore through the night. And the roar of the hell's underworld wolves spread throughout every nook and cranny of the city. The markings of purple wolf claws appeared on the heads of the ice spirit Chilin, as well as the other imperial beasts. Qin Yan Ran smiled knowingly and murmured in a low voice, I almost forgot. The hell spectral wolf's demonic power increases the attack and defense of friendly units by 25%, and drastically boosts the will to fight and morale. What was buff stacking? Heavenly soul vines superb life recovery. The purification and defense of holy light shield. Demonic power's morale boost. Xiao Xing Yu, a two-star imperial beast master had the lowest segment in the room, but these three imperial beasts that he summoned brought great beneficial effects to the garrison within Yellow Smoke City. Shang Wan Shallow glanced at Xiao Xing Yu inside once again. You fellow, what a true demon. No wonder my mother holds you in such high regard. Princess, I'm just a two-star imperial beast master. I'm not good at fighting, but I'm good at assisting. Xiao Xing Yu's positioning of himself was clear. In a war of this scale, his position was to assist. Providing an extremely high gain for his teammates was the only way to have a chance to take this victory of winning with less. Qin Yan Yan's forehead was bruised as she yelled at the top of her lungs. With brother Xing Yu here, we don't need to worry about damage reflexes. Attack the sand demon toad king with all our might. The members of the Tsong Dome Guild, who had absolute trust in Xiao Xing Yu, catalyzed a large amount of spiritual energy and manipulated their respective imperial beasts to unleash their strongest strikes. After a round of attacks, the sand demon toad king's huge body was shaking. One eye had been blinded, 
and there was an additional shocking bloody hole in its already ugly face. At this moment, it didn't even have the strength to coalesce the sand dust tornado, and could only emit impotent and furious toad calls. On the contrary, the imperial beasts, the holy light shields on their bodies were broken, the silver glowing fire constantly mended the injured skin, and the wolf claw markings on the top of their heads were still dazzling. The combination of heavenly soul vine plus four winged holy angel plus hell spectral wolf provided ample blood recovery, shield and defense for their teammates. Your Highness, the task of harvesting this toad is yours. Xiao Xingyu stepped aside from in front of Shang Wan Shallow. Shang Wan Shallow's long black hair flew in the wind, and her exquisite and stunning face surfaced in anger. Ice Spirit Trident. Spiritual energy fluctuated violently in the air, stimulating every inch of the Ice Spirit Chilin's nerves, and the hot blood instantly boiled. A unicorn roar that shattered the clouds shook the greedy and filthy soul of the Sand Demon Toad King. The Ice Spirit Chilin raised its voice to the sky, and the rainwater in the air gathered like branches of a river, forming an ocean above the clouds. The power of the ice prana merged into the rainwater and condensed into a huge trident. Under the reflection of the lightning, the trident was sharp and cold, just like the divine weapon in the hands of Poseidon, the god of the sea. Xiao Xingyu looked up at the sky as the trident came into view. The ice spirit Chilin has actually mastered the ice styling. The princess's talent is indeed considered a genius monster amongst monsters. Shang Wan Shallow lifted a breath, her pink pretty face glaring angrily as she shouted delicately, Fall! The trident descended from the sky like a guillotine blade, offering a bloody yet beautiful execution song. With a crunching sound, the sand demon toad king's corpse separated. The ugly head tumbled against the ground, stopping right in front of Xiao Xingyu. Sand demon toad king, pawn. Shang Wan Shallow breathed heavily, a fine layer of fragrant sweat enveloping her forehead. Perfect kill, Shang Wan Shallow. Best assist, Xiao Xingyu. Both of them were people of the emperor's soul and the youngest geniuses of the emperor's soul organization and even more so, the rising stars who would open a new era of imperial beasts in the near future. The chaotic streets of guard stronghold number 3 under the pouring rain temporarily restored peace. The sand demon toad king, which was at the level of beast king body, was violently killed by Shang Wan Shallow. The sand demon toad king's corpse gradually sand granulated, like a handful of quicksand in the depths of the desert, dispersing with the wind. Its head rolled down in front of Xiao Xingyu, looking like a huge lump of ice. Only a green magical beast crystal core remained after melting. This was a beast king body magic beast crystal core. The market price was less than 20 million. Xiao Xingyu picked up the magical beast crystal core and handed it to Shang Wan Shallow. I don't need this type of thing. You take it. Shang Wan Shallow just swept a glance at the magical beast crystal core, not caring at all. Many thanks princess, I won't be polite then. Shang Wan Shallow was the princess of the dragon kingdom. There was no shortage of rare evolutionary materials around her and she chose to let Xiao Xingyu have this magical beast crystal core. Furthermore, Shang Wan Shallow knew in her heart that although she was the one who killed the sand demon Toad King, it was Xiao Xingyu who made the greatest contribution during the killing process instead. There were times when the supporting actor was the king on the battlefield, and Xiao Xingyu was the king of the strongest assistance on the battlefield. Arriving at a beast king body magical beast crystal core was only a superficial gain. The heavenly soul vine resumed its small snake-like form and rewound around Xiao Xingyu's right wrist. Its silver vines gently wriggling as it absorbed the souls within the magical beast's crystal core. This was the special talent of the heavenly soul vine. After a magical beast died, it could absorb the soul of the magical beast. Ten seconds later, the luster of the magical beast's crystal core dimmed by a few points. The soul of the sand demon toad king was completely absorbed by the heavenly soul vine. Not only that, after the battle just now, hundreds of magical beasts died in the hands of the members of the vault guild and the souls of these magical beasts were all absorbed by the heavenly soul vine. Xiao Xingyu gently caressed the heavenly soul vine and thought in his heart, Little Silver's ability is really over the top. It's simply a mobile soul collector. When I contract an undead lineage royal beast, later on, it will be beautiful. Undead lineage imperial beasts needed to devour more souls as a way to enhance their strength. The heavenly soul vine could absorb and store the souls of dead magical beasts, and its existence was the unlimited cafeteria of the undead imperial beasts. From this point of view, the combination of Heavenly Soul Vine plus Undead Royal Beast would also become one of Xiao Xingyu's trump cards. However, at the moment, Xiao Xingyu did not have the opportunity to contract an Undead Royal Beast. Qin Yan Yan walked over to Xiao Xingyu's side, revealing a look of approval and appreciation. Brother Xingyu, you assisted Her Highness the Princess and killed the Beast King Body Demonic Beast. This is a great achievement. I announce, as the assessor, that your midterm exam rating rises to SSS. So far, Xiao Xingyu was the first student to obtain a high SSS score in the midterm exam among all the freshmen of the Green Dragon Academy. 
As the saying goes, timing is also fate. And the disaster and nightmare that Yellow Smoke City was facing at the moment was just the springboard for Xiao Xingyu to become famous overnight. Shang Wan Shallow lamented. It's hard to imagine that you, a two-star imperial beast master, actually has such a presence on a battlefield of this scale level. Facing a beast king body demonic beast, a normal three-star royal beast master and four-star royal beast master would appear to have no presence and not be able to help much. However, Xiao Xingyu presented an irreplaceable role on the battlefield as a two-star royal beast master, which was beyond the realm of perception. Princess is overpraised. Xiao Xingyu appeared to keep a low profile and humble, but he was actually happy inside. A system beep sounded. Ding. Completing special mission, obtaining an SSS rating in this midterm exam. Issuing mission reward, random SSS grade beast energy crystals plus 20,000 point coupons. Reward has been issued. Please check and receive by the host. Xiao Xingyu's mind surged and opened his system account. The account balance showed that the point coupons had reached 30, 000 plus, 30, 000 point coupons now. It feels so good to have money. My back is straight. This is the confidence of a kryptonite player. 30, 000 point coupons was enough for Xiao Xingyu to purchase 3 or 4 rare and valuable evolutionary materials in the system store. However, as of now, Xiao Xingyu did not have any particularly urgently needed evolutionary materials. So he decided not to consume them first, saving these 30, 000 plus point coupons for a rainy day. With that, Xiao Xingyu opened the system warehouse, and there was an additional 7 colored crystal in the warehouse, named SSS Grade Beast Energy Crystal. Xiao Xingyu clicked on the crystal stone with his mind, triggering detailed information. This Beast Energy Crystal Stone, carries the SSS Grade Beast Energy, Hell Road, Hell Dao, one of the 6 paths, the Hell Path. Xiao Xingyu reacted and forced down his inner relation as he couldn't help but take a deep breath. All beings in this world had six paths of reincarnation. The six paths were divided into the heavenly path, human path, azura path, animal path, hungry ghost path, and hell path. The first three belong to the three good paths and the last three belong to the three evil paths. The power of these six paths, embodied in the bodies of imperial beasts and magical beasts, was SSS great beast energy. This crystal stone in Xiao Xingyu's hand carried the power of the Hell Dao. Hey Feng, you're in for a treat. Xiao Xingyu patted the Hell Spectre Wolf's head, his smile growing more and more evil. The power of the Hell Dao was not something that ordinary imperial beasts could afford to consume, and only demonic imperial beasts that carried demonic power in their bodies could fuse it perfectly. Obviously, this SSS Great Beast Energy Crystal was most suitable to be fused by the Hell Spectre Wolf. Leader Qin a large number of undead-type demonic beasts are pouring out of the tunnel entrance of Guard Stronghold Number 5. Report. Guard Stronghold Number 9. A mutant species transcendent body magical beast has appeared. The situation is not good. Guard Position Number 12 is also. Wave after wave of magical beasts poured into the city's major strongholds along the tunnels. The main army followed City Lord Zhou Xiaomao to meet the demonic beast army. The number of imperial beast masters in the city was too small, and they were stretched thin in the battle against the demonic beasts. Leader Qin, don't we have any reinforcements? This yellow smoke city is too far from the other cities, and support will have to wait until the day after tomorrow. When will the Air Force General arrive? If this war was to be won, only the arrival of Air Force General Lu Mingxu would have a chance to reverse the situation. Shang Wan Shallow tried to dial the satellite phone in the chaos, but because the demonic beast army was approaching the city, the terrifying demonic aura had caused the magnetic field to be disorganized. Even the satellite phone lost its signal. Damn. No signal. Shang Wan Shallow put down the satellite phone and his cold face became even more gloomy. The yellow smoke city with no signal was equivalent to being cut off from all contact with the outside world, turning into an isolated island above the desert. Princess, we must hold out until dawn tomorrow before we can wait for Lu Mingchu. Shang Wan Shallow nodded. Well, no matter what, we must hold on until dawn. In the phone call before the outbreak of the Great War, Shang Wan Lan clearly stated that Air Force General Lu Mingchu would arrive at Yellow Smoke City at dawn. At this time, there were still five hours until dawn. This five hours would determine the survival of the entire city. If the city is broken, the people will perish. Only by guarding the city gates could we usher in the dawn. A storming bear sneaks up from behind Shang Wan Shallow. It's thick, sharp paws tearing through the rainstorm and lightning. Shang Wan Shallow rolled sideways and snatched the bear's paw, but the hairpin was shattered by the bear's nails. Long hair emanated like a river of stars. Anger and murderous intent surfaced in Shang Wan Shallow's eyes as she pulled a loop of fabric from her sleeve and used it as a headband to tie a high ponytail, looking like a female general. All troops listened to the order. Defend the city to the death. The princess's voice was the song of war drums that boosted morale. The battle to defend the city grew more and more intense. 
with every imperial beast master following Shang Wan shallow, throwing their heads and spilling their blood. However, the battlefield inside the city was another scene. Outside the city, icy cold raindrops smashed on the battle armor of the imperial beast masters as densely as beans spilling down, making the battlefield gloomy and the atmosphere depressing. Above the firmament, thunder and lightning were exchanging, piercing lightning streaked through the sky, followed by deafening thunder, and an endless catastrophe descended. In the desert that was ended by the rain, blood flowed in rivers, and there were corpses everywhere, covered by dirt, unable to tell the difference between imperial beasts and magical beasts. City Lord, the third troop has lost more than half of them, Captain Chen Yan of the fifth unit, sacrificed, reporting to City Lord, veteran General Wang Fan, was martyred in the battle with the Beast Emperor body fiendish bone armor giant, the demonic beast army is attacking too fiercely, this is not the way to go on, in the center of the battlefield, Zhou Xiong stood in a pool of blood, his hands shaking and his eyes bloodshot, in the past half an hour, he had witnessed that his brothers, who had once fought with him to the death, had fallen under the iron hooves of the magical beasts one after another, some imperial beast masters were even swallowed into their bellies by the magical beasts, not even leaving their corpses behind, only turning into a pile of fecal excrement, dang dang dang, the earth trembled, and scaly black shadows surfaced not far away, just like a mirage, Zhou Xion knew clearly that these huge black shadows were not illusions, but real giant type demonic beasts, why was there not a single giant type demonic beast in Mount Kanya? It was because they had long ago secretly migrated under the secret order of Heavenly Father Aldis, gathering under the sand dunes outside Yellow Smoke City, and then participating in this night's slaughter feast as executioners. An earthly roar came from the ground, and a giant with a body of over a hundred meters appeared in front of Zhou Xiong. It did not have a single muscle or skin on its body. It was just a skeleton skeleton. There were also no internal organs within the skeleton, and green fire burned in its sunken eye sockets. This was a beast emperor body level magical beast of the giant lineage combined with the undead lineage, the bone armored giant. The bone armored giant raised its two long arms and its bones changed form, transforming into a giant bone hammer that covered the sky. Who? The gale roared as the giant bone hammer smashed down heavily, wanting to crush the tiny Zhou Xiong into a piece of meat cake. Roar! An eardrum piercing roar rang out. The war giant rhinoceros emperor rose up from the ground, its sharp unicorn horn resisting the giant bone hammer. Both were at the level of beast emperor body, and just one round of dueling evoked heavenly thunder and earthly fire, and the surrounding sand dunes rolled like a tsunami. The bone armored giant took three steps backward, his feet sinking into the mud and sand, and the giant bone hammer that his arms had transformed into instantly shattered. The war giant rhinoceros emperor was panting, the scars from the undead flames burns remaining on his thick skin. Zhou Xion was kneeling on one knee, his breath disorganized, and the blood spilling from the corner of his mouth was instantly washed away by the raging rain, revealing only a miserable white face. City Lord, the demonic beast army is coming in force, we've lost quite a few of our brothers, my subordinate proposes that we strategically retreat, pulling back a kilometer. No way, absolutely not. Zhou Xion's hoarse and weak voice was permeated with determination and decisiveness, he stood up and looked back. The ancient gates of Yellow Smoke City looked even more tattered and bleak in the torrential rain. If we retreat another kilometer, the war will spread to the civilians in the city. Zhou Xiong's bottom line was the people within the city. This bottom line, he had held fast to for 30 years and had never touched it. City Lord, even if we tough it out and don't retreat, it's only a matter of time before the entire army is wiped out. Yes City Lord, let's take a step back. Report, 3rd Unit, all killed in action. The 3rd Troop was one of the elite forces of the Yellow Smoke City garrison. Zhou Xiong's face looked even worse, fighting this war with many enemies and fewer soldiers in a hostile environment. There was despair everywhere, a bolt of lightning streaked across, illuminating the originally dark battlefield. Zhou Xiong fixed his eyes, within a hundred meter radius around himself, the corpses of his brothers were far more than he had imagined and expected. If he retreated, the people in the city would suffer. If you don't retreat, the entire army will be wiped out to retreat or not to retreat, it was a dead end, the battlefield was filled with the aura of magical beasts, an aura that brought despair to the people, when the fighting spirit of the imperial beast master was shaken, the desire of the imperial beasts to fight would also decrease, Zhou Xion looked towards the war giant rhinoceros emperor that had accompanied him for many years by his side, and his expression could not help but be in a trance, at this moment, he saw panic and melancholy in the war giant rhinoceros emperor's eyes that he had not seen for many years, it's simply impossible to win this battle. Zhou Xion clenched his fists and smashed them into the mud pit. The fighting spirit of humans came from self-confidence. When 5,000 or so imperial beast masters met an army of 20,000 magical beasts, 
What was there to talk about self-confidence? An ethereal voice came from the defeated army. As the princess of the dragon kingdom, I order the entire army. Before dawn, the iron hooves of the magical beasts are not allowed to trample on the city gates. On the battlefield, everyone raised their eyes to look at the city gate. On top of the city wall, there stood a pretty woman, precisely the dragon kingdom princess Shangwan Shallow, with rainwater dampening her hair. Her stunningly beautiful face became even more three-dimensional. Beside Shangguan Shallow, a young man appeared. Xiao Xingyu looked into the distance, a sea of corpses and blood. This was the first time Xiao Xingyu had mounted such a tragic battlefield, and there was no timidity or fear on his face, only morbid excitement. Zhou Xiong froze for a second and yelled up to the sky. Her Highness the Princess herself has come to the battlefield. Kill. The Princess has come. We can't admit defeat. Swear to die and not retreat. I'll fight with my life to defend the city gates. Shangguan Shallow had a special status. She was the only daughter of Empress Shangguan Lan, the honored princess of the Dragon Kingdom. When the princess herself personally boarded the battlefield, it was the greatest encouragement to the generals. The Imperial Beast Master troops regrouped and stood firm in their defense. Xiao Xingyu, you're just a two-star Imperial Beast Master. Do you dare to go on a battlefield of this level? Princess, my subordinate bows to accompany you to your left and right. Xiao Xingyu raised his right hand and made a special gesture, bending down to pay his respects. Shangguan Shallow was greatly touched because the salute that Xiao Xingyu made was a special salute gesture for the Imperial Soul Organization. In the next second, Shangguan Shallow rode on the back of the Ice Spirit Chilin and leapt down from the city wall, like a flashing meteor, cutting through the silence of the rainy night. Xiao Xingyu followed closely behind, jumping off the city wall on his Hell Spectre Wolf. The two of them rode their respective Imperial Beasts and rushed into the battlefield filled with the smell of blood. The unicorn's roar shook the three armies, and the wolf's roar did not leave a trail for a hundred miles. Kill. Shangguan Shallow took the lead and led the army to meet the raging demonic beast army. In the chaos of the battle, Xiao Xingyu and Zhou Xiong rubbed shoulders. Elder brother Xiao, what brings you here? What? Big brother Zhou looks down on me as a two-star imperial beast master? Zhou Xiong smiled bitterly and asked anxiously. You and the princess rushed to support. What about the city? Xiao Xingyu smiled smugly. The problem within the city has been completely solved. Completely solved? Zhou Xiong was greatly confused. Twenty minutes ago, inside the city, Leader Qin, there are more and more magical beasts pouring into the city through the tunnels. We don't have enough manpower. We can't hold them off. At this rate, the city will completely fall in half an hour at most. Qin Yan Yan was covered in the blood of the magical beasts. In the past period of time, she had consumed half of her spiritual energy and killed one vicious magical beast after another but she simply couldn't finish killing them all. The strength of the city's defenders was already thin, and there was a steady stream of magical beasts invading the city from the tunnels, which left Qin Yin Yan at her wit's end. Sister Yen Ran, I have a solution. Brother Xing Yu, say it. Xiao Xing Yu analyzed with a straight face. If you want to solve the problems within the city, you have to start from the root cause. The root cause is the tunnels. What you mean is, blocking the underground tunnels will block the invasion of magical beasts. Shangguan Shallow had just killed a mutant species transcendent body magical beast, and with a few drops of blood on the side of her face, she couldn't help but come over when she heard Xiao Xingyu's analysis. Hey, Xiao Xingyu, easy for you to say, you think blocking the tunnels is a simple matter? What a coincidence, this matter is indeed simpler than eating for me. Xiao Xingyu had also just come up with a brilliant solution, just in time to put on a small show in front of the princess. Princess, I need a few herbs now, speak. Imperial Tomb Grass, Bamboo Ganoderma, Eam God Flower, Fire Yang Jade Bone Ginseng, Xiao Xingyu droned on like he was naming a dish. Shangguan Shallow frowned upon hearing this. You're really a lion. These herbs aren't cheap. It's not too late. I desperately need these herbs. Shangguan Shallow commanded. Come on people. Follow the list of herbs that Xiao Xingyu said and make sure to get them together in the fastest time possible. Yes. Your Highness. Zhou Xiong had left the city to meet the enemy. And the person with the most say within the city was Princess Shangguan Shallow. Shangguan Shallow's word. The staff of the office pulled full execution. Within five minutes, the herbs came together. Princess, we followed the list of herbs and found them all. Especially this fire Yang Jade Bone Ginseng, which was originally from our city lord's private collection. Shangguan Shallow glanced at Xiao Xingyu. Xiao Xingyu smiled and joked. As long as I can solve the problem with the tunnels, Brother Zhou won't blame me for taking his private collection to make medicine. Right? Now that the situation in the city has reached a burning point, Shangguan Shallow urges anxiously. 